Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. So, I passed through after I died. And still in a state of waiting for reincarnation. Looking at his transparent soul body in the vast white space around him, Sumu couldn't help but feel a little dazed. This scene is indeed somewhat miraculous. But it is a modern youth who has experienced the baptism of various internet cultures. Su Mu quickly accepted the status quo. And decided to cast a good tire. Is the system there? Su Mu meditated in his heart. Sure enough, the next second, a mechanized voice sounded in his mind. Hello host, the rebirth simulator is here for you. Zitsi Zitsi. The expected golden finger did appear. But before he said a word, he got stuck inexplicably, and made a sound similar to that which occurs when a machine is scrapped. Su Mu panicked in his heart, and at the same time was a little speechless. No way. Will it be scrapped just after passing through the golden finger? The quality problem is too big, I want to complain. Fortunately, after Su Mu complained a few words, the system seemed to return to normal, and the mechanized voice sounded again detected that the host's world is extremely dangerous. In order to serve you better, the system is automatically changed to a death simulator, allowing you to have a better death experience. What? A death simulator? The two sentences after the system was restored made Su Mu stunned. Why does he feel that something is wrong with his golden finger? Death simulator? Let the host have a better death experience. The experience of death is good for a fart. Su Mu just died once, but she doesn't want to die again. However, no matter what he thinks, his first life after transmigration is about to begin. The first rebirth is about to begin. Please allocate basic attribute points and select initial talents within three minutes. If the timeout is not completed, it will be randomly assigned and selected. The mechanized voice sounded again. At the same time, a virtual screen appeared in front of Su Mu. Host, Sumo. Unassigned base attribute points, 10. Body. Chi. Life. Seeing that there were only 3 minutes left, Sumu couldn't think about it anymore, so he could only assign attribute points first. It's just that he doesn't know anything about the world that is about to be reborn, and he doesn't know how to allocate it the best choice. After thinking for a while, Sumu decided to add more body and wisdom. As the saying goes, my life is up to me. As long as one's own ability is strong enough, one can change one's life against the sky. With this idea in mind, Su Mu quickly allocated 10 basic attribute points. Host, Su Mu. Unassigned base attribute points, 0. Body, 5. Intelligence, 4. Life, 1. The allocation of basic attribute points is completed and the corresponding copies are generated. Please choose three initial talents. Following the prompt from the simulator, ten gray talents appeared in front of Su Mu. He glanced at it and found that these talents are very strange and evil. Immortal, corpses decay slowly. Early death, the mortality rate increases greatly before the age of three. Tian Can, randomly missing a certain organ at birth. Remorseful, the pain of death will be magnified tenfold. Taiyin, the fate of the great Yin, it is easy to recruit ghosts, demons and evil spirits. Feast, flesh and blood are extremely delicious and unforgettable. Bliss, life expectancy is shortened to 30 years old, you can reach bliss early. Happy and mourning, death after 100 years old will reward one basic attribute point. Good luck, bad luck before the age of 80. Good luck after the age of 80. Rest in peace, instant death when fatal damage is encountered, reducing pain. What is it? Su Mu rubbed his temples with a headache. Of the ten talents, none of them are serious. To hell. Death is more painful, flesh and blood tastes better, death is early, and it is easy to attract ghosts. What are all these things? Can this be called talent? Su Mu really wanted to ask if this simulator could be returned. He wants to change his golden finger. 
With three minutes to come, the helpless Su Mu could only choose three relatively harmless talents. They are immortal, feast and rest. Immortal, corpses decay slowly. Feast, flesh and blood are extremely delicious and unforgettable. Rest in peace, instant death when fatal damage is encountered, reducing pain. These three talents will at least not cause Su Mu much trouble when he is alive. After choosing, Su Mu's first life in another world begins. The simulation starts. Host, Su Mu. Body, 5. Intelligence, 4. Life, 1. Talent, Immortality, Feast, Rest. As the virtual panel lighted and faded, Su Mu's consciousness fell into darkness. Dagon, the twelfth year of the apocalypse. In a remote mountain village in Jizhou, a baby named Su Mu was born into this world. Three years later, his mother died of illness. For another two years, his father also died on the bedside. At the age of five, Su Mu was an orphan. And in order to bury his father, he sold the only remaining property in the family. Except for an empty earth-shattering house, Su Mu has nothing. Is this the fate of one o'clock? Su Mu helplessly sighed at the graves of his parents. If this is an ordinary five-year-old child, with no relatives, no reason, and no family. Basically, there is only one dead end. But Su Mu was a second generation after all, and after burying his father, he started his own way of survival. Relying on his clever mouth and cuteness, he went around the village to beg for alms and managed to get food from hundreds of families. Yu Yu reading. But it is only the level of starvation, and the suffering is so much that I don't know where to start. However, Su Mu still underestimated the horror of fate. In the twentieth year of the apocalypse, Jizhou was dry, causing a famine. Rolling disaster victims, like avalanches, like huge waves, rushed to other lands. In less than a month, the number of victims exceeded one million. And Su Mu, who was only eight years old, was one of the earliest ones. As a traveler, Su Mu has not shown any of his talents yet, but he was swept up by the torrent of fate and became a member of the disaster victims. This made him see the danger and horror of this world. I saw the horror of famine even more. In the early days of the famine, wherever the hungry people went, the bark was stripped away, the grass seeds stripped away, and the beasts retreated. Even tigers and wolves dare not approach the starving victims. Some wealthy households and landlords with grains were also robbed. But that little grain is not enough at all. Soon, more and more people starved to death. The survivors who barely survived were all skinny and withered faces. They are like walking dead, dragging their half-dead bodies, walking on this dry land. By this time, the beast was no longer afraid of the victims. Nine out of ten victims of the disaster have become wild beasts. Even the wild dogs are eating people. Most of Jizhou has been reduced to hell. And Su Mu is one of the people struggling in this hell. Among the victims, a small figure is somewhat special. In this world, very few orphans can survive. Not to mention surviving a famine. Among the unavoidable crowd, Su Mu was the only child who had no relatives and no reason. It's a bit incredible that he can hold out until now. But it's approaching the limit. The last time Su Mu ate something was four days ago. There are many people who have been hungry longer than him, but he is a child after all. For days after the grain of rice was not in, Su Mu only felt dizzy and weak in his limbs. If he doesn't eat anymore, he can only hold on for one more day at most. Death is quietly approaching. Are you going to starve to death like this? Su Mu was unwilling, but there was nothing he could do. He is just a dead leaf in the famine, which may be engulfed by the waves at any time. Night began to fall. Su Mu was lying weakly beside a tree stump, and his consciousness began to become confused. I don't know whether to fall asleep or faint. Just when Su Mu was staring, a figure sneaked towards him. Boy Su, boy Su, wake up. Although he was hungry for a long time, the skeleton of this figure was still tall. It can be seen that this person was once a strong man. Who? Uncle Lee. Is there something wrong? Su Mu glanced at the person who came, 
and immediately recognized the person. Li Taizhu, a blacksmith in the same village as Su Mu. His son Li Lei and Su Mu are the same age, and they have a good relationship. Most importantly, in the three years after both parents died, Li Taizhu gave Su Mu half of his food. With this kindness, Su Mu is relatively close to Li Taizhu. Li Taizhu looked around vigilantly and found that no one was paying attention to them before whispering to Su Mu. Boy Su, I have something to eat, come with me. Don't make a sound. Hearing this, Su Mu's eyes lit up. The little remaining strength burst out of his body, and he got up and followed behind Li Taizhu. Under the cover of the night, the two walked out of the crowd and walked into the distance through a dead wood forest. Uncle Li, what did you find to eat? Su Mu, who was extremely hungry, didn't think much about it for a while when he heard that he was eating. Now calm down, he vaguely feels that something is wrong. It's a deer, I caught a deer. Li Taizhu said casually, occasionally looking sideways at Su Mu, as if he was afraid that he would be left behind. Deer. Uncle Li, do you still hunt? But there are no bows and arrows, and no traps. How did you hunt a deer? Su Mu's breathing stagnated, and he felt more and more wrong. After the famine, the animals that are easy to hunt and catch have long been caught. The remaining beasts are either hunters or ghosts. Li Taizhu, a blacksmith, caught a wild deer with his bare hands. What kind of joke is this? Ha, huh, luck, luck. Seeing that Li Taizhu didn't intend to explain too much, Su Mu's heart sank to the bottom. He looked up at Li Taizhu. I saw that this person's cheeks and eye sockets were deeply sunken, and a pair of green eyes stared at him. Shaped like a ghost. What's even more terrifying is that his strange eyes are filled with ferocity and madness, unlike what humans can have. At this point, Li Taizhu no longer intends to hide it. The murderous appearance is revealed. This scene made Su Mu feel bad. He took a few deep breaths, and his mind turned to pay attention. Su Mu pretended to be nothing and asked Li Taizhu. By the way, Uncle Li, why didn't you see the stone? Stone is Li Lei's nickname. If it wasn't for Su Mu's suggestion, his name would probably be Li Shi too. Stone, eat it, eat it. If you see the broken temple in front of you, he'll be waiting for you inside. Li Taizhu pointed to a ruined temple two or three hundred meters ahead, and his voice became gloomy. His full of malice has spewed out. Su Mu pretended not to notice, lowered his head inside, and said. If only my aunt was still alive, she wouldn't starve to death with this deer. Li Tiezhu's wife left the remaining food for her husband and son, and her health has not been very good. Not long after fleeing, he died of starvation and cold. Hearing this, Li Tiezhu's eyes narrowed, and a bit of guilt and pain were revealed in his hideous and strange expression. But before he could think about it, Su Mu suddenly pointed to his side and shouted in horror. Auntie! Auntie is standing beside you! What? Li Taizhu was taken aback by Su Mu's shouting. His complexion changed greatly, and he quickly turned to look. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Su Mu ran away and plunged into the dry woods. This Li Taizhu has a problem, he must not go to that ruined temple with him. Stinky boy, dare to play with me. Li Taizhu, who didn't see anything, immediately reacted. He cursed loudly and hurriedly chased after him. Relying on her small size, Su Mu dodged from side to side in the deadwood forest, trying to get rid of Li Taizhu. But after all, he is only eight years old. Yu Yu reading has been hungry for three or four days, how can he still have much energy? Although he tried everything, but after running for half an hour, Su Mu was still caught by Li Taizhu. Stinky boy, let's see where you're going this time. Li Taizhu's large, rough hands are like iron tongs. One stuck Su Mu's neck, and the other clipped his hands behind him. Su Mu was suppressed and unable to move, like a chicken, and was carried by Li Taizhu to the ruined temple not far away. Along the way, no matter what Su Mu said, Li Taizhu ignored it. This made Su Mu a little desperate. After approaching the ruined temple, Su Mu smelled a faint smell of meat. The smell of meat made his saliva secrete frantically, and his hunger multiplied. 
but Su Mu had already vaguely guessed what kind of meat it was. A chill spread throughout his body. The strong nausea made him want to vomit, but there was nothing in his abdomen to vomit, he could only retching. Li Taizhu didn't care what Su Mu thought, he quickly walked into the ruined temple with him. The temple is small, with only a half-human high earthen statue sitting in the middle, flickering in the moonlight. The statue was badly damaged, and it was no longer clear which in Buddha it was. There were four men crowded in a small place. In the middle is a large vat, with a fire on the bottom, and soup is boiled in it. While the soup was tumbling, you could see many bones floating up and down. The flesh on it has been gnawed clean, but it is still reluctant to throw it away. It is estimated that the bones will be knocked open and the marrow inside will be eaten up. Although it was only a few rolling moments. But Su Mu can see clearly, these are not animal bones at all. Stone, I did eat it. Finally, another one has been caught. My son is thirteen, your son is only eight years old, and there is too little meat. With this, it can be evened out. Stop talking nonsense, hurry up. Throw this kid in the pot, I'll starve to death. Yes, hurry up. Everyone is hungry. This kid has nothing to do with us, the big guys can eat it together. Those four yellow-faced, thin-skinned men were like hungry ghosts. After seeing the Su Mu in Li Tiezhu's hand, they all urged impatiently. Those turbid eyes are full of almost crazy longing. Against the backdrop of the firelight, the twisted faces of the four people flickered, more terrifying than a demon. Su Mu is like falling into an ice cave. Yi has already guessed his own destiny. Although it was difficult to suppress the fear in his heart, he still made his last attempt. Uncle Li, you watched me grow up. Do you have the heart to do this? Su Mu, who was stuck in the neck, couldn't move. He couldn't turn his head to look at Li Taizhu, so he could only scream desperately. The next moment, a voice so dull that it made the hair stand upright came faintly. Boy Su after your father and mother passed away, I provided you with so much food. Is it considered a support for you? Raise chickens to eat chickens, and ducks to eat ducks. Is there anything wrong with that? Today, it's time for you to repay me. By the way, let's be a companion for the stone too. Having said that, Li Taizhu walked quickly towards the big vat. The boiling soup made Su Mu feel a blazing heat, but it couldn't melt his blood that was about to congeal. Uncle. Wait, wait. I, my stomach hurts, I'm going to run thin. You wait for me to finish pulling, don't let me ruin this pot of good soup. I. Shu. Sure. In the end, before Su Mu, who still wanted to struggle a little more, finished speaking, a thick, blood-stained sickle stabbed into his neck fiercely. After being fatally wounded, the skill rest is triggered. In an instant, Su Mu died, and his consciousness fell into darkness. Idiot! Su Mu couldn't help but cursed loudly. His life was really miserable. He lost his mother at the age of three and his father at the age of five. Relying on a method similar to begging, he barely survived to the age of eight. The result was a rare drought and famine. The scene of starving and dying is like hell. The most terrifying thing is that this disaster not only destroyed the body, but also the spirit. The once kind blacksmith turned into an ogre, not even letting go of his own son, let alone Su Mu. Fortunately, he didn't die too painfully. I don't know if it is the only blessing in this tragic life. The bitter past of the past eight years turned into a scene of memories that kept flashing in Su Mu's mind. But soon, Su Mu realized something was wrong. Shouldn't we return to the white space before after death? Why is there any movement? Just when Su Mu was puzzled, he suddenly regained his hearing and received the sound of the outside world again. It was the conversation, chewing and swallowing of the five villains. Delicious. Really delicious. How can it be so delicious? I have never eaten something so delicious. It's so fragrant. I didn't expect this kid to look so bad, the meat is so fragrant. Don't rob, don't rob. It's mine. Give it to me, I caught him, give it to me. In your mother, bring it to Lao Tzu. Don't force Lao Tzu to do it. 
Hearing these voices, Su Mu had mixed feelings. He didn't expect that under the effect of the feast skill, this group of people actually fought for his meat. At the same time, I couldn't understand why I heard the outside voice again. But more than that, it's disgusting. Is disgust. Under the disaster, people have become ghosts. If he has the ability, Sumu really wants to eliminate all these inhuman things. The scramble did not subside, but became more and more intense. I caught him. I raised him. Give it to me. Let go. Let go of Lousy. I'll your mother. With a scolding, Su Mu heard a dull and huge knock. It seems that some kind of heavy object hit the skull. Immediately afterwards, a pop sounded from the tank. Someone else fell into this man killing vat. Silence. Deathly silence. After the sound of falling, the ruined temple instantly became quiet. Arguing, chewing, swallowing. All disappeared. Only the sound of rapid breathing remained. But soon, the sound of chewing sounded again. And faster than ever. Su Mu's heart was icy cold. He knew that someone else died. He was beaten to death by his companions, and then fell into a big vat, becoming a new round of food. Listening to the previous conversation, this person should be Li Taizhu. For some unknown reason, Su Mu's heart was filled with surging anger and killing intent. These negative emotions are like a sudden fire. The more it burns, the more prosperous it becomes, the more fierce it burns. The next moment, a faint light pierced the darkness in Su Mu's field of vision. His vision actually recovered. I saw that under the night, the dilapidated small temple looked like a devil's cave. For skinny men devoured some kind of flesh like wild dogs. And spread out, occasionally looking at the companion next to him with vigilant eyes. The center of the broken temple. The worn out clay statue had only one eyelid hanging down. As if watching all this silently. Vaguely, its eyelid seemed to tremble. Very weird. But the four people in the ruined temple didn't notice it, and continued to devour frantically, dropping bones one by one. They didn't even notice that some of the discarded bones moved slowly. Putting them together, they turned into a small skeleton that was about half a person's height, and made a kakaka sound all over. Now, the four of them finally found something different. Ah! Ghost! Ghost! Don't eliminate me, I eat less, I eat the least. Don't eliminate me. Bodhisattva, save your life, get this ghastly thing. These four wicked men, who were still ferocious just now, were scared to the core. Someone slumped to the ground and begged the little skeleton for mercy. Someone knelt down in front of the dilapidated sculpture and begged God to worship Buddha. There were also people leaning against the wall and trembling, looking at the exit behind the little skeleton, thinking about how to escape. No matter what they do, they are extremely frightened. These country men are usually in awe of ghosts and gods. At this time, just after the evil deed, he ran into the moving skeleton. How can you not be afraid? What they didn't know was that Su Mu, who was incarnated as a skeleton, was in terrible condition. For some reason, he who was supposed to die suddenly gained a power. With the help of this power, Su Mu manipulated his bones to piece together, forming a small skeleton. But, that's all. Su Mu could feel that the skeleton was so fragile that it could be blown over by a gust of wind. Under the frightened gazes of the four, Su Mu cautiously took the first step forward. Seeing the skeleton monster moving forward, the four of them were even more frightened. One of them even got his crotch wet and his eyes wandered. But the next moment. Whoa! As soon as Su Mu's foot landed on the ground, it fell apart under the action of the shock force. I. Su Mu, who was extremely speechless, didn't have time to complain, and his consciousness was pulled out of this world. The next second, he returned to the initial space. The last scene I saw in my memory was the four people with dazed faces. This simulation ends. Score, G. Dungeon completion, 11%. Points earned, 1. Comment, your short life is only 8 years, and there is no achievement, the only effect is to fill the stomach of some existence. In Su Mu's ear, 
the long-lost mechanized voice sounded. But he was still immersed in the pain of the previous life. If you don't experience it yourself, you don't know how terrifying the famine is. Years of hunger, people eat each other. In these short five words, the cruelty was exhausted. Li Jiu's few people will never be an exception. As the disaster continues, the refugees will only get crazier. In such hell, dying sooner is not necessarily a bad thing. Ha! Huh. After taking a long sigh of relief, Su Mu calmed down and began to review the experience of the previous life. Everything else is okay to say, the only special thing is that he didn't die directly after his death. Instead, under the support of a strange force, it turned into a skeleton. Although it is extremely fragile, it is definitely some kind of demon, some kind of ghost. This shows that death is not the end. Su Mu had already vaguely guessed the usage of the death simulator, so he only needed to verify his conjecture. However, before entering the dungeon for the second time, Su Mu needs to prepare. First. After earning one point, the system's mall is activated. It sells all kinds of weird stuff. There are props, talents, and some things that Su Mu can't understand for the time being. However, one point is too few to buy anything at all. After searching, Su Muhua bought a booklet recording skeletons and ghosts with one point. I hope I can get some information from it. With this in mind, Su Mu opened the booklet. After opening it, the first thing you see is an opening quote. The Tao is divided into yin and yang. People are yang and ghosts are yin. Life is yang and death is yin. The transformation of yin and yang is the way of heaven. Su Mu repeated it half understood. Looking further down, it's the text. The first ghost recorded in this booklet is called Bone Boy. Bone Boy, the little skeleton that a child turns into after his death is mischievous and has little harm. After reading Gudong's brief introduction, Su Mu was sure that it was what he transformed into in the last life. Say something so naughty. In fact, he is too weak, and he has no ability to eliminate people. But it shouldn't be so fragile that it will fall apart with just one step. Su Mu guessed that the bone boy he transformed into is not a complete body, or there is some kind of problem. But as the saying goes, once is born and twice is cooked. The first time I died, I had no experience. After a few more deaths, Su Mu believes that he will definitely be able to sum up some experience and evolve into a more powerful monster. This, perhaps, is the role of the death simulator. Su Mu originally wanted to turn to the back to see other skeleton monsters. It turns out that this booklet is not the whole book, one point. But apart from the opening quotation, one page is one credit. If you want to look back, you have to give points again. The impoverished Su Mu scolded the system. Afterwards, I sorted out my thoughts and prepared to enter the dungeon again. After the base attribute points are allocated, the copy will be generated. Therefore, the basic attribute points cannot be changed. Fortunately, the skills you carry can be changed. Su Mu felt that none of the three talents he chose in his previous life seemed to have played a role. Then this time, just replace them all. After excluding three, there are only seven talents left. In addition, the skills good luck and joy and mourning can also be ruled out. Su Mu couldn't even live to be eight years old, let alone eighty and one hundred years old. So these two skills are completely useless. In this way, there are only five skills left, early death, heavenly remnant, bliss, remorse, and tai yin. After thinking for a while, Su Mu made a choice. First, he chose bliss. If you can't live to thirty, you can't live to thirty. Anyway, he couldn't even live to be eight years old. Then, Su Mu chose tai yin. This skill will make it easier for him to attract evil spirits. But Su Mu faintly felt that the bone boy he transformed into was so fragile, it might have something to do with the lack of yin qi. Choosing this talent might make the demon he transformed into after his death even more powerful. As for the last skill, Su Mu really doesn't know how to choose it, it feels like a pit. In desperation, he could only add the happy in mourning that was excluded at the beginning. At least this talent won't fool him. After choosing three talents, Su Mu started the second life restart. 
the simulation starts. Body, 5. Intelligence, 4. Life, 1. Talents, bliss, tyene, joy, and mourning. As the virtual panel in front of him faded, Su Mu's consciousness fell into darkness. He was born again in that small village. But this time, there has been a huge change in life. Not long after he was born, Su Mu discovered an abnormality. In this life, his appetite is terrifying. Correspondingly, it is several times the growth rate of ordinary people. At the age of three, Su Mu was as tall as his mother. Then, his mother died. Yu Yu reading. At the age of five, Su Mu's height caught up with his father. Then, his father also passed away. Su Mu's fate has not changed. At the age of five, he was once again an orphan. The difference is that Su Mu, who is only five years old in this life, is as tall as a short adult. At this time, he finally understood the role of the talent bliss. Burn life and accelerate growth. Death before the age of 30 is the final result. If it is a normal situation, this skill has no effect, but is a big hole. But for the current Su Mu, it is a magical skill. Not to mention that he became an orphan at the age of five and needed to survive alone. Three years later, a terrible famine awaits him. In this kind of disaster, the chances of survival of adults are many times higher than that of children. With the talent of bliss, Su Mu finally saw hope of living. However, this talent also brought him trouble. What Su Mu has to do now is to eat and live. In the last life, he was pitiful by pretending to be cute and begged for food from other villagers. But in this life, Su Mu grew up like a monster. And there's an odd coincidence. When my mother is so tall, she will die. When my father was so tall, he died. As a result, Su Muji became an ominous person in the eyes of the villagers. No villagers were willing to give him food at all, and some even wanted to drive him out of the village. But how could Su Mu, who just died once, be starved to death? Even kicked out to die? No, right? Ro. I'll take it myself. In order to bury his parents, Su Mu sold the only remaining property in the family. And the villagers regard him as an ominous person, and they can't wait to drive him out of the village. As a result, Su Mu's normal way of survival was completely cut off, and there was no way for him to work hard. However, he was someone who had just died once, how could he die so uselessly? If you can't get food by conventional means, then use unconventional means. A physique of five points is not a white point. In addition to the extremely fast growth rate, Su Mu's physical fitness is also beyond that of ordinary people. According to his observation, the physique of ordinary villagers is about three o'clock. Therefore, the usual three or five adults are not his opponents at all. In order to survive, Su Mu raised his fist. Since then, there has been another country bully in the village. Even the surrounding villages have been destroyed. Fortunately, this village tyrant doesn't want anything else, as long as he can eat his fill, it doesn't add any burden to the villagers. However, his reputation for monster, killing parents and running in the countryside is getting louder and louder. With all kinds of buffs added, the villagers basically turned around and ran when they saw him. After more than two years, Su Mu's height has reached 7 feet 5 inches, which is almost 1. 8 meters. Not only is he taller than most adults, but he is also extremely strong and full of strength. In the past two years, Su Mu had thought about escaping from Jizhou and away from the famine. However, the Dagon dynasty restricted the flow of people, and there was no reason why they could not run around. Helpless, Su Mu could only continue to stay in the village. In order to meet the coming famine, Su Mu quietly stocked up some dry food. But he was not able to stock up too much, let alone hold a large amount of food. Not to mention Su Mu, even the wealthy households in the nearby towns were robbed after the famine came. All he could do seemed to be waiting quietly for the famine to come. But this day, Su Mu's life ushered in a turning point. There are still eight months. In the early morning, as usual, Su Mu first calculated how much time there was before the famine. Afterwards, after taking a shower, he staggered to the next village. 
In the four or five surrounding villages, there are five or six hundred households, excluding some of the more difficult families. The Sumu family spends a day. In three years, two rounds are over. He also thought about helping people work in exchange for some food money. But these ignorant villagers are convinced that he is an ominous person, and would rather give him some food for nothing than have anything to do with him. Helpless, Su Mu could only be at ease as his village tyrant. Su Mu has come here for the second time today. Far away, he shouted. Aunt Lu, is my meal ready for today? Hurry up and bring it out. The owner of this house is named Lu Tianlang, who is barely a small landlord. After Su Mu cleaned up some of the tenant farmers under his command, he had no objection to the once a year meal. But what Su Mu didn't expect was that something unexpected happened this time. I saw a middle aged man with a height of seven feet and a pale complexion walked out of the Lu family's house. Behind him, standing is Lu Tianlang. Brother, you have an injury now, why don't you just forget it? Anyway, it's just a few meals, so what if this kid rubs it? Lu Tianlang looked at his elder brother Lu Feng with some worry. At first Su Mu thought that Lu Tianlang was looking for someone to take revenge, but after seeing this scene, he realized that he was wrong. But Lu Tianlang's eldest brother didn't stop there. He looked at Su Mu in surprise and asked Lu Tianlang. Along, how old do you think this kid is? Eight years old. Eight years old. This eight? It's really eight years old. This kid is very weird. At three years old, he was as tall as his mother, and at five years old, he was as tall as his father. Then he eliminated his father and mother. Everyone in the surrounding villages knew about this. TSK TSK TSK. The bones are amazed. Lu Feng looked at Su Mu with bright eyes, as if he was looking at some treasure. Su Mu frowned and retorted. Don't talk nonsense. I'm only seven and a half years old. Also, what about the meal I want? My family knows their own affairs. Su Mu knew that he was not someone who was surprised by his bones. He only got his current body by burning his vitality and his five-point physique. But Lu Feng didn't know. He coughed a few times, took a breath and said to Su Mu. Boy, I heard about you. At the age of five, he lost his parents and was despised by others. It is understandable to ask for stuttering in order to survive. But today you begged me, so I won't agree. Su Mu looked at Lu Feng, who was a head shorter than himself and seemed to be injured, and asked casually. What do you want? Do you still want to fight with me? Hearing this, Lu Feng grinned and said. Hey! Your kid was right. I heard that at a young age, you fought all over the surrounding villages without any rivals. Today, I want to see how much you have and how many tails you can come to my Lu's house to ask for food. After all, Lu Feng shouted violently and suddenly shot. This Lu Feng looked sick, but when he moved his hands, he was as fierce as a tiger and as swift as a fox. The distance of more than twenty meters was instantly crossed, and he punched the door at Su Mu's face. Su Mu, who didn't take him seriously before, changed his face. He didn't have time to dodge, so he could only put up his arms to resist. Boom! With one punch, Su Mu took a dozen steps back. I just felt my arms were numb and tingling. There seems to be some minor fractures and fractures. Is this still a power that humans can possess? Su Mu was horrified. Yu Yu reading WW. Ukanshu. Calm. His body is very strong. Although he is not yet eight years old, it is estimated that he can already compete with the top fighters on the earth. Otherwise, he would not have the ability to roam the countryside. But this middle-aged man, who was a head shorter than him, felt like he was falling apart with one punch. And this guy is still wounded. Is that human being? On the other side, Lu Feng was also secretly surprised. Su Mu was just an ordinary person who had never practiced, and he actually resisted him with a punch and didn't fall down. It's really talented. The more Lu Feng looked at Su Mu, the more he liked it, but his men didn't stop. He quickly chased after him, and another unremarkable straight punch slammed into Su Mu. 
he wanted to see where the physical limit of this eight-year-old child was. In the face of this most powerful enemy in history, Su Mu is also ruthless. In the face of this fast and heavy punch, Su Mu raised his hands and seemed to want to block like before. But at the moment when Lu Fang's fist hit him, he immediately turned sideways, bent his left arm into a shield, covered his head, and resisted the punch. Huge strength ran through Su Mu's body. This time, not only was his left arm numb and tingling, but his body was shaken to pieces. But the huge power of this punch was transmitted to the right side through the left side of the body. Back to you. Su Mu roared angrily and threw out his right arm, smashing Lu Feng with a punch. Lu Feng didn't expect Su Mu to have this move, and was punched firmly in the chest. He staggered back a few steps and almost fell. His complexion seemed paler. It's complicated, but it's actually as fast as lightning. From Lu Feng's second punch to Su Mu's counterattack, it was only a breath of time. The people around didn't see what was happening at all, they only heard bang bang, and the two separated. Among them, Su Mu fell to the ground. And Lu Feng staggered back a few steps, and then coughed violently. Seeing this, Lu Jianlong's complexion changed greatly, and he hurried up to meet him. Big brother, big brother, are you all right? Lu Feng waved his hand and said. It's not in the way, it's not in the way. There's not much time left anyway, it's not bad for this punch. Cough. Cough, cough. Although he said so, he coughed so badly that it took a long time to calm down. On the other side, Su Mu took advantage of this time to get up. She grinned and looked at Lu Feng with a wary expression. This middle-aged man who seems to be riddled with injuries is outrageously powerful. Su Mu felt that he was not an opponent, and was already thinking about how to run away. But after calming down, Lu Feng said something that he didn't expect. Boy, would you like to worship me as your teacher? Su Mu was stunned for a moment. After thinking about it for a while, he didn't answer directly. Instead, he asked. Why are you so powerful? So fast? I've never seen someone like you. Hearing this, Lu Feng raised his head and laughed. Ha ha ha. You kid, you are not only strong and strong at such a young age, but your brain is also ghostly. But after all, he is still a child with little knowledge. After laughing, Lu Feng's expression became solemn, and he said solemnly. This world is huge, bigger than you can imagine. There are too many things you can't understand. I'm just a little third-rate warrior. To be precise, it used to be. Hearing this, Su Mu's heart moved. He felt that he was finally going to come into contact with higher level information in this world. Warrior. What is a warrior? Su Mu asked again eagerly. The so-called warrior. Lu Feng had the idea of accepting apprentices, but seeing Su Mu's curiosity, he explained it. People in this world are born with a mouthful of innate essence, which is hidden in the blood and blood of the meridians. A martial artist is a person who grows this innate essence through constant tempering, thereby gaining powerful strength. In order to cultivate and fight, warriors have created many exercises and martial arts. Today, martial arts has become very prosperous. However, if you want to practice martial arts, there is still a low threshold. If you want to get started, you must have strong blood and strong muscles and bones. In this way, the food cannot be checked, and meat is basically indispensable. It is very rare for a person like Su Mu who eats ordinary food but is vigorous. And he was so tall before he was eight years old, and his bones were amazing. This gave Lu Feng a love for talent. Accepting an apprentice might give him more color in his dying life. After learning about the existence of martial arts, Su Mu did not hesitate to take Lu Feng as his teacher. You can eat and live for nothing, and you can also practice martial arts. A fool would not agree. In this way, Su Mu joined the Lu family as Lu Feng's only close disciple. In fact, Lu Feng is not a martial arts master. There was a general in the ancestors of the Lu family, and then it became more and more declining. In order to regain his former glory, Lu Feng joined the army when he was young. However, his abilities are limited. 
After more than 20 years, he is only a centurion. In terms of martial arts cultivation, he is only a third-rate martial artist who has just started. Originally, Lu Feng had vaguely reached the threshold of entering second-rate martial artist. I don't want to be seriously injured in a mission some time ago. Not to mention the advanced level, the cultivation of third-rate warriors has not been preserved. Lu Feng, who injured his meridian and source, was seriously injured and had no choice but to return home alone. After staying for a while, I learned that there was a young village tyrant like Su Mu in my hometown, and I started to love talents. It can be considered as a thought for him, who has no children and no daughters. Although he is no longer at his peak, he has not even kept the cultivation of third-rate warriors. But Lu Feng has been in the army for more than twenty years, and he has extremely rich fighting experience, so it is more than enough to teach Su Mu. In addition to the regular physical exercise, to strengthen the spirit. Lu Feng also taught Su Mu a set of boxing techniques and a set of sword techniques. The boxing method is a common practice in the military, and it is not forbidden to spread the mountain-shaking boxing. This set of boxing is very open and close, fierce and fierce, which is very suitable for Su Mu. The swordsmanship was handed down from the Lu family's ancestors. Because it was the general who realized it during the battle on the battlefield. Therefore, it is also open and closed, the swordsmanship is simple and concise, but it is extremely fierce. Time is spent in Su Mu's diligent study and hard training, day by day. In the following months, most of Jizhou did not rain and was abnormally dry. This strange weather made Lu Feng, who was already seriously injured, unable to support him any longer. After teaching Su Mu for more than four months, he passed away. In the past four months, Lu Feng has devoted himself to teaching Su Mu martial arts, as well as some experience in fighting. Basically taught everything that could be taught. Fortunately, Su Mu lived up to expectations and absorbed all the knowledge like a sponge. Not to mention the rapid progress, a little talent still counts. This made Lu Feng leave with a slight smile on his face. In addition to this, the Lu family has also achieved the ultimate in Su Mu's food. Su Mu's appetite was about three times that of ordinary people, and Lu Feng also demanded that the meal must be of the highest quality. The Lu family's family business is not large, so it is really difficult to eat like this. As the owner of the house, Lu Tianlang was a little dissatisfied. After all, he himself would not dare to eat so well. With Su Mu's way of eating, one person can beat their family. But at Lu Feng's strong request, he could only eat with Su Mu. I have lived in this copy world for two, more than ten years. Lu Feng is the only person who treats Su Mu so well. After his death, Su Mu wore hemp and filial piety, and kept his filial piety for three months. Going forward, I can't keep it. Because famine is coming. Although I was prepared in my heart, this day still came very suddenly. In the middle of the night, Su Mu was lying on the bed and sleeping. Suddenly there was a loud noise outside, mixed with a few screams. Finally coming. Su Mu rolled over and got out of bed with a reel, quickly put on his clothes, and carried the ring-headed sword that the Lu family had made for him behind his back. At this time, outside the Lu family's house, a group of victims in ragged clothes were madly charging the gate. Open the door for grain, open the door for grain. People are going to starve to death, you you reading open the door. The big guy works hard, just knock the door open and you'll have something to eat. It's these wealthy households who are killing us and have no food to eat. Rush in and grab them all. Eliminate them all. In bursts of howling, Hundreds of victims kept pounding the courtyard gate like wild beasts. Although there are many heavy objects behind the door, it still can't stop more and more victims. Boom! Finally, with a loud bang, the courtyard gate collapsed. The starving victims outside the door rushed in like crazy. During this period, several people fell down, but no one cared about them and stepped on them one after another. At the back, I was almost trampled into a muddy flesh. During a famine, it is all too common for the hungry to rob the rich and landowners. This terrible situation has scared away all the long-term workers hired by the Lu family. Seeing that the Lu family's house was about to be looted, a cold light flew over. 
Shu. With the sound of the air being torn apart, several great heads flew high, and blood spurted. The few people who rushed in the front were actually headed by a knife. After half a breath, the corpse shook and fell heavily to the ground. This scene is terrifying. However, before the hungry people could react, a loud shout exploded in the courtyard like thunder. Su Mu is here, who dares to move around? Those who cross this line, die. The hungry people looked up stupidly. I saw an eighteen-foot-strong man, holding a large knife with a ring head that was dripping blood, drawing a bloodline on the ground heavily, and squeezing out a string of sparks. That chilling and aura is blowing towards the face. Su Mu Heng Dao immediately, standing alone in front of hundreds of hungry people, full of murderous aura. All the starving people who were forced to do so did not dare to go forward, with expressions of fear on their faces. After taking Lu Feng as his teacher, the Lu family did all they could for him to practice martial arts and provide him with food and drink. The quality of the diet has increased more than tenfold at once. In addition to practicing martial arts every day and filling blood, it is more conducive to growth. Now, Su Mu's height has jumped to eight feet, which is a little over one. Nine meters. Moreover, he is extremely strong, standing there even if he does not move, it gives people a strong sense of oppression. Like an iron tower. In this way, Su Mu stabbed the hungry people temporarily. But only temporarily. These people are already starving. And there are constantly hungry people coming up behind. Su Mu knew in his heart that when the number of hungry people reached a certain level, they would overcome their fear of him. So, before coming here, Su Mu notified Lu Tianlang and asked him to take his family out through the back door. Bring some food, but not too much, otherwise it will be too conspicuous. Su Mu stayed here, just waiting for them to leave safely. Time passed little by little. Whether it was Su Mu or those hungry people, every second was extremely tormented. Half an hour later, the outside of the Lu family's house was already crowded with hungry people. They squeezed forward little by little, pushing the person in front of them to move forward. Everyone's emotions have reached their peak. Finally, a spark ignited the powder keg. He's alone, so many people can still be stopped by him. Eliminate him, and the food will be behind him. This sentence completely detonated the madness and desire in the hearts of all hungry people. Yes, eliminate him. If you eliminate him, he will have enough to eat. This reckless man is alone, why are you afraid of him? These wealthy households are the most hateful, and I don't know how much they need to eat to get such a big chunk. Eliminate him. Eliminate him. In the crowd, there was one after another in response. Pairs of green eyes stared intently. I don't know if it was driven by the people behind, or the starving people in front lost their heads. The crowd began to rush toward Sumu, and every starving person's withered face was full of madness. Looking for death. Seeing that the situation was not right, Su Mu shouted angrily and slashed at them with a knife. The Lujia swordsmanship opened and closed, sweeping through the crowd like a meat grinder. For a time, flesh and blood flew, and the limbs danced wildly. After Lu Feng's death, there were still four members of the Lu family. Lu Tianlong's husband and wife, and a pair of children under their knees. Counting the time, they should not have evacuated to a safe place at this time. Su Mu must buy them a little more time. After practicing martial arts for half a year, Su Mu was about to enter the realm of a third-rate martial artist. Dealing with these hungry people who haven't eaten for a few days couldn't be easier. But the number of hungry people was too large for Su Mu to eliminate them all. And his purpose is not to eliminate, but to delay as much as possible. Half an hour later, Su Mu dropped dozens of corpses, one of them turned over the fence, and disappeared into the darkness. The good old mansion of the Lu family is about to reach the end of its lifespan. Under a big tree at the back of the village, several figures swayed. One of them was pacing back and forth, looking restless. There's nothing wrong with that kid Su Mu, right? My brother asked me to take care of him before he died. He can't be in my hands. Lu Tianlang was a little anxious. Dad, don't worry. Su. Little brother Su is strong and strong. 
those hungry people can't do anything to him. Lu Tianlang's eldest daughter, who is fourteen years old this year, was born slim. It was she who spoke in the dark. To be honest, Lu Qingqing didn't even know what to call Su Mu. Call him little brother, that size and appearance really don't match. But he's only eight years old, so he can't call him big brother, can he? Father, my sister is right. Big brother Su is a strong martial artist, isn't it like killing chickens to clean up those hungry people? Lu Tianlong's second son is ten years old this year. After spending more than half a year with Su Mu, he completely bowed to him, one big brother at a time, and there was no psychological burden when he shouted. I hope so. The words of the two made Lu Tianlang feel a little relieved. Sure enough, after a while, the four Lu family members saw a tall figure running towards them quickly. Not Su Mu, who else could it be? Are you all right? Su Mu glanced at the four of them, and after confirming that they were all right, he still asked a question. It's okay, what should we do now? Although Su Mu was covered in blood, he knew it was someone else's. Lu Tianlang was relieved. Asked about the next plan. No wonder Lu Tianlang would ask an eight-year-old child. Su Mu, whether in mind or appearance, looks like a wise adult. This made Lu Tianlang unconsciously forget his age. This famine will only get worse. Escape, first escape from Jizhou. It is good. It's also an escape from the famine. This life is much better than the previous one. In this life, Su Mu has a strong body and martial arts skills. Although he has not stepped into the ranks of third-rate warriors, he should be able to protect himself in a famine. Moreover, I brought some food from the Lu family, so I should be able to stick to it until I leave Jizhou. Su Mu thought about it for a while, and felt that he shouldn't have to die in this life, he could live a good life. As predicted. Although the next itinerary was difficult, it was generally smooth. Along the way, many people wanted to rob Su Mu of the food they were carrying, but they were all eliminated by Su Mu neatly. After all, he carried some rations with him, so it wouldn't cause a large-scale looting. At this time, Lu Tianlang couldn't help but sigh, feeling that his eldest brother, this apprentice, was really right. Without Su Mu's protection, their family would never have been able to go on so smoothly. In the next month or so, the famine intensified, and the number of hungry people became more and more. Fortunately, Su Mu and Lu Tianlang's family of four are still alive and well. It's just that she lost some weight, and her clothes are a lot worn out. Overall, it has been very smooth. There was only one thing that made Su Mu feel a little strange, and felt a little uneasy in his heart. A few days ago, when he walked through a dry wood, he remembered the dilapidated small temple. So I went over to have a look, thinking that if I meet Li Tiezhu's few people who ate him in the past life, they will all be eliminated. By the way, it can also rescue some people who are about to become their rations. But what Su Mu didn't expect was that the ruined temple had disappeared. No matter how much Su Mu looked for, there was no trace of it. But in the last life, Su Mu was obviously eaten in that ruined temple, how could he remember it wrong? Uneasy Su Mubin plans to ask a few local hungry people. It's a pity that the crowd of people fleeing the desert has become a mess, and no one can be found at all. Helpless, Su Mu could only keep this matter in his heart. But since then, he vaguely had a strong premonition. This Jizhou, I'm afraid it won't be so easy to escape. After a few days, the escaping team grew bigger and bigger. And Su Mu's sense of uncertainty in his heart also became stronger. Especially at midnight, he always felt that there were a pair of eyes staring at him in the darkness. Staring at him, the back of his spine felt cold, and the cold air rushed upwards. But if you look around, you can see nothing but the hungry. In the vast darkness, there is no special existence. This could not help but remind Su Mu of the talent Tai Yin that he carried. Tai Yin, the fate of the great Yin, it is easy to recruit ghosts, demons and evil spirits. In the past eight years, Su Mu had never encountered anything strange, let alone evil. Over the years, he gradually forgot this skill. But the experiences of the past few days have brought the skill Tai Yin back to Su Mu's sight. Today is a time of famine and turmoil, with countless dead and wounded, full of grievances. 
some ghosts and sprites appear, which seems to make sense. It's just that Sumu didn't know how to deal with those ghosts. I can't expect all the ghosts and demons to fall apart just like the little skeleton he transformed into in the last life, right? Thinking of this, Su Mu's heart sank slightly. The next road, I'm afraid it won't be easy to walk. In the middle of the night, Lu Tianlong's family of four had already slept. Only Su Mu, lit a bonfire and kept vigil alone. The flames jumped, illuminating all within a radius of ten meters. But farther away, it was completely dark. The overlapping shadows, coupled with the faint smell of meat in the air, made it impossible to tell whether those lying down were humans or ghosts. Looking at it, Sumu suddenly felt a little dazed. The firelight in front of him gradually became psychedelic, and the feeling of sleepiness surged up. Just when Sumu was about to fall asleep, he suddenly felt someone approaching him again. Sumu shuddered all over and woke up immediately. Who? Sumu shouted loudly and turned around abruptly. At the same time, pull out the ring-headed sword, ready to eliminate the enemy at any time. What? The visitor was startled, he took a few steps back and almost fell to the ground. Su Mu took a closer look and saw that it was Lu Qingqing, Lu Tianlang's eldest daughter. What are you here for? Su Ban asked with a straight face. Lu Qingqing calmed down, and then said angrily. Isn't it because you're dizzy and sleepy, I'm afraid you'll catch a cold and want to cover you with a blanket? Su Mu glanced at the blanket in her hand and said. Thanks. Saying that, Su Mu put away the knife and reached for the blanket. Lu Qingqing also walked forward, trying to pass the blanket to Su Mu. But at the moment of handover, Su Mu's ring-headed sword that was about to be retracted suddenly swung out. The swift and violent knife slashed heavily on Lu Qingqing's neck. Pfft. In an instant, blood spurted out. More than half of Lu Qingqing's neck was cut off, and her head was tilted to one side, with only a few flesh left to barely support it. You. Lu Qingqing's face was covered in blood, and she looked at Su Mu in disbelief, as if she didn't believe that Su Mu would shoot her. Su Mu's face was cold, and he waved his knife again without saying a word. This time, Lu Qingqing's neck could no longer support it. A beautiful head flew high. You can't cut off your head with one knife, and you have to pretend that you are Lu Qingqing. When this Lu Qingqing first appeared, it gave Su Mu a strange feeling. This feeling is very weak. However, coupled with the inexplicable drowsiness that came up before, it was enough to make Su Mu's heart alarm bells. With his energy, how could he doze off during the vigil? It's all weird. There is definitely something wrong with this Lu Qingqing. So he pretended to pick up the blanket and really wanted to eliminate someone with a knife. The fact that the head of Lu Qingqing was not cut off with a single knife further showed that the guy in front of him was definitely not Lu Qingqing. Su Mu slashed with all his strength and could easily decapitate the horse. Not to mention the head of a weak woman who has not cultivated. After two knives, Su Mu didn't take care of the corpse anymore, but looked at the place where Lu Tianlang's family rested before. Seeing this, Su Mu's complexion changed drastically. I don't know when, the scenery around him has changed. Lu Tianlang's family of four disappeared. There was no sign of the hungry people lying all around. And, a thick grey fog rose up at a speed visible to the naked eye. Visibility decreases rapidly. In an instant, it seemed as if Su Mu was the only one left in the whole world. Just when he was in shock, the headless corpse that had been headed just now suddenly moved. It landed on all fours and crawled toward Su Mu as fast as a big spider. In just a trance, this ghastly thing has already come to his face. What the hell? Being startled, Su Mu cursed in his heart, and before he could swing the knife, he punched him directly. Boom! This powerful punch directly knocked the twisted headless corpse into the air. But it did not die, but disappeared into the grey fog. At the same time, there was a rustling sound in the increasingly dense grey fog. Obviously, there are more ghosts approaching Su Mu. At this moment, the visibility of the grey fog is already less than 3 meters. In this environment, it is basically equivalent to half-blindness. Su Mu could only rely on his other senses to try to locate these ghosts as much as possible. 
the ghosts in the gray fog did not directly attack Su Mu. Instead, it surrounded him, walking around constantly, making a strange rustle sound. In such a situation, it is easy for people to panic, panic, and even lose their way. But Su Mu squinted his eyes, and then stood there in a relaxed state, motionless. He stood with a pestle and a knife, his eyes half open and half closed. Those who didn't know thought he was taking a nap. Su Mu thought very clearly that in this kind of environment, taking the initiative to attack is not a good choice. If you attack blindly, you will be found by the enemy. What he has to do now is to be vigilant while relaxing, and to be able to shoot at any time while maintaining a good state. Defensive counterattack, Yu Yu reading is the best choice. In the gray fog, the rustling continued. The chaotic voice made it impossible to judge how many ghosts were surrounding Su Mu. But Su Mu was unmoved, without the slightest fear or panic. Time passed little by little. Finally, the ghost in the gray fog couldn't hold back. A sneaky figure was crawling on the ground, almost touching the ground. Under the cover of gray fog, it circled behind Su Mu and quietly approached. The distance between the two keeps shrinking. Five meters. Three meters. Two meters. One meter. During the whole process, Su Mu didn't seem to notice and remained motionless. However, when the distance between the two sides was only one meter, the ghost was about to shoot. Su Mu moved first. His eyes suddenly burst open, and two rays of light shot out. Die! Su Mu shouted angrily and kicked the back of the ring-headed broadsword on the ground. The ring-headed broadsword swirled and flew over his head like a gust of wind. Precisely nailed the ghost that was about to attack him to the ground. At the same time, Su Mu just turned around. He stepped on the ghost's head with one foot, pulled out the ring sword and looked quickly. A few swords flashed, and the limbs and head of this ghost were all chopped off. In this way, even if this ghost can still move, there is no threat at all. The whole process of beheading a ghost was neat and tidy. From kicking a knife to slicing an adult, it only takes the blink of an eye. An unknown ghost fell into Su Mu's hands like this. After killing the first ghost, seven or eight more popped out of the gray fog. But they were all beheaded by Su Mu. These ghosts are not strong. Their speed is very fast, but their strength is only slightly stronger than that of ordinary people, and their lethality is limited. In addition, the body is tough and the vitality is extremely tenacious. Only by dismantling them can they be completely eliminated. Su Mu checked and found that these ghosts seemed to be transformed from corpses. The Lu Qingqing who wanted to sneak attack on him before was also a skinny and hideous corpse. The reason why he was able to blind Su Mu's eyes should be the use of skills such as illusion. But the bad thing is that even if these ghosts are dealt with, the gray fog around them still hasn't dissipated. It really sucks. Su Mu frowned and whispered, then searched in the gray fog. Live to see people, die to see corpses. No matter what, he couldn't leave Lu Tianlong's family of four alone. Su Mu, who was trapped by the gray fog, seemed to be in a huge labyrinth. No matter how you walk, you can't get out. Along the way, let alone people, I didn't even see a single bird or beast. I don't know how long it took, when a strange voice suddenly sounded. The time has come, the gate of heaven is open. With this voice, the surrounding gray fog receded like a tide. Later, Su Mu was horrified to discover that a dilapidated building appeared in front of him. It was the ruined temple where the previous life was buried. How could this ruined temple appear here? Or in front of you? Su Mu was only ten feet away from it, why didn't he find it at all just now? Su Mu felt a little hairy in his heart, and the ominous premonition climbed to the top. Crunch. When Su Mu's thoughts were confused, the two dilapidated temple doors slowly opened. A cloudy wind blew out, and there was a strange smell of meat in it. Hearing this smell, Su Mu couldn't help but get goosebumps. But soon, his heart was filled with anger. In the temple, five humanoid ghosts surrounded a large vat and devoured them frantically. There were countless bones in the vat, and there were four unfinished corpses. It was Lu Tianlang's family of four. Their eyes were filled with fear, 
their faces twisted together. It seems that I didn't expect to end up like this. Childhood is the most ominous time of the day. Yin Chi reaches its peak, Xiao kills everything, and ghosts run rampant. And this ruined temple is obviously not a good place. Su Mu clearly saw that one of the five humanoid ghosts looked very much like Li Taizhu. At this moment, he vaguely understood. Before the famine, Li Taizhu, who was honest, honest, kind and friendly, suddenly ate his own son, and he didn't even let him go. Now it seems that it is affected by some kind of strange power. Even though Su Mu is only a mile away from a third-rate warrior now. But stepping into this ruined temple will not have any good results. However, the man does some things and some things don't. Lu Tianlong's family was kind to him, and now he was implicated and died here tragically. No matter what Su Mu said, it was impossible for him to just leave. Take. Tread. Tread. Su Mu walked into the ruined temple step by step. The moment I stepped in, I suddenly felt like my whole body was being swallowed by darkness, as if I had fallen into a quagmire. Su Mu's strength was only 50 or 60 percent in an instant. This made his heart sink to the bottom in an instant. What happened next was beyond Su Mu's expectations. The five humanoid monsters were still devouring them frantically, and they didn't seem to notice Su Mu who was not far in front of them. Instead, it was a clay sculpture in the center of the ruined temple. Suddenly, his eyes moved, staring at Su Mu and talking. The blood is strong, and the yin is very heavy. There are still people like this in the world. It's weird. It's a pity that the martial arts cultivation is too low. If it is a first-class martial artist, is it worth it? Cluck. Cluck. As he said that, the shabby clay statue let out a strange smile, and Su Mu's brain tingled as he heard it. What the are you? Although he was ready to die, Su Mu couldn't just die like that. He must come up with more useful information to prepare for the next rebirth. Who knows, after hearing his words, the clay statue suddenly became angry. Presumptuous. I am the Dao Zun, Chirong, you blaspheme. Why don't you give up your flesh and blood to help me refine the Five Elements Corpse Puppet? After all, the Five Corpse Puppets who were still eating flesh and blood just now suddenly turned their heads and stared at Su Mu with a lifeless expression. Su Mu ignored the five ghosts who were obviously puppets. One jumped towards the clay sculpture, and cut off the head with a big knife. Shu. A knife flashed by, but Su Mu did not have a machete. The clay sculpture was clearly right in front of him, and it was like looking at a phantom after cutting it, and it had no effect at all. Breaching Dao Zun, the crime should be punished. The clay sculpture opened and closed its mouth, and a strange voice sounded. At the same time, pale ghost hands stretched out from the ground and walls, grabbing Su Mu from all directions. Fortunately, these ghost hands can be cut. Su Mu swung his sword again and again, severing a lot of ghost hands. However, the movement is still severely restricted. What's worse, the five corpse puppets have already eliminated him. The five corpse puppets in the temple are called the five element corpse puppet by the clay sculpture. There is a world of difference from the stuff out there. For example, the Genjin corpse puppet transformed by Li Taizhu is not only powerful, high defense, and fast. It also carries a strange and cold Genjin aura. After approaching, these Qi of Genjin continuously penetrated into Su Mu's body, destroying his flesh and blood. After half an hour of fighting, Su Mu was completely at a disadvantage. Accidentally, the corpse puppet transformed by Li Taizhu took advantage of it and bit it on the neck. I didn't expect to die in his hands in this life. A helpless thought popped up in Su Mu's heart, and then his consciousness fell into darkness. He is dead again. After Su Mu died, the other four corpse puppets quickly followed suit and devoured his flesh and blood frantically. Bliss this talent allows Su Mu to burn his life, possessing qi and blood far exceeding that of ordinary people. Not to mention that he also practiced martial arts. And Tai Yin made Su Mu possess an extremely strong Yin Qi. These two things that appeared at the same time were not the same, but when they were rarely combined, they became the best blood food for corpse puppets. 
It didn't take a moment for Su Mu's tall and strong body to be eaten away with only a skeleton. There was a strange sound of laughter in the ruined temple. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. It's done, it's finally done. After absorbing these blood food, my five element corpse puppet will be perfected. The laughing dilapidated clay sculpture looks extremely strange. But it didn't notice that the little knuckles of Su Mu's skeleton, which had been devoured, trembled slightly. In the gloomy night, there were bursts of strange laughter from a small dilapidated temple. In this empty environment, it seems very terrifying. But suddenly, a foot stepped in. Immediately afterwards, a middle-aged Taoist priest with a medium stature and an ordinary appearance came. He walked slowly forward, and every time he took a step, his figure flashed more than ten meters away. In just a few breaths, he came to the door of the ruined temple. His arrival stopped the cunning laughter in the temple abruptly. It's you. Why are you sticking to me like dog skin plaster? The clay sculpture was startled and angry, with a vague sense of fear. The middle-aged Taoist stared at the clay sculpture and said with a half-smile, dot. Junior brother, junior brother, if you let you harm the people like this again, where will our Tainijio face be? Look at your current appearance, as well as the few ghosts you have refined under your hands, what are you looking like? Listen to my senior brother's advice. If you cultivate like this, it's better to die early and die early, and start over again in your next life. Wu Wei, Wu Wei. Master gave you a Taoist title, that's right. Saying that, the middle-aged Taoist shook his head again and again, looking like he hated iron. There was also a little contempt in his eyes. Hearing that, the strange clay sculpture's face was twisted and hideous. Apparently he was outraged. But he didn't do it directly, as if he was forcibly suppressing his anger. His senior brother, the Taoist name is King Suzi. Not only is he extremely talented in cultivation, but he is also extremely shrewd. Obviously, Qing Shuzi had already locked onto this Yao Dao junior brother who had turned into a clay sculpture. But he kept waiting. When the Five Elements Corpse puppet devoured Su Mu's flesh and blood and entered the refining stage, it appeared in a hurry. After Yao Dao Wu Weizi betrayed the Tiani sect, he was constantly chased and eliminated, and he had few cards left in his hand. Only these five corpse puppets can be used. But now it is in the advanced stage, and it will take some time before the advanced stage is successful. At this moment, it is his weakest time. Seeing his junior brother's appearance, Qing Shuzi laughed teasingly and said. Junior brother, haven't you recognized the reality? Now you are neither human nor ghost, neither yin nor yang. Let's not talk about strength, even the brain is almost useless. A skeleton demon was born under your nose, and you didn't even notice it. As soon as these words came out, Su Mu was shocked. After his death this time, Su Mu felt a strong yin chi gather around him, turning him into some kind of demon again. I don't know how many times stronger than the little skeleton from the previous life. But Su Mu still didn't have the confidence to defeat the weird clay sculpture in this ruined temple. After all, he didn't even know the details of the other party. So, Su Mu chose to lie still on the ground, waiting for the right moment to make a move. After Qing Shuzi arrived, Su Mu Tsai got a lot of information from the conversation between the two. But he Su Mu continued to hide, and Qing Shuzi's words exposed him. On the other side, Yao Dao Wu Weizi was also very shocked in his heart. He didn't expect that strange warrior just now turned into a skeleton monster after being eaten by all the flesh and blood. And he chose to play dead and lurked under his nose. What makes Wu Weizi feel most uncomfortable is that he really has become a waste like King Suzi said. Otherwise, how could you not even notice this? Qing Shuzi's words broke the peace in the ruined temple. As soon as he finished speaking, Su Mu, who had turned into a skeleton demon, suddenly burst out and eliminated Wu Weizi who looked like a clay sculpture. Many ferocious bone spurs grew on Su Mu's bones, making him look terrifying. In the last life, when Su Mu died, he was just a weak child with insufficient yin. In this life, he is not only eight feet tall and strong in bones and muscles, but under the influence of the talent of Tai Yin, he has absorbed enough yin. Ha ha ha. One after another, pale and ferocious bone spurs flew out of Su Mu's body and shot at the clay sculpture. 
like a white rainstorm. Under Su Mu's attack, the clay sculpture burst, and a crooked and twisted figure flew out of it. It is the essence of Wawazi. Little skeleton demon, how dare you fight me? Wawazi noticed that this skeleton demon was much stronger than usual. But being chased and beaten by such a low-level ghost made him very embarrassed. Especially in front of that despised senior brother. The embarrassed Wawazi couldn't care about the smiling King Suzi standing outside the temple. He decided to use all his strength to destroy this skeleton monster first. Go! With a flick of his skinny fingers, a rotten human head wafting black air flew out of his big sleeve, heading straight for Su Mu. In an instant, black chi shrouded Su Mu. This strange black gas entangled Su Mu's bones like maggots in the tarsus, causing him to be trapped in a quagmire, greatly reducing his strength. The rotten ghost head took advantage of the opportunity to bite on his leg bone. As a martial artist, Su Mu's bones are inherently strong. The incarnation of the skeleton demon queen is more than ten times stronger. And Yin Qi is entangled, ordinary creatures will get seriously ill just by getting close. But I don't know what the origin of this rotten ghost head was, and it bit Su Mu's bones abruptly. Su Mu was furious, his thoughts flew around in his head, and he quickly analyzed the current situation. At this time, there was a demon inside the temple and a Taoist outside the temple. Yao Dao Wuwezi doesn't need to say more. There is a deep hatred between Su Mu and him, and there is only the possibility of a deadly fight to the end. And Qing Shuzi outside the temple is obviously a serious Taoist. I didn't make a move at this time, I just wanted to use Su Mu as much as possible to consume Wuwezi's energy. Even if Su Mu eliminated Wawazi, King Suzi would not let him go. Yu Yu reading. After all, he is a monster now. And eliminating demons and guarding the way is the duty of Qing Shuzi. After a quick analysis of the situation, Su Mu found that if he wanted to survive, he had to eliminate Wawazi and King Suzi in succession. This is obviously impossible. A Wawazi with a great loss of strength can easily hurt him. Su Mu's strength is still not enough in front of these two Nyobi who have been practicing for a long time. Since they are all dead, let's give our lives to fight. A frenzy rose in Su Mu's heart. Kakaka. Kakaka. A strange voice sounded from Su Mu's body. Immediately afterwards, he saw that all the bones on his body were separated. Bones big and small flowed in the air, pointing directly at Wuwezi. Disintegration. Wawazi and King Suzi shouted in surprise at the same time. The skeleton demon is a low-level ghost, its strength is generally weak, and its means are very simple. But they didn't expect that this newly born skeleton demon actually chose to disintegrate in order to play the strongest blow. After this blow, Su Mu's body fell apart and his breath disappeared. The real end will come. But before that, he must make Wawazi pay the price. Roar. Su Mu's lonely skeleton let out an angry ghost howl. Immediately afterwards, he let all the bones on his body and flew towards Wawazi. He is willing to be cut all over, dare to pull the emperor off his horse. Su Mu, don't talk about flesh and blood, don't even want bones, still don't believe that you can't eat a piece of meat from this demon. This is his anger. This simulation ends. Score, G. Dungeon Completion 64%. Points earned, 30. Comment, your short life is only a mere 8 years, and when you start martial arts, your life and death will disappear. Turn into a monster after death and fight back against the enemy. Although you did not succeed in revenge, but let the enemy feel your anger. Hint, if the completion rate is less than 90%, the copy is not completed and cannot be left. Sumu once again returned to the white waiting space. In the simulated world, he fought with all his might and finally hurt Wawazi. Some bones hit Wawazi, deeply embedded in his body, causing damage from within. Seeing the pain and anger on Wawazi's face, Sumu, who had tried everything, finally got a little comfort. Then the ghost fire in the skull's eye socket completely dissipated. Sumu's last blow made him a lot of money. 30 points. A full 30 points. This allows Su Mu to do a lot of things. Wu Wei Zi. 
Su Mu gritted his teeth and muttered a name, his heart was full of killing intent. This demon not only eliminated him twice, but also eliminated and devoured the four members of the Lu family who were kind to him. This kind of dog thief, he can't wait to tear it to pieces. After a few breaths, Su Mu calmed down and found the booklet that recorded the information on skeleton monsters. One credit for this booklet unlocks a page. The last time he returned to the standby space, Su Mu only had one point. After unlocking a page, he only learned about the little monster like Bone Boy. Now, he has 30 points. Enough for him to see it. So, Su Mu unlocked the second page without hesitation. On this page, the recorded skeleton demon is exactly the skeleton demon he transformed into just now. This is a low-level ordinary ghost, there is nothing to say. Su Mu unlocked two more pages. They are still two relatively common skeleton-like monsters, and their strength is mediocre. This is not what Su Mu wanted. After the simulation was reborn for two lives, he basically knew how to use the simulator. The use of the death simulator is to choose the best way to die, so as to transform into a powerful monster. What Su Mu has to do now is to choose a powerful enough skeleton monster. Then figure out what conditions it needs to incarnate. After entering the dungeon for the third time, Su Mu will be reborn from death. With this thought in mind, Su Mu unlocked several pages in a row. Finally, on page 8, he saw the information he wanted to know. Blood Evil Skeleton, an extremely ferocious and terrifying demon. It is the most terrifying and dangerous type of skeleton demon. This line of comment made Su Mu's eyes light up. He hurriedly looked down and carefully pondered the information in the booklet. After some research, Su Mu found that three key conditions were required to incarnate into a skeleton after death. The first condition is that the deceased must be a second-rate warrior. In the early stage of martial arts, there are five small stages. They are refining the skin, refining the muscles, refining the bones, refining the internal organs, refining the blood. Refining skin and muscles, he is a third-rate martial artist. Bone refining, a second-rate martial artist. Refining dirty and blood is a first-class warrior. Only after the body is fully tempered from the outside to the inside can you be qualified to become a more powerful martial artist such as acquired, innate, or even a martial arts master. The blood evil skeleton is extraordinary, and bone strength is the basic requirement. Therefore, the deceased should at least be a second-rate martial artist, who was in the realm of bone refining. Otherwise, don't even think about it. Su Mu thought for a while. In the last simulation, he had been practicing martial arts for half a year, and he was only one line away from being a third-rate martial artist. If you practiced earlier, it shouldn't be difficult to become a second-rate martial artist. He can handle this first condition. The second condition is that the deceased must absorb a sufficient amount of yin qi. It doesn't matter if you die in a land of great yin, or if you have something that increases yin qi, it's fine. Su Mu has the talent of Tai Yin, which can gather a lot of Yin Qi. This condition is easy to achieve, don't think too much. The third condition is that you need a wisp of blood evil energy. As the saying goes, gathering Yin becomes evil. The condensing of evil spirits is very difficult. Not to mention the more special blood evil spirit. Fortunately, Su Mu still has 23 points left. He searched the mall for a while and found what he wanted. Crow's blood small, the blood of the evil beast, the crow, contains a lot of yin and a wisp of blood. Please use it with caution. A small amount of crow blood costs 20 points, and is contained in a small bottle the size of a thumb. After Su Mu bought it, he threw it directly into the portable space. Wait until the next time you die, you can take it out and use it. After some preparations, Su Mu could basically satisfy the three conditions required to transform into a skeleton. In order to make the ghosts and demons that he transformed into after his death more brutal. Su Mu Xia lost the talent of happiness and mourning, and instead equipped it with remorse. Remorseful, the pain of death will be magnified tenfold. Ten times the pain was enough for Su Mu to die with intense resentment and hatred. In this way, the skeletons that have been transformed must be even more ferocious. Even scarier. 
This is what Su Mu thought of after he had a deep understanding of ghosts and demons. Yu Yu reading. Otherwise, he really doesn't know what the talent of remorse is. Wu Weizi, your grandpa Su has come back to find you. After everything was ready, Su Mu took a deep breath and started the third simulation. The simulation starts. Talents, Bliss, Tyene, Resentment. Item, Crow's Blood Small. The simulation began, and Su Mu was born again in that poor village. It was still the three hardworking people. He lost his mother at the age of three and his father at the age of five. Because he was too tall, he was regarded as an ominous person by the villagers, and everyone hated him. However, this time Su Mu didn't stay in the village for long. After burying his parents, he plunged into the barren mountains. In the last life, he learned Shan Shanquan and Lu Jia swordsmanship from Lu Feng. With martial arts close to him, naturally, there is no need to continue begging for food in a small village to survive. For the next three years, Su Mu devoted himself to practicing martial arts. In his spare time, he fights the beasts in the mountains. Not only can he practice martial arts, but he can also devour the flesh and blood of beasts to nourish his own blood. With the experience of the previous life, Su Mu successfully advanced in only half a year and became a third-rate martial artist. It took another year and a half to become a second-rate martial artist. When the famine came, Su Mu had already completed the bone refining, meeting one of the three conditions for turning into a skeleton. The remaining two conditions need to be fulfilled at the time of death. Su Mu mixed into the team of the victims, quietly waiting for Wu Weizi to come to the door. Even though it is the third time to experience famine. But when Su Mu was among the hungry, he could still deeply feel the horror of this disaster. In the last life, he was full of martial arts, and he also prepared in advance. But still died on the way to escape. How many of the victims, who are as dense as ant colonies, can escape this catastrophe alive? On the way, I'm afraid it will be filled with corpses. Thinking of the scene where the corpses piled up like mountains and the hungry people changed their sons to eat, Su Mu couldn't help shivering. This is more terrifying than ghosts and monsters. Or rather, it was such a disaster that eliminated and injured countless people. Only then did all kinds of ghosts and demons breed, and they continued to harm the world. That's all, it's just a simulated world. Why do you think so much? Su Mu shook his head, throwing these chaotic thoughts out of his mind. Counting the time, he has been fleeing the desert for more than a month, and Wawazi should come to him. Coincidentally, just as Su Mu had this idea, a strange grey fog rose up around him. Coming. Su Mu was startled, and immediately regained his energy. In this life, because he has reached the realm of bone refining, his main experience is to temper the flesh. Shanshan Fist has been practiced to the level of mastery. The Lu family's swordsmanship has not only not improved, but has become a lot more rusty. So Su Mu simply didn't bother to waste time to forge a good knife, fighting all the enemies with just a pair of iron fists. This grey fog should be some kind of formation arranged by Wawazi. After rising, the surrounding victims disappeared like last time. In an instant, only Su Mu was left in the whole world. An unspeakable sense of loneliness and horror flooded into my heart. But Su Mu has already experienced it once, how can she be afraid? He was ready, observing every corner of the surroundings. Half an hour later, seven or eight corpse puppets burst out of the grey fog and went straight to Su Mu. Although he lost the ring-headed sword, he was already a second-rate martial artist in this life. With one punch, these low-level corpse puppets can be blown up and turned into a pool of rotten meat. The sound of heavy punches continued, but it soon ended. After cleaning up these corpse puppets, Su Mu stepped on their rotten flesh and continued to walk in the grey fog. He was not in a hurry and kept accumulating strength, waiting for the next explosion. Wu Weizi, who was hiding in the dark, couldn't stand it anymore. After a while, the grey fog receded to the surroundings, revealing the dilapidated small temple. When he saw the broken temple, Su Mu didn't say a word, he kicked forward and smashed the two broken doors. After entering the temple, he didn't stop at all and went straight to the clay sculpture. Wawazi, who was hidden in the clay sculpture, was extremely shocked. 
He didn't know why this strange warrior didn't panic at all when he encountered such strange things, but went straight to his hiding place. Could he be the helper that Tianyi Jiao was looking for? No, even if Tianyi Sect asks a martial artist to help, it must at least be a martial arts master. How could it be possible to find a second-rate martial artist? With that in mind, Wu Weizi didn't hesitate to start. Seeing that Su Mu was about to punch the clay figurine's face, a half-black, half-purple blood mist exploded from the clay figurine's body. Su Mu couldn't dodge in time, and was stained. Fortunately, his heavy punch hit the clay sculpture with precision. The next moment, the clay sculpture collapsed, and Wu Weizi's real body retreated violently. Su Mubin wanted to take advantage of the situation to pursue, but felt that the blood in his body was rapidly declining. In just a few breaths, only the third-rate realm remains. This demonic way is really difficult to deal with. Su Mu scolded angrily in her heart, but she was not surprised. If Wawazi was easy to deal with, he would have been caught by Tai Nijio long ago. He betrayed the Tiani sect and still escaped to this day, of course he has the ability. It's just that after Su Mu cultivated into a second-rate martial artist, he was not willing to die in vain, so he wanted to give him a try. Now it seems that he is still far, far away from killing Wawazi with his martial arts cultivation base. While Su Mu flashed these thoughts, Wawazi had already controlled the Five Elements Corpse puppet to surround him. Among them, there is still Li Taizhu. It's tragic to say, this blacksmith has been dealing with iron tools all his life, and when he died, he was refined into a gold-type corpse puppet. Maybe this is life. Originally, Su Mu could support for a while longer under the siege of the Five Elements corpse puppet. But I don't know if Wu Weizi was taken aback by Su Mu's sudden attack. This time, he was obviously a lot more serious in dealing with him, and he used more means. Except for the rotten ghost head I saw in the last life. Wawazi also threw out purple or black charms from time to time, hitting Su Mu. The power of these spells is very strange. In one of them, Su Mu's left arm grew many twisted granulation buds, manipulating his left arm to attack him. With various means, Su Mu only lasted a dozen breaths before dying on the spot. Damn reckless man! Five elemental corpse puppet, eat him for me! Wu Weizi shouted in exasperation. These days, being chased and eliminated by the people of Tiani sect, he has already held back his anger. Su Mu, all the little second-rate warriors, dared to punch him in the face. This made Wu Weizi's anger completely explode, and he let out a wave of anger. In addition, this second-rate martial artist is very strange. At the same time as the qi and blood are strong, a large amount of yin qi is actually condensed in the body. Such blood food is suitable for feeding the Five Elements Corpse Puppet. After refining the flesh and blood of this second-rate warrior, the Five Elements Corpse Puppet will surely be able to advance smoothly and become one of his cards. Thinking of this, Wu Weizi felt a lot better. He didn't notice at all, Su Mu's mouth bulged slightly. Soon, the Five Elements Corpse Puppet devoured Su Mu, leaving no trace of flesh and blood. But before Wu Weizi could control the Five Elements Corpse puppets to refine these flesh and blood, a figure rushed into his large formation and hurried towards him. The divine power that shrank into an inch reached its limit, and it took half a breath to arrive at the gate of the broken temple. Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm. This person is not someone else, it is Qin Shuzi who is responsible for cleaning up the portal. It seems that King Suzi who suddenly appeared, Wawazi was startled. The Five Elements Corpse puppet needs to refine the flesh and blood it has just swallowed, so it cannot be used. This is when he is at his weakest. But no matter what, Wawazi will not be captured. At the same time, he mobilized his means to block Qin Shuzi and prevent him from entering the temple. While shocked and angry, he said to him. Why are you chasing me like a dog skin plaster? This time, Qin Shuzi lost his composure. He roared anxiously. You idiot, you still have the heart to stop me. You know that your catastrophe is imminent, and you are not far from death. Seeing that Qing Shuzi was anxious, Wu Weizi was not in a hurry. He sneered and said. A catastrophe is imminent. As long as you stay far away, I'll be fine. 
Hearing this, Qing Shuzi's mood is very complicated. No wonder you went astray, it turned out to be so stupid. It seems that good cultivation talent does not mean good brains. Look at what that is. Saying that, Qing Shuzi stretched out his hand and pointed at Su Mu's skeleton. Wu Weizi didn't believe it at first, but just glanced at it a little. But this look made his complexion change drastically. I saw a small bottle hidden between the teeth of the skull. At this time, it had already been bitten, and a strange and evil red liquid flowed out of it, flowing all over the body along the spine. Crow blood. Blood demon skeleton. Seeing this scene, Wu Weizi couldn't help shouting out loud, his whole body was icy cold. Pain. Unbearable pain. This kind of pain goes deep not only into the bone marrow, but also into the soul. It seems that he wants to crush Su Mu's whole person from the inside to the outside, from the soul to the body, inch by inch. The pain was so severe that words could not express it. Su Mu has also died several times, and she considers herself to be strong-willed. But at this moment, when the talent resentment came into play, he fell directly into a state of madness on the verge of collapse. The extremely strong resentment and hatred caused a strong sense of resentment to emerge from his corpse. At the same time, a large amount of yin qi gathered above the su mu corpse, forming a strange vortex that ordinary people could not see. This yin vortex sucked in yin from all directions, and then injected it into the corpse of su mu. Most importantly, he held a vial in his mouth. When the severe pain caused by death hit, Su Mu clenched his teeth and directly crushed the small bottle. The crow's blood contained in the bottle enters the body along the throat bone, and then flows along the spine to form the bones of the whole body. A bizarre skeleton full of blood red, taking shape quickly. The three conditions are complete, and everything will follow. In just a few breaths, Su Mu's corpse turned bloody, and a strong yin and evil aura wafted out. Bloody skeleton, in this world. Kakaka. Kakaka. Su Mu twisted his body and slowly stood up from the ground. Two blood-colored ghost fires were beating in his skeleton's eye sockets, staring at the ugly-looking Wawazi. The strong yin and suffocating qi emanating from it caused the temperature of the entire ruined temple to drop a lot. The Wawazi who was on the top suddenly felt the pressure increase sharply, and there was a feeling of being unable to breathe. At the same time, the formations he arranged around were constantly shaking. It seems that it will collapse at any time. This formation is powerless to trap such ferocious things as Su Mu. The collapse is only a matter of time. All kinds of things made Wawazi's situation extremely bad. He could hardly believe his eyes. How is it possible? How could there be such a coincidence? Wawazi, whose mentality was a little jumpy, shouted. It is not an easy task to turn into a demon after a living being dies. On the contrary, very difficult. Otherwise, the world would have been filled with all kinds of monsters, ghosts, and ghosts. The extremely rare ferocious ghosts such as the blood evil skeleton are even more difficult to form. In front of Wawazi, Sumu turned into a skeleton at an astonishing speed, making him seriously doubt his life. He happens to be a second-rate martial artist. It happened to be devoured into a skeleton by his five-element corpse puppet. He happens to have some kind of weird talent that can gather a lot of yin qi. He happened to hold a bottle of precious crow blood in his mouth, and when he died, he shattered it, making up for the most crucial ray of blood evil. So many coincidences came together to give birth to such terrifying and ferocious ghosts. This probability is probably not much higher than being struck by lightning. And precisely, he was met by Wawazi, and it was at this most critical moment. Thinking of this, Wawazi collapsed even more. And there is a vague feeling that all this seems to be planned in advance. There seems to be a pair of invisible big hands that are controlling and arranging everything. Those who are manipulated include him. This puppet like feeling made Wawazi feel a deep sense of fear inexplicably. But he had no time to think about it. Su Mu, who turned into a skeleton, has already set his sights on him. Phew. A gust of gloomy wind blew, and Su Mu suddenly disappeared. But Wawazi didn't dare to relax at all. 
Instead, his whole body was tense, and he was on high alert. Sure enough, in the next instant, a blood-colored withered bone palm stretched out from the darkness behind him. This blood-colored bone palm appeared too abruptly. Wawazi didn't have time to react, so he was covered by this palm on his face. Ah ah ah. Wawazi couldn't help screaming mournfully, his whole body trembling like a sieve. After the bone palm covered his face, two piercing pains came from the inside and outside. Outside, bone spurs grew on the palm of the bone, piercing into his flesh and blood. Inside, Wawazi's skull vibrated violently and expanded outward, as if it were about to burst open. The blood evil skeleton is indeed extremely ferocious. Su Mu has just incarnated, so he doesn't know much about his own strength and ability. Just relying on instinct, he easily hit Wawazi and brought him to the gate of hell. Seeing that Wawazi was dead, the third person present shot. Evil, don't be mad. Ching Shuzi's face was solemn, he leaped into the temple, and slapped Su Mu with one hand and one palm. Suddenly, thunder roared and lightning flashed. A thunderbolt as thick as an anaconda shot towards Su Mu. Before the thunder came, Su Mu sensed a deadly threat. Leifa is the nemesis of most ghosts and demons. If you are hit by it, you will be half disabled if you don't die. In desperation, Su Mu could only let go of Wawazi. With a flick of his body, he disappeared into the darkness again, disappearing into nothingness. It felt as if a drop of water had flowed into the sea. There is absolutely no trace to be found. You you reading. You rebellious, are you dead? Although the lightning strike forced Su Mu back, Ching Shuzi did not relax in the slightest. While he looked around vigilantly, he asked Wawazi. Although the door must be cleaned up, Ching Shuzi must not let Wawazi die in the hands of the demon. Even his traitor. At this time, Wawazi's face was left with more than a dozen finger-sized blood holes. And the skull swelled, and the head grew a full circle. The double injuries made him unrecognizable and looked extremely terrifying. This kind of injury is placed on ordinary people, even a martial artist with a deep cultivation base is completely dead. But Wawazi is proficient in side-by-side, -side, sorcery and tricks, and there are many kinds of messy methods. Die. I can't die. After a few breaths, Wawazi replied weakly. Then he took out a bamboo tube and muttered to it, as if he was performing some kind of magic. Soon, more than a dozen meat worms crawled out of the bamboo tube, and one by one they crawled onto Wawazi's face and got into the blood hole. There is exactly one blood hole and one meat worm, no more, no less. These worms twisted and wriggled in the wound on his face, which was very disgusting. Or rather, extremely disgusting. But these worms are very magical. First, he ate the necrotic flesh and blood that had been corroded by Ian at the wound, and then spun silk and cocooned on the spot. The small flesh-colored cocoons formed can be integrated with flesh and blood to fill the fatal wound. In a short time, the dozen or so blood holes on Wawazi's face were repaired. Apart from the slightly different color of the newly born flesh, there is no other clue. Seeing this disgusting scene, Ching Shuzi shook his head with some sigh. Junior brother, junior brother, you just like to rely on your cleverness to study some sidelines. You know that what you abandoned is the real good road. If you don't go down the wrong road, why are you here today? The tragic situation of Wawazi made King Suzi feel quite emotional. But the most important thing at this time is to surrender the skeleton. This kind of ghost is extremely ferocious, and the priority of destroying it should be prior to clearing the portal. Anyway, in the eyes of Ching Shuzi, Wawazi has exhausted his means and has no way to escape. The blood evil skeleton has many abilities, one of which is to dissolve in the dark. You can be more vigilant, don't die in the hands of demons, I have to take you back to Efferectification. After instructing Wawazi, King Suzi took out a compass and controlled it silently. Hearing this, Wawazi's face darkened, but he didn't say anything to refute. After being hunted down for such a long time, his strength was only 2 or 3 percent. The worst thing was that the Five Elements Corpse puppet, which had just been refined, fell silent again. Let his strength, which was already greatly damaged, be folded in half again. Wu Weizi knew in his heart that if he was alone, 
he would definitely die at the hands of that skeleton. But when Qing Shuzi surrenders to that ghost, he still has to die. If he wants to survive, he must think of a way. Wu Weizi's eyes rolled around, and one ghost idea after another appeared in his mind. On the other side, Su Mu and Qing Shuzi formally fought. The simple compass in Qing Shuzi's hand exudes a strange rhythm, dispelling a lot of yin in this ruined temple. On the compass, the needle was spinning wildly, and it was impossible to lock the position at all. Seeing this, Qing Shuzi frowned slightly. This newly born ghost seems to be more difficult to deal with than he imagined. At this time, Su Mu, who was hiding in the dark, also had a headache. There is a strange power on the compass in Qing Shuzi's hand. After being aimed at by the pointer, there is a feeling of being bound and locked. Although he didn't know what would happen after being locked, Su Mu knew that such a thing could never happen. So he kept changing his shape and got rid of the lock of the compass. But it's not a problem to keep hiding like this. We must find an opportunity to fight back. A ray of cold moonlight shone down the hole at the top of the ruined temple. A layer of silver and white water gauze was covered on Qing Shuzi and Wuwezi. The two seem to be motionless, but in fact they are tense and ready to act at any time. In fact, as long as the formation arranged by Wuwezi is removed, it will be much easier to deal with Su Mu. Because the formation he arranged is a dark formation, it will give bonuses to the ghosts and monsters in it. But neither Qing Shuzi nor Wuwezi had any plans to cancel the formation. Outside, there are countless hungry people. Qing Shuzi was afraid that after the formation was lifted, the ferocious ghost would hurt those poor people. At the same time, it is easy to be run away by it, and continue to cause harm to the world. In contrast, Wu Weizi's idea is much simpler. He doesn't care about the starving people or the harm to the world. He only cares about himself. Wu Weizi knew in his heart that he was the weakest among the three. Formation is his only geographical advantage. Whether it is Qing Shuzi or Su Mu, they are his enemies. Without this geographical advantage, how could he have a chance to survive? People are unpredictable and ghosts are impermanent. Just as Wu Weizi was distracted for a while, he felt a chill hit his head. The chill instantly penetrated his whole body, making him fall into an ice cave. On top. Wu Weizi shouted loudly and looked up at the same time. Sure enough, a ferocious blood-colored skull attacked him from above. The ghost fire surging in the hollow eyes seemed to burn his soul. Qing Shuzi knew that Wu Weizi's strength was greatly damaged, and when he saw this, he immediately threw a spell. Certainly. He cast a magical power, and the spell immediately burned to ashes. With Qing Shuzi's finger, a spiritual force was bound to the blood-colored skull, making it immobile. Seeing this scene, Qing Shuzi was not surprised. The blood evil skeleton is extremely ferocious. Normally, the immobilization charm makes it slow for a moment at most, how can it be immobilized? Is it? Just as Qing Shuzi had a bad thought in his heart, a chill burst out from behind him, pressing down on his neck like a needle. Not good. Sure enough, there is a fraud. Qing Shuzi's complexion changed greatly. In the darkness behind him, a headless skeleton suddenly appeared. Ten phalanges stretched several times as long, turning into ghost claws and stabbing at him. Qing Shuzi guessed correctly. The skeleton had just fainted a shot just now to distract him. Su Mu's number one target is Wu Weizi. But he is not stupid, he knows that Qing Shuzi is his biggest enemy. So Su Mu separated. Use the feint of the skull to attract Qing Shuzi's attention. Then the headless body launches a real attack, which is bound to hit Qing Shuzi hard. Although he thought of Su Mu's plan, Qing Shuzi had just cast a spell, and it was too late to make a second move. And Su Mu's speed was extremely fast, almost the moment he cast the immobilization spell, he eliminated him behind him. These days, are even the newly born demons so treacherous? An extremely helpless thought popped up in Qing Shuzi's mind. In the next second, ten blood-colored bone claws pierced his body. Oem. After the bone claw was stabbed, a humming sound sounded. A jade pendant worn by Qing Shuzi radiated golden light, shrouding him in it. 
This is a protective magic weapon, and it will automatically activate the golden light spell when it senses a crisis. Under the obstruction of the golden light, Su Mu's blood-colored claws felt a huge resistance. However, it is not insurmountable. When he died, the pain was ten times that of ordinary people, and his mind was in a semi-crazy state after turning into a demon. Now Su Mu just wants to vent the endless rage and resentment, Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm and evil spirits. Wu. Under the agitation of the mind, Su Mu's skeleton actually emitted bursts of whistling, like a ghost howl. At the same time, there was blood on the skeleton. The rich Yin and evil aura corrodes all things and kills all living beings. Finally. With a crisp sound, the jade pendant worn by Qing Shuzi burst, and the golden light that protected him also dissipated at any time. Without any resistance, Su Mu's ten blood-colored bone claws continued to eliminate Qing Shuzi. But the protective jade pendant helped Qing Shuzi win a breath of time. This is enough. I saw Qing Shuzi shrink the ground into an inch, and instantly retreated to the corner of the ruined temple, widening the distance between him and Su Mu. Then he made a trick with one hand and touched his arms with the other, as if he wanted to get some magic weapon. Seeing this scene, Su Mu was very anxious. This middle-aged Taoist priest is very advanced. Although the blood evil skeleton is ferocious and terrifying. But he has just been transformed, and his own abilities have not been thoroughly researched, let alone other things. To put it bluntly, the Taoism is too shallow. If you fight for a long time, you will definitely lose. This chance, which was created with great difficulty, is most likely the only chance for Su Mu. When this Taoist priest recovers, it will be his death. At this moment, anxiety, anger, pain, unwillingness. Emotions rushed in like a tide at the same time, constantly impacting Su Mu's sanity. Amidst the turbulent thoughts, a thought suddenly appeared in Su Mu's mind. Crush the bones of his hands. Crush the bones of his hands. Without both hands, this bull nose can't cast spells. As soon as this idea came up, it rose like wild grass. All of Su Mu's attention was concentrated on Qing Shuzi's hands. Smash. Twisted. Destruction. Words full of tyranny popped out of Su Mu's mind. He was roaring wildly in his heart. A strange invisible force emerged, leaning on Qing Shuzi's hands. Crack. A crisp sound. The bones of Qing Shuzi's hands suddenly twisted strangely. Some parts of the bones even shattered. Without the protection of spiritual energy, the bones of Qing Shuzi's hands would have all been shattered into bone powder. This injury is nothing serious. But in this situation, it is fatal. It's over. Qing Shuzi was shocked in his heart. Just as he was about to use his means, he was interrupted by this sudden injury. Su Mu seized this momentary opportunity and deceived himself to come to Qing Shuzi. In the next instant, ten blood-colored bone claws pierced into his body. Then, the crazy spread. The blood-colored bones grew like vines in Qing Shuzi's body, reaching into every corner. His flesh and blood and vitality were constantly destroyed and destroyed. Senior brother, you. This scene shocked Wu Weizi to the extreme, and even the word senior brother subconsciously shouted out. Although he didn't admit it, he was very clear in his heart. Qing Shuzi's talent is much stronger than his, and his strength is even more so. But at this moment, the strong and wise senior brother in Wu Weizi's heart was planted in the hands of a ghost who was born not long ago. Even if this ghost is one of the best skeletons among skeleton ghosts, he still finds it unbelievable. Hey! The boat capsized in the gutter. Qing Shuzi sighed helplessly. This skeleton is really weird. It was as cunning as an old ghost when it was born. It's even weirder in terms of strength. It's really unheard of for me to have mastered the ability to control bones in such a short period of time. Could it be that there are geniuses among ghosts? In just a few words, Qing Shuzi's vitality dropped by more than half. It is already the phase of dying. But he also looked away. There is no fear of ordinary people when facing death, and the tone of speech has changed back to the previous free and easy and teasing. 
It's just. Somewhat unwilling, somewhat helpless. His quest for the Tao has just begun. Forget it, it's all life. The three of us, one person and one ghost, and one half-human, half-ghost. Today, let's go home together here. Saying that, Ching Shuzi bit the tip of his tongue and spit out a mouthful of rich blood essence. Anyway, it was inevitable that he would die. This Taoist with a high cultivation base also gave up and started to cast spells with his life. Casting magical powers does not necessarily require two hands. It only takes more time to follow the way of Qin Shuzi. After this mouthful of blood was sprayed out, it was immediately suspended in the air. Drops of blood essence twisted and arranged, gradually forming a mysterious spell. Five thunders of EFA. Have you actually been able to use this level of magical power? Seeing this talisman constructed of blood essence, Wu Weizi's face was full of incredulity, and at the same time his eyes were extremely frightened. The thunder method that Qing Shuzi cast just now is the thunder of the five thunders. Just by casting the heavenly thunder curse, Su Mu forced Su Mu to give up killing Wu Weizi and escaped into the darkness. And the five thunders dharma is infinitely more powerful. Only by cultivating these five kinds of thunder techniques to an extremely advanced level, sky thunder, land mine, navel mine, divine thunder, and social thunder. Only when they are perfectly integrated, can the five thunders dharma be displayed. This terrifying thunder technique is enough to blast Wawazi's formation into ashes. Of course, it also includes everything in the formation. Whether human or ghost. Or a half-human, half-ghost Wawazi. They will all die, and there will be no scum left. That's why he was so scared. Ha <laughs> ha. Originally, Taoism was a little worse. Now that my life is gone, I can still perform it with reluctance. Qing Shuzi smiled weakly, his expression indifferent. Pfft. Trembling, Wu Weizi knelt down in front of Qing Shuzi and prayed. Senior brother. No, senior brother. Let me live. Wu Lei Jingfa is so powerful that he didn't have enough time to escape to a safe place. Only by praying to Qing Shuzi can there be a chance of life. But it is obviously impossible. Qing Shuzi glanced at Wu Weizi and said sympathetically. You're a living method, why don't you come with me, go on the road with peace of mind. The conversation between the two made Su Mu feel bad. He retracted the bone claws inserted into King Suzi's body, took a step backward and disappeared into the darkness, and quickly fled to the distance. It's too late to even get the fixed skull. But in the next second, the blood essence talisman was formed, and five thunders like giant dragons fell from the sky. The originally dark sky was illuminated like daytime. The formation arranged by Wawazi shattered at the touch of a touch, and instantly turned into nothingness under the bombardment of the five thunders. This magical power, which incorporates all of King Suzi's spirit, is the strongest move he displayed at the cost of his life. Qing Shuzi looked up at the dazzling thunder light with a satisfied smile on his face. Then, endless lightning engulfed him. And the Wawazi on the side also turned into scum in endless fear. Boom boom. The thunder fell and the earth trembled. Su Mu, who had just escaped a few hundred meters away, only survived a thousandth of his life, and was engulfed by a sea of thunder. Looking around, it was full of lightning. Nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide. His blood-colored bones were shattered and turned into dust. Comparable to Tian Wei. After the last thought flashed through Su Mu's mind, his consciousness fell into endless darkness. Yu Yu reading. Obviously, he died again. This simulation ends. Grade, F. Dungeon completion, 91%. Points earned, 60. Comment, your short life is only a mere 8 years, but after your death, you turned into a ferocious ghost, and the two stronger ones you forced went to perish together. Under the inherent conditions, you have almost reached the limit. Tip 1, if the completion rate exceeds 90%, the dungeon is over and cannot be re-entered. Return to the real world in 3 minutes. Tip 2, Everything in the simulator cannot take effect in the real world. Dungeon Completion Reward 1, you can choose one of 10 random talents to permanently cure, and it will be automatically carried in future dungeons. 
Dungeon Completion Reward 2, Congratulations on getting the Demon Template Blood Demon Skeleton, this ability can be used in the real world. After regaining consciousness again, Su Mu was already in the standby space. The dungeon is 91% complete. Back to the real world. It turns out that as long as the completion of a copy reaches more than 90%, will it be completely finished? Su Mu was a little dazed. The great pain caused by remorse has subsided, but the feeling of being mad and violent due to the severe pain is still a little bit left. In addition, this copy he lived three times, a total of 24 years. Although life is very sad, but somewhat reluctant. For example, accepting him as a disciple and treating him better than his own son Lu Feng. Phew. I don't want that anymore. Let's take a look at the benefits after the copy is completed. After a while, Su Mu calmed down and started sorting out his gains. After a while, Su Mu calmed down and started sorting out his gains. First, he got 60 points. With these 60 points, Su Mu doesn't plan to move for the time being. After opening the new copy, he will arrange the consumption method according to the situation of the copy. Anyway, the talents and items in the dungeon cannot take effect in the real world, and it is useless to spend it now. Secondly, Su Mu can choose one of 10 talents to permanently solidify, and he will automatically carry this talent when he enters the dungeon in the future. After thinking about it for a while, he chose Reproach. It is true that this talent will bring him great pain in death. But Su Mu has already figured out how to use the death simulator. The so-called death simulator is to choose the most correct method of death in each death and become a terrifying monster. Presumably in the next dungeon, he will also face a mortal situation. It is destined to happen to be transformed into a demon after death. And the talent of resentment will make Su Mu full of resentment and hatred in the great pain, making the incarnation of the demon even stronger. So, this talent is very useful. It is estimated that every subsequent copy can be used. In comparison, the other nine talents are not very good. After solidifying the talent, the Rayal highlight comes. Su Mu's biggest gain in the last dungeon was the demon template of the bloody skeleton. Solidifying the monster template is the only core function of the death simulator. Without this ability, the so-called emulator is just a more realistic game console. Su Mu opened the system panel and read it carefully. Monster template, bloody skull. Note, you will have all the abilities of the bloody skeleton, and you can switch states between humans and demons at will. Looking at the words on the system interface, Su Mu's eyes flashed, and he was very excited. This is the biggest gain. The talents and items in the simulator cannot take effect in the real world. Only the monster template can be brought to the real world. In other words, Su Mu in reality suddenly has another identity, the blood evil skeleton. After so many years, I almost forgot my true identity in the post-traveling real world. It's time to go back. After tidying up, exactly three minutes passed. Su Mu's eyes darkened, and his consciousness returned to his body in the real world. Well. As soon as he returned to the real world, a rotten stench entered Su Mu's nostrils, causing him to frown in disgust. The place where Su Mu was located was a dark and dead prison. And Su Mu is the death row in this prison. Here is the real world. However, only three days after Su Mu crossed over, he activated the simulator. Then he was brought into the simulation space and lived in a copy world for three times for a total of 24 years. At this time, he suddenly returned to the real world, and he had to recall his relevant information. Su Mu, a native of Yanjing, Yongzhou, age 16. My father died in battle at an early age. Leaving orphans, widows and mothers to depend on each other. It's just that my mother has always been frail and sickly, but this time, she suddenly became ill after hearing the news that he was put on death row, and soon passed away. In other words, in the real world, he is still an orphan. Recalling this, Su Mu couldn't help laughing at himself. The virtual world is an orphan, and the real world is also an orphan. It seems that he is really a born protagonist. However, Su Mu is now on death row, only one step away from dying. As for why he was put on death row. 
Thinking of this, Su Mu turned his attention to the other person in this cell. This is a burly man with a full beard, taller than the burning life and frantically growing Su Mu in the dungeon world. However, this burly man was covered in injuries. Moreover, the wounds were not treated, and most of them had already rotted and festered. A few meters away, Su Mu could smell the rotten stench. This person's name is Su Kongwu, the brother of Su Mu's father. After Su Mu's father was eliminated in battle, he entrusted him to take care of Su Mu and the other orphans and widows. Su Kongwu lived up to his father's blessing before his death, and took good care of Su Mu's mother and son. After leaving the battlefield, he placed Su Mu's mother and son in Yenjing, the most prosperous capital of Dagon, and moved his household registration. Afterwards, Su Kongwu, with his military exploits, took the position of a hundred guards in the city of Yenjing. Su Mu's talent in martial arts is not good. After cultivating for ten years, he is barely a third-rate martial artist. But Su Kongwu still tried his best to bring him into Jinyui and became a small flag officer under his command. A high-ranking military attaché must have the corresponding strength. Su Mu's martial arts cultivation is the limit of being a small flag officer. Misfortune also comes because of this. This year is the 46th year of the apocalypse, and the saint is already old. In the past two years, the struggle for succession has intensified. The entire Yanjing is turbulent and murderous. Su Tsongwu's immediate boss didn't know what he did, but he actually involved the matter of seizing the air. This is a catastrophe. The man was shot dead on the spot. All high-ranking officials under his command were put on death row. Just like that, Su Kongwu and Su Mu's uncle and nephew were thrown into the death row with a blank look on their faces. At first, I didn't even know what happened. Yu Kanshu. Bu Kanshu. Kam only found out after being tortured. Perhaps Su Mu was too weak, no one thought he would know any secrets. So luckily escaped. Su Kongwu did not succeed. He was beaten to death several times, but he couldn't ask anything. After making sure that Su Kongwu didn't know anything, those cruel officials let him go. But there's only half-life left. Worst of all, the remaining half-life would be hard to keep. People are on death row, sooner or later they will die. The relatives passed away and there was no hope of survival. Probably for these two reasons, the predecessor died silently in prison. Fortunately, after Su Mu came, holding the simulator in his hand, he finally had hope of life. With the demon template of the skeleton, I still can't believe that I can't escape a death row. Su Mu's face was firm and hopeful. However, before escaping, he had to figure out how much power the blood demon skeleton template brought him. Su Mu thought about it, and blood red bone claws appeared from the tip of his right finger. That color is exactly the same as the blood evil skeleton. Thinking again, all the flesh and blood on Su Mu's right arm faded away, revealing a bone. Su Mu felt it carefully, and then the flesh rose again, covering the bones. Almost in the blink of an eye, Su Mu returned to normal. Except for him, no one knows what kind of terrifying skeleton is hidden in his body. It seems that I have indeed inherited all the strengths of the Shuesha skeleton, and I can switch forms at will. It's just. I haven't figured out the abilities of the blood demon skeleton, so I have to think about it. In the simulation world, not long after Su Mu transformed into a skeleton, he was bombarded to death by Wu Lei Jinfa. This caused him to be unfamiliar with his own abilities. When fighting against King Suzi and Wu Weizi, he basically used his instinct to make moves. Su Mu thought about it carefully, and summed up the major abilities of the skeleton. First of all, the blood evil skeleton is extremely hard, moves as fast as the wind, and shoots quickly and ruthlessly. From the physical level alone, the blood evil skeleton has the basic attributes of a first class warrior. This is still its least worth mentioning ability, because the rest are extremely special abilities. For example, the blood evil skeleton can hide in the dark, making people nowhere to be found. This ability is not just stealth. Instead, it restrains all breaths, almost disappearing. This ability is coupled with extremely fast speed, and it comes and goes without a trace. It's very terrifying. 
Furthermore, the blood evil skeleton can control its own bones, extending and separating at will. The bone claws that emerged from the fingertips just now are the bones extended from Su Mu. In the end, it is the ability that forced Qing Shuzi, Su Mu and Wu Weizi to perish together, bone control. The blood evil skeleton can not only control its own bones, but also the bones of others. In fact, when Su Mu was born to attack Wu Weizi, he subconsciously used this ability. When Su Mu's bone palm covers Wu Weizi's face. At the same time, he extended bone spurs from the palm of the bone and plunged into Wu Weizi's face. At the same time, the skull that controls Wu Weizi swells outward, making his head extremely deformed. In the early stages of mastering this ability, you need to touch the target before you can use it. But Su Mu's talent is quite high, and Qing Shuzi put too much pressure on him. At a time of crisis, he actually learned to control his bones from the air. Only in this way did he hurt Qing Shuzi's hands and interrupted his spellcasting. This incredible learning speed even made King Suzi feel that Su Mu was an extremely rare genius of demons. To sum up, in addition to the basic attributes, Su Mu currently has three special abilities of the blood demon skeleton. They are, hiding in the dark, controlling their own bones, and controlling the bones of others. Su Mu felt that the blood demon skeleton should have other abilities, but he just needed to dig it out slowly. Overall, after turning into a skeleton, Su Mu's strength surpassed that of a first-class warrior by a lot. An ordinary first-class warrior, Su Mu should be able to eliminate him with a single face-to-face. -face. But Su Mu wasn't complacent about it. The water in this world is very deep, very deep. Above the first-class warriors, there are more powerful warriors such as acquired and innate. I can't reveal my abilities, otherwise I will definitely get eliminated. Besides, Qin Shuzi's Taoism is very high, and I don't know what level he belongs to among the Qi refiners. There are warriors and Qi refiners in this world. Each of these two paths has its own advantages and strengths. Su Mu knew very little about Qi refiners. But Qing Shuzi's thunder technique is really terrifying. Left a deep impression on him. If Qing Shuzi's strength is only in the middle of the Qi cultivators, then Su Mu will have to be more careful when he encounters Qi cultivators in the future. Fortunately, according to the memory of the predecessor, there are very few Qi refiners in this world. I don't know when it will happen next time. Now, let's think about how to get out. To be precise, he took Su Tsongwu's family to escape. With Su Mu's strength, it is very easy to leave this death row. But if you want to rescue Su Kongwu, plus his wife and daughter, it will be very difficult. Must plan well. Just as Su Mu was pondering how to rescue Su Tsongwu's family, footsteps sounded. In the darkness, three jailers walked slowly. The man in the lead put a sumptuous meal in front of the cell and said coldly, Su Mu, a death row prisoner, eat this last meal well, and you're on your way. Su Mu glanced at the meal and knew it in his heart. A bowl of white rice, a large piece of braised pork, half a fat chicken, half a plate of peanuts, and even a pot of warm wine. This meal is considered a sumptuous meal in a restaurant, let alone in this death row that sees no light. The answer is ready to come out. This is a bowl of galosh. The movement outside the prison door awakened Su Kongwu. After seeing the decapitation meal, Su Tsongwu's eyes were wide open and his expression was extremely painful. He supported his severely injured body, climbed to the door of the prison, stretched out his hand and grabbed the trousers of the jailer, and pleaded. Don't eliminate him, eliminate me, eliminate me. Please, don't eliminate him. Go away. Don't even look at your cheapness, it's not your turn to be headed. The jailer kicked Su Kongu away and spat in disgust. Normally, noon is the time for execution. That hour is the most violent time of the day. It can suppress yin and evil spirits, and prevent the breeding of ghosts and ghosts. At this time, in the middle of the night, he was in a hurry to drag Su Mu out and beheaded, which is really unusual. Needless to say, it must have been some official son who committed the crime and wanted to find a scapegoat. In the middle of the night, we can reverse black and white and confuse right and wrong. As for why Su Mu was chosen instead of Su Kongwu, the reason is very simple. 
First of all, Su Kong Wu is a hundred households, and there are many people who know him. Secondly, his age, stature, and that young man are incompatible. Forcibly impersonating is quite risky. Not only is Su Mu more in line with age and physique, but also both parents died, without relatives or reasons. Who knows him? Who remembers him? If you die, you will die. This kind of person is the best to be used as a scapegoat. When Su Kong Wu was in pain, Su Mu silently brought in the decapitated meal. Fu Ji Lu's roast chicken and braised pork, it's a good thing. Uncle Su, come. Try it. Su Mu smiled and tore off a chicken leg and handed it to Su Kong Wu. But Su Kong Wu had no intention of eating, he said with a face full of guilt and remorse. I promised eldest brother that Yu Yu reading will take good care of your mother and son. How? How could it be like this? If you hadn't been brought into Jinui and promoted to a small flag officer, this would not have happened. It's all my fault. I. I'm sorry big brother. Su Kong Wu was deep in guilt, trembling and muttering to himself. Seeing this, Su Mu sighed helplessly. He knew that persuasion was useless, so he simply ate the roast chicken with big mouthfuls. After a while, half of the roast chicken entered his stomach. Su Mu smacked her lips, feeling not full. So, he poured some braised broth on the rice, and in three or five mouthfuls, he stripped off the rice overnight. After eating, Su Mu stepped forward, patted Su Kong Wu, and comforted. Uncle Su, don't worry, I'll be fine. By the way, eat the rest of the braised pork and the pot of warm wine as soon as possible. I'll be back soon. Don't wait for me to come back, you haven't finished eating these things yet. Hearing these words, Su Kong Wu and the three guards outside the cell were stunned. Return. The matter of beheading, how can I come back? After being stunned for a moment, the lead jailer sneered. Come back. It's almost the same. Open the door and take it away. The prison door opened, and Su Mu, who was wearing a heavy shackle, was taken out. Before leaving, Su Mu turned around and smiled at Su Kong Wu, saying. Uncle Su, hurry up and eat. Don't wait for me to come back and not finish eating, it won't be good. After all, Su Mu walked into the distance under the of the three jailers and gradually merged into the darkness. The night is silent, and it is difficult to distinguish between people and ghosts. It's a good time to reverse black and white. Su Mu was escorted by three jailers to a remote private execution ground. In the darkness, two tall figures swayed slightly. One sharpens the knife, and the other waits in place. These two are the executioners responsible for the execution. One teacher, one apprentice. The executioner has three rules, commonly known as the three no's. Don't sharpen the knife, don't turn a hundred, don't look back. Executioners do not sharpen their knives. So, the person who sharpens the knife is the apprentice. The real executioner was the man who stood still. Lu Dao, someone brought it here, hurry up and do it. The jailer escorted Su Mu to the executioner Lu Dao and urged him. Su Mu glanced at Lu Dao, then smiled lightly. For some reason, this ordinary smile made Lu Dao feel a chill in his heart. He had a vague hunch that this didn't seem like a good job. But when I thought of the reward that the grandfather gave, and the pregnant wife at home, Lu Dao could only bite the bullet and go on. If you don't want your unborn son to continue in this line of work, you can make a living by fishing the V. Then he must do this vote. Thinking of this, Lu Dao heaved a sigh of relief, took the ghost-headed sword from his apprentice's hand, and led Su Mu to the execution site. Kneel down. Lu Dao pushed a handful of Su Mu, but Su Mu did not move at all, like a stone pillar. This made Lu Dao's sense of uncertainty in his heart even stronger. On the body. Su Mu was sixteen years old, thin and thin, only about seven feet tall. And Lu Dao is seven feet eight inches tall, with a strong physique, at least the size of two Su Mu. On cultivation. Su Mu reluctantly stepped into the ranks of third-rate warriors. And Lu Dao was a third-rate warrior more than ten years ago. Although he was stuck at the gate and couldn't advance, 
he was much stronger than Su Mu. But when he pushed, he didn't push Su Mu. What a strange thing. When Lu Dao's heart palpitated, Su Mu turned around and grinned at him, saying. Let's cut it like this, the bones are so hard that I can't kneel down. By the way, I'm in a hurry, you have to hurry up. You. Su Mu's handsome face, in Lu Dao's eyes, had an inexplicable sense of terror, which made him have the urge to run away. But the prison guards who were watching from a distance didn't feel this way, and they urged him when they saw it. Lu Dao, hurry up and stop the ink. It's the same for standing and kneeling. I'm in a hurry to use his corpse to deal with him. Hurry up, it's cold at night, wouldn't it be better to finish work early and go home? It was the first time that Lu Dao, the executioner, was repeatedly urged like this. In this situation, he couldn't take care of it so much, and the ghost-headed sword in his hand was raised high. There is an injustice, a debt, and a master. Don't be surprised. After saying that, a flash of knife light flashed and went straight to Su Mu's neck. Brush. Blood splattered, and Su Mu Deheo's head flew high. After landing, he rolled a few times before stopping. Strangely, even though the heads were separated, Su Mu still had that faint smile on his face. It seems that he is still alive. It's just that the lights are dark here, and no one has seen this terrifying scene. Clap clap clap. After the execution was over, the leading jailer clapped a few times and praised. As expected of Lui Dao, who is one knife-headed and never makes mistakes. Okay, this is alive, let's go. Having said that, the jailer gave the two of his men a wink. The two of them understood in their hearts, lifted Su Mu's body and walked to one place, not knowing where to go. Lui Dao always felt that this errand tonight was full of strangeness. After finishing the work, he and his apprentice left separately, just wanting to go home quickly. The streets at midnight are empty. Only Lu Dao walked alone on the road. The cold night wind made him feel even more chilled. For some reason, Lu Dao always felt that the execution just now was a little different from usual. Is there anything unusual? Thinking about it, it seems a little weird. When the knife was first dropped, it was very difficult, and it felt like it couldn't cut. But it soon became smooth. It was as if the neck was deliberately cooperating with him. How could someone who was beheaded cooperate with the executioner? As if he had this idea, could it be possible that he could still control his own bones? The more Lu Dao thought about it, the more strange he felt. Suddenly, an image popped out of his mind. He finally knew what was really wrong. Bones. It's the bone of the death row prisoner just now. At the moment of the owl's head, Lu Dao saw Su Mu's neck bone through the lights in the distance. From the inside to the outside, the blood is red. This scene flashed by, so he didn't pay attention at first. At this time, when I think about it, I realize that there is an abnormality. That kind of blood is definitely not the result of being stained with blood. His bones were originally full of blood. No, no. How can human bones be blood-colored? I must have read it wrong, it must be. Don't think about it anymore, go home quickly. The more Lu Dao thought about it, the more creepy he felt, and he quickly shook his head and denied his own thoughts. Now he just wants to go home quickly, take a brazier, take a shower, and get rid of the bad luck. Thinking of this, Lu Dao quickened his pace. But not too far out, a gust of wind suddenly hit him. Lu Dao trembled, and his face turned pale. He felt that something was leaning over behind him. This feeling made Lu Dao's scalp numb, only to feel a chill crawling onto his shoulders like a poisonous snake. He really wanted to look back and see what was behind him. However, following the rules, beheading and returning home can't be turned back. Some ancestral teachings and business rules have to be believed in the work of catching the V. Lu Dao gritted his teeth, resisted the urge to turn back, and walked forward desperately. But what he didn't expect was that the terrifying thing had just begun. After walking for a while, Lu Dao's right shoulder sank suddenly, as if something fell on his shoulder. Immediately afterwards, a cold and strange voice sounded beside his ear. Su Mu is dead, Su Mu is dead. Remember, remember. 
The voice was close to Louis Dao's ear, like whispering. He suddenly felt cold all over, and his heart almost stopped beating. In the darkness, out of the corner of Louis Dao's eyes, he could vaguely see something on his shoulder. But he didn't dare to turn his head to look. Don't look back, don't look back. Louis Dao gritted his teeth and kept repeating the rules in his mind. At the same time, pretending that she didn't hear anything, she continued to walk forward. But the voice didn't let him go. Seeing Louis Dao pretending not to hear, the voice became even more gloomy. Su Mu is dead, do you remember? This bright question, Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm made Louis Dao, the executioner who had eliminated countless lives, tremble. It seems that he really hit the evil. At this moment, Louis Dao passed by a puddle. With the reflection of the moonlight, I could just see the situation on my shoulders. What Louis Dao stopped on his shoulder turned out to be a strange blood-colored human head. Judging from the appearance, it is clearly the person he just beheaded. Remember, remember. Remember. Louis Dao was terrified, and his voice was trembling, almost inaudible. Fortunately, after he answered, his shoulders lightened immediately. The chill like a maggot in the tarsus also disappeared. After walking for a while, Louis Dao finally came to the door. As soon as he entered the house, he collapsed to the ground, cold sweat soaking through his clothes. Hearing the news, his wife who had been waiting for him all night hurried out. Seeing this scene, I couldn't help but ask worriedly. Xiao Gong, Xiang Gong, are you all right? Did something happen? Louis Dao turned to look at his right shoulder. There, there is an obvious blood stain. Obviously, what happened just now was not an illusion, but really happened. Master, what happened? Seeing that her daring husband in the past was so frightened, Louis Dao's wife was very worried. Don't come here, bad luck. Louis Dao did not let his wife approach, then stared blankly at her slightly bulging belly, and murmured. The knife is sealed, the knife is sealed. In this filthy and chaotic world, how can you tell whether it is a human or a ghost? On the other side, two jailers carried Su Mu's body and walked in the dark. The little boss leads the way, and doesn't need to do these physical tasks. Along the way, the three of them chatted one after another, sneaking away from their busy schedules. The second son of Lu's family, how many times has this committed a crime? Hey! They put in a good baby and have a good father, do you have one? Let's work honestly. That's what I said. Does the prince and general Xiangning have a seed? Maybe one day Laozi will become prosperous. Just you. You don't even look at how much you weigh. Okay, let's talk less. After we've done this, let's go play in the Golan, and the account will be mine. Ha! Huh. Brother Gua is so arrogant. I. Wait, where's the head of this corpse? Why is the head missing? Eh. Yes, where's the head? Ah. While chatting, the two people behind suddenly screamed. The jailer turned his head and looked around, he almost didn't get scared to urinate. I saw that the headless corpse actually moved. A bone claw pierced a head, and two claws directly eliminated the two jailers who were carrying him. Ghost. Ghost. The little leader of the jailer screamed in fright, and fled towards the face, rolling and crawling. But before escaping a few steps, a blood-colored skeleton suddenly appeared in front of the empty place. The distance between the two was too close, and he fled too fiercely. One didn't stop and slammed into it. When hit, a skeleton full of blood remained motionless. In the distance, a skull head flew quickly, he grabbed it in his hand, and pressed it on his neck. In this way, a complete skeleton is put together. This scene scared the little head of the jailer into a fool. He looked at Su Mu, who had turned into a skeleton, with a dull expression. Now, Su Mu doesn't want to waste time with him anymore. With a wave of his hand, the neck bone that controlled him was broken into several pieces, killing him in an instant. After a few breaths, Su Mu eliminated the jailers. This is just the beginning of his plan. This is the capital of Dagon, Yanjing. There are countless strong men, and masters such as forests. It is not easy to rescue Su Tsongwu's family. 
If Su Mu directly robbed Su Kongwu and rescued Su Kongwu, the city would definitely be troubled, and he would not be able to get out of Yanjing at all. So Su Mu had to come up with a plan. He deliberately obeyed the executioner and became a dead man after beheading. In this way, after the incident, if you look down, you won't be able to find him as a dead man for a while. If it wasn't for Su Mu's deliberate cooperation, how could a third-rate warrior cut his neck? Just now he divided his head to warn the executioner, just to make him be more honest. Su Mu felt that he seemed to have noticed something, and it was impossible to guarantee that he would not go out and say anything without intimidation. Now, the first step of the plan is complete. The next thing to do is to go to jail. A gust of cold wind blew, and Su Mu disappeared in place. He blended into the darkness and quickly ran towards the death row where Su Kongwu was being held. This prison is located in the northern corner of the city, which is quite remote. In the prison, there is a warden of a first-rate warrior, and several wardens of second-rate warriors. Second-rate warriors are not in the eyes of Su Mu. So after returning to Qingbei prison, he went straight to the warden. In a rather luxurious room, a sturdy rough man lay on the bed and slept soundly. There are leftover delicacies scattered on the table beside. Suddenly, his facial muscles twitched, and he suddenly opened his eyes. Who? The wardens Wa Mingcheng shouted loudly, looking very nervous. A strong sense of crisis awakened him from his sleep. Looking left and right, there was no figure. But the sense of crisis in Zhuo Mingcheng's heart not only did not subside, but instead became stronger. Damn it! What the is going on? A trace of cold sweat left on Zhuo Mingcheng's forehead. He was tense all over, he didn't dare to relax in the slightest, and was ready to attack the enemy hidden in the darkness at any time. To be able to cultivate into a first-class martial artist, Zhuo Mingcheng is naturally not a piece of trash. But the opponent he is facing today is unusual. The candlelight flickered slightly. Suddenly, a blood-colored skeleton appeared behind Zhuo Mingcheng hanging upside down, with two claws hitting both sides of his waist. Su Mu appeared too suddenly. And it was silent until the moment he appeared. Even a first-class warrior can't react. What? With a scream, ten blood-colored bone claws, like short knives, plunged into both sides of Zhuo Mingcheng's waist. Zhuo Mingcheng suffered from this heavy blow, but he did not lose his fighting power. With bloodshot eyes in his eyes, he roared and turned around and punched him. This punch hit Su Mu's chest. But before being hit, most of the bones in his chest receded like water, avoiding the blow like running water. What the is this? Zhuo Mingcheng was stunned and horrified when he saw this scene. But what happened next was even more bizarre. Before he could take back the punch, the bones that had given way just now quickly gathered together. And it grew crazily like a vine, and climbed up Zhuo Mingcheng's body along Zhuo Mingcheng's arm. Zhuo Mingcheng felt horrified and tried to pull out his arm despite the severe pain in his waist. Run away. He must get out of here. This ghost is obviously not something he can deal with. We have to call the people from the town magic department quickly. But Zhuo Mingcheng was about to withdraw his arm when Yu Yu read WW. Bukanchu. There was a sour bone cracking sound in Kam's arm. For some reason, the bones of his arm were twisted randomly, twisted into a twist. Ah ah ah. The enormous pain made Zhuo Mingcheng unable to bear it any longer, and he screamed mournfully. But his pain didn't last long. The heavy injury to his arm caused Zhuo Mingcheng's energy and energy to collapse, and his body's internal defenses had been lost. The ten bone claws pierced into his waist spread wildly and quickly destroyed all his organs. The bones that climbed up to his body along his arms also pierced into his vitals one by one. The light in Zhuo Mingcheng's eyes quickly dissipated. Then the breath was cut off. In less than ten breaths, Su Mu easily eliminated a first-class warrior. The opponent didn't even resist in a decent way, and only punched from start to finish. After this battle, Su Mu had a general understanding of his own strength. But he didn't feel how powerful he was, instead he felt that the Taoist priest Qing Shuzi was really a bit ruthless. I don't know if the characters in the simulated world really existed. If there really is someone like Qing Shuzi, 
if he can live to this day, I don't know what level of strength he will reach. Su Mu was a little surprised. At the same time, Su Mingqing's screams attracted the other jailers in the death row. Su Mu didn't say a word, just started killing. There is no good person from the top to the bottom of the jailer in this death row. All of them are cruel officers. It is the minion of a certain big man. Killing them is actually killing the people. Maybe you can also accumulate some yin virtue. Su Mu, who has transformed into a skeleton, is like an unstoppable ghost. Even the first-rate warriors could not stop him, let alone these second- and third-rate warriors. For a time, the entire Beijing prison screamed and screamed in terror. Some people give up their resistance and wait to die in place. Some people are unwilling to do so, and they fight to the death. Some people were running around, trying to escape. But no matter what they choose, these jailers will meet the same fate. Soon, the upper floors of Beijing prison became quiet. All the jailers were slaughtered by Su Mu. After the killing, he did not leave immediately, but destroyed the fatal wounds on these corpses. This can make it impossible for people to check what moves these jailers died in, and confuse people as much as possible. After doing this, Su Mu's flesh and blood returned, regained his human form, and then entered the basement floor without any haste. Below, is the place where death row prisoners are held. Brother, I'm sorry for you. I didn't take good care of my sister-in-law and Xiaomu. I'm sorry for you, brother. Before he got close, Su Mu heard Su Kongwu crying full of self-blame. It seems that he still hasn't eaten the wine and meat. Sure enough, when he walked to the door of the prison, Su Mu saw Su Kongwu burying his head in the corner. The braised pork and warm wine were still there, untouched. Su Mu sighed helplessly and said. Uncle Su, didn't I tell you to finish your meal quickly? Why haven't you moved a mouthful yet? Hearing this voice, Su Kongwu suddenly raised his head to look at him, his face full of disbelief. Xiaomu, you. Haven't you been dragged out and beheaded? It's just a few prison guards, but I can't do anything about it. Uncle Su, hurry up and eat. I'll take you out after eating these wine and meat. Su Mu couldn't explain to Su Kongwu what happened to him, so he could only give a vague answer. Seeing that Su Mu wasn't dead, Su Tsongwu's guilt and self-blame were mostly gone. After thinking for a while, he shook his head and said eagerly. Xiaomu, I'm seriously injured, leave me alone. Get out of here quickly, and escape as far as possible. Also, the warden of this death row is a first-class warrior, you must be careful when you go out. Su Kongwu urged Su Mu to flee quickly, but he slashed open the shackles of the prison door with a single strike and strode inside. After walking into the cell, Su Mu brought the wine and meat to Su Kongwu, shook the golden sore medicine in his hand, and said. Now, there are only prisoners left in this death row. I have eliminated all the jailers, including the warden. Well, this bottle of medicine was found in the warden's room. Hearing this, Su Kongwu was shocked and stunned. You. What do you mean? They are all dead. Su Kongwu couldn't imagine that he used to be a nephew with a weak personality and not very good martial arts. To have the ability and courage to do such a thing. This is really. So good. While giving Su Kongwu medicine, Su Mu comforted him. Uncle Su, don't think about it, just listen to me. After I save you and settle down, I'll save Auntie and Xiaoxue. Anyway, just follow my arrangement. Hearing Su Mu mentioning his wife and daughter, Su Tsongwu's eyes moved slightly. Although he didn't know how Su Mu did it, he could hear a strong confidence in Su Mu's words. Maybe. He really can. A glimmer of hope rose in Su Tsongwu's heart. He didn't think about it anymore, and ate the wine and meat in big mouthfuls. After all, he is a second-rate martial artist with a solid body. After eating wine and meat, and briefly treating the wound, Su Tsongwu's state immediately recovered a lot. Su Mu untied the heavy shackles on his hands and feet, and you took out two sets of clothes that came from outside. After the uncle and nephew changed into their prison uniforms, they quietly left the death row. After reaching the ground floor, the strong aura made Su Tsongwu's heart tremble. 
this nephew of me is very murderous. But in this world, there is no place for weak and honest people. This death row is like purgatory. All the guards, all the evil spirits in the world, do not know how many prisoners they tortured to death. There is no way out. It's better to eliminate the dawn. Xiaomu, I know that there is a sparsely populated Ijuan nearby, where can we hide? It is good. After leaving the prison, at Su Tsongwu's suggestion, Su Mu quietly sneaked into a righteous village. This is the most remote place in Yanjing city, otherwise Ijuan would not be set up here. Hide for a few days, and no one will find out at all. Uncle Su, you are here to recuperate and rest well. I'll go save Auntie and Xiaoxue. After Su Mu settled down and Su Kangwu was about to leave. Seeing this, Su Kangwu grabbed him and said in a trembling voice. If you can save it, you can save it, if you can't save it. Just save yourself. Remember, your life is the most important thing. Hearing that, Su Mu didn't say anything, just patted his hand, signaling him to be at ease. Then one jumped up and disappeared into the darkness. After leaving Yizhuang, Su Mu did not go directly to rescue Su Tsongwu's wife and daughter. Instead, he returned to the death cell in the north of the city and quietly opened all the prison doors. Soon, some prisoners discovered this. That's all. After a few prisoners sneaked up to the upper floor, they found that all the guards had been eliminated. In other words, they can leave here unimpeded. The great news almost stunned these death row prisoners. They cheered and excited. Soon, these death row prisoners escaped one by one, each to a different place. No one noticed that in the darkness, there was always a pair of eyes watching them. After all the death row prisoners left, Sumu walked out of the darkness. He cleaned up the scene and removed all traces that might have exposed him and Su Kongwu before leaving with peace of mind. The release of all death row prisoners is also part of the Sumu plan. If only he and Su Kongwu escaped, then the goal is too obvious. Su Mu first turned himself into a dead man, and then released all the prisoners on death row. In this way, he can muddy the water and buy him some time as much as possible. It's a pity that the prisoners in this death row are all second and third rate warriors, and there are no good players. And they were all half death by torture, and their strength was low. If there is no outsider to support them, it won't take much time to capture them. Five days. Su Mu must rescue Su Tsongwu's wife and daughter within five days, and then find an opportunity to leave Yanjing City. Otherwise, it will be difficult. Su Mu didn't waste any time. After leaving the death row in the north of the city, he went straight to the place where Su Tsongwu's wife and daughter were imprisoned. Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm. Su Tsongwu's wife Du Wanrong and daughter Su Qingxue were implicated by him and were thrown into a women's prison. After a while, he will be sent to the Jiaofang division, and he may even act as a prostitute. Either way, the fate is extremely tragic. In my memory, this aunt was very kind to me. Su Mu can't let such a tragedy happen. However, after Su Mu infiltrated the women's prison, there was no trace of Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue. After some investigation, it was discovered that the two of them had just been sent to the Jiaofang division during the day. Damn! Su Mu had a headache. If he was still in prison, he only needed to do what he had done before to save Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue. But being sent to the Jiaofang division would be troublesome. It's not that I'm worried about what will happen to them. After all, the official prostitutes in the Jiaofang division need training before they can take up their jobs. It's still too early for them to start their jobs. However, once you join the Jiaofang division, it will be troublesome to rescue. Jiafangsi is located in the most prosperous area in the east of the city, with dense crowds and singing every night. Forcibly rescue the two, there will definitely be a lot of noise. At that time, let's not talk about saving them, maybe even Su Mu himself will be there. Even if they were barely rescued, how would they escape from Yanjing city? Under the circumstance of being targeted, trying to escape from Yanjing with two weak women and a wounded person is a fool's dream. As for redemption, it is even more impossible. Entering the Jiaofang division does not mean that one can redeem oneself by redemption. 
Besides, Su Mu has no money either. For a time, the rescue plan came to a deadlock. Facing such a deadlock, Su Mu had a headache. But no matter what, we have to find Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue first to ensure their personal safety. Yanjing city is very big, and the east and north of the city are vastly different, like two places. At this time, it was already the fourth watch, and there were almost no people on the streets in the north of the city. But the east of the city is very lively. Taverns, tea houses, and brothels are all brightly lit. The tune of the silk and bamboo orchestra and the sound of drinking in a hearty mood are constantly introduced into Su Mu's ears. The entire east of the city exudes an unbearable aura. The prosperity here has caused Su Mu a lot of trouble. He could hardly find a dark place to hide, let alone sneak into the Jiaofang division. I stayed up until the fifth watch, and when the sky was getting bright, it stopped a little. Su Mu found an opportunity, successfully infiltrated the Jiaofang division, and found Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue. The two of them were doing some rough work with tears on their faces. Looking at his expression, he was obviously full of fear and anxiety about the future. But fortunately, people are still safe, and no accident happened. The question now is, how to get them out so that they won't be hunted down. This is an extremely difficult problem to solve, and Su Mu can't think of a good idea for a while. In desperation, he could only hide in the dark, always staring at Secretary Jiaofang. I hope I can think of a good way or find a good opportunity. However, things did not go smoothly. Su Mu squatted for a day, but still had no clue, so he couldn't help but feel anxious. He tried to change his mind. For example, first determine the method of going out of the city. Then she forcibly took Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue away. In the end, before chasing him, he escaped directly from Yanjing city and left this place of right and wrong. But if you think about it, it won't work. Yanjing city is heavily guarded, and with a few women, children, and the wounded, do you still want to forcibly leave the city? How can it be so easy? The more Su Mu thought about it, the more headache he felt. But at this moment, the opportunity to save lives came. The second day, the third watch. Three mysterious people suddenly appeared in Jiaofang. The three of them were dressed in strong black suits, and they were all fighters while walking. And it seems to be from the same organization. After entering the Jiaofang division, the three of them were unimpeded and easily took Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue away. Obviously, these people have a lot of backgrounds. Su Mu, who was hiding in the dark, narrowed his eyes slightly after seeing this scene, and thought quickly in his heart. What is the history of these people? Why did you take Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue away? What are they trying to do? With such a question, Su Mu quietly followed. The three black-clothed warriors took Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue all the way to the northern suburbs of the city. It is remote and sparsely populated. Most of the night, there was no one there. Being taken to such a desolate place late at night, Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue were filled with fear and anxiety. Next, the conversation of the three black-clothed warriors made them even more terrified. TSK TSK, it's a pity to eliminate such a beautiful woman like this. Small is not bad, she's a beauty. Almost mean, I guess it will take a few years to grow. I still like beautiful women, he he. Chatting and chatting, the two black clothed warriors let out a wretched laugh. But it was immediately stopped by the person in the lead. With a gloomy expression, he shouted. Do you two want to die? What should you do and what should not be done? and you want me to teach you. The two who were reprimanded smiled awkwardly and explained with a dry cough. I know, I'm just joking, how dare I act indiscriminately in action. Head to head, I wouldn't dare to take me a few dares. Hearing this, the leader of the warrior's complexion recovered a little, he waved his hand and said. It's alright, alright, let's do things quickly. There are still a lot of goals waiting for us to deal with. To make. After agreeing, the two black-clothed warriors pulled out their long knives and looked at Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue with murderous expressions. This scene made Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue fall into deep despair and fear, and their faces turned pale. 
these people brought them out to find a remote place to eliminate them. Mother! Su Qingxue cried out with a cry, and buried her head in her mother's arms, her body trembling slightly. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, it will be fine, it will all get better. Du Wanrong hugged her daughter tightly, gently stroked her head, trying to comfort her as much as possible. Du Wanrong didn't know what these people came from and why they wanted to eliminate them. After being thrown into prison, their world fell into endless darkness. All Du Wanrong can do now is to comfort her daughter and make her less afraid before she dies. The picture of the mother and daughter hugging each other and crying will not make those warriors in black feel pity. It's a pity. One of them still muttered something regretful, and then he waved his long sword, about to slash his head. The other person also slashed out with a knife. Seeing that Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue were about to fall to the ground, a sudden change occurred. In the darkness, two blood-colored bone claws suddenly appeared and grabbed the necks of the two black-clothed warriors. Before the long knives in their hands fell, there was a blood hole in their necks. Ah uh, ah! Uh. The long knives in the hands of the two fell powerless covered their necks in pain, fell to the ground and died. Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue's mother and daughter are saved. Who? This sudden change made the person in the lead change his complexion dramatically, and his heart was terrified. He took a closer look and saw a man walking out of the darkness. There was no flesh on his palms, only blood-colored bones. Very weird. Su Mu stared coldly at the opening he deliberately left, and said with murderous intent. That's what I want to ask too. Who are you? Why did you come to eliminate these two weak women? Facing Su Mu's questioning, the black-clothed warrior rolled his eyes, paused for a moment, suddenly jumped, and fled into the distance. The three black-clothed warriors have different cultivation bases. The two eliminated by Su Mu in one move were second-rate warriors. The one who escaped in the end was a first-class warrior. After the first-class warrior at the head came back to his senses, he immediately understood that he was definitely not Su Mu's opponent. His two subordinates can at least make ten moves under him. Even if it is a sneak attack, it cannot be won in three moves. And this mysterious man eliminated two of his subordinates at the same time in one move. The gap between the two is too great. So the leading warrior turned around and fled without hesitation, only regretting that his parents didn't give birth to two more legs. Seeing this, Su Mu was not in a hurry to chase after him. Because before he started to eliminate, he controlled a little phalanx to separate from his palm and landed on the man. Through this little phalanx, Su Mu could sense his position. This person has been locked by Su Mu. Xiao. Xiao Mu. Is it? Is that you? The mother and daughter, who were hugging and crying, carefully raised their heads and glanced at them after hearing the movement outside. As a result, I saw a familiar figure. Seeing that the three black-clothed warriors were running away, Du Wanrong summoned the courage to ask a question. Du Wanrong's recent experience made Du Wanrong tremble with fear, and she could not rest for a moment. Live in fear all the time. Just now, she thought everything would end here. Unexpectedly, he was actually rescued before he died. And listening to the voice, it is very similar to my unrelated nephew. This gave Du Wanrong a glimmer of hope. It's me. Auntie, are you all okay? Su Mu asked aloud while walking towards them. Wu. Bro. After confirming that the person who came was Su Mu, Su Qingxue, who had been crying before, whimpered and slammed her head into his arms, sobbing in a low voice. This kind of experience is not something she, a thirteen-year-old girl, can bear. After walking on the line of life and death for a while, it was not bad that he was not scared and collapsed. Okay, okay, it's okay, everything is over. You are safe now, I will protect you. Su Mu lightly patted the girl's back and comforted her softly. After some comfort, Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue's emotions gradually stabilized. Afterwards, Su Mu sent them to the village where Su Tsong Muzang lived. This righteous village is in the north of the city, not far away. Soon, their family was reunited. The moment he saw his wife and daughter, Su Tsongwu's excitement was beyond words. 
After the family of three talked to each other, Su Kang Wu looked at Su Mu, his eyes were extremely complicated. He did not expect that Su Mu, who had been hiding under his wings in the past, had grown to this point. Affected by this calamity, Su Mu single handedly supported them. Xiao Mu, you have really grown up. You are better than your father and me. Su Kang Wu was very pleased. But soon, he asked worriedly. Since our family has been reunited, why don't we find a chance to leave Yanjing City? Su Mu shook his head and said with a serious face. Recently, Yanjing City has been heavily guarded, and it is difficult to leave. You guys hide here for a while, I'll go do something, maybe I'll find a way to leave. Hearing this, Su Kang Wu didn't ask any further questions, just nodded. He chose to trust Su Mu unconditionally. Under the worried and reluctant eyes of Su Tsong Wu's family, Su Mu left Yizhuang. Anyone who can be saved, Su Mu has already saved them. However, things are far from over. Su Mu and the others bear trumped up charges. More importantly, Su Mu had to figure out who was behind them. Moreover, they will be cut down by the roots, and even the wife and daughter will not be spared. How could such an enemy make him feel better? Wait, wait for me to find you. The murderous aura in Su Mu's body was solid. After leaving Yizhuang, he merged into the darkness and ran quickly in one direction. That direction is where the fleeing black-clothed warrior stopped at the end. Thinking about it, it should be the nest of their organization. No matter how bad it is, it has to be a small den. On the other side, Lin Chingan ran wild after escaping. He was the black-clothed warrior that Su Mu deliberately let go. After running wildly, Lin Chingan fled into a small alley in the south of the city. These alleys are intricate and intricate, like a maze. He wandered around and came to a courtyard. In the courtyard, there is a seemingly ordinary well. Lin Chingan jumped into the well, followed a secret door at the bottom of the well, and came to a secret palace hidden deep underground. If you hadn't seen it with your own eyes, who would have thought that there would be such a large underground palace under this ordinary courtyard? Obviously, the owner of this underground palace has amazing power and financial resources. Otherwise, it would be impossible to create such a building. In order to ensure that no one was following him, Lin Chingan walked around outside for a long time. At this time, he finally returned to the underground palace safely. He couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief, leaning against the wall and breathing heavily. Ha! Huh. Lin Chingan, why are you back now? Are all the tasks completed? An old man who came out of the underground palace saw Lin Chingan and asked in surprise. Judging from the old man's posture, it should be the leadership of this mysterious organization. Facing the old man's questioning, Lin Chingan shook his head, panting and said. Come on. Something happened. Just as we were about to solve the two targets, a weirdo jumped out. He is powerful and fierce. He eliminated the Wang brothers in an instant. I ran away desperately, so I saved my life, so I can come back and give you the old news. Hearing this, the old man frowned and said with some doubts. It's weird. Recently, the crown prince was punished and locked up, and the eldest princess was arrested by us again. Who would dare to oppose us? Also, this person eliminated the Wang brothers as soon as he shot, at least he is the top player among the first-class warriors, and he may even be an acquired warrior. In front of such a master, why did you escape and scathed? Lin Chingan was afraid that the old man would misunderstand, so Yu Yu reading quickly explained. His purpose may be to save those two people, so he didn't come after me. By the way, that person doesn't know what kind of evil kung fu he has practiced. His hands have no flesh and blood, only blood-colored bones are left. It's very strange. Wait, what did you say in the second half of the sentence? The old man seemed to have discovered something, so he eagerly asked. I said, the man's hands had no flesh and blood, only blood-colored bones were left. After listening carefully, the old man's face showed a look of horror. He stumbled back several steps, pointed at Lin Chingan's shoulder and asked in a trembling voice. Yes. Is it such a bone? Ah. Uh, what? Hearing this, Lin Chingan turned his head to look at his shoulder in a daze. 
After only one glance, his pupils shrank violently, his expression extremely terrified. On his shoulder, there is actually a little finger bone. And it was still wriggling, like a living thing. It was also because of the squirming that he climbed onto Lin Chin'an's shoulder and was discovered by the old man. This little phalanx seems to have a mind, and it exploded immediately after being discovered. Only a whoosh sound was heard, and a ray of blood flew towards the old man. Although this old man had a higher status than Lin Chin Gan, he was a civilian and had no martial arts skills. He was terrified in his heart, but he couldn't do anything. In the next instant, there was already a blood hole between his eyebrows. The little phalanx shot through his head like a bullet. Elder Zheng. Seeing this scene, Lin Chin Gan let out a whimper with a pale face, and his heart was cold. He seems to. Brought the enemy to the underground palace. Enemy attack. Enemy attack. With the death of old man Zheng, there was a shrill scream in the underground palace. Coincidentally, Lin Chin Gan wasted a lot of time circling around. After he returned to the underground palace, Su Mu just caught up. After sneaking into the underground palace, Su Mu controlled the little finger bone to eliminate the old man, and then returned to his body. At the same time, the flesh and blood of his body faded, and he turned into a skeleton. It's time to eliminate. The strength of this organization is very good. There are more than a dozen first-rate warriors just outside the underground palace, and the rest are second-rate warriors. But in front of the skeleton, the number of people doesn't have much effect. There are many dark places in this underground palace, which are suitable for Su Mu to fight. Sometimes he appears, sometimes he hides in the dark. The guards who were involved were frightened and disoriented. He had no idea where Su Mu would appear. And every time Su Mu makes a move, he will take away several lives. After a few times, these guards were completely defeated, and they no longer had the will to fight. In their eyes, Su Mu is an extremely terrifying monster, and it is not a human-powered confrontation at all. Almost everyone fell into fear and ran around crying. These people in the underground palace are knives in the hands of some big man. I don't know how much blood they have been contaminated with and how many innocent lives have been eliminated. If Su Mu is incompetent, he and Su Tsong Wu's family will also die at the hands of these people. Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue were almost beheaded. So, in the face of these minions, Su Mu showed no mercy. Cut out all of them one by one. With the passage of time, the crying became less and less, until it disappeared completely. Outside the underground palace, there is still a living person left, and that is Lin Chingan who led the way for Su Mu. Su Mu released the state of the blood evil skeleton and returned to human form. Then he walked slowly in front of Lin Chingan, staring at Lin Chingan condescendingly. Looking at Su Mu who came from the mountain of corpses and the sea of blood, Lin Chingan's spirit completely collapsed. He collapsed to the ground, his eyes were dull, as if he had been frightened. In the end, he provoked something. The entire underground palace was destroyed by a group because of this. Tell me, who are you? Su Mu looked at Lin Chingan indifferently and asked the same question. He asked this question when he met Lin Chingan for the first time. However, at that time, Su Mu only eliminated two people. After questioning Lin Chingan, he chose to run away. But now, Su Mu came here on the mountain of corpses and the sea of blood, with murderous aura condensed like a substance. It even made Lin Chingan's skin feel tingling. The most important thing is that his consciousness has been defeated by Su Mu. Same problem, different result. This time, Lin Chingan did not escape, nor did he even have the courage to resist. He poured out all the things he knew like a bean in a bamboo tube. From his mouth, Su Mu learned part of the truth. The owner of this underground palace is the third prince of Dagon. The organization hidden in it is called the Dark Hall. Usually help the third prince to do some dirty and dirty deeds. Lin Chingan didn't know what was involved in Su Kongwu and Su Mu, and they were thrown into death row. He only knew that His Highness the Dark Lord sent out a list today and asked them to eliminate the people on it. Among them are Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue. After explaining everything he knew, Lin Chingan raised his head, 
looked at Su Mu with a pale face, and pleaded with a trembling voice. Can. Can you let me live? Hearing this, Su Mu smiled. The unjust soul who died tragically in your hands also asked you like this. And you have already given the answer. Saying that, Su Mu put his hand on top of his head. With a muffled sound, Lin Chang'an's skull burst and died in endless despair. The third prince, Li Hongxiu. After arranging these small fish and shrimp, Su Mu muttered a name with cold eyes. Dagon's current struggle for succession is mainly about the crown prince and the third prince. It's just that Su Mu has too little memory about the third prince, he only knows that this person is a ruthless character, and there is almost no specific information. According to the current clues, it was this person who put the two of them on death row, and also wanted to secretly get rid of Du Wanrong and Su Qingxue. Su Mu didn't know what conspiracy caused them to be affected. I don't want to know either. Now, he just wants to eliminate this third prince. Thinking of this, Su Mu turned his attention to the deeper layers of the underground palace. He could sense that there were people inside. Although there are not many, but the breath is many times stronger than these people outside. These are the high level, or core personnel of the Dark Hall. I am coming. Su Mu's eyes were cold, and he strode towards the depths of the underground palace. At this time, in a secret room deep in the underground palace. A beautiful woman with gorgeous clothes and delicate features was tied to a chair. Although she was tied up, the woman looked indifferent and looked at the people around her with a slightly lazy look, without the slightest panic. Besides her, there are four other people in this secret room, all of them are kidnappers. A short old man with a hunched body and a face like a civet cat. A white-haired old woman, holding a cane, her eyes sullen. A sturdy man with an open shirt and as much hair as a bear. The last person was a young man dressed in blue. This person is personable and looks like a noble boy. He is also the talker among the four young master Tsing Yi respectfully said to the tied woman. It is really helpless to invite the eldest princess here. I hope the eldest princess will bear with me. As long as you are willing to cooperate with my master, I will immediately bow to you and apologize. You can step on our body and leave if you want. This kidnapped woman is actually the eldest princess Li Lingyan. It can only be said that the third prince is indeed daring. Of course, he is not reckless. As long as he didn't appear at the scene in person, who would dare to say that he kidnapped the eldest princess? As for the dark hall. If something really happened, just change the knife. Hearing the words of the young master in Tsing Yi, Li Lingyan glanced at him casually, and said lightly. Don't waste your words. If you have anything, ask your master to come out and tell me in person. What are you guys? How can you be qualified to talk to this palace? After these words, the faces of the four people who were speaking were a little ugly. The white-haired old woman took a few steps forward and said sullenly. Little girl, do you know who I am? How dare you talk to me like this? I've peeled no less than a hundred pieces of tender skin like yours. Would you like to try it on? Facing the threat of the white-haired old woman, Li Lingyan didn't even bother to look at her, she leaned back on the chair and said lazily, dot. Of course Ben Gong knows who you are. You are the third dog's dog, or an old dog. You. The white-haired old woman was furious, trembling slightly with anger. If she hadn't had any scruples, she really wanted to eliminate Li Lingyan now. Look at the face of the princess, how different it is from ordinary women. Just when the white-haired old woman was extremely angry, the short old man on the side suddenly changed his expression and shouted, Dot. Something's wrong, my baby smells blood. And it's a very strong smell. While speaking, a huge centipede crawled out of the small old man's arms. Two fingers thick, three feet long, and there is a red line on his back. It looks a little scary. This red line centipede was restlessly crawling around on the old man's body. It seems to be longing for flesh and blood, but because of fear of something, it makes it not dare to leave the master. That's why I'm so restless. A strong smell. What do you mean? Young master Tsing Yi frowned, and immediately asked a question. This operation has a huge impact, so you must not make any mistakes. 
The little old man comforted the red-lined centipede and explained gloomily, dot. There should be an accident outside, and many people died. Hearing this, the white-haired old woman asked in a puzzled way, dot. Are you saying that there were enemies breaking in? The prince was locked up, could it be from the eldest princess? No, it's only at this time, they can't find it here, and they may not even find that the eldest princess is missing. This secret room is very closed and defensive, but the disadvantage is that it loses contact with the outside world as soon as the door is closed. As a talker, the young master in Tsing Yi waved his hand to signal everyone to stop, and then said to them. Don't think about it too much, you'll know if you go out and take a look. Having said that, he turned and left. Prepare to open the door of the secret room to see who is so daring, even the dark hall. Although the outer layer of the underground palace may have been breached by the enemy, the four of them did not panic at all. These four are all warriors from the innate realm. Just pick one, and you can destroy those low-level warriors in the outer layer of the underground palace. They are the core strength of this underground palace. Who would have known that, before young master Tsing Yi opened the door, a loud bang exploded from the door of the secret room. A huge force slammed the door of the secret room fiercely. It made the entire secret room shake, like an earthquake. This blow made the four of them look at each other with a serious look on their faces. This guy outside. Seems a little unusual. The first loud bang was just the beginning. Followed by countless loud noises. The door of the secret room exploded again and again as if being bombarded by heavy artillery. The huge force kept pounding the door of the secret room, making the people in the secret room feel like the ground was shaking. The short old man, the white-haired old woman, the majestic man, and the young man in blue. They are all ready to meet the enemy who is about to break in. Just the strength, the enemy outside the door is enough to cause them to be heavier. What's more, there is a condensed evil spirit drifting in, making them feel like a on on their backs. Finally, the door to the secret room burst open with a continuous loud noise, turning into pieces of gravel and flying around. Afterwards, the four innate warriors saw a ferocious blood-colored bone claw resting on the door frame. This blood-colored bone claw is extremely huge, five times as big as the palm of an ordinary person. The sharp claws of the roots are like sharp war knives, and people who see them tremble with fear. Approaching, a skull with ghosts in its eyes came in, and I seen strange eyes swept across the four of them. Anyone who is targeted by him will feel a chill to the bone. The enemy outside the secret room is actually not a human being. What the is this? The white-haired old woman's complexion changed slightly, and her eyes were very fearful. I saw that the body parts of this skeleton were similar to human bones, but the whole body was blood red. But its two arms are sturdy and huge, and they are almost as big as the body when added together. It gives people a feeling of being full of murderous intent. I haven't seen it before, maybe it's some kind of skeleton monster. How did it get into the underground palace? The short old man frowned, vaguely feeling that something was wrong. Why do you care so much? Take it apart. Skeleton monsters are the weakest. The majestic man didn't care. He clenched his fists tightly, and a khaki shimmer appeared on his body, giving him a heavy sense of power. Don't be careless. Come on together and eliminate it. It is good. Young Master Tsing Yi is quite cautious. After an order was given, the four of them went to eliminate the intruding skeleton demon together. The skeleton demon who broke into the door was naturally Su Mu. He could sense that there were several powerful warriors in the secret room that he had never encountered before. So before entering the door, it is fully opened, and more bones are attached to the arm. That's how it became its current form. This is also the strongest form of Su Mu. Tonight, he wants to fight happily. The cultivation of a martial artist begins with skin refining. Skin refining, muscle refining, bone refining, visceral refining, blood refining, step by step, refining the physical body. After all the tempering is completed, the innate qi deep in the body can be stimulated, so that the qi can be released. According to the purity and strength of gang qi, it is divided into two great realms, innate and acquired. 
The four people in the secret room of the underground palace are all warriors in the innate realm. Among them, young master Tsing Yi is the strongest, a martial artist in the middle stage of the innate. Yu Yu reading. The other three are all in the early days. Among the three, apart from the majestic man, the other two probably won't have a chance to break through in this life, and will always be stuck in the early innate. The third prince probably wanted to get some heavenly and earthly treasures from him, so that he could get a slim chance for advancement. Say now. Perhaps it was to express himself so that he could get more rewards from the master. Or maybe it's just because of recklessness. In short, the majestic man was the first to eliminate Su Mu, and his fist with a yellow light slammed toward Su Mu's bone claws. Su Mu's martial arts cultivation is too weak, so he doesn't know what level of martial artist these people are. But he could feel a sense of crisis from the fist of this majestic man. Since the opponent is strong, he can't be beaten passively. Su Mu waved his huge bone claws and attacked fiercely. When the fists and claws intersected, a loud bang exploded, and the ears of those around were buzzing. If this is an ordinary person, the aftermath of this fight alone can shatter his internal organs. After the collision, the majestic man stepped back three steps in a row, his face a bit ugly. At the moment of Su Mu's fight, two nail-like bones extended from the soles of his feet. He plunged into the ground and helped him stabilize his body. This scene changed the expressions of the other three. This majestic man specializes in cross-training Kung Fu. Among the four, he is the strongest and the strongest. But he actually suffered a loss in the head-to-head -head encounter. What is the origin of this demon? So strong. Shouldn't the skeleton monster fall apart after just two steps? This is unreasonable. Although they were shocked, the other three did not stop and continued to eliminate Su Mu. Seeing this, the majestic man reminded loudly. Be careful, this monster twisted my bones, don't come into contact with it. In fact, in the collision just now, he did not suffer in terms of strength. But at the moment of contact, a strange force actually reached the bones of his fist face, twisting his bones. If it weren't for the majestic man's strong muscles and bones, this one blow would have destroyed his fist, and even wiped out the bones of his palm. This ability is too weird and terrifying. Hearing the reminder from the majestic man, the other three knew what they knew, and they didn't dare to have any contact with Su Mu again. Of course, the martial arts that the three of them practiced were not the kind of ways to get in close contact with their opponents. I saw the little old man jumping above Sumo like a flea, hanging upside down on the top of the secret room, and exhaling a mouthful of poisonous smoke. Initially, this black-green poisonous smoke was only a small ball the size of a fist. But with the rapid expansion, it expanded a hundred times and turned into a large cloud of smoke that enveloped Sumu. After being enveloped in poisonous smoke, Su Mu felt a burning corrosion. But not strongly. Su Mu realized that his poison resistance seemed to be very high. So he ignored the poisonous smoke and slapped the little old man above his head with a claw. How is this possible? This scene made the little old man pale in shock. He specializes in poison art, and he has practiced it to a state of ecstasy. It is true that most poisons have no effect on demons. But his poisonous smoke can corrode even stones, so why can't it melt bones? Although he was shocked, the little old man did not forget to escape. He lowered his body, ready to jump to another place. But just as he was about to move, he felt a sharp pain in his legs, and a sound of bone cracks was vaguely heard. Among the four, this short old man had the weakest bones and bones, and was the only one who could be injured by Su Mu Gakong's bone control. Su Mu directly shattered part of his leg bones. The sudden bone injury made the short old man's eyes wide open, and his eyes were actually terrified. Oops. He screamed in his heart, very desperate. In normal times, this kind of injury is not serious, it will only make the movement slower. But in this situation, it is fatal. The injury to the leg bone suddenly slowed the little old man's dodging speed. Su Mu's huge bone claws, opened like an upside-down umbrella bone, enveloped him. Although he was very desperate, how could this little old man be willing to die like this? At the critical moment, he shouted fiercely, 
and a few huge poisonous insects flew out of his body, nailing them on Su Mu's bone claws. Among them is the red line centipede that crawled out earlier. These poisonous insects are extremely terrifying, they corrode through his bones in an instant and drill into the interior. But Su Mu didn't care about this at all, and continued to slap the little old man with a paw. How could a few poisonous insects affect him in a short period of time? My life is over. The little old man howled miserably. In the next second, all the bones in his body were shattered, and he was photographed into a puddle of meat. The other three who watched this scene were shocked. This unknown skeleton demon is so terrifying. This made them deeply feel the threat of death. If you lose this battle, you will surely die. Although they were frightened in their hearts, the remaining three knew that they must not back down at this time. Once you back down, your heart will be gone. Then it is really doomed. Town. Young Master Tsing Yi waved his hand, and a black long whip flew toward Su Mu. Taking advantage of Su Mu's efforts to eliminate the short old man, the long whip wrapped around him layer by layer. In particular, the limbs were given special attention and were tightly wrapped. I don't know what material this long whip is made of, it is extremely tough. Su Mu tried it, but he couldn't break free. Young Master Tsing Yi used a long whip to control Su Mu, but the great power passed on made his forehead blue veins burst out, and his originally elegant face became hideous. If it goes on like this, the long whip will not break, but his hand will be broken. Quick! I suppressed it temporarily, and quickly eliminated it. Young Master Tsing Yi shouted at the other two eagerly. The majestic man and the white-haired old woman understood and immediately attacked Su Mu. The first to eliminate was the white-haired old woman. She saw that she took out a sharp, cold sword from her crutch, and stabbed it toward Su Mu's head. As for the majestic man, after straightening the bones of his palm, he roared and eliminated Su Mu again. Don't look at others as tall and big, but their brains are not stupid, especially when fighting. The second punch of the majestic man hit Su Mu's bone claw that was eroded by several poisonous insects. The few poisonous insects that the little old man released before he died were the things he pressed at the bottom of the box. Those who are recruited by innate warriors will be eliminated quickly. Although Su Mu could hold it, those poisonous insects crazily corroded the inside of his bone claws, which made him very uncomfortable. Moreover, the battle was fierce at this time, and there was no time to deal with those poisonous insects. It was this weakness that the majestic man looked at. Young Master Tsing Yi used the whip to control Su Mu. The white-haired old woman slashed at Su Mu's head with a sword. The majestic man punched Su Mu's bone claw, which was plagued by poisonous insects. The three innate warriors worked together to strike with all their strength. At first glance, Su Mu seems to have fallen into an extremely dangerous situation. But the change in the situation often happens in an instant. I saw that the white-haired old woman slashed out with a sword, carrying a sharp sword light and beheaded Su Mu's skeleton head. The power of this sword is no trivial matter. If he was beheaded, Su Mu's skull head would definitely be shattered, and he would be seriously injured if he didn't die. In the eyes of the white-haired old woman, this skeleton demon has nowhere to hide, only a dead end. So when the sword light landed on Su Mu's forehead, a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth. Yu Yu reading. Only because she has seen the dawn of victory. But who knows that the situation will change in the next second. The blazing skull suddenly disappeared. The white-haired old woman's sword did not hit the original target, and could only slash at Su Mu's chest. With a loud banging sound, Su Mu's ribs were cut off in half. This seemingly inconspicuous old woman is a master of kendo, with a terrifying sword energy. The bones of the Shuesha skeleton are extremely hard. This is the first time that Su Mu has suffered such a big trauma. However, the smile on the face of the white-haired old woman was gone, instead it was a deep panic and fear. When she cut out this sword, Su Mu controlled her skeleton head to fly away from her body and went straight to her neck. In order to wield this sword, the white-haired old woman tried her best, using 120% of her strength. She couldn't change her moves at all. While slashing Su Mu's ribs with her sword, she could only watch the hideous skull fly towards her neck. 
That mouth is already open. Hematoxylin purposely increases bone mass and strengthens teeth. The mouth of the skull head is full of sharp fangs with long index fingers, which looks very terrifying. What? The next moment, the white-haired old woman let out a shrill scream. Su Mu's skull head was attached to her neck, and with a frantic bite, it directly bit through her throat. The congenital warrior's muscles and bones are strong and flesh and blood is solid, but it can't stop the monster's bite. The light in the eyes of the white-haired old woman quickly faded away, and there is no more vitality. The battle has only started for ten breaths, and it is already extremely tragic. Two of the four innate warriors have already gone. Two of the four innate warriors died tragically, but Su Mu was also not feeling well. These four innate warriors were all eliminated step by step. They have extremely rich combat experience and will not miss any opportunity. When Su Mu eliminated the white-haired old woman, the majestic man took the opportunity to come to his side. When Su Mu was powerless to defend, he punched the bone claw of his right arm. This bone claw was severely eroded by poisonous insects, how could it stop this punch? After being hit, it burst open. Su Mu, broke his arm. And most of the rib cage in the rib cage was broken, and the injury was very serious. On the scene, the two sides seemed to be in a draw, with each suffering casualties. But Su Mu knew that the only winner of this battle would be him. After killing the little old man, Su Mu discovered a new ability of the bloody skeleton. When a warrior dies, he can absorb its dissipated blood and strengthen himself. Before that, Su Mu had never had this kind of feeling. It should be because those enemies were too weak. And that short old man is a congenital warrior, and the richness of qi and blood is not comparable to that of a low-level warrior. Sure enough, after killing the white-haired old woman, Su Mu absorbed another powerful qi and blood. These two powerful qi and blood collided, rolled, and smelted in his body. It seems that something is about to erupt from Su Mu's body. The young master in Tsing Yi and the majestic man didn't know about Su Mu's situation. In their opinion, although the two companions died, they severely injured the skeleton demon, making it much less threatening. The two of them were basically uninjured. This deal is not a loss. As long as you live, everything is fine. Thinking of this, young master Tsing Yi shouted. This demon is seriously injured, and it is estimated that it will be unable to withstand it. I'll lock its body, go and smash the remaining bones. Without the body, is there a skull left that we can do whatever we want? Although Su Mu controlled the skull to eliminate the white-haired old woman. But everyone who understands can see that a single skull is not very lethal, as long as you don't get caught. Hearing that, the majestic man didn't hesitate and shouted angrily, his muscles stretched. He condensed all his strength into one point and punched Su Mu a third time. The punch slammed away, and immediately a hurricane was swept in. The gravel, soil and ashes on the ground were swept in and flew towards Su Mu's body. At first glance, it seemed like a tornado swept toward Su Mu. The power is amazing. In Su Mu's heart, alarm bells are ringing. After the injury, his body strength dropped a lot, and he was no longer able to resist the punch. His subconscious mind told him that if he hit it firmly, he would be half disabled if he didn't die. However, in the face of such a crisis, Su Mu has no fear or panic. There is just endless anger. He and Su Kong Wu had a good life, but inexplicably they got involved in the conspiracy of a big man and were thrown into prison. His mother was too worried and too sad, and died of illness at home within a few days. If it wasn't for Su Mu's awakening of the death simulator, he and Su Tsong Wu's family would still only have a dead end. And all of this is just because a certain big man crushed them like an ant. This big man probably didn't even know who Su Mu and the others were, but he put them in this situation. How could Su Mu not be angry with such an encounter? Now he just wants to eliminate all these minions to vent his hatred. The raging anger exploded in Su Mu's heart. He was full of evil spirits, and a terrifying aura gradually came out. The two qi and blood that had just been absorbed into the body by Su Mu were transformed into another power in the continuous smelting. When the terrifying punch of the majestic man slammed into him, 
the sense of crisis of destruction forced Su Mu to unleash all his potential. Roar! Su Mu's bones trembled, and he let out a shrill ghost howl. Countless ferocious bone spurs erupted from his body, extending wildly and flying around. Tuck tuck tuck. Tuck tuck tuck. There were muffled noises in the secret room. Countless bone spurs erupted from Su Mu's body, penetrating densely into the surrounding walls. At this time, he has transformed into a thorn ball. The bone spurs spread from his body filled the entire secret room. The long whip that trapped him before was easily destroyed. The lethality of this move is extremely terrifying. The majestic man and the young master in Sing E were pierced by dozens of bone spurs and nailed to the wall. The evil spirit in the bone spurs destroyed their vitality and sucked their blood. Young master Tsing Yi died violently on the spot, and there was still a smile on his face that he thought he was going to win. The vitality of a majestic man should be tenacious. And that punch resisted part of the power of the bone spur, so there was still half a breath left. Black blood poured out of the majestic man's mouth, and he looked at Su Mu in disbelief, his eyes full of unwillingness. The punch just now, infused with all his energy, was the strongest punch in his life. The majestic man had a hunch, he threw this punch and eliminated Su Mu. He will be able to break through to the middle stage of the innate and reach a whole new realm of martial arts. Then, these beautiful dreams all came to nothing under the attack of countless terrifying bone spurs. The majestic man opened his mouth, as if he wanted to say something. But before half a word was uttered, he tilted his head and died of anger. At this point, the four innate warriors in the dark hall were all beheaded by Su Mu. After killing all the enemies, the dense bone spurs quickly recovered, and all of them returned to Su Mu's body immediately afterwards, the place where Su Mu was damaged in the battle began to grow new bones. Among them, the ribs and right arm were the most injured. Basically it's a remodel. While repairing the body, the huge arms also degenerated to their normal form. In the end, on the frame of Su Mu's bones, flesh and blood grew out of thin air, covering the outside. After the battle, he returned to his human form. It's just that after returning to human form this time, Su Mu's complexion was pale and in poor condition, and he rarely felt weak. In this battle, Su Mu showed all his strength. In the end, a new skill was activated, and a wave broke out fiercely, killing the majestic man and the young master in Tsing Yi. The fierce battle and injuries consumed 90% of Su Mu's energy, making him a little weak. But Su Mu has a hearty feeling in his heart. On the one hand, he beheaded the minions of the Black Hand behind the scenes, so he could take some revenge for the time being. On the other hand, the all-out battle of life and death unleashed his hostility and killing intent. This battle gave Su Mu a clearer understanding of his own strength. Killing four innate warriors with one enemy and four beheadings is basically his limit. In other words, Su Mu's strength is about the late stage of the innate. There is still a big gap between the masters of martial arts. This gave Su Mu a faint sense of crisis. The water in this world is very deep. If you want to protect yourself and your family, you must gain more power. It seems that the next simulation must be started as soon as possible. Su Mu thought to himself while recovering his energy. Although he is a little weak, he has absorbed the blood of two innate warriors and is in the stage of rapid recovery. At this time, there was another person in this secret room. That is the eldest princess who was kidnapped by the Dark Hall. She looked at Su Mu with great interest, and said curiously. Ben Gong has read a lot of books and traveled all over the country, so he is well informed. But it's the first time I've seen this ability of yours. The transformation of life and death is like a man and a devil. It's interesting. Hearing this, Su Mu cast two cold eyes at her. He was thinking about whether to eliminate this person. The reason why she didn't eliminate her directly was because Su Mu saw that this woman was not in the same group as the Dark Hall. Maybe even the enemy, otherwise he wouldn't be tied there. Besides, Su Mu has other considerations. Just now, with his bone blast, countless bone spurs shot out, attacking the entire secret room in almost all directions. Naturally, this woman is also within the attack range. But at the moment she was hit, a golden light erupted from her body, 
blocking this fatal move. Obviously, she has some kind of life-saving means on her body. And it's very strong, otherwise it wouldn't be able to stop the terrifying bone spur at all. In addition, this mysterious woman is gorgeously dressed and full of extravagance, and her graceful demeanor is not something ordinary people can have. Su Mu speculated that she must be a noble person. He has a noble status and is an enemy of the third prince. Such a person has a certain value for Su Mu. Although he eliminated some of the third prince's minions, Su Mu was not arrogant enough to think that he could eliminate the third prince by himself. Is Qi easy to deal with a person who can compete with the prince? If it was so easy to eliminate, where would it be Su Mu's turn to do it? He has already died 800 times. Su Mu's thoughts turned sharply, thinking about what to do next. On the other side, although Su Mu was staring at him with murderous eyes, Li Lingyan, the eldest princess, still did not panic. With a flick of her fingertips, a talisman paper flew out from her sleeve and ignited spontaneously. After burning out, the ashes of the rune paper floated in the air and combined into characters. Su Mu, 16 years old, from the north of Yanjing City. There is. This talisman actually collected Su Mu's personal information. Of course, it is limited to some basic information. After learning about Su Mu's experience during this period, Li Lingyan smiled and said. It turned out to be the unlucky person implicated in the ordinance case. But the third child definitely didn't expect that he would turn into a fierce tiger by crushing the ants at will. This time, his loss is huge. Hearing this, Su Mu's heart moved. Ordnance case. You know about this? Tell me about it. After he and Su Kongwu suffered a great disaster, they didn't even know what happened and who was harming them. Su Mu also just learned about the existence of the third prince, the mastermind behind the scenes. But we still don't know what exactly happened. For some reason, the eldest princess Li Lingyan's attitude toward Su Mu was quite good, not as bad as when she faced the four innate warriors before. Seeing Su Mu's question, she leaned back on the chair a little bored, and said lazily. It's all a mess caused by the struggle for succession. It's very boring. If you want to know, I'll say it again. From Li Lingyan's mouth, Su Mu finally knew the whole story. Su Tsong Wu's boss had taken refuge with the prince, and he had already been credited with the help of the prince. Ku Jinyui was originally a force under the third prince, and most of the high-level people were his people. This action of the prince seriously touched the interests of the third prince and made him feel a huge threat. And so, the ordnance case happened. A batch of ordnance mysteriously disappeared, and all clues pointed to Su Tsong Wu's boss. Inside Jinyuei, the operation of cleaning up the portal was launched at the fastest speed. During the arrest, Su Tsong Wu's boss was eliminated on the spot. It is said that he was trying to resist, so he had to fight back. This incident aroused the anger of the saint. Because of this, the prince was implicated and was placed in confinement. As for boss Su Tsong Wu's faction, all of them were put on death row. In this matter, the third prince did a beautiful job. If it develops normally, the case will be nailed to death after all relevant people like Su Kongwu and Su Mu are executed. But with Su Mu's crossing, an accident happened. Su Mu turned into a skeleton, swept the prison in the north of the city, and released all the prisoners. Among them were prisoners like him and Su Kongwu who were involved in the ordnance case. The tragic state of the north city prison made the third prince feel a little uneasy. After some investigation, after failing to find the murderer, his anxiety increased again. The third prince even suspected that some mysterious force had entered. So, he ordered the removal of all relevant personnel in the ordnance case, and the family members could not let it go. In this way, we can ensure that nothing goes wrong and that there is no proof in death. Of course the third prince knows, those little people probably don't know anything. But so what? It's just ants, if you eliminate them, you will eliminate them. As everyone knows, in this group of ants, there is a murderer who crawled out of the dead. The more the third prince wanted to deal with it, the more he became an enemy of Su Mu. Now, even a subterranean palace in the dark hall has been taken over by Su Mu. 
It is estimated that after knowing the news, the third prince should be even more uneasy and afraid of this mysterious enemy. Yu Yu reading. All this was messed up because of Su Mu's chaotic entry. He was like a reckless man who rammed in without knowing anything. Eliminate all the enemies in front of you. After figuring out the whole story, Su Mu's eyes flashed two stern eyes. That is to say, our family was only involved by the way, like a big man accidentally trampled a few ants to death. Hearing this, Li Lingyan nodded and agreed. Your statement is very appropriate. The third child doesn't even know of your existence. He has no interest in remembering the names of little people. However, after tonight, he will definitely know you, and he will put you on the eliminate list. Hearing this, Su Mu's eyes were filled with fierceness, and he asked. Are there many guards around the third prince? Although he knew it was unlikely, he still wanted to ask. If it happens, wouldn't it be beautiful? Su Mu's words made Li Lingyan stunned for a moment, then looked at him carefully and sighed. You are so cruel. What? You want to eliminate him? He's the third prince who is doing a lot of work. Su Mu said with murderous intent. When people are eliminated, they die. This is true for emperors, let alone a prince. Li Lingyan's eyes narrowed slightly when Su Mu said such rebellious remarks. But there was no anger or dissatisfaction, instead, he seemed to be thinking about something. After a while, she shook her head and said. There is a martial arts master who guards the third child day and night. With your current strength, it is impossible to eliminate him. But, there is a place I think you can go to. Hearing this, Su Mu sneered and said. What, are you teaching me to do things? He didn't even know the exact identity of this woman, so how could he listen to her? Moreover, even now, Su Mu has not completely given up on the idea of killing her. After all, this woman knew the secret that he could transform into a skeleton. Um. Li Lingyan didn't expect that Su Mu would say such a sentence. She showed a rare expression of surprise, but she soon burst out laughing. This sentence has some meaning, I took it down. But. You just want to eliminate me like that? Until now, the murderousness has not diminished at all. Hearing this, Su Mu looked up at her. But he didn't speak, and continued to absorb the blood of the two innate warriors to restore his strength. As if seeing through his mind, Li Lingyan continued on her own. Are you worried about me leaking secrets? Actually, there is nothing to worry about, not to mention that Ben Gong is not interested in publicizing your abilities everywhere, even if you say it, it will be fine. There are so many strange people in the world. There are many unique skills that others can't learn. Su Mu remained silent, and Li Lingyan continued to talk about her own. Also, this palace can pardon you and the Su Kong Wu family. And take action to erase the traces of the four of you, so that the third child will not be able to find you for a while. The death row in the north of the city last night, and the dark hall tonight. Su Mu has done too many things in the past two days, no matter how clean it is, there will still be some traces left. What's more, there are some mysterious and unpredictable forces in this world that are unreasonable. Su Mu caused the third prince a heavy loss, and he would definitely find Su Mu at any cost. After the exposure, Su Mu was fine, but Su Tsong Wu's family was in danger. It would be great if the traces he left behind could be erased. This sincere promise made Su Mu a little moved. But the question remains, the identity of this woman. Who the are you? The Princess of Dagon? This woman called herself the palace, and Su Mu naturally speculated in this direction. This palace is the eldest princess, is she capable of fulfilling these promises? Eldest Princess Li Lingyan. Su Mu was a little surprised. He guessed that Li Lingyan was a certain princess, but he didn't expect it to be the eldest princess. Isn't Princess Dagon already in her forties? It seems to be bigger than Su Kong Wu. But Li Lingyan looked like a woman in her early twenties, with no signs of aging. I have to say that the third prince, Li Hongxiu, is indeed courageous enough. Although Li Lingyan is a princess, she has a lot of power in her hands. If she is a boy, the number of people who will win the heir will increase by one. 
The third prince took advantage of the prince's confinement, and tied Li Lingyan to coerce her to cooperate with him. If successful, the chances of winning the heirloom can be greatly increased. If it fails, just give up the members of the Dark Hall who participated in this matter. In short, it won't involve him. These things, the third prince handled very cleanly. Even though a few people knew that the Dark Hall was his power, they couldn't produce any evidence. However, the third prince would never have thought that this matter was lost in Su Mu's hands. Up to now, he didn't know about the existence of the little person Su Mu. How is it? The conditions for this palace to open are not bad, right? Li Lingyan smiled and looked at Su Mu. Make a deal. After some thought, Su Mu agreed. He walked in front of Li Lingyan, and a bone blade emerged from his fingertips, cutting off the rope that bound her. Li Lingyan moved her wrist and asked Su Mu. By the way, are you interested in going to the place I just mentioned? Su Mu glanced at her and said coldly. The condition you made just now is for your life, not for me to do things for you. Hearing this, Li Lingyan said casually. I didn't have to let you go, but it was another stronghold of the Dark Hall. I thought you were interested. Another stronghold of the Dark Hall. Go, take me there. Su Mu, who originally planned to leave, immediately changed his tune. How could this group of damned minions hurt his family so miserably, just let them go? As for whether Li Lingyan has any purpose, Su Mu doesn't care. He only does what he wants to do. Ha, huh, you are really interesting. Li Lingyan looked at Su Mu with more admiration. This is a ruthless person who ignores the rules and has no taboos, and is very appealing to her. Su Mu didn't answer, and strode out of the underground palace. When he left, he looked back at the underground palace behind him, frowning slightly. Li Lingyan immediately understood and said with a smile. I will inform the staff to destroy this place before the third prince finds out. That's fine. Su Mu nodded, feeling a sense of mutual sympathy. After finally destroying the members of the Dark Hall, how could the underground palace be left to the third prince? Must be destroyed. After leaving the underground palace, under the guidance of Li Lingyan, Su Mu came to a seemingly ordinary mansion. Li Lingyan didn't know what spell she used. She was as light as a swallow, yet she could keep up with Su Mu's speed. This woman has many means to save her life. Su Mu always felt that she was caught by the Dark Hall, so there should be something hidden. Otherwise, with her equipment, there should be no problem in escaping. Of course, Su Mu doesn't care about this, he just wants to eliminate people now. Who are you? In this seemingly ordinary house, after Su Mu approached, two black-clothed warriors suddenly jumped out. The clothes were exactly the same as those in the underground palace. It seems that it is the stronghold of the Dark Hall. Su Mu didn't have time to waste time with the dead, and a blood-colored bone blade appeared on his forearm. With a swipe of the knife, the blood gleams. The two are already separated. Su Mu stepped over the corpse and strode into the house. Behind him, the eldest princess Li Lingyan threw a spell, and a burst of flames lit the gate of the house. At the same time, she handed a black Shura mask to Su Mu and said. This mask can cover your breath. When there is a big disturbance, the third child will send an expert to check it out. You have to hide your identity. Su Mu took this Azura mask and put it on his face, then eliminated him in the house. There are many warriors hidden in this house but the strongest are only a few first-class warriors, and they can't stop Su Mu at all. Su Mu murdered at the front, and Li Lingyan set fire at the back. One after the other, cooperate tacitly. Soon, most of the house was set on fire, illuminating half of the sky. Many residents around were awakened by this, and after running out of the house, they watched the excitement in groups. Eliminate, 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 there is a martial arts master coming. When it was about to end, Li Lingyan, who had set fire all the way, urged her from behind. Ha! Huh. Martial arts master. Okay, I get it. Su Mu wondered how Li Lingyan got the information here. But it's strange, but the speed of his shots is getting faster and faster. Two blood-colored bone blades danced wildly, bringing blood flowers. 
Soon, the black-clothed warriors hiding here were almost slaughtered. There was also a raging fire in the whole house. This stronghold of the Dark Hall was destroyed by Su Mu and Li Lingyan. Just when he was about to eliminate the last person, Su Mu suddenly felt a huge sense of threat and quickly approached. He turned his head to look, and saw a figure flying towards him quickly. Void Crossing Martial Arts Master In just over ten breaths, this figure crossed a long distance and arrived not far from Su Mu and Li Lingyan. This is a middle-aged man with a medium stature and an ordinary appearance. If you don't have that terrifying and sharp aura, if you leave it in the crowd, I'm afraid no one will take a second look. After seeing the corpses all over the house and the flames blazing, the middle-aged man stared at Su Mu and Li Lingyan with a gloomy expression on his face. Li Lingyan was not afraid at all, stepped forward and teased. Ha! Huh. Isn't this the kendo master of his royal highness the third prince, Mr. Ning Wuji Ning? What are you doing here in the middle of the night? Oh! Ben Gong knows. Are you here to help us out of fear that we won't be able to deal with these gangsters hiding in the market? Sir, you have a good heart. It's a pity that we came a step late. We have almost eliminated these gangsters. But I can't let you come here in vain. Well, there's one person left here, so I'll leave it to you to deal with it. Saying that, Li Lingyan gave Su Mu a wink. Su Mu understood and threw the last remaining black clothed warrior in front of Ning Wuji. He didn't care about his worsening complexion. This place is a residential area. With such a big commotion, it attracted many people watching the excitement, and they crowded around for several times. After being thrown in front of Ning Wuji, the warrior in black opened his mouth and wanted to say something. But before he could speak, Ning Wuji hurriedly turned his palm into a knife, slashing his head with one hand. Seeing this, Li Lingyan applauded vigorously and said to the surrounding people, This gentleman is the kendo master of the third prince. He came here tonight to eliminate the people. These bandits, he eliminated them well. The people who didn't know the reason at first showed an expression of sudden realization, and at the same time they were a little scared. Who would have thought that this seemingly ordinary house would actually hide so many weirdos in black? If this is not removed, how dangerous it is. Thinking of this, the surrounding people also applauded one after another, and gave Li Lingyan, Su Mu, and Ning Wuji grateful eyes. These applause, Ning Wuji's face was gloomy and water was dripping, and the blue veins on his forehead jumped. Where is the applause? It was clearly the sound of slapping him in the face. The people who died in the yard were their people. Ning Wuji gritted his teeth angrily. But in public, you can't have an attack at all, not even a few words of scolding to vent. Otherwise, wouldn't it be public recognition that the Dark Hall is the power of the Third Prince? Ning Wuji took several deep breaths before suppressing his anger. With a dark face, he said to Li Lingyan. Princess Eldest, it's going to be a long time in Japan, you have to be more careful. Hearing this, Li Lingyan curled her lips in disdain and said arrogantly. What? Are you teaching me to do things? Hearing this, Ning Wuji's face became even more ugly, and his palms were shaking slightly. He glanced viciously at Li Lingyan and Su Mu, then turned around and flew away with a flick of his sleeves. Ning Wuji originally came to save people, but he was forced to eliminate the last person in this stronghold. Who should I turn to to make sense of this matter? Seeing that Li Lingyan could actually make a martial arts master so angry, Su Mu couldn't help but glance at her. What surprised him the most was that the eldest princess actually learned his words and gave the martial arts master the final blow. And the effect is outstanding. Li Lingyan smiled generously in front of Su Mu's gaze, and said. This Ning Wuji, who usually looks like an expert, is really disgusting. Obviously he's a dog, so what are you pretending to be? Li Lingyan, the long princess with a poisonous tongue, is very different from what Su Mu imagined. However, Su Mu prefers to deal with such people. When will the pardon order for me and Uncle Su's family come down? Su Mu asked her. It's already being done, you can just go home. Hearing Li Lingyan's answer, Su Mu's eyes narrowed. First, Ning Wuji's arrival was predicted in advance, but now he doesn't know when to deal with this matter. 
It seems that Li Lingyan has a special way of communication, which allows him to communicate with his subordinates quietly. In this way, the fact that she was kidnapped by the Dark Hall is even more incomprehensible. I'm afraid there is something hidden inside. However, Su Mu didn't care about that. After getting a positive answer, he nodded and left. After Su Mu left, a small bug fell on Li Lingyan's shoulder. Your Highness, are you so optimistic about this person? He has ruined your original plan. This little worm spit out human words with a clear voice. It's just that the tone of voice is a little weird, and it's impossible to tell if it's male or female, old or young. The success rate of the plan was very low. Ben Gong just played with them when he was bored. The third child is not so easy to be hanged out. As for this person. He has an extremely rare daring color about him. Li Lingyan looked at the direction where Su Mu was leaving, with a smile that was not a smile on her face. Courage. We all serve the eldest princess, and we all lack courage. Li Lingyan's words made Little Worm a little puzzled, but more dissatisfied. You don't understand. This is a kind of daring to despise everything. He dares to do anything that pierces the sky. And he doesn't even blink his eyes. In the future, he may be able to help a lot. Li Lingyan turned her head to look in the direction of the palace, her eyes were deep. It's not what Li Lingyan said, Su Mu just believed. He did not directly take Su Tsongwu's family back. Instead, they stayed up until dawn to confirm that they were indeed forgiven before returning home. The news of the pardon made Su Tsongwu's family ecstatic. This feeling of going from to heaven is really wonderful. On the same day, Du Wanrong cooked a large table of meals to celebrate. It's just that Jini Wei's errand can't be done anymore. Although Li Lingyan helped Su Mu and the others to cover up the news. But Jinyui is the territory of the third prince, and it would be a bit of a death to go there again. Fortunately, within a few days, Li Lingyan recruited Su Kongwu to the imperial army and became an instructor. As for Su Mu, he was not interested in wasting time, so he declined Li Lingyan's invitation. He practiced martial arts at home all day long, beating his body. Yu Yu reading WW. Ukanshu. Calm. With the skeleton of the blood evil skeleton as the foundation, Su Mu has made rapid progress. In just ten days, he advanced to a second-rate martial artist. However, this is not a big improvement for Su Mu. If you want to gain more powerful strength, you still have to look at the simulator. But since the last simulation ended, the simulator has been in a standby state and cannot be turned on. Helpless, Su Mu could only practice martial arts while collecting information to deepen his understanding of the world. Although I am not very interested in historical and political things. But after learning about Dagon's situation, Su Mu vaguely smelled the aura of the end of the dynasty. The old emperor, who was a big man, was obsessed with cultivating immortals when he was young and did not ask about court affairs. Now, he has not seen anyone for many years, and he has not been to court for several years. Even important institutions such as Jinyui and the Imperial Army were controlled by the prince and the princess. The ministers in the DPRK in China also stood in line, fighting hard. When the old emperor was eliminated by a dutiful son one day, Su Mu was not surprised at all. This is what happens in the temple. The situation among the people is even worse. Even in the capital city of Yenjing, Su Mu often hears about droughts and floods in a certain place. Occasionally, there are news of uprisings and demons in troubled times. In short, the world is not peaceful. Su Mu urgently needs to gain more power. Fortunately, after another week, the simulator finally recovered. In the middle of the night, Su Mu was sleeping when a familiar voice suddenly sounded in his mind. Death simulator is on, do you want to enter? Yes. Su Mu chose to confirm without hesitation. Then, his eyes flashed, and he came to the standby space of the simulator again. A virtual interface appeared in front of Su Mu. Basic attribute points, 103 three basic attribute points will be awarded based on the performance of the previous instance. Body. Chi. Life. Please allocate the basic attribute points. 
After the allocation is completed, a new copy will be automatically generated. Note, the dungeon world cannot be changed after it is generated. This time, Su Mu has three more basic attribute points at his disposal. After thinking for a while, he chose a relatively moderate method of adding points. Body, 6. Intelligence, 3. Life, 4. This time, Su Mu added a little more life, otherwise the start would be too bad. As for intelligence, he didn't feel it had any effect, so he only clicked 3 points. Physique is still more important, and Su Mu invested the most, scoring 6 points. Basic attribute points have been allocated, and the copy world has been automatically generated. Please choose 3 initial talents. After adding points, 10 talents appeared in front of Su Mu. Respectively. Heavenly Widow, No Wife in Life. Spiritual Sense, Perceive Potential Dangers. No Wealth, Unable to Accumulate Wealth. Minor Life, Life Number, Minus 3, Intelligence 3. Immortal, Corpses Decay Slowly. Kindness, All Living Creatures Favorability 30%. Going Alive, Vitality is greatly increased, and it is not easy to die. Crazy Demon, Burning Vitality, Triple Combat Power Before Death. Assimilation, After close contact with anything, they will assimilate each other. Big Dream, Before the age of 18, the consciousness is chaotic, and after the age of 18, all basic attributes are doubled. The overall quality of these 10 talents is much better than the first instance. In addition to the first 8 gray talents, there are also 2 more cyan talents at the back. Whether it's font effects or introductions, they all look more advanced. What Su Mu values most is the talent of Big Dream. Before the age of 18, he was a fool, ignorant and confused. But as long as you get past the age of 18 and your basic attributes are all doubled, you can take off immediately. However, when entering a new dungeon world for the first time, stability is the main thing. With this talent, it's not too late to choose after Su Mu has figured out the situation of the dungeon world. Anyway, it's impossible to pass the customs all at once. After thinking for a while, Su Mu chose three relatively stable and practical talents. They are Spiritual Sense, Kindness, and Crazy Demon. Spiritual Sense, Perceive Potential Dangers. Kindness, All Living Creatures Favorability 30%. Crazy Demon, Burning Vitality, Triple Combat Power Before Death. These three talents are solid and will work in most situations. In addition, there is also the remorse that was solidified from the previous instance. Remorseful, the pain of death is magnified tenfold. In other words, this time Su Mu can enter the dungeon world with four talents. In addition to this, he still holds 60 points in his hand, which he obtained by clearing the last dungeon. However, without knowing the situation in the dungeon world, Su Mu would not easily use these 60 points. Points must be used in a targeted and purposeful manner. Therefore, after allocating attribute points and selecting talents, Su Mu directly entered the dungeon world. Body, 6. Intelligence, 3. Life, 4. Talents, Spiritual Sense, Kindness, Madness, Resentment. Item, None. With the fading of the system interface, Su Mu's consciousness fell into darkness. A new life begins. Dagon, Jijo Barracks. A timid little boy was sitting on a dead tree, dragging his head with one hand as if thinking about something. Just looking at that gesture and expression, it doesn't look like a child at all, more like a little adult. This little boy is not someone else, it is Su Mu who entered the copy world. In this life, his birthplace is still Jijo. But the time of birth has changed to the second year of the apocalypse, which is exactly ten years earlier than the last dungeon world. As for the family situation, it's not as good as the previous dungeon world. In this life, Su Mu was born without his parents and became an abandoned baby on the battlefield. But the fate of four points is not a white point. Although he lost his parents, he was adopted by a few passing army men and grew up in the army. Although life is not very good, it is still passable. Eat well and dress warmly. Those ladies are not bad, otherwise they wouldn't adopt abandoned babies on the battlefield. 
In addition, Su Mu has the skill of kindness, which naturally increases the goodwill of others towards him. Over the past few years, the entire military camp has been very fond of this aggressive, smart and clever boy. Now, it is the eighth year of Apocalypse, and Su Mu is six years old. Although it did not grow like a monster under the influence of bliss like the previous instance. But his physique at six o'clock made him a bit taller than his peers, and his body was much stronger. It is estimated that it will not be long before he can start practicing martial arts. If this trend continues, Su Mu should join the Dagon Jizhou army. No worries about eating and drinking, and found an organization. This start is much better than the previous life. Even if the famine hits twelve years later, as a soldier, he should not go hungry, after all, he eats imperial food. But, will this copy really go so smoothly? This is a death simulator. Su Mu dragged her chin and fell into contemplation. At this moment, a little girl with braided horns jumped over. In addition to Su Mu, there are some children in this military camp. They can only grow up in the military camp for different reasons. Relatively speaking, this little girl is the happiest of all children. Yu Yu reading. She is the daughter of Lu Gao Tian, the imperial commander, Lu Yuqing. Lu Gao Tian was unwilling to continue his career after his wife passed away, so he brought his daughter into the military camp to raise him. I have to say that this father's heart is really big. Take a little girl to a barracks full of men, so you won't be afraid of her delusions. Fortunately, there are some children in the barracks who can play with her. I don't know if it's because Su Mu has an adult soul, or it's because of the talent of intimacy. Among all the playmates, Lu Yuqing likes Su Mu the most. She often pesters Su Mu and asks Su Mu to play with her. Su Mu himself is not very willing. But considering that Lu Yuqing is the daughter of Lu Gao Tian, the head of the military camp. Besides, I am still young, and I have nothing to do on weekdays. Occasionally playing with her for a while is no big deal. It's like having an extra sister. It's just that Su Mu has already planned to start practicing martial arts in the near future, so he won't have time to play with this little girl. Lu Yuqing hummed a nursery rhyme and jumped in front of Su Mu. Brother Su Mu, what are you doing? Can you tell me a story? I want to listen to Snow White again. Lu Yuqing blinked his big round eyes and looked at him eagerly. Okay, I. Su Mu just wanted to satisfy the little girl's request, but suddenly stopped. When he glanced at a small flower on Lu Yuqing's head, a needle-like feeling made Su Mu go numb, and he felt alert. It is spiritual sense. This talent, which had been silent for six years, was triggered for the first time. Just because of the little flower on Lu Liqing's head. Little Yuqing, where did your little red flower come from? Su Mu suppressed the sense of crisis in his heart and asked the little girl quietly. Ah! Is it this little flower? I picked it outside, and there is a big one there. Does brother Su Mu also think it looks good? Lu Yuqing took the little red flower down and smiled like a crescent moon. She thought that Su Mu was praising her for her beauty. Well, it's beautiful. Can you take me there to see it? Okay. Lu Yuqing agreed to Su Mu's request without hesitation, and led the way in front of him. Su Mu took a deep breath and followed behind. Su Mu sensed danger on this flower, but he was not afraid. There are even some small expectations. The ultimate goal of his coming to the simulated world is to die. Still have to die in a tricky and wonderful way. Only in this way can he incarnate into a powerful enough demon, so that he can gain powerful power in the real world. So, Su Mu is not afraid of death at all, just that death is not good. The military camp where Su Mu is located is a local army, stationed 7 or 8 kilometers outside the city. After leaving the barracks, after walking about two or three miles, the two little ones came to a wasteland. Here, there are many small flowers like Lu Yueqing's head. Small and bright red. Like slightly larger blood beads. After Su Mu approached, spiritual sense was triggered again, and the sense of crisis was dozens of times greater than before. And, the source of the sense of crisis is not those bright red flowers. But, the ground beneath his feet. 
Su Mu vaguely felt that there was something extremely terrifying lurking in this great ground. It's so scary that even through thick soil, it can affect the vegetation that grows on it. Su Mu thought for a while and decided to explore. He found a flat stone and dug it in this wasteland. Brother Su Mu, what are you doing? Lu Yuqing asked curiously. At this time, she came to understand ignorantly. Her brother Su Mu didn't seem to care about those little flowers. It's nothing, go back first if you're bored. Su Mu made a perfunctory sentence and continued to dig hard. Oh. Lu Yuqing replied, but did not leave. Sitting on the ridge, she flung her two lotus root-like calves, quietly watching Su Mu digging. This digging took more than half an hour. Although he is young, Su Mu is quite strong. After working for a long time, I finally dug a big hole. Through the big pit, Su Mu vaguely sensed a strange sinister aura. Looking closely, the soil was still a touch of blood. This made him even more sure that there was something down there. But just relying on him to dig like this, how long will it take? Su Mu's eyes rolled, and an idea came to him. Little Yuqing, let's go and go back to find your father. Ah. Uh, why are you looking for my father? Lu Yuqing was a little puzzled. It's a big deal. You have to cooperate with me later. You have to nod your head when I say anything. Remember? Hmm, remember. Although he didn't know what Su Mu wanted to do, Lu Yuqing nodded again and again, as if he was practicing in advance. Soon, Su Mu brought Lu Yuqing back to the barracks and found Lu Gao Tian, the commander of the great capital. There have been no wars in recent years, and the soldiers like them have also been quiet, and they can spend their days rambunctiously. At this time, Lu Gao Tian was playing chess with a centurion. After seeing the two little ones, he asked casually. What are you two doing here? I have nothing for you to play with. Lu Gaotian's words revealed the meaning of driving people away. Some time ago, he and Su Mu had a few rounds, but the piece of armor that was eliminated was not left, which made the people in the barracks burst into laughter. It made him lose his face as the boss. After that, Lu Gao never wanted to see Su Mu when he played chess. But Su Mu didn't come to Lu Gao to play chess. He said solemnly. Lu Dutong, I just saw a man sneaking around in a wasteland. I don't know what the is going on, it looks a bit like a barbarian's meticulous work. There is a ferocious barbarian tribe in the north of Dagon, which is on the border with Jizhou. The barbarians have never given up on the invasion, so they have inserted many fine works. Fifty-two of these fine works are expensive. If you find something important, it will be a great achievement. But how could Lu Gao Tian believe the words of a child? As he continued to play chess, he said casually. The barbarian's meticulous work. Just you little devil, can you tell whether you are meticulous or not? Su Mu said solemnly. I'm not talking nonsense. That person is sneaky, and his body. In a few words, Su Mu made up a barbarian meticulous work, and portrayed it in a splendid manner. At the end, I added one more sentence. Little Yuqing was right next to me, and she saw it too. Even if I would lie to you, my daughter would never lie to you, right? Hearing Su Mu's words, Lu Yuqing blinked his big eyes and nodded again and again, the horn braid trembled. Mm. I also saw that that person is exactly what brother Su Mu said. As the saying goes, there are no taboos in fairy tales. What a child says, an adult subconsciously thinks it is true. Moreover, the barbarian fine work in Su Mu's mouth is very similar, it doesn't look like a lie that a child can make up. How do they know that Su Mu's body hides a soul who doesn't know how many lives he has lived? In short, after hearing what Su Mu said, Lu Gaotian's face became serious. He stopped playing chess and turned to ask Su Mu for some details. Su Mu's addition was quite in place, and Lu Gaotian began to wonder if there were really barbarians around. After thinking about it for a while, Lu Gaotian decided to take a look. Where is the place you said? Take me there. Hearing this, a smile flashed in Su Mu's eyes as he led the way ahead. Finally, under the guidance of Su Mu, Lu Gaotian brought a group of subordinates to the wasteland. Ha! Huh. Is it here? 
One of the big bosses was a little surprised. What? Is there a problem here? Lu Gaotian asked. The big-headed soldier explained. Dot. This place was originally a fertile field for a farmer in our village. Since the year before last, no crops could grow for no apparent reason. No matter what it was planted, it couldn't support it, so it had to be abandoned in the end. Anything else? Lu Gaotian's expression moved, and he rubbed his chin. After coming to this wasteland, Lu Gaotian observed it and vaguely felt that this kid Su Mu had lied to him. But he also felt that something was wrong here. After thinking for a while, Lu Gaotian waved his hand and said to everyone under his command. Dig it for me, Bendu would like to see what's underneath. Yes. Dozens of strong-bodied big-headed soldiers dig together, and the progress is fast. When the digging reaches seven or eight meters, the abnormality protrudes. I only heard a sudden commotion below, followed by a burst of exclamations. Blood. There is blood coming out. Blood. There is blood coming out. After a cry of exclamation, several people with higher martial arts cultivation and quicker reactions rushed out. But not everyone can react immediately. The blood water emerging from the ground, from the trickle to the spurt, only takes two or three breaths. The height of the spray was exactly seven or eight meters, and it reached the mouth of the pit. As soon as a soldier climbed to the edge of the pit, blood from the ground spurted out and engulfed his lower body. His face was full of pain, and he let out a shrill scream. Looking down, only the bones below the waist were corroded by blood. And even the bones are soft, and they are collapsing quickly. Save. The soldier opened his mouth with a pale face. But as soon as he uttered a word, he fell powerlessly into the pit. The people around Daking were so frightened by this terrifying scene that they backed away and looked horrified. Only Su Mu stood still and carefully observed the blood spring. Fortunately, the blood spring stopped after a short while, and it did not expand, let alone spread to the outside. When everyone was in shock, Su Mu was the first to step forward and look into the pit. About four or five soldiers failed to escape and died in the pit. But at this time, I couldn't see even the slightest corpse, and it was all melted away by the blood. In the pothole, the blood water gradually receded, and the sound of running water could be vaguely heard. Su Mu pursed his lips, his expression became more and more solemn. This blood spring is not the root cause of the strangeness in this wasteland. It was originally an underground river. Like the weird flowers on the wasteland, they were affected by something weird and terrifying. This turned into that kind of terrifying blood water that is full of yin and evil energy and can corrode everything. And because the internal pressure was too high, it erupted after digging a little. Xiaomu, come back quickly. Su Mu's bold actions startled everyone. After Lu Gaotian was stunned for a moment, he eagerly shouted at him. Even Lu Yuqing, who had been following Su Mu's ass, didn't dare to follow, hugging his father's thigh and shouting anxiously. Brother Su Mu, come back quickly, it's so scary there. A few-year-old child is ignorant, but instinctively, she is full of fear of these strange objects full of evil spirits. Not to mention that this water easily eliminated several people. Su Mu didn't leave after observing for a while, he turned around and said to everyone. It's all right now, you don't have to be afraid. Seeing that Su Mu was fine after looking at it for a long time, some daring soldiers approached cautiously and found that the blood spring had indeed stopped. On the surface, there is no danger here for the time being. Damn it! What the is hiding in the ground? Seeing that those soldiers didn't even leave their bones, Lu Gaotian cursed with an ugly expression. Dutong, I'm afraid there's something unclean here, right? Or. Let's just cover it with soil and pretend nothing happened. A soldier said with some fear. If those soldiers hadn't died, Lu Gaotian might have agreed to this proposal. But now that people were eliminated, how could he let his soldiers die in ignorance? No. I have to see today what is going on and dare to eliminate Lao Tzu's soldiers. Unclean things. No matter how unclean things are, I will chop them up. Go. Bring some people to Pontatong, you have to demolish this place. Lu Gaotian gave an order 
and soon more than 100 soldiers came. He originally wanted Su Mu and Lu Yuqing to leave this dangerous place. But Su Mu strongly requested to stay and told him about the underground river. In this way, Lu Gaotian promised to let Su Mu and Lu Yuqing watch the fun outside, but they were not allowed to approach. The comprehensive excavation work is officially launched. Under the previous pothole, there is an underground river. This underground river has been polluted into a blood river, and the internal pressure is very high, and there is a possibility of gushing out if you are not careful. So Lu Gaotian set up another place, bypassed the underground river, and dug the pit again. As the saying goes, more people are more powerful. More than 100 able-bodied soldiers worked together and continued to excavate under the command of Lu Gaotian. They dug until dusk, and dug a huge pit more than 30 meters deep. Dutong, it's getting dark, why don't we dig again tomorrow? A centurion looked at the sky and suggested to Lu Gaotian. After a few hours, Lu Gaotian's anger subsided. In addition, it is not very convenient to dig at night. And there seems to be unclean things buried here. It's even more dangerous in the dark. After thinking for a while, Lu Gaotian decided to nod his head in agreement and call it a day. But at this moment, the excavation work has made great progress. I'm digging, I'm digging. There's a coffin under here. It's bronze, it's well made. A soldier shouted loudly, his voice a little excited and a little scared. In this unknown ancient coffin, there may be mysterious treasures, or some kind of ghost. Whether it's a blessing or a curse, I can't tell. The coffin? Dig it. Dig it out for Lao Tzu. I want to see who is lying in the coffin. If I die, I will eliminate several of my brothers. As soon as he heard that he had discovered something, Lu Gaotian dismissed the idea of stopping the work, and stood on the edge of the big pit and commanded loudly. After Su Mu, who was not far away, heard the words coffin and bronze, Yu Yu read WW. Ukanshu. Kam suddenly felt a little weird. Bronze coffins are not affordable for ordinary people, and they will not be buried so deep. Ordinary coffins can't be buried so deep, and they won't breed so many evil spirits. However, if this coffin is buried with a big person, then there must be a decent burial chamber. How could it be a solitary coffin? The more Su Mu thought about it, the more wrong it became. When everyone's attention was on the coffin, he slipped to the edge of the big pit. It was already dark at this time, but fortunately there were many torches in the pit, illuminating the surroundings. Su Mu looked through the firelight, and vaguely saw that the soldiers were digging a bronze coffin. This coffin is more than ten feet long, much larger than ordinary coffins. The body of the coffin is carved with several kinds of ferocious beasts, which are as lifelike as if they were about to come to life. Su Mu carefully identified them and recognized a few of them. They are Xian, Xian, and Xian. Based on this speculation, the bronze coffin carved on it is likely to be the nine sons of the dragon. But Su Mu wasn't entirely sure. After all, there are still many places in this bronze alien coffin that are buried in the soil and have not been fully excavated. Speaking of soil, Su Mu suddenly discovered a special situation. The closer to the clay of the bronze coffin, the heavier the effect and the darker the color. From the initial yellow to blood red, and finally to dark red. But the soil one meter away from the bronze alien coffin was cyan. It is distinct from the dark red outside. Blue soil. Blue soil. Could it be Yin Mu Shireng? Su Mu moved in his heart and thought of a possibility. After returning to the real world and getting rid of the identity of the death row. In addition to practicing martial arts, Su Mu also reads books, in order to learn more about the world. He once saw an introduction to the soil in a miscellaneous book. The soil is a very mysterious soil. There are many types of soil, each with its own function. Yin Mu Shi soil is one of them. It is said that this divine soil can absorb Yin Qi, evil spirits and other impurities, and can suppress evil spirits. This thing is exactly the opposite of the crow's blood that Su Mu used in the last simulation world. A prompting the birth of a demon. A stop demon from being born. However, the quality of the two is very different. 
Imushi soil can be called a top treasure, and a small amount is extremely rare. And the surrounding of this bronze alien beast coffin is actually covered with a thick layer, a full one meter. Even so, the coffin still affects things outside. Even the vegetation on the ground was affected. What does this mean? This shows that the things buried in this bronze alien coffin are already terrifying to an extremely terrifying level. Even a large number of Emu sea soil can't be completely suppressed. Su Mu's breathing became heavy. He realized that they seemed to have discovered something extraordinary. Su Mu opened his mouth and wanted to say something. But after a pause, he swallowed the words. Although he took a huge risk, he still wanted to know more about this bronze alien coffin. Don't ask, just ask is not afraid of death. The bronze alien coffin was dug out bit by bit and gradually separated from the surrounding soil. However, before it was fully excavated, something terrible happened. Clang! The bronze alien coffin suddenly shook. Then, a grey gas burst out from around the coffin, spreading around at an alarming speed. It felt as if a bomb had been detonated. Wherever the grey gas goes, life is dead. A soldier who was digging was eroded by the ash gas before he could react. The light in his eyes faded in an instant, his originally strong body was like a deflated balloon, and instantly shriveled like a mummified corpse. As for the scalp, skin, etc. It is even more aging. A good big guy, in the blink of an eye, like a weed in the cold winter, it died silently. All the people eroded by the ash gas died as quickly as this person. Seeing this scene, Su Mu was startled and quickly backed away. He was already prepared in his heart, so he was the only one who reacted in time and made an escape action. But even so, Su Mu only escaped three meters before being affected by the sudden burst of ash, and instantly lost all consciousness. He died. Score, G. Dungeon completion, 5%. Points earned, 0. Comment. Your short life is only a mere six years. Not only did you achieve nothing, but you also eliminated 112 people. Hint, if the completion rate is less than 90%, the copy is not completed and cannot be left. In the white waiting space, Sumu helplessly rubbed his eyebrows. He knew that the bronze alien coffin was terrifying and dangerous. After all, after the excavation, the talent's spiritual sense never stopped warning. However, Su Mu did not expect this coffin to be so vicious. In one breath, more than a hundred soldiers died silently. Even Lu Gao Tian, a first-class warrior, didn't have the slightest chance to struggle. What is buried in this bronze alien coffin? Su Mu recalled carefully. Before his consciousness completely dissipated, he vaguely heard a shrill and strange roar coming from the bronze alien coffin. It sounds... A bit like a female voice. Could it be that a woman was buried among them? To bury a woman, why build such a huge coffin? In addition, with so many yin trees being collected, the person or organization that buried this coffin is by no means simple. Su Mu did a search in the system mall and found that a small bottle of Inmu Shi soil required 500 points. One can imagine how precious the yin wood surrounding the bronze alien beast coffin is. This bronze alien coffin must hide a huge secret. It's a pity, with my current strength, I can't touch it at all. No, I have to try again. Su Mu felt unwilling. With the same talent, he entered the simulation world again and opened the second world of the instance. In this life, Su Mu has been keeping an eye on that wasteland. Before he was four years old, that is, six years before Apocalypse, there was still fertile soil, and there was a bumper harvest every year. But since the sixth year of Apocalypse, no crops can be grown here. With the passage of time, only the blood-like little flowers grew. After two years of observation, Sumu didn't find anything special. So, he used the same method to trick Lu Gaotian into digging a pit. After the previous experience, Sumu knew that the bronze alien coffin could not be dug. What he drew was the yin wood surrounding the bronze alien coffin. Can't touch the bronze alien coffin, and can't touch the ground around it. Su Mu has to try it. 
When the yin wood was excavated, Sumulika told Lu Gaotian about the properties of this divine soil. And suggested that he take some yin wood to rest the soil, and stop digging. After some persuasion, Lu Gaotian listened to Su Mu's advice, took a small amount of yin mu soil and filled the pit. However, Su Mu's plan still failed. I don't know how many years the bronze alien coffin has existed. The surrounding Inmu breath soil has absorbed countless evil spirits and death auras, and it is already a great evil. After taking it back to the barracks, a bigger disaster happened. Since that day there have been frequent incidents and evil in the military camp. Fortunately, there is no need to worry too much about such small problems. Because there is a strong sense of death in those Inmu woods. Although it won't be as terrifying as the grey gas that erupted from the bronze alien coffin, it will make people die in an instant. But it's not much better. In just two or three days, the people in the military camp died of agony one by one. On the fourth day, only Su Mu and Lu Yuqin were left. However, they only lasted one or two more days before dying one by one. Possibly due to weak resistance to filthy things, Su Mu was the last to die. Looking at the barracks with corpses everywhere, Su Mu sighed helplessly. As soon as he closed his eyes, he became unconscious again. Score, G. Dungeon completion, 6%. Points earned, 0. Comment, your short life is only a mere 6 years. Not only did you achieve nothing, but you also eliminated 832 people. Hint, if the completion rate is less than 90%, the copy is not completed and cannot be left. Come on, more people died this time. In the standby space of the simulator, Su Mu looked helpless. I wanted to get as much benefits from the bronze alien coffin as possible. It turned out to be self-defeating, killing an entire army camp. It seems that this thing is indeed not something that Su Mu can touch now, and if you touch it, you will die. After a pause, Su Mu started the third simulation. This time, he decided to stop dying and try to live. Today, we can explore the general situation of this dungeon well. In the third generation, Sumu didn't plan to fight the bronze alien coffin anymore. He honestly waited to grow up, and began to practice martial arts after the age of six. During the period, a strange incident happened, which was still related to the bronze alien coffin. When Sumu was eight years old, it was the tenth year of apocalypse. The wasteland where the bronze alien coffin was buried suddenly returned to normal, and crops could continue to be grown again. Su Mu was greatly surprised. After digging quietly, he found that the sense of crisis had disappeared. In other words, the underground bronze coffin of alien beasts disappeared. Apocalypse appeared in six years, and disappeared inexplicably in Apocalypse ten years, like a ghost. In this case, the mysterious color of this bronze coffin has been added. However, after the terrifying bronze coffin disappeared, Su Mu's life became more stable. He practices martial arts every day and reads books when he has time. Being harassed by Lu Yuqin could no longer be done, so he took time to play with her for a while. Fortunately, this girl Lu Yuqin grew up in a military camp and has a wild temperament. When I was a little older, I fell in love with recreational methods such as hunting, fishing, and archery. This makes Sumu not too boring when she is with her. At the age of 12, Sumu officially joined the army. At this time, he was 7 feet tall and looked no different from an adult. Moreover, he is already a third-rate martial artist, and his combat power is quite impressive. Ordinary soldiers are not his opponents at all. In the following years, Su Mu's martial arts cultivation continued to improve, and at the age of 15, he officially advanced to a second-rate martial artist. The martial arts such as shaking the mountain and breaking saber in the army were superbly cultivated by him. By this time, Su Mu's combat power was already among the best in the entire military camp. Only a first-class warrior like Lu Gaotian can stabilize him. The other minor capitals, although their cultivation base is higher than Su Mu, are only on par with him in combat power. This gave Su Mu the title of a genius. Of course, he is also a genius in a small army camp. Putting it in the outside world is nothing. At the age of 16, 
Su Mu participated in a bandit suppression operation as Shi Chang. Who knows, this band of bandits is actually supported by a wealthy household in the city, and their strength is higher than expected. The centurion who took the lead was not very good, but was hacked to death by the bandit leader and a group of his subordinates. In times of crisis, Su Mu stepped forward. Holding a war sword, he fought battles all the way, and forcibly cut a path. Then, in the siege of many bandits, the head of the bandit was beheaded by the sword. When Su Mu, who was covered in blood, stepped on a pile of corpses and raised the head of the bandit, the morale of the army was greatly boosted. And the bandits were devastated and panicked. In the end, these bandits who escaped and died, were completely cleared away. After this battle, Su Mu's prestige in the barrack sword, and he was promoted to centurion. With no background, Su Mu became a centurion in the army at the age of 17. This is already an amazing promotion speed. But if you want to continue to rise, it will be very difficult. Now is not a time of war and chaos, and there are not so many opportunities for meritorious service. And Su Mu has no background and no one to help. However, he doesn't care if he is promoted or not, after all, it is just a simulated world. On this day, Su Mu sat on a piece of dead wood just like when he was a child, pondering quietly. Counting the time, the great famine that swept across Jizhou is about to come a year later. I don't know what terrible things will happen at that time. Just as he was thinking, a gust of wind suddenly hit the back of Su Mu's head. He didn't even think about it, he slapped him with his palm, like slapping a mosquito. He only heard a crisp pop, the fist that was trying to attack him was missed, and at the same time there was a young girl's exclamation. Ah! It hurts! Brother Su Mu, can't you take it easy? The girl muttered in dissatisfaction, and then sat down beside Su Mu. After sitting down, she dragged her chin with her hands, raised her head to look at Su Mu, and couldn't help but smile. This made Su Mu sigh helplessly. This beautiful, white-toothed and slim girl is Lu Yuqing. Over the years, if Su Mu has something to worry about, Lu Yuqing is definitely one of them. Her father Lu Gaotian has always been very optimistic about Su Mu and treated him very well. But there is a very fatal problem. That is the marriage of a man and a woman. Su Mu and Lu Yuqing grew up together, they are childhood sweethearts. Moreover, Su Mu was quite good, so Lu Gaotian liked him very much, and regarded him as his quick son-in-law. Lu Yuqing is one year younger than Su Mu. When she was 14 years old, Lu Gaotian hinted that the two of them could get married. When Su Mu heard this, her scalp felt numb, and she hurriedly pretended to be confused. But in the past two years, Lu Gaotian mentioned this matter more and more frequently. Up to now, it is no longer implied, but explicit. After all, Lu Yuqing is 16 years old. In Dagon, you can start getting married at the age of 14, but if you can't get married at the age of 18, then you are an old girl. However, Su Mu never wanted to marry Lu Yuqing. The most important reason is that this is a simulated world. Everything will return to nothingness. Like a game, a dream. Su Mu didn't want to have too heavy ties with the characters in the simulation world, which was not good for both parties. He didn't forget that his golden finger was called Death Simulator. Maybe one day he will die, what kind of relatives will he be? Thinking of this, Su Mu turned to Lu Yuqing and asked. Little girl, I just went hunting with you yesterday, why are you bothering me again today? Is there something wrong? Lu Luqing wrinkled his nose and said dissatisfiedly. What? I can't come to you if I have nothing to do. Am I so annoying? Hearing this, Su Mu shrugged and didn't speak. After all, Lu Yuqing grew up in the military barracks, and he didn't make trouble for Su Mu's straight man behavior. She just pursed her lips and said aggrievedly. Daddy told you to go to the tent, he has something to tell you. I came over here to inform you. Well, let's go then. Su Mu stood up and walked towards Lu Gaotian's tent. Lu Yuqing hurriedly followed, just like when he was a child. The two came to Lu Gaotian's tent together. More than ten years have passed, and Lu Gaotian has aged a little, but his overall appearance has not changed much. Yu Yu reading WW. 
Bukanshu. Calm. Over the years, he has not improved much in martial arts cultivation, he is still a first-class martial artist, and has no hope of promotion. But none of this was Lu Gaotian's concern. What he is most worried about is his own daughter. Seeing Lu Liching's young daughter-in-law seemed to be following behind Su Mu, there was still grievance on her face. Lu Gaotian's expression suddenly turned cold, but he was more helpless. He also didn't know what kind of nerves this kid Su Mu had. He was such a good-looking girl, how could he not do it? People who are fathers are afraid that pigs will overwhelm their own cabbage. Lu Gaotian is better, he is worried about his own free cabbage, but that stupid pig won't do it. Thinking of this, Lu Gaotian sighed helplessly, pointed at Su Mu and said. You boy, ah, uh, boy. Hey, I don't know what to say about you, the truth will eliminate you. There's a task here, take it and go do it quickly, I don't want to see you. With that said, Lu Gaotian threw a copy of the military order to Su Mu and turned his head away from him. Dad, don't be so cruel to brother Su Mu. Lu Yuqin was a little dissatisfied with his father's attitude, so he pulled his arm and shouted like a spoiled child. But this shout made Lu Gaotian even more angry. It is said that after a daughter gets married, her elbow will turn out. My family hasn't gotten married yet, so my elbow is turned out. Where do you put him as a father? Thinking of this, Lu Gaotian's eyes became more and more dangerous. Su Mu's eyelids twitched, Ling Sense has already begun to warn. He quickly cupped his hands and agreed, and ran out with the military order. Angry Dad, it's terrifying. After leaving the camp, Su Mu ran for a distance before opening the military order book and reading it carefully. This time the task is not complicated. A certain remote village was suspected of being entrenched by gangsters, and Lu Gaotian was asked to send a team of elite troops to gather at the designated place to suppress the bandits. Lu Gaotian asked Su Mu to do this errand, but he was actually helping him and making him accumulate more military merit. Although he was cursing, Lu Gaotian took great care of Su Mu. This warmed his heart, and a smile appeared on his face. The task was very simple, and Su Mu didn't think much about it. Early the next morning, he ordered 100 men and horses and set off to the designated location. After reaching the destination, Su Mu glanced around and frowned slightly. This matter, it seems that it is not as simple as imagined. There were actually 300 person teams gathered here. Counting Su Mu, that's 400 people. Do you need so many people to fight a bandit in the village? And they are all elites drawn from various military camps. In addition, Su Mu also saw a team of cavalry of about 50 people. These cavalrymen are dressed in heavy black armor and are full of murderous aura. At a glance, you can see that the origin is extraordinary. These people are clearly the elite personal soldiers of King Biling, Xuanjiaki. In today's world, except for the sage in Yanjing City, the King Biling is the most powerful. Jizhou and Yanzhou are his fiefs. In fact, he is the number one king in the world. For this mission, King Biling's personal soldiers were actually dispatched. What exactly is this going to do? Su Mu faintly smelled a dangerous aura. But he didn't show any strange color on the surface, just quietly observed other people. It can be seen that the other three teams are also somewhat surprised. However, no one dared to ask more, so they could only wait for the instructions silently. After Su Mu and his party arrived, everyone was still waiting in place. About a quarter of an hour later, another group of people came, also a hundred people. At this point, everyone has arrived, a total of five hundred people. Everyone, follow me. The leader of the Black Armor Cavalry gave an order coldly, and then led the cavalry to lead the way in front, and there were more than a dozen cavalry at the end. Although there are a lot of problems, the military orders are like mountains. The crowd did not dare to disobey, so they could only obediently follow behind. This march took a whole day. It was not until dusk that everyone, led by Xian Jiechi, came to a remote mountain pass. Did you see the village in front? It's there, get rid of the enemies inside. The leader of the black armor pointed to the front, but he had no intention of moving forward. The other four teams didn't think too much, or dared not think too much. 
They approached the village together, making full preparations to suppress the bandits. Only Su Mu, with his subordinates, stood on the spot without moving. In the evening, there was no smoke, no lights, and no popularity in this village. No matter how you look at it, it feels very strange. Most importantly, after coming here, Ling Ju sent a warning to Su Mu. The closer you get to that weird village, the stronger the sense of crisis. What are you still doing? Go. Seeing that Su Mu didn't move, the leader of the black armored cavalry gave a cold scolding. Vaguely, there was even a murderous aura. Looking at it, if Su Mu doesn't bring anyone in, they're afraid they'll have to take some measures. Don't look at the fact that there are only 50 black armored cavalry. But they are all second-rate warriors, and the leader is a first-rate warrior. And well-trained and well-equipped. Not to mention Su Mu's team, even if you add the other four teams, they are definitely not their opponents. But will Su Mu be afraid? Without flinching, he looked directly at the leader of the black armored cavalry and asked. There is no smoke in this village, and it seems to have been abandoned for a long time. How can there be bandits in such a village? My lord's information, I'm afraid it's wrong, right? Hearing this, the man's expression turned solemn, and a more intense murderous aura rolled out. You know that military orders are like mountains. Do you want to disobey them? While speaking, the black armored horse behind him stepped forward at the same time, with astonishing power. At this moment, spiritual sense gave a frantic warning. This shows that these black armored cavalry are not intimidating Sumu, but can really eliminate people. This made Sumu even more uncomfortable. He just asked a rhetorical question. At most, his tone was not very good, and he bumped into the peak. Is this about to eliminate? It seems that this task is very problematic. Faced with such a situation, Sumu quickly thought about it. At this time, there was a conflict with Swanjiaki, and they were afraid that none of them would survive. He is not afraid of death, but this meaningless and useless death is a bit boring. Might as well go explore the weird village and see what the this group of people is up to. Thinking of this, Su Mu did not confront Swanjiaki again. Let's go. After showing a cold smile at the leader of the black armored cavalry, he walked towards the village with his soldiers. On the surface, Su Mu was holding back for a while. But in his heart, he had already labeled this man as mortal. There's no reason, it's just that he doesn't feel good about it. Head, this kid's killing intent is very heavy. I heard that he is very talented in martial arts practice. He was promoted to second-rate martial artist at the age of 15. I'm afraid. It's only a matter of time before he surpasses you. Yes, I have also heard of his genius. After Su Mu led the people away, several black armored riders chatted with their leader. Genius? Huh, no matter how powerful a genius is, it's just blood eating tonight. Go, follow the instructions of that lord, block off the village and don't let them run away. One, you can't let go. Xian Jichi sneered, the jealousy in his eyes faded a little, and turned into a little pleasure. Under his orders, all the cavalry took action one after another. They made some strange arrangements at certain locations near the village. It seems to be making some sort of formation. All of this was seen by Su Mu, and the sense of crisis in his heart became more and more serious. But it also gave him a strong interest in this dilapidated village. What exactly is in this village? What exactly do these black armored riders want to do? With this question in mind, Su Mu led people into the village. Brothers, have you found the bandits' hiding place? Su Mu asked the centurions who came first. No, there's no one in this village. I can't see half a person, it's all dust. I didn't find anyone either. I only found some bloodstains that have dried up for a long time. It seems that a tragedy happened. Did you smell it? There is a faint stench in this village. Smell, smell. There's something wrong with this village. What on earth did they want to call us here? After a few centurions got together to chat for a while, they felt that this mission was full of weirdness. When everyone was surprised, the sun in the west completely sank. Darkness has come. Ding bell bell ding bell bell. 
Almost at the moment when night fell, a strange copper bell rang outside the village. Everyone looked back and saw that the leader of the black armored cavalry was holding a simple copper bell, shaking it vigorously. A hideous smile appeared on his face. Swish. Swish. In the copper bell, the soil of this dilapidated village began to churn. One after another, corpses exuding a rotten smell broke out of the ground and stood up straight. Among them, there are men and women, old and young. Judging from the clothes, they should be the villagers of this village. They all turned into zombies and were buried in the ground. Here, what happened? When everyone was shocked, hundreds of zombies had already surrounded them. After death, the body does not rot, and those who gather the yin chi of the heaven and the earth are zombies. It is a kind of ghost with a high reputation among the people, but it is not easy to form, and it can even be said that it is somewhat difficult. Because zombies pay attention to one cultivation. If you don't raise corpses, you won't become a climate. The better you raise, the more fierce the zombies will be. The hundreds of zombies in this village are all black zombies. Their bodies are dark and black, and their fingertips grow three inch long ferocious claws. There were two sharp fangs under his lips, and some bloodstains could be vaguely seen. Obviously, this group of zombies was specially raised here, and they were well raised. That ferocious aura sent chills down the backs of the soldiers. Like a little white rabbit being stared at by a beast. What's the matter? Isn't it a gangster? How did it become a zombie? A centurion shouted in shock and anger. Isn't the answer obvious? We were sent to be blood food, to put it bluntly, to feed zombies. Su Mu's eyes were cold, and he revealed the truth that everyone vaguely guessed but didn't want to face. At this time, a thick fog rose up around the dilapidated village, isolating their 500 soldiers from the outside world. Needless to say, this ecstasy formation was preventing them from escaping. These people have done everything. What should we do? Why do you do this to us? We were betrayed. We were betrayed. There were constant riots in the team, and people were panicking. Seeing this, Su Mu stood up. It's useless to say anything now, just dash with me and make a path. He drew out his sword and charged towards the corpse with high fighting spirit. Under the leadership of Su Mu, many soldiers also took out their swords to join the battle, and the overall morale recovered a lot. However, in the face of absolute strength, morale has little effect. The strength of these black zombies is terrifying. Almost everyone has the strength of a second-rate warrior. The sword in Su Mu's hand danced wildly, and it took several breaths of time to finally chop a black zombie into pieces. But he just eliminated one, and immediately surrounded by four or five. Su Mu turned his head to look, and found that the battle situation was already one sided. Not only are these black zombies comparable in strength to second rate warriors, but their vitality is extremely tenacious, making them difficult to eliminate without being chopped into pieces. But the black body is tougher than the cowhide soaked in tongue oil, how can it be so easy to divide the body? In this short period of time, the small half of the soldiers died in Hazong's hands, and all the blood was sucked dry. This terrifying scene made many soldiers terrified and no longer willing to fight. For a while, screams rang out in this dilapidated village. Many soldiers cried and fled out of the village. But after they slammed into the thick fog, they couldn't get out at all. After a circle, they returned to the village. Then, in panic, he was bitten by a zombie and drank his blood to death. Among the corpses, Su Mu was still fighting. He slashed one black stiff's head with a knife, and smashed another black stiff's chest with another punch. But there were five black zombies around him. Even if Su Mu immediately retreated after making a move, one of them scratched his arm, leaving several bloodstains. The wound scratched by Hei Zong quickly rotted and turned black, giving off a stench. It's corpse poison. The violent poison made Su Mu's head a little dizzy, and some double images appeared in front of him. The situation is extremely critical. As the soldiers died one by one, many black zombies freed their hands after a full meal. After all the soldiers died, Su Mu was no longer facing the fourth and fifth zombies. Su Mu understood that this was already a mortal situation. 
all he is thinking about now is how to die more valuable. The only trump card in his hand is Crazy Demon. After this talent is activated, all the vitality will be burned in a short time, and the combat power will be tripled. But after the outbreak ends, he will usher in death. How can we make the most of this talent? While Su Mu stepped back, he came up with a rough plan. Meanwhile, outside the village. The Xuanjia cavalry was waiting in full force. These ghosts are really scary. Five hundred soldiers, if you don't have them, they'll be gone. The leader of the Xuanjia cavalry was a little stunned. Obviously they are just a group of ordinary villagers, but under the hands of that adult they turned into such terrifying ghosts. And that's just what he saw and knew. Who knows if there are more powerful zombies. What exactly is their master, King Biling, planning? Thinking of this, the leader of the Xuanjia cavalry shuddered and did not dare to think further. He took a deep breath and quietly waited for the killing to end. As time went by, the screams in the village became less and less, until they disappeared completely. It seems that everything has been settled. Let's go and take care of the funeral for those poor fellows. The leader of the Xuanjia rider gave an order and led his subordinates to lift the ecstasy formation outside the village. As the thick fog dissipated, a tragic corpse appeared in front of them. These corpses fell into the village, their faces distorted, and their eyes were filled with horror, unwillingness and anger. Strange, so many people died, but there was not much blood. Because most of the blood was drained by those black zombies. The leader of the black armor shook the copper bell, and the black zombies who had feasted staggered back into the pit, continuing the process of raising the corpse. It's not that being bitten by a zombie will turn into a zombie. Raising corpses is a science. And it requires a lot of materials. These soldiers eliminated by the black zombies will be thrown into the deep mountains, where they will be eaten by wild animals. These poor soldiers never thought that the real content of this mission is to make them food. From blood to flesh, nothing is left. After all the black zombies lie back, it's time to deal with the corpses. But the leader of the Xuanjia cavalry was surprised and suddenly found that there were three black zombies lying on the ground without getting up. It just twisted slightly, looking a little weird. Huh. What's going on here? The leader of the black armor is a little strange. Yu Yu reading. He didn't know if there was a problem with the copper bell in his hand or with the three black zombies. There is a faint sense of crisis. He rang the copper bell again, but the three black zombies still couldn't get up and go back to the corpse pit. In desperation, the leader of the black armored cavalry, with a few of his subordinates, approached cautiously, wanting to check what was going on. Unexpectedly, when the distance between the two sides was still more than ten meters, an abnormality protruded. With a loud noise, the three black zombies were suddenly blasted out. Then a figure jumped out. Those blood-red eyes stood out in the dark. The owner of this eye, like a tiger descending from the mountain, pounced on the leader of the black armored cavalry. Following his slaughter, a aura rushed towards his face, making people terrified. This person is Su Mu. He knew that this time he was bound to die, and he was not prepared enough to turn into a zombie after death. Zombies need to be raised, and if they are not raised, they cannot become a climate. On the verge of death, Su Mu came up with a solution. Su Mu activated his talent Crazy Demon, and his combat power tripled. But he didn't use his last strength to eliminate those black zombies. These black zombies were originally just ordinary villagers. After being eliminated, they were refined into their current appearance. They are all pitiful people. What Su Mu wanted to eliminate was the leader of the Black Armored Cavalry. So, he used the explosive force to pull the three black zombies to cover himself up. Wait, it's those black armored riders who come to end. Don't spray, don't spray, give your child some confidence oh oh. Anyone still alive? The leader of the Xuanjia cavalry was shocked and secretly said something was wrong. But Su Mu's long-awaited leap was as fast as lightning and fierce as a tiger. He came to him in the blink of an eye. At the critical moment, the leader of the Xuanjia cavalry had no time to dodge, so he could only slash at Su Mu with a knife. But what he didn't expect was that Su Mu directly ignored the knife and continued to slaughter it. 
Pfft. Blood splattered. This knife pierced Su Mu's chest. But he ignored it and let the sharp blade pass through his chest, while he continued to move forward. Then, there was another muffled sound. The huge impact force knocked the leader of the black armored cavalry off his horse and fell heavily to the ground. As for Su Mu, he was riding on his body with murderous intent on his face. What do you want to do? Do you want to rebel? I am. Ah. The leader of the Xuanjia cavalry was shocked and angry, and tried to threaten Su Mu. But before he could finish speaking, he let out a scream. Su Mu put his hands on his head, and his eyes burst open. Immediately after that, the heavy fist smashed wildly, and the leader of the black armored cavalry, Qi Chiao, bleated, and his flesh cracked. It's like a smashed watermelon that may burst at any time. The surrounding black armored cavalry were stunned by this brutal scene. When they reacted, their boss had turned into a blood gourd. There is more air in and less air out, and the screams are much weaker. Quick, quick, eliminate him, eliminate him. I don't know who shouted, and all the mysterious knights woke up like a dream, and they drew their swords and slashed at Su Mu. Su Mu sensed the crisis and stopped throwing his fists. But the person under him hasn't completely died, so he can't be let go. In an instant, Su Mu made a decision. I saw him biting on the neck of the leader of the black armored cavalry like a beast, standing up and grabbed him whole. Afterwards, Su Mu pulled out the long knife pierced into his chest and swept away the surrounding cavalry with one knife. The sword light flashed, and then there was a tinkling sound. The cavalry that was besieged was forced away by Su Mushi's heavy sword. One of them had bad luck and was targeted by Su Mu. After forcing the cavalry back, Su Mu swung a knife again and slashed at him. That sharp blade, like the north wind in the three or nine days, was cold to the core. The surrounding Xuanjia riders only felt a gust of cold wind blowing, and the person locked by Su Mu was split into two by the man and the horse. Seeing this situation, all the cavalry became terrified. Even the horses under them could not help but retreat, screeching loudly. At this time, Su Mu's eyes were scarlet, and his body faintly exuded a smell of rot. With the burning of his vitality, he could no longer suppress the corpse poison. Coupled with all kinds of heavy injuries, life has entered the countdown. Su Mu Sonko, discarded the leader of the lower black armored cavalry. This man's face was an unrecognizable, and he was invaded by corpse poison again, and he lost his life in the first step. To prevent an accident, Su Mu smashed his head with one foot. Let him not even have the chance to become a zombie. After that, the light in Su Mu's eyes quickly faded, and there was no breath. After Su Mu lost his movement, the remaining black armor riders looked at each other, no one dared to approach first. After exchanging glances with each other, they carefully moved towards Su Muna step by step. It took him half an hour to move before he came to Su Mu. Seeing that he still didn't move, his head drooped down, and all the black armored riders breathed a sigh of relief. This murderer is finally dead. Damn, you scared me to death. How can this guy be so cruel at such a young age? It's like killing a god. Ishwanjia rode off his horse and came to Su Mu's side, looking at his young face in disbelief. Just looking at Su Mu's handsome and handsome appearance, one can't imagine what kind of a savage god this would be. Hey! I can't imagine that the boss would be folded in the hands of a hundred households. That's all, let's not talk about it, just deal with the funeral and go back to your life. The leader died violently, and the mood of all the black armored riders was very low. After returning, they didn't know how to deal with it. But just when they were about to finish, Su Mu suddenly opened his scarlet eyes. Zombies need to be raised. In the cultivation process, the cloudy chi of the heaven and earth is gathered and turned into its own corpse chi. The better it is raised and the longer it is raised, the more ferocious the zombies will be. This nurturing process is either artificial or coincidental. But it must not be missing. So, normally speaking, people who are bitten by zombies will not become zombies. 500 soldiers who died tragically in the hands of zombies before, do not need special treatment, just throw them away in the deep mountains. But Su Mu is no ordinary person. 
At the moment of death, remorse activates. The indescribable pain caused Su Mu to gather a lot of yin and evil energy at the moment of death to nourish his corpse energy. This corpse aura is not strong enough to make Su Mu a real zombie. But enough for him to bounce around for a while. For the rest of the black armored cavalry, this small amount of effort is a nightmare. A few mysterious armors dismounted and planned to collect the corpse of their leader. But at this moment, Su Mu opened his scarlet eyes. What Su Mu has transformed is also black zombie. But he was not an ordinary villager before his death, but a top second-rate warrior. After being corpse, Su Mu's physical fitness has been further improved, which is much more terrifying than the previous black zombies. Before the few black armored riders noticed something strange, Su Mu slapped one of them with his fingertips down. The three-inch long, dagger-like black claws pierced into the man's head. It's as easy as poking tofu. Ah uh, ah. Uh. The severely injured black armor rider had a look of horror on his face, and his body was twitching constantly. He whimpered a few times, but was speechless. In the mouth and on the top of the head, blood gushed wildly. The eyes of several people around were horrified by this scene, Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Kam had some soft legs for a while. But their panic didn't last long. Before they could react, Su Mu gave him a slap and slapped him to death. Su Mu could feel that the corpse energy in his body was rapidly passing. After all the corpse chi had passed away, he was completely cold. So Su Mu must eliminate all the black armored knights before that, and drag them to together. The Xuanjia cavalry is indeed an elite. Facing such a terrifying situation, he did not run away, but after a brief riot, he formed a battle formation and charged towards Su Mu. It's a pity that what they have to face is not an ordinary enemy. Facing the charge of the cavalry, Su Mu opened his mouth and spit, and a black smoke swept away. Before the Zwanjiaki could eliminate him, all of them were poisoned with corpse poison. I don't know if it's because of the simulator, but Su Mu seems to be very talented in being a ghost. As long as you turn into some kind of demon, you will be able to understand his talent and ability naturally, just like an instinct. After the poisonous smoke was sprayed out, everyone in the black armor was poisoned, dizzy, and their strength was greatly reduced. The few cavalrymen who rushed in front were either slapped to death by Su Mu, or sucked to death by him. In one face to face, four or five mysterious knights were lost. This time, the military heart of the Xuanjia cavalry was shaken. Some timid and cowardly people turned their horses and fled into the distance. If someone takes the lead, more will escape. But where can this person from the deep mountains and forests escape? Dark night is the best hunting ground for Sumul. Since you're here, let's die together. Under the moonlight, Su Mu jumped a dozen feet, and Fei also started hunting. Su Mupin sat in a standby space, and there was still a bit of fierce light in his eyes. After turning into a black zombie, he eliminated all the remaining forty or so black armored cavalry. It's a pity that after killing these enemies, all the corpse energy in Su Mu's body was exhausted. In addition, without any preparation, we can only meet the end. After returning to the standby space, Su Mu began to organize the information obtained in the previous life. One of the most important is that King Biling is raising zombies. And it is most likely to be raised on a large scale and in a planned manner. He even went to the army to select elites and fed the zombies with the blood of the soldiers. This behavior is really crazy. Once exposed, a large scale mutiny will surely occur, with unimaginable consequences. However, this should not have happened. In the real world, Su Mu specially went to investigate the famine in Jizhou. This great famine lasted for three years causing countless casualties. The whole Jizhou was arid like purgatory, and it was not until more than ten years later that it gradually recovered. But there was no mutiny. As for King Biling, he mysteriously disappeared during the famine, and no one knows his whereabouts. Behind this big unsolved case, there must be a huge secret hidden. But as Su Mu, he still can't know the truth behind these secrets. If he wants to know the truth, he can only continue to explore in the simulated world. After sorting out the information obtained in the previous life, Su Mu began to think about how to develop in the next life. 
the normal process is no longer working. As long as Su Mu practiced martial arts and joined the army, he would definitely be targeted. It's useless even to be low-key. Who knows how many people are needed to feed the zombies. They are the first batch, isn't there a second or third batch? It seems that we have to change our minds. Su Mu called out the talent interface and checked it out. He needs a new batch of talents. The first thing to replace is Big Dream, the only Cyan talent among the ten talents. To catch people in the army and feed them to zombies, you need elites and warriors. If they are just ordinary people, why should they be caught in the army? In this case, Su Mu will be a fool for 18 years, so he will never be caught. This disaster can be avoided. The first talent was finalized, and Su Mu began to choose the second one. The three talents I brought before, namely Spiritual Sense, Crazy Demon, and Kindness, all look very good. But this time, Su Mu decided to drop Spiritual Sense and Crazy Demon. Ling Sense seems to be able to predict danger in advance, which is very useful. But Su Mu itself has a good ability to predict danger, which makes the effect of this talent not as big as imagined. As for the Crazy Demon. Very useful, but will consume vitality before death. For ordinary people, death means the end, so how can you manage the things before death? But for Su Mu, death was just the beginning. He guessed that the monsters in this simulated world are probably related to zombies. And the talent of Crazy Demon will run out of vitality before death, making Su Mu much weaker after being transformed into a zombie. If he didn't activate Crazy Demon before his death in the previous life, he would have more corpse energy after death. You can jump around for a while. Therefore, after careful consideration, Su Muxia dropped spiritual sense in Crazy Demon and only kept kindness. Although the soldiers in the barracks led by Lu Gaotian were not bad. But to be a fool for 18 years, Su Mu is somewhat at a loss. If you don't wait for him to become enlightened, the person will be gone, then it will not be a waste of time. So for the second talent, Su Mu chose kindness. As for the last talent, after Su Mu thought about it, he chose Heavenly Widow. Barracks, fools. These two things are irrelevant to my wife. So this talent has no negative impact on Su Mu. With the experience of the first simulated world, Su Mu knew that the annotations given by the talents in the simulator were not detailed. Some seemingly inexplicable talents actually have hidden effects. For example, Su Mu solidified reproach. Although it would make death extremely painful, it was able to gather yin and evil energy, which would help him transform into a demon. This seemingly useless heavenly widow may also have a hidden effect. Even if not, it's fine. He has been a single dog for more than 20 years on earth, is he still afraid of being single in a simulated world? After choosing the three talents, Su Mu still did not move the 60 points he had accumulated. The situation of the copy is unknown and still needs to be explored. In this way, Su Mu started the fourth generation of this simulated world. Body 6. Intelligence, 3. Life, 4. Talents, Big Dream, Kindness, Widowhood, Resentment. Item, None. The opening interface faded, and Su Mu was reborn again. Big Dream This talent is somewhat different from what Su Mu imagined. Su Mu thought that before the age of 18, he would be confused and not know anything. In fact, Su Mu's mind is very clear, and he can perceive everything in the outside world. But his consciousness seemed to be trapped in a cage, unable to control his body. Before the age of 18, Su Mu acted completely by instinct. Eat when you are hungry, drink when you are thirsty. Laugh when you are happy, cry when you are sad. He is as pure as a child, and his eyes are as clear as a clear spring. Fortunately, the people in the barracks treated Su Mu well, they had enough food and clothing, and they didn't beat or scold him. There is a reason for the talent of kindness. But more, because most of the soldiers in this barracks are not bad by nature, they are all pretty good people. This has a great relationship with Lu Gao Tian, the commander of Dadu. The upper beam is not straight and the lower beam is crooked. Vice versa. But what Su Mu didn't expect was that even though he was stupid, Lu Yuqing still liked to play with him. 
Moreover, before the age of 18, Su Mu acted by instinct, and his relationship with Lu Yueqing was closer than in the previous life. It was nothing more than when he was a child. As he grew older, Lu Yueqing's attitude towards him became vaguely wrong. This made Su Mu sigh, could it be that a handsome man can do whatever he wants? Is it okay to be stupid? This face-seeing world. Of course Su Mu's state is not stupid in the conventional sense. It is a kind of extreme purity and simplicity. In this state, instead, there is a feeling of reassurance. The heart of a child is precious. But Su Mu couldn't maintain this state forever. In the nineteenth year of the apocalypse, that terrible military order appeared again. Without Su Mu, this mission was led by another centurion. Then, these hundred people are gone forever. The statement given above is that the bandits are ferocious and the whole army is destroyed. Lu Gaotian has doubts, but has nowhere to find the truth. In the end, it could only be over. Only Su Mu knew that these hundred people had already been fed zombies and died tragically in the corpse farm. After a few months, the top came to ask for someone again. As a result, another hundred people mysteriously disappeared, none left. The saying is still the same as before if you encounter a strong enemy, your entire army will be wiped out. However, the entire army was destroyed twice in a row, and no corpses were seen in the dead. Many people were already muttering in their hearts. Lu Gaotian quietly contacted Dajutong from several other military camps, and found that several groups of people had also been taken over there. Just the datas he knew well, together with them, had already lost thousands of soldiers. How could there be such a powerful bandit in the entire Jizhou? Lu Gaotian was in a heavy heart, and vaguely felt that some kind of big terror was about to come. Just when the rain was about to come and the wind was blowing, Su Mu's 18th birthday arrived. Eighteen years of the big dream, today I wake up and go to the sky. Brother Mu, today is your 18th birthday, and this short knife is for you. Don't look at it ordinary, my dad treasures it. It seems to be made by some famous craftsman. I spent a lot of time trying to get it from him. On the field ridge, a young man and woman sat side by side. The slim girl took out a short knife with a cold glow and gave it to the sweetheart beside her. I saw that the young man was tall and handsome. But his brain seemed to be a little unsettled. After taking the short knife, he just smiled stupidly and didn't speak. Seeing this, Lu Yuqing also laughed. Although others say that Su Mu is a fool, she always thinks that Su Mu is not stupid, but she is not enlightened. Maybe one day when you get enlightened, you will be smarter than others. Brother Mu, let's go back, otherwise Dad will have to worry again. Jizhou has been a little uneasy recently. Lu Yuqing stretched out a hand to Su Mu, preparing to lead him home. Lu Yuqing is seventeen this year, and he still hasn't married because of this silly boy in front of him. Because of this, Lu Gaotian did not know how many times he made fire. But Lu Yuqing seemed to be weak, but he was extremely stubborn, and the nine-headed ox couldn't turn his back on what he believed. Lu Gaotian had nothing to do with her. But Lu Gaotian would never agree to let his daughter marry a fool. This matter has just reached a deadlock. Thinking of this, Lu Yuqing couldn't help but get distracted. When she came back to her senses, she found that Su Mu hadn't given her his hand yet. This is something that has never happened. Ha! Huh. Brother Mu, give me your hand, we should go back. Lu Yuqing called out again. But what she didn't expect was that Su Mu suddenly raised her head and showed her a smile. You go back first, I still have something to do. This sentence made Lu Yuqing stay where he was, his eyes extremely shocked. Eighteen years. For eighteen years, Su Mu has never said a word. This was the first sentence he said in his life. Also, how can this tone and demeanor be a little silly? After being stunned for several breaths, Lu Yuqing trembled. Little, little brother Mu, you, you. You. Lu Yuqing was so excited that he couldn't utter a complete sentence. Su Mu knew what she was going to ask, and nodded lightly. Yes, I'm enlightened. Thank you for your care over the years. Hearing this, Lu Yueqing's eyes overflowed with tears of excitement, and he flew into Su Mu's arms. 
you you. I knew, I knew you're not a fool, brother Xiaomu. I finally waited until today, you you. Seeing the girl crying in her arms, Su Mu smiled helplessly, and patted her on the back lightly to help her calm down. Eighteen years later, Su Mu finally survived. The moment he just turned eighteen, the mind that was sealed in his body was finally liberated and took over this body. At the same time, Su Mu's basic attributes are all doubled. Body, 12. Intelligence, 6. Life, 8. Su Mu's original attributes are already a little bit beyond ordinary people. Now that it's doubled, it's really a genius. Counting the time, there are still seven months before the Jizhou famine. Su Mu must hurry up and improve his strength. He doesn't have the slightest bit of martial arts now. Don't wait for me. Thinking of this, Su Mu comforted Lu Yuqing. After she stopped crying, she persuaded her to go back. But no matter what Su Mu said, Lu Yuqing was unwilling to leave him. Just one attitude, either go together or stay together. Helpless, Su Mu could only start practicing martial arts under Lu Yuqing's watch. In several lifetimes, he has practiced martial arts several times, and he has already mastered the first few realms of martial arts. In the field, Su Mu took a stance and slowly struck a mountain-shaking fist. This set of boxing techniques, which are common in the army, has a unique charm in Su Mu. Lu Yuqing vaguely felt that Su Mu's shaking the mountain was a little different from what ordinary people do, but he couldn't see any difference. If Lu Gaotian was here, he would have found that Su Mu had cultivated Shan Shan Quan to a level of mastery and mastery, and had realized his own boxing technique. In the martial art of shaking the mountain, Su Mu can be called a master. Su Mu practiced until dusk. In just one day, the innate essence in his body tripled, nourishing his body continuously. At this rate, Su Mu will be able to become a third-rate warrior in one month at most. Speaking of this speed, I'm afraid it will shock countless people's jaws. Even Su Mu felt that the speed was a bit outrageous. Strange, even if the attributes are doubled, the training speed won't be so fast, right? What went wrong? After feeling that something was wrong, Su Mu hit Shan Shan again. It turned out that when he practiced martial arts, the talent of Tian Wei actually shined. Could it be that this talent can increase the speed of my cultivation? Su Mu was a little surprised. But after thinking about it carefully, he was relieved. Without a woman in my heart, practicing martial arts is a natural god. I don't want my wife anymore. Isn't it normal for Yu Yu reading to improve the efficiency of martial arts? This is the highest meaning of being single. Brother Mu, you're improving so fast. Lu Yuqing on the side still didn't know that Su Mu was destined to be lonely in this life and her plans were empty. It's a so-so. It's getting late, let's go back. Su Mufeng replied calmly, neither arrogant nor impetuous. Um. Lu Yuqing nodded, took Su Mu's hand as usual, and jumped to the barracks, shaking the braids on his head. This little girl also practices martial arts, but her talent is mediocre. After so many years of practice, she is worthy of a third-rate advanced. She could only vaguely sense that Su Mu's martial arts training progressed a little faster. But exactly how fast, there is no telling. Seeing the happy smile on Lu Yueqing's face, Su Mu couldn't help sighing in his heart. How could he not know what this little girl was thinking, but they were destined to be impossible. Not to mention the talent of Heavenly Widow. The famine in a few months will turn Jizhou into a dead place. What's more, the king of Biling is secretly refining corpses, and he doesn't know what he is planning. It won't be long before Jizhou will be turned upside down, and there will be no distinction between people and ghosts. If you want to survive, you must increase your strength as quickly as possible. Where can there be time and environment for them to fall in love? On the way home, the setting sun sets, and darkness gradually engulfs the earth. During the alternation of yin and yang, all things in the world become bright and dark, and it is impossible to see their true colors. Su Mu looked into the distance with deep eyes. In this life, he wants to carve out a way of life in the dark. The news of Su Mu's enlightenment quickly spread in the military camp. But not many people care. In this life, 
he is just a little fool, not the martial arts genius of the previous life. Except for Liu Yuqing, few people were particularly concerned about him. Only Liu Gaotian breathed a sigh of relief when he knew that Su Mu was enlightened. His daughter finally doesn't have to be obsessed with a fool anymore. Well enlightened. Good enlightenment. With no one paying attention, Su Mu practiced martial arts silently. To be more precise, it was a crazy martial arts practice. He only slept for two hours a day, and he practiced martial arts every day to the point of madness. Only Lu Yuqing knew how hard Su Mu worked. Because this little girl accompanied him the whole time. No matter how early Su Mu got up or how late she went to bed, she was always with her. This made Su Mu's heart a little uncomfortable. Lu Yuqing is a good girl. It's a pity that he and her are destined to have no fate. Perhaps, only in the virtual world can there be such a good girl. The first five small realms in the early stage of martial arts are skin refining, muscle refining, bone refining, visceral refining, and blood refining. Step by step, from the outside to the inside, temper the body and strengthen the innate essence. After tempering the body to perfection, one is qualified to cultivate the astral chi and become an acquired martial artist. It took five days for Sumo to refine the skin. It took Su Mu seven days to train the muscles. In just twelve days, he became a third-rate martial artist. This is faster than Su Mu expected. But Su Mu didn't stop, and continued to practice frantically and hard, like a martial arts idiot. After another twenty-seven days, Su Mu completed bone refining and became a second-rate martial artist. At this point, his speed slowed down. Dirt refining and blood refining are what first-class warriors need to practice, and it is very difficult. 80% of the warriors are trapped in this step, unable to overcome it for a lifetime. But for Su Mu, it just took more time. He continued to practice martial arts from morning to night, frantically tempering the innate essence in his body to nourish himself. After 42 days, Su Mu's dirty refining was completed, and he became a first-class martial artist. By this time, Su Mu had only practiced martial arts for 81 days. 81 days, from zero to a first-class warrior, this speed is really terrifying. Speaking out, I'm afraid others will regard it as nonsense. So Su Mu hasn't told anyone about the progress of his martial arts training. Lu Gaotian and others didn't even know about his martial arts practice. As for Lu Yuqing, this little girl has limited vision. Although she felt that Su Mu was making progress every day, she didn't know where she was in her cultivation, and she didn't care too much. For Lu Yuqing, as long as he can look at Su Mu every day, he is already very happy. Su Mu's progress was so fast, in addition to the 12-point physique, the bonus provided by Heavenly Widow was also very important. Sacrifice the love of a lifetime, and the harvest is still great. It's just. That's all, let's concentrate on practicing martial arts. The final stage of the five refinements is blood refining. After the Shang, it has the effect of cutting hair and washing marrow. Sixty-four days later, Su Mu was standing on the two plum blossom piles as still as a mountain, with a breath as majestic as a tiger. Suddenly, he trembled all over, a lot of black dirt was discharged from the surface of his skin, and the whole person exuded a stench. It's done. Su Mu opened his eyes, a look of joy flashed in his eyes. After 64 days, he finally succeeded in refining blood. In this way, the body refining is completed, and Su Mu is already a first-class and complete martial artist. If you go further, you will have to cultivate to get rid of the Qi. Once the astral Qi is 10%, one can enter the acquired realm. If you don't, you will be stuck in the first-class Dzogchen for the rest of your life. Of course, Su Mu didn't have such troubles. His only trouble is that he doesn't have enough time. Um. Little Mu, you are so stinky. Not far away, Lu Yuqing covered his nose and waved a fan. But then, she stepped forward and grabbed Su Mu's hand, and walked around with him. There's a pond over there, where we caught frogs when we were kids. You were so stupid at that time, you couldn't catch one. Or I gave you one, do you remember? While recalling interesting childhood memories, Lu Yuqing brought Su Mu to the edge of a pond. 
Su Mu was not pretentious. She took off her shirt and jumped into the water to quickly clean it up. Lu Yuqing is worthy of growing up in the military camp, and he is more courageous than ordinary girls. Su Mu's well-defined muscles made her blushed. But this little girl just didn't look back, she watched the whole process with her eyes wide open without blinking. After half an hour, Su Mu finished cleaning and put his clothes on his body. Let's go, stop staring, okay? I won't do it if I look at you. Lu Yuqing blushed, bowed his head and said something earthy. For a while, Su Mu was speechless. Since he had just cultivated to the first class great perfection, Su Mu did not continue any further and gave himself a rare holiday. He and Lu Yuqing took a walk in the fields for a while. This little girl Lu Yuqing was very happy, catching butterflies and crickets for a while. It was not until the sun was about to go down that the two of them gave up their hearts and walked to the military camp. Unexpectedly, as soon as he returned to the military camp, he heard Lu Gaojin's roar. Don't do it. This time, I won't send anyone to do that mission. Isn't Lao Tzu's soldier human? If you don't see people or corpses, how can I explain to their parents? Go away for Lao Tzu. Go as far as you want. Hearing this scolding, Su Mu couldn't help but frown slightly, an ominous premonition welling up in his heart. Three times, exactly three times. Every time, a hundred people are selected, and after they go, no one will be seen, no corpse will be seen. Outrageous to the extreme. Even if those gangsters were all first-class masters, they wouldn't make such a fuss, would they? Three hundred people smashed down, and there was no splash, and no body was seen. The whole thing revealed a very strange atmosphere, and it was no wonder that Lu Gaotian was so angry. You know, the Dagon army has a battalion of one thousand people. Except for the more than one hundred people who were free, there were only eight hundred people in Lu Gaotian's battalion. In just half a year, three hundred people were lost. And the loss is inexplicable, how can Lu Gaotian bear it? This time, he won't let his soldiers go on that mission. Amidst Lu Gaotian's furious scolding, a strong man dressed in black armor left the barracks without saying a word. Before leaving, he turned his head and gave Lu Gaotian a cold look. Then he rode on a tall horse and quickly disappeared from everyone's sight. Since that day, no one has come to Lu Gaotian again and asked him to send troops to perform some messy tasks but Su Mu was vaguely uneasy. Only he knew what the king of Biling was doing. Can a mere commander change the plot of King Biling? This is obviously impossible. Su Mu, who was uneasy, asked Lu Gaotian to be careful during this time. But Lu Gaotian didn't seem to listen, and instead asked him when he would marry Lu Yuqing. This made Su Mu a little helpless. Heavenly Widow the side effects of this talent are similar to fate. If you force a marriage, there will be an accident. Either Su Mu or Lu Yuqing. In contrast, Su Mu felt that Lu Yuqing was more prone to accidents. His fate is too hard, and he is the host, so it is less likely to have an accident. As for Lu Yuqing's safety, Su Mu must not marry her. After fooling this matter, Su Mu continued to practice martial arts like before. If possible, he wants to advance to an acquired martial artist before the famine comes. It's just that if you want to cultivate qi, you need a suitable martial arts technique. Just relying on a few superficial martial arts, it is impossible to cultivate astral qi. Most importantly, time has run out. Five days later, Su Mu practiced martial arts for five months. At this time, there are still two months before the Jizhou famine. On this day, Su Mu practiced martial arts until late at night before returning with Lu Yuqing. But before they returned to the barracks, Su Mu smelled a faint smell of blood. And a familiar smell of rancidity. After smelling the smell of blood and rancidity, Su Mu's expression changed and he stopped abruptly. What's the matter, little brother? Lu Yuqing asked a question without knowing why. There's something wrong, you wait here, I'll go to the barracks to have a look, don't move. Su Mu warned him, then before Lu Yuqing could reply, a few vertical jumps disappeared into the night. The closer you get to the barracks, the stronger the smell of blood and rancidity. A few shrill screams could be heard sporadically, 
but they soon disappeared. This made Su Mu's heart come up with a very bad guess. In the military camp, I'm afraid something bad happened. Sure enough, not far from the barracks, Su Mu saw hundreds of black armored cavalry surrounding the place. He quietly sneaked in from a remote corner. After entering the military camp, the scene inside made Su Mu's heart sink to the bottom of the valley, and endless anger ignited. In the barracks, hundreds of corpses were lying all over the place, and the deaths were more tragic than the last. The more than 500 people under Lu Gaotian's command were actually wiped out by the regiment. And the murderer is a large number of zombies that Zwanjiaki has brought in. At this time, many zombies are sucking the blood of the soldiers and having a gluttonous feast. This situation is not like the human world. It gave Su Mu the illusion of being in hell. Is King Biling crazy? Su Mu clenched his fists, and his body trembled slightly with the huge anger. Although he guessed that Lu Gaotian would be retaliated for refusing to cooperate, he did not expect that it would be such a revenge. The local army led by Lu Gaotian was also a member of King Biling, and it was his base. How dare he do this? Are you crazy? Although he couldn't understand what the Biling king was going crazy, Su Mu didn't care anymore and didn't have time to think about it. Now he just wants to know if Lu Gaotian is still alive. Since the death of the cooks who adopted him in the military camp, there are not many people in this simulation world that Su Mu cares about. Lu Gaotian is one of them. Moreover, he is also Lu Yueqing's father. Live to see people, die to see corpses. Thinking of this, Su Mu stepped into the barracks, ready to find Lu Gaotian. Unexpectedly, as soon as he entered, a black zombie smelled his breath, dropped a corpse that had been sucked dry, and jumped to Su Mu and slaughtered it. After cultivating to complete body refinement, Su Mu has not yet touched anyone. Seeing this black zombie, whose strength is comparable to that of a first-class warrior, he decided to test his combat power. Su Mu pumped up his chi and blood, walked away against the black stiffness, stepped forward and threw his fists back and forth. After throwing the fist, the blood in his body surged wildly like a big river, pouring into the fist peak. A huge force erupted in an instant. This punch is called Collapse Mountain. With a dull loud noise, the Bengshan fist hit Hei Zong firmly. I saw that black and stiff body shook violently, and then collapsed quickly. Like snow that has been splashed with boiling water, it continues to melt. After a few breaths, he actually collapsed on the ground and turned into a pool of rotten flesh. Su Mu's collapsing mountain fist is one of the styles of shaking mountain fist. The core lies in the word collapse. After the hit, a powerful shock force penetrated Hei Zong's entire body, oscillating repeatedly in an instant. It is like a wave of waves, and it explodes at the highest point. In this way, this black zombie was smashed into a pool of mud with one punch. Shanchen Quan seems to be a bad martial art, but in fact it is easy to learn but difficult to master. Cultivation to the depths, the mountains can be shaken. What's so difficult about a black zombie? After punching with all his strength, Su Mu took a breath, but was very satisfied with the result. He used to need him to use Crazy Demon to burn his vitality and explode his combat power to deal with Hei Zong, but now he can do it with one punch. Such a huge gap is enough to see how much Su Mu has improved. But now is not the time to be complacent. After killing the black zombie, Su Mu quickly glanced around. He found that in addition to the black one, there were actually two or three furry ones. After the black zombie's strength reaches a certain level, it will grow corpse hair and turn into a hair zombie. This kind of zombie has corpse hair with long all over its body, which is harder than a steel needle. Moreover, it has copper skin and iron bones, and jumps like a fly. It is no longer afraid of the sun, and it can also come out to act during the day. Mao Zong's strength has a relatively large span. Those who are more vicious, innate warriors are not opponents. For the weaker, the acquired martial artist can also deal with one or two. These corpse hairs are not dense, and it can be seen that they have just advanced. Among the stiff hairs, it is the weaker one. But with Su Mu's current strength, he still can't confront him head-on, so he can only choose to avoid it. In addition, 
The appearance of Mao Zong indicates that King Biling's corpse refining operation has been continuing and constantly improving. Crazy. Su Mu cursed angrily, and then carefully searched the military camp. As long as he avoids those few stiff hairs, he will not be in any danger. All the way to the center of the barracks, Su Mu finally heard the sound of fighting. He rushed forward and saw Lu Gaotian wielding a sword, fighting with four or five black zombies. At this time, Lu Gaotian already had many scratches on his body. The wound was rotting and blackening, and the corpse poison had penetrated into the body. This made his combat power drop sharply, and it became more and more difficult to resist the siege of the four or five black zombies. Seeing this scene, Su Mu hurried forward and punched one of the black and stiff heads. Hei Zong's head exploded in response to the sound, but his body did not fall down. He turned around and waved his claws to take out Su Mu but Su Mu was faster. He grabbed Hei Zong's two arms and tore them with force, tore them off abruptly. Recently, Su Mu discovered that in addition to improving the speed of martial arts training, Tian Wei can also enhance the strength of his arms. Although not born, this feeling of possessing divine power is still very wonderful. After killing a black zombie in the blink of an eye, Su Mu shot again. His strong and ferocious iron fist swept across like a gust of wind, blasting and killing everything, and blasting all the black zombies besieging Lu Gaotian. Xiao. Xiao Mu. You. How can you have such strength? Lu Gaotian put the battle knife on the ground, supported his body, and looked at Su Mu in disbelief. Who would have thought that this little fool in the military camp actually possessed such a cultivation base? Su Mu's combat power just now surpassed that of Lu Gaotian, and he is the first person in this barracks. Could it be that he was acting stupid before? Can't you cultivate to this level after just a few months of enlightenment? For a while, Lu Gaotian's mind was a little confused, but what he cared about most was his daughter. Where's Yue Qing? How is Yue Qing? Is she all right? Yue Qing is fine, she. Lu Dutong. Before Su Mu finished speaking, Lu Gaotian's body swayed and fell straight back. Su Mu's expression changed, and he quickly stepped forward to support him and leaned against the tent. Afterwards, Su Mu tore Lu Gaotian's clothes and found that he was injured in many places, and black blood was constantly flowing out. The most deadly thing is that the corpse poison is deeply planted, and the poison has attacked the heart. He is not far from death. Lu Dutong, don't talk, I'll take you to see Yue Qing. Su Mu carried Lu Gaotian on his back and quickly ran out of the tent. Lu Gaotian was dying soon, and Su Mu just wanted him to see his daughter once before he died, so that he could leave in peace. Along the way, all the black zombies who blocked were eliminated by Su Mu Han in anger. With Lu Gaotian on his back, he escaped from the purgatory-like barracks at the fastest speed and ran towards Lu Yuqing. On the other hand, Lu Yuqing still didn't know what happened, but there was a vague premonition. When she was pacing back and forth anxiously, a flower suddenly appeared in front of her eyes, and Su Mu appeared. But before Lu Yuqing could be happy, he saw Su Mu carefully put down a man who was so angry. This person is her father Lu Gaotian. Dad! What's wrong with you? Daddy. Seeing that Lu Gaotian was covered in blood and his anger was like a game, Lu Yueqing's expression changed greatly. Anxious and worried, he went forward to check his father's wound. But he was stopped by Su Mu. Don't touch it. There is corpse poison. Lu Yueqing's martial arts cultivation base is too weak, and his qi and blood are insufficient. If there is a small wound and a bit of corpse poison, she can't bear it. My dad, what happened to my dad? After being stopped by Su Mu, Lu Yuqing stood bewildered. Her body was trembling, and the tears in her eyes were almost unstoppable. Daughter, Dad. Dad can't accompany you anymore. Don't even think about avenging your father. From now on. Live a good life with this kid Su Mu. Su Mu, you have to treat my daughter well. Also, remember, don't take revenge. Don't take revenge. Without waiting for Su Mu to speak, Lu Gaotian, who felt that he didn't have much time, quickly warned him a few words. Lu Yueqing's heart was broken when he heard the intermittent voice. 
After using all his strength to say the last word, he lost his breath. Her head drooped weakly, but she still looked at Lu Yuqin reluctantly, as if she couldn't let go of her daughter. Father. In this situation, Lu Yuqin couldn't hold back any longer, and tears welled up in his eyes. Lu Yuqin lost her mother since she was a child, and it was Lu Gao Tian who brought her up. At this time, she lost her only relative without warning. How did she accept it for a while? Seeing this, Su Mu sighed and embraced her in a rare embrace. Cry, 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 you will feel comfortable. After crying, we still have business to do. In this situation, even crying is a luxury. Because Lu Gao Tian was running out of time, Su Mu was in a hurry when he left without erasing the traces. It is estimated that it will not be long before the Zhuanjiaki will find the clue and follow the traces to find it. To make Lu Yuqin cry wantonly is the tenderness that Su Mu can give. But Lu Yuqin was stronger than Su Mu imagined. She quickly stopped crying, wiped away her tears, her eyes were red, and she asked Su Mu through gritted teeth. Brother Mu, who is it, who eliminated my father? Before Lu Gao Tian died, he asked Su Mu and Lu Yuqin not to take revenge, but unfortunately neither of them listened. Seeing her inquiries, Su Mu told the story of King Biling's body refining with the blood of his soldiers. Listening to this cruel and crazy act, Lu Yuqin's heart was shocked, and he was dumbfounded for a while. Why? Why did they do this? Using the blood of living people to refine corpses, is this what humans do? Lu Yuqing's voice trembled, unable to believe that her father died in such a cruel act. Su Mu shook his head and said. I don't know why King Biling did this. Let's hurry up and find a place to bury your father. Those black armored cavalry, maybe they'll be looking for them soon. As soon as Su Mu finished speaking, he heard a rush of hooves in the distance. And in a very short period of time, from far to near, in the dark of night, they attacked Su Mu and Lu Yuqin. It seems that Xian Jiechi has discovered that Lu Gao Tian is missing, and followed the trail to find him. Brother Mu, let's escape. Seeing this scene, Lu Yuqing's anger disappeared, and he couldn't help panicking. She has lost her father, she can't lose Su Mu again. Lu Yuqing couldn't imagine how she would live when she was the only one left in the world. It's okay, you wait for me here. Su Mu glanced at the enemy that was eliminated, and had a bottom line in his heart. The ten mysterious knights were all second-rate warriors. Although he is well equipped, he is not in his sight. The acquaintances who have been together for eighteen years were slaughtered and fed zombies like livestock. How could Su Mu not be angry? There was already a burning anger in his heart that needed to be released urgently. These ten black armored knights are his targets for purging fire. Ten black armored horses galloped and tracked their targets. But in the cold moonlight, a figure stepped forward slowly, blocking them like a mayfly shaking a tree. This scene made these elite cavalrymen show a disdainful smile. The black armored cavalry is well equipped, from horses to people to build like an iron tower. The ten black armored cavalry dashed in a formation, the power was extremely terrifying, and the first class warriors were completely powerless to stop them. As for whether this person is an acquired or even a congenital warrior, they are not worried. Because this figure really has such a powerful strength, do you still need to escape with Lu Gaotian? The conjecture is not wrong. But these ten black armored knights would never have thought that they were not facing an ordinary first class warrior. It is a martial artist who cares about orphans. Have you ever heard the anger from the lone wolf? Facing the charge of ten black armored cavalry, Su Mu's face sank like water, and he stepped down with one horse step. In an instant, the aura of the whole person merged with the earth. All in one, unmoving like a mountain. Seeing Su Mu act like this, the ten black armored cavalry almost laughed out loud, and regarded him as a corpse. With no energy, Yu Yu reading WW. Ukanshu. Kam shakes the cavalry with the flesh, courting death. Eliminate. The black armored cavalry who was facing Su Mu directly at a distance of ten feet shouted loudly, and the long sword in his hand was raised high. At a distance of ten meters, for this elite cavalry, it is only a blink of an eye to rush to eliminate. The next moment, the black armored cavalry and horse united,
condensing all the power on the long sword, and slashing toward Su Mu as fast as lightning. The power of this knife is amazing, enough to open mountains and crack rocks. And Su Mu's strategy for dealing with it was just a mediocre punch. Seeing this, the smile on the corner of the Zwanjiaki's mouth became even more presumptuous. This feat, he won. But who knows, when the blade touched the fist peak, the complexion of this black armored rider changed dramatically, and there was a trace of panic and disbelief in his eyes. At the moment of the fight, a huge vibrational force came from the blade. Like a tsunami, it poured into his body like a tsunami, and then kept shaking back and forth for a long time. In half a breath, thousands of shocks are enough to defeat everything. In a loud noise, the body of the black armored rider actually burst open. The fine and heavy armor didn't protect him. Even the warhorse under his crotch was affected, as if dynamite had been placed on his body, it exploded again and again, and blood splashed. Under heavy damage, the warhorse raised its front hooves rhythmically and flung the master's corpse like mud. Then he fell to the ground, his chest heaving violently. It seems that there is not much time left. Quiet, motionless like a mountain. Move, landslide. This punch, even the man and the horse, smashed them all. Su Mu smashed one cavalry with one punch, frightened the other nine black armored cavalry and immediately turned their horses' heads and fled in embarrassment. Originally thought it was just an ordinary first-class warrior, who would have known that the combat power was so powerful. If you don't run away, you will leave your life behind. Looking at the backs of these black armored cavalry escaping, Su Mu's eyes flickered for a while, but he did not chase. This place is not far from the military camp, I am afraid that it will reach the opponent's base camp after a few chases. Besides, it doesn't make much sense to eliminate these black armored cavalry, so let's bury Lu Gaotian quickly. Otherwise, when the enemy chases after him, he may be exposed to the wilderness. Yuqin, time is running out, let's find a place to bury your father. Um. After crying for a while, Lu Yuqin became stronger. Although her eyes were still red and swollen, she stopped crying. Su Mu removed a part of the armor from the black armored cavalry he eliminated and used it as a shovel. He found a remote place, dug a big hole quickly, and buried Lu Gaotian in it. I didn't dare to make a tombstone, so I could only bring a large stone and put it on the tomb as a mark. Brother Mu, what should we do now? Lu Yuqin stood on his father's grave, and his tears almost couldn't stop, but he finally managed to hold it back. Leave here first. I will definitely avenge this revenge. Su Mu narrowed his eyes slightly, already thinking about what to do next. King Biling's plan to refine the corpse should be the key to this simulated world. As long as you figure out the secrets, you will definitely be able to find the best way to evolve. As for King Biling, he must be an enemy on his way through customs, and revenge will follow the trend. After roughly having a plan, Su Mu didn't stay here for a long time, and left here with Lu Yuqin. Not long after they left, hundreds of black armor cavalry came to eliminate them. Unfortunately, Su Mu and Lu Yuqin have disappeared. They could only leave in anger. After a month and a half. In a restaurant in Jizhou, the voices were full of people, one after another. With such a prosperous scene, people can't imagine what kind of terrifying famine will happen in Jizhou in ten days' time. Sometimes, disasters come so suddenly. In the corner of the restaurant, there was a sturdy man with a grey complexion. This person is of an unremarkable appearance, and it is difficult to find him if he is thrown into the crowd. He ate the meat in big gulps, as if he was in a hurry. At this moment, the conversation of several Jianghu people at the table next to him caught his attention. Have you heard that a mysterious expert has appeared recently, specializing in attacking and killing the mysterious black armored cavalry under the command of King Biling? What? The people of King Biling dare to provoke them? What's the origin of this person? Such courage, he can swallow the sky. Isn't this just daring? In Jizhou, the king of Biling is heaven. However, that man came and went without a trace, and immediately fled thousands of miles after he made his move. Until now, no one knows his true identity. What a skill! At least he must be an acquired master, right? 
maybe more than that. A few days ago, an acquired martial artist under King Byling's command fought him and was severely injured. My dear, that's a congenital warrior. This is really a good show. Hee hee, it's just an innate warrior, can King Byling still be unable to hold him? I heard that King Byling has been annoyed, and sent ten innate warriors and a martial arts master to arrest this person a few days ago. I'm afraid it won't work. How long will it take for him to die? Hey! Such a big hand. It seems that King Byling is really angry. Isn't that true? I heard that the man was still spreading rumors that King Byling feeds zombies with the blood of his soldiers. Isn't this nonsense? Which superior would do such a thing, is he crazy? I guess that person has some deep hatred with King Byling, thinking that he will bite a piece of meat from King Byling to his death, but the rumor is a bit incompetent. If it were me, I would make it like this. Cough cough. Don't dare to talk nonsense, be careful that the partition wall has ears. Ahahaha, don't talk anymore. Come on, drink, drink. Hearing the conversation between the two Jianghu people, Su Mu narrowed his eyes and continued to bury his head in eating meat. Yes, this unremarkable strong man sitting in the corner is exactly Su Mu after the disguise. In the past month and a half, he has been practicing martial arts while investigating King Biling. As for the rumors of the black armored knights he eliminated and the rumors that came out, they were all done with ease. Su Mu knew in his heart that these actions would not shake the foundation of King Biling, so he would do something along the way. His real purpose was to find out what the King of Biling was doing, and what was the purpose of refining the corpse. During this period of hard work, Su Mu has gained a lot. The first is the martial arts. In terms of realm, Su Mu did not improve. The ordinary martial arts he practiced were unable to cultivate astral chi, so he could not advance to become an acquired martial artist. However, Su Mu's combat power is constantly improving. After the body training is completed, the physical fitness of the martial artist is not without room for improvement. It's just that the speed of ascension is greatly slowed down, and it is necessary to use astral chi to temper the body more effectively. But Su Mu is different. With a physique of 12 points and the Heavenly Widow, it is still possible for him to continue to improve. Today, although Su Mu is still a first-class warrior, his combat power is already one point stronger than that of ordinary acquired warriors. This is extremely rare. After all, how could a martial arts genius like Su Mu be lacking in high-class martial arts under normal circumstances? Now, let's talk about the progress of the investigation. After a month and a half of investigation, Su Mu found a problem in a place called Ghost Mountain. This Guetu Mountain is often visited by a large number of black armored horses, as well as some other masters. It's terrifyingly heavily guarded. On top of that, there are huge, black clothed cages that go in and out every day. Seeing this kind of cage, Su Mu couldn't help thinking that he could use it to transport zombies. Yu Yu reading. So, Su Mu concluded there was something wrong with this place. It's just that the guards on Guetu Mountain are too strict, even Su Mu can't get close. He had never found an opportunity to infiltrate before. But recently, the annoyed King Biling sent many experts to hunt him down. This reduced the garrison strength near Guetu Mountain a lot. Su Mu's chance finally came. King Biling probably never thought that there are still people in this world who are not afraid of death, and they will go to his old nest when they are hunted down by him. As everyone knows, Su Mu is not afraid of death. After a full meal, Su Mu silently left the restaurant and mixed into the crowd. Guetu Mountain is near this city. Su Mu plans to sneak into it after dark to see what secrets are hidden inside. This trip is extremely dangerous, and Su Mu has even made preparations for reopening. But no matter what, he is sure to break through this Guetu mountain. As night fell, the flow of people in the city decreased a lot. After all, this is not Yanjing, and the night is not so lively. As for Su Mu, he left the city early and headed for a remote place. Along the way, there were countless dark posts and bright posts, but they were all avoided by him. After cautiously sneaking for nearly two hours, Su Mu finally came to the vicinity of Guetu Mountain. This is a towering, 
twisted mountain that looks hideous in the dark. After getting close, Su Mu even smelled a faint rancid odor. This is the smell of zombies. Two kilometers away, you can smell zombies. How many zombies are hidden on this Gue Tu mountain? Su Mu couldn't help being a little shocked. After being shocked, Su Mu worked harder to restrain his breath, and cautiously sneaked into Gue Tu mountain. For some reason, today's Gatushin's defenses are a bit too lax. Even if some experts were dispatched to hunt down Su Mu, there wouldn't be that many people left, right? Su Mu has some doubts, but this is a good thing for him. Su Mu sneaked all the way up the mountainside and found a wide cave hidden behind a giant tree. There are more than a dozen elite soldiers guarding the entrance of the cave. Two of them are first-rate warriors, and the rest are second-rate warriors. Su Mu can solve these defensive forces. But he was afraid that getting rid of these gatekeepers would attract the attention of others, so he planned to see if he could bypass them. However, Su Mu searched for a long time on Gue Tu Mountain, and couldn't find the second entrance again. In desperation, he was able to force his way through the main entrance of the cave. Who? Su Mu was hanging upside down on the top of the cave and was finally discovered when he passed over the head of one of the first class warriors. The moment he made a sound, Su Mu jumped down from above and threw a punch. Before the fist arrives, the momentum will come first. A fierce and terrifying fist wind pressed down on the first class warrior, like the top of Mount Tai, making people breathless. This kind of power made the first class warrior's eyes flash with horror. Born in the army, he recognized this punch as a move in Shanshan Fist. But he never knew that the basic martial arts of shaking the mountain could be so powerful. As his mind changed rapidly, the first class warrior could only wave his fists to meet him. The next second, the two fists meet. A loud bang. The fist of the first class warrior was instantly defeated, his body burst, and he was smashed to slag. After killing one person, Su Mu eliminated the other gatekeepers. Any punch has the power to open up mountains and crack rocks. None of these elite guards could take him down. In less than three breaths, they were all eliminated. After killing these elite guards, Su Mu quickly withdrew and hid in the dark. According to his idea, after killing the elite guards, more enemies will be attracted. But what Su Mu didn't expect was that after waiting for half an hour, there was no support from the entrance of the cave. This made him a little confused. What's going on? Is it because I didn't make a big move? It shouldn't be. Su Mu was a little confused by this strange situation. To be on the safe side, Su Mu waited for another half an hour, but still no support. So he entered the cave again with doubts, and walked to the depths. The deeper you go, the wider the cave will be. After walking inside, Su Mu was shocked. The interior of this ghost head mountain has actually been hollowed out. Inside the mountain is a huge high hall. There were many people gathered in the center of the hall, and they seemed to be concentrating on doing something, but they didn't find the intruder Su Mu at all. In order to better observe the situation, Su Mu found a dark corner and carefully climbed to the top of the hall. In this way, you can get an overview of the internal situation. After taking a closer look, Su Mu was shocked. He saw a familiar thing, a bronze coffin of alien beasts. That's right, it's the very ferocious bronze coffin that once appeared near the camp. For this bronze alien beast coffin, Su Mu has reopened it twice, and he will never admit his mistake. In the center of the main hall, there is a three-story pagoda. The bronze alien coffin is located at the top of the tower. However, at this time, this extremely ferocious bronze coffin had already been opened. Inside the coffin was a female corpse. This female corpse was eight feet tall, slender and sturdy, not like a mortal. I don't know how many years she has been dead, but she is still alive. If it weren't for the terrifying resentment and corpse aura, everyone would believe that she was alive. Eighteen black-colored chains affixed with spells were locked on the body of the female corpse, which were fixed at various places in the pagoda. The chains echo each other, which is quite profound, and seems to be some kind of formation. On the three floors below the female corpse, there are nine flying zombies on each floor. Fei Zong is a higher-order existence than Mao Zong. 
the strength is comparable to that of a martial arts master. King Biling doesn't know how many zombies he has raised and how much blood he has spent. Actually, 27 flying scorpions were raised. The most terrifying thing is that, looking at this situation, these 27 flying zombies are just stepping stones for the woman in the coffin. Although I don't know the formation and Taoism. But Su Mu is extremely sensitive to the Yin evil breath. He could feel that the function of this pagoda was to gather evil spirits. Gather all the evil spirits on the body of that female corpse. In addition, at the bottom of the Buddha pagoda, there are countless corpses lying side by side. The blood that flowed out gathered into a lake, was continuously absorbed by the Buddha tower, and poured into the female corpse. Looking at the clothes of these corpses, it is clear that they are the personal soldiers of King Biling. It's no wonder that after Sumu broke through the periphery, he didn't encounter many obstacles all the way in. After killing the guards at the gate, there was no support. It turned out to be eliminated by King Biling. This situation made Su Mu's heart beat faster and his mouth dry. What is King Biling doing? What did he want to refine by gathering so much yin and evil energy on the corpse of a woman that was originally fierce? Su Mu thought a lot. The more he thought about it, the more frightened he became, and the more he thought about it, the colder his whole body became. What terrifying truth is hidden behind the Jizhou famine? Not enough, not enough. Still need blood, more blood. A group of people gathered around the outside of the Buddha tower. In the center is a pale middle-aged man sitting on a chair. This person is the Lord of Jizhou, the King of Biling. It was also him who roared just now. Beside King Biling, there are a group of people wearing Taoist robes, as well as several martial arts masters. Hearing this, a martial arts master replied in a low voice. Your Majesty, there is. No one can make sacrifices, unless the elite soldiers from the periphery are called back. A Taoist beside him hurriedly shook his head and said. It's too late, you have to be fast. Slow. I'm afraid it will fall short. Hearing this, King Biling lowered his gaze and said solemnly. Everyone, whether this king is dead or alive, I have a fight here. Are there warriors who will sacrifice their lives for this king? I would like to die for the king. King Biling just finished speaking a martial arts master came out and knelt down in front of King Biling. Helping, you. You go in peace. As long as this king does not die and the descendants of this king are still alive, your family will always be looked after. This martial arts master was selected from childhood and grew up with King Biling. The relationship between the two is like a master and a servant, and also like a brother. At this critical moment, he stood up. Thank you, your majesty. And helping, let's go. After all, the martial arts master strode to the bottom of the Buddha pagoda and stepped into the blood lake. Afterwards, his whole body was shocked, his clothes collapsed, and all the meridians were broken. In the blink of an eye, this martial arts master became a blood man, and a large amount of blood flowed out and was absorbed by the Buddha tower. The master of martial arts is almost at the pinnacle of martial arts. The blood and blood of these warriors cannot be compared by ordinary warriors. With the injection of the blood of the master, the Buddha tower shook slightly. Twenty-seven corpse auras poured into the body of the female corpse at the top of the tower like flowing water, and at the same time absorbed the countless blood essence at the bottom of the tower. The blood lake shrinks at a speed visible to the naked eye until it dries up. The vibration of the Buddha tower became more and more violent, and the eighteen black-colored chains covered with talismans continued to vibrate violently, as if they were about to break at any time. Suddenly, all the vibrations stopped in an instant. The female corpse at the top of the tower slowly opened her eyes. In an instant, a terrifying aura filled the entire hall. The rolling heat wave hits like a tsunami. In Su Mu's heart, two words could not help but emerge, dragon. It's too bad that it can't be pushed more than 100 times a day. I want to count the votes. Drought, not in the five elements, but out of the three realms. It is a terrifying zombie that exists almost only in legends. This kind of ghost that was originally a great Yin, after evolving to its peak, turned from Yin to Yang, and gave birth to fiery energy. 
Drought walks like the wind, and wherever it goes, there are thousands of miles of bare land, and the drought does not stop. If one were to rank all kinds of ghosts, monsters, and beasts in terms of disaster, then the drought would definitely rank in the top three. King Byling didn't know what the purpose was, but he actually spent a huge amount of human, material, and financial resources to forcibly refine a drought. Su Mu was so shocked that he didn't know what to say when he was born. It turned out that this famine, which had buried millions of corpses and lasted for ten years, was actually created by the master of Jizhou. A few short sentences in the history books hide such cruel and crazy truths behind them. However, things took a turn for the worse. After successfully refining the scorpion, the pale face of King Byling showed a touch of ecstasy. Most of the people around him also showed a successful smile. Except for one person. This is a short-bearded Taoist man wearing a purple Taoist robe. At the moment when the scorpion was born, when everyone was still immersed in joy. He looked gloomy and suddenly burst out. Sick. The Taoist Zipeo shouted loudly, and four flying swords flew out from his sleeves, pointing directly at the dry scorpion on the top of the Buddha pagoda. These four flying swords are engraved with green dragon, white tiger, vermilion bird, and basalt, that is, the four elephants and beasts. The flying sword was as fast as electricity, and without waiting for others to react, it submerged into the body of the scorpion in a blink of an eye. The submersion of the four elephants' flying sword caused a look of pain to appear on the face of the dry man, and he closed his eyes again. Z Shan, what are you doing? This action caused a great change in the face of the one-year-old Maidaoist, and he was furious. Several martial arts masters around the king of Biling are even killing him, and they are going to eliminate him. But in the rush of Qi, the figure of the purple-robed Taoist disappeared out of thin air. Only the purple robe was left, which was turned into dust in the bombardment of several martial arts masters. And there was a palm-sized talisman paper in the shape of a villain that slowly fell to the ground from the pile of powder, which was very conspicuous. Damn! Xuanzhen, what are your people doing? This scene made King Biling furious, and an abnormal flush appeared on his face. Under the anger, all the martial arts masters under King Biling looked at those Taoists with murderous aura. It seems that any disagreement will eliminate the killer. Seeing this, the elderly Taoist who spoke up hurriedly bowed and explained. Your Majesty, this matter has absolutely nothing to do with Xuanzhen sect. It was Zishan who betrayed us, and I don't even know about it. Under the urgency, this old Taoist was somewhat incoherent. Hearing Xian Jinzi's explanation, King Biling didn't speak, he just panted violently, as if he couldn't hold his breath. After a while, his breathing calmed down a bit, and then he said to Xian Jinzi coldly. This king, whether he betrayed the Xuanzhen sect, or your Xuanzhen sect betrayed this king. You must be perfected. Otherwise, this place is your burial place. Hearing this, Xian Jinzi's forehead overflowed with cold sweat, and his waist was even lower. He said solemnly. Don't worry, your majesty, you will definitely be able to make it. Zishan won't be able to escape. Xian Jinzi's Taoism is very high, and he has cultivated to the realm of three flowers gathering at the top and five qi rising to the prime. He is a top qi refiner. With round combat power, three or five martial arts masters are usually not his opponents. But the people around King Biling are the top masters of the martial arts masters. Two of them have even reached the state of great mastery. With just an opportunity, one can advance to the level of the martial god. Of course, this opportunity may not be able to wait in this life. In the whole big job, there aren't many gods of war. In any case, Zuan's Henman's manpower is not enough in front of King Biling. If he really had the intention to eliminate, none of the Xuanzhen sect would survive, including the headmaster Zuan Zenzi. The only thing Xian Jinzi can do now is to make amends quickly. As soon as he beckoned, the little man-like talisman flew into his hands. This is a stand-in, and it is almost seamless to use with the robe. Of course, this is also because the Taoist Zishan is highly humane, and can be ranked in the top five in today's Zuan's Henman. Ordinary Qi refiners can't fool Xian Jinzi's eyes. What Zuan Zenzi never expected was that Taoist Zishan, who is the backbone of the high-level Zuan's Henman, 
actually had the heart of rebellion. This is so unexpected. In order to show his loyalty, Xian Jinzi held the avatar and explained to King Biling. This is a stand-in talisman. If you want to use this talisman as powerful as just now, Zishan must be within a radius of five miles. As long as the old Taoist practiced Taoism, and cooperated with the king's elite soldiers, he will surely be able to capture Zishan within half an hour and apologize to the king with his blood. Saying that, Xian Jinzi opened his mouth and spit it out, turning his air into wind. The whirlwind condensed together, and a little bird was transformed in a few breaths. The bird flew around him like lightning, and the speed was amazing. Xian Jinzi squeezed and kneaded, and the avatar turned into a ball. With another flick of the finger, the talisman paper ball turned into a yellow light and flew into the body of the little bird. After this operation, the bird seemed to have a target and flew out of the cave with a light chirping. The bird of this technique will lock onto Zishan, track it day and night, and never die. After casting the spell Xian Jinzi explained again. Seeing this, King Biling gave a wink to a martial arts master beside him. The man understood, cupped his hands and chased after the bird. Okay, don't worry about anything else, this king only cares about the refining results of the scorpion. The king of Biling looked at the dry man on the top of the Buddha pagoda, and there was a trace of apprehension and panic in his eyes. Old Daoist, let's go and have a look. Hearing the words, Xian Jinzi hurriedly walked towards the Buddha pagoda with his disciple. The success or failure of drought is directly related to their life and death. Also, it is about the life and death of millions of people in Jizhou. They are born. They die. On the other side, Su Mu had already left the mountain hall. After hearing that Taoist Zipeo was within five miles, Su Mu quietly left. There are too many masters in this hall, any one of them can eliminate Su Mu. If he stayed any longer, he would only increase the risk of exposure, but he couldn't do anything. But Zishan is different. This person must have some means to play this game under the noses of masters. As the saying goes, the enemy of the enemy is the friend. Although I don't know the identity and origin of those Taoists. But Taoist Zishan obviously betrayed them and is no longer with them. If you can win over Zishan, if nothing else, Su Mu will definitely get a lot of information. Therefore, as soon as Xian Jinzi finished speaking, Su Mu had already escaped quietly and searched for the trail of Taoist Zishan near Gui Tu Mountain. Not long after searching, Su Mu saw a figure flashing in the darkness, knocking over a few guards, and drifting away like a gust of wind. Su Mu's eyes lit up, and she quickly chased after him. The figure was very fast at the beginning, and Su Mu couldn't catch up. But after a while, the speed became slower and slower, and the distance between the two kept shortening. After getting closer, Su Mu saw that the man was wearing a purple robe, and basically confirmed that he was the one he was looking for. Is there a Taoist from Zishan in front? I am the one who assassinated Zhuangjiaki some time ago. I am a friend not an enemy. Can you stop for a while? As soon as he finished speaking, Daoist Zishan, whose speed was getting slower and slower, suddenly stopped. Su Mu thought he believed in himself. Who knows the next moment, this man actually fell to the ground. Su Mu was startled, and hurriedly stepped forward to check. I saw Daoist Zishan's face was like golden paper, and his energy was like a gossamer thread. The front of the robe was stained red by the blood he spit out. Su Mu was stunned. Finally, a teammate who seems to be very strong came, and it is very likely that he knows a lot of information. In the end, you're about to hang up before you say a word or two. Daoist, Daoist, are you alright? Daoist? Su Mu helped Taoist Zishan up and asked several times eagerly, but did not want to really wake him up. When Su Mu asked for the third time, Taoist Zishan suddenly opened his eyes. Looking at that demeanor, although he was weak, he still wouldn't faint. I saw that he turned his hand over, took back a sword pill in his palm, and then said. It seems that little friend is really not an enemy, it's just that the current situation. It's difficult. Seeing the sword pill in Zishan's hand, Su Mu was speechless. This man is honest and honest, and he never thought that he was actually quite scheming, playing a trick to lure the enemy. 
It is conceivable that if Su Mu is the enemy, if he thinks about taking advantage of his illness to eliminate him, he will definitely be beaten. But now is not the time to think about it, life is the best. Su Mu didn't talk nonsense, he carried Daoist Zishan on his back and fled to the distance with all his strength. Even with a person on his back, Su Mu's speed is extremely fast, not weaker than a horse. A vertical leap is a distance of more than 10 meters, which is amazing. But Daoist Zishan doesn't seem to be satisfied. Little friend, I'm afraid you can't get rid of the enemy at this speed. Let Pindao help you. Saying that, Zishan flicked his hand, and two talisman papers flew out of his sleeves, and they stuck to Su Mu's legs. In an instant, Su Mu felt a warm current pouring into his legs, and his speed suddenly increased a bit. And the exhaustion is gone. God talisman, little Doyle. After explaining one sentence, Taoist Zishan closed his eyes and rested. Su Mu didn't say much. With the blessing of the divine rune, he ran with all his strength and did not dare to relax in the slightest. However, this alone is not enough to escape. After half an hour, Taoist Zishan opened his eyes solemnly. No. My senior brother locked my breath, and he was still a martial arts master when he was chasing the enemy, so he couldn't escape. This Daoist didn't know what Dao technique he used, but he seemed to be able to clearly see the situation of chasing the enemy behind him. After hearing his words, Su Mu's heart sank slightly. Does the Taoist have any other way? Zishan shook his head. There's no way, little friend, let's put the poor road here. Their goal is me, and they won't care about you. It's just a pity that the way of doing things is limited, and it was not able to destroy the drought. It's a pity, it's a pity. This Daoist did not want to implicate Su Mu, and was ready to die. But Su Mu didn't want to give up this information base. Previous experience told him that the key information in the model world is more important than anything else. After finally catching someone who might know the inside story, how can you let go? Su Mu did not leave Zishan behind and continued to ask. Master, think about it carefully, is there really nothing at all? Seeing that Su Mu hadn't left himself, Zishan was very surprised. In the face of life and death, close relatives and friends are not necessarily dependable, let alone strangers. How did he know that Su Mu was not afraid of death at all? Death is commonplace for him. Different ways of dying means different meals. Each has its own flavor. Although he was surprised by Su Mu's actions, after hearing what he said, Daoist Zishan's expression became serious. Little friend, if you don't leave the poor road, I'm afraid that your life will not be guaranteed. Aren't you afraid of death? Stop babbling, if you have any way to say it quickly. Otherwise, you're an old Taoist priest's hair will be pulled off and you will be a monk. While speaking, Su Mu could already feel a terrifying aura coming from behind. If you keep grinding, it will be too late. Ha ha ha. Little friend is really not an ordinary person. If you are not afraid of death, there is a last way for the poor. Taoist Zishan laughed a few times, and then stopped. Su Mu knew that this was giving him the last chance to go back. But, he is really not afraid of death. Why can't this bullnosed understand it? Speak quickly. Su Mu urged impatiently. After confirming again and again, and finding that Su Mu really didn't seem to be afraid of death, Zishan took a deep breath and explained it quickly. Chasing the enemy is a martial arts master, and I am not an opponent. But there is a way for the poor to improve the combat power of the little friend. There is a kind of charm called the Golden Armored Lux Talisman. This talisman is not enough to compete with the masters of martial arts, but the poor Daoist can use your little friend's body as the talisman paper and your blood as the talisman water, and make your whole body into a Golden Armor Talisman. With those few Golden Armor Talismans, maybe you can fight the martial arts master. It's just. Even if you defeat the martial arts master, you will lose both blood and energy, and your life will not be long. Hearing this, Su Mu asked, how long can you live after the war? Seven or eight days as long as three or five days as short as possible. That's enough, come on. Three to five days was enough for Su Mu to get all the information from Daoist Zishan. Maybe you can learn some methods of Qi Refiner. 
Done. At the rear, the martial arts master was like electricity, and he attacked Su Mu and Zishan Taoist at a speed that ordinary people could hardly see. In such a critical situation, neither Su Mu nor Zishan Taoist dared to waste time. After stopping, the two sat down facing each other. Su Mu took off his shirt, revealing his sturdy body. Taoist Zishan immediately took out the talisman making props, and began to make golden armored talismans. He first took out the blood of hematoxylin and mixed it with cinnabar. Then, using a thick wolf haired pen, dipped in the blood essence in cinnabar, he drew on Su Mu's body. Daoist Zishan's drawing speed is extremely fast. In a few breaths, Su Mu's chest, front and back were all painted with strange and mysterious runes. All the spells echo each other, and there seems to be a mysterious power gathering. But that's not enough. After the drawing was completed, Taoist Zishan took out five golden armor talismans from his big sleeves and stuck them on Su Mu's body to give him another strength. In the end, you poured all the remaining cinnabar essence and blood on top of his head. Rise! Zishan slammed his hands together, and a burst of spiritual power was injected into Su Mu's body, which completely activated his Tao talisman. Clang, clang! There was a sound of gold and iron intersecting and a set of thick and domineering golden armor appeared out of thin air on Su Mu's body, wrapping him in the middle. After transforming into a golden armored warrior, Su Mu's height rose to ten feet, looking like a little giant. A steady stream of power poured into his body. This kind of feeling is like controlling a mecha, which is very exciting. At night, near Gui Tu Mountain, Wei Zhuang carried a large serrated knife on his back and his tall and strong body moved lightly among the trees. He followed the Taoist bird, chasing Su Mu and Zishan. Damn, how can you run like this? Wei Zhuang's face was a little gloomy. Among the martial arts masters under King Biling, he was basically the last. Otherwise, this kind of chasing work wouldn't have sent him. If the task cannot be completed again, Wei Zhuang's status in the heart of King Biling will only be further reduced. In this way, he can get even less cultivation resources. The more Wei Zhuang thought about it, the more depressed he became. Compared with his colleagues, he always seemed to be the worst. Am I really not qualified to touch the realm of the martial god? Wei Zhuang couldn't help but ask himself. And just when he was distracted, a strong sense of crisis suddenly came from above. Wei Zhuang looked up sharply, and saw a golden armored giant descending from the sky, attacking him with a mighty thunder. What? Wei Zhuang was startled, he immediately pulled out a large serrated sword and slashed upwards. The warriors of the acquired and innate realms want to refine more qi to strengthen themselves. And the master of martial arts lies in the word condensation. Condensed astral qi, to achieve the effect of qualitative change. The more condensed the astral qi, the higher the cultivation base. Wei Zhuang slashed out with this sword, and initially it was just a three-foot-long sword light. But every inch you advance, it doubles. By the time it reached Su Mu, it was already a terrifying sword beam that was more than ten meters long. The trees within a radius of one hundred meters were all smashed by the terrifying knife, like a hurricane passing through. Su Mu didn't do anything, just punched it out. When? With a loud bang, the sword light collapsed. The body of the golden armored warrior paused for a moment, and then continued to eliminate downwards. Just now, Su Mu, who was wrapped in golden armor, felt a shock all over his body. But the golden armor on the outside helped him block 99% of the power of that sword light. Therefore, Su Mu was not injured and could still continue to eliminate Wei Zhuang. How can that be? This scene made Wei Zhuang a little unable to believe his eyes. Although he didn't know what this golden armored giant was, he clearly sensed that this person was incompetent. Not to mention martial arts masters, not even acquired martial artists. How could a warrior of this level be able to stop his sword? These thoughts just flashed by. Because of this punch that Su Mu kept gaining momentum, he came to Wei Zhuang in an instant. After Taoist Zishan turned Su Mu into a golden armored warrior, he helped him to hide his breath so that he could hide in the dark. 4. This punch. 
The huge golden fist continued to enlarge in Wei Zhuang's field of vision. The power condensed from top to bottom was like a meteorite falling from the sky, killing Wei Zhuang. The surrounding air was compressed to the point of solidification, and Wei Zhuang vaguely felt like he was about to suffocate. But he has experienced hundreds of battles, and naturally knows that if he falls into the opponent's fist, it will be bad. Break it for me. Wei Zhuang shouted loudly, and the serrated sword in his hand swept again. In an instant, more than a dozen knives flashed out, cutting through the fists that were pressing around him. And the serrated broadsword itself went straight to Su Mu and met his punch. The collision between the giant fist and the big sword caused the air around them to burst open. The ground under Wei Zhuang's feet cracked, and the ground within a radius of five feet sank one meter. This is the result of his power control, or else he was beaten and fell into the ground. Looking at the golden armored giant pressing on his head, Wei Zhuang's face showed a hint of embarrassment. The top martial arts masters under King Biling's command humiliated him. A small, inexperienced warrior dared to put pressure on his head. Who has he become? Airbag? Get away from me! Wei Zhuang shook his sword with anger, his whole body was surging with qi, and he shot Su Mu flying out. Then the serrated broadsword swung again, and another ferocious saber slashed towards Su Mu. Even with the blessing of the golden armored warrior talisman, the gap between Su Mu and the martial arts master is still huge in some respects. Wei Zhuang made two moves in a row, but he didn't have time to defend, so he could only let this hideous sword chi hit him. Fortunately, the defensive power of this golden armor is extremely amazing, and it has resisted this sword chi. After a few fights, Su Mu had already begun to adapt to his current strength and immediately planned his tactics. Great strength and high defense, but poor agility. That's reckless. Su Mu no longer dodged Wei Zhuang's moves, but madly punched, punched, punched at him like a reckless man. The golden fists attacked Wei Zhuang like a torrential rain. Even though Wei Zhuang's swordsmanship was extremely delicate, he was also disrupted by Su Mu's reckless style of play. There is quite a feeling of punching the old master to death. Shrouded in the darkness of the night in a dense forest, the two figures are fighting fiercely. One of them is ten feet tall and looks like a giant. Like a mad demon, he kept punching, and the golden fist shadow was like a torrential rain, chasing another figure and beating violently. This figure made a large serrated sword, and swung thousands of sword lights, blocking all the fist shadows. From time to time, I can find the flaws of the golden giant and slash him with a few knives. Although it can't break the defense, although it is constantly retreating. But as long as you have a certain amount of strength, you can see that the shorter figure is not at a disadvantage. Instead, slowly adapt to the rhythm. As expected of a martial arts master, even if his strength and defense are raised to this level, there is nothing he can do against him. Su Mu felt a little emotional in his heart, and felt that this battle was about to be lost. Having practiced martial arts for several generations, he almost cultivated shaking the mountain boxing to the pinnacle. At the beginning, Wei Zhuang was a little uncomfortable, but he quickly stabilized his position. The most important thing is that every time a punch is thrown, every time a knife is resisted, the spiritual power of the golden armored lux talisman will decline by one point. On the surface, the two were evenly matched. In fact, Su Mu couldn't support it for long. His life has entered the countdown. If I fight again, I'm afraid I'm going to show my cowardice. At this critical moment, another golden armored warrior suddenly came out and went straight to Wei Zhuang. This scene made Wei Zhuang's complexion change, and the corners of his eyes twitched fiercely. Just being a golden armored warrior made him a little embarrassed. Another one, I'm afraid I won't be able to bear it. In a sudden change of mind, Wei Zhuang already had the intention of retreating. In his opinion, this golden armored warrior is cumbersome and has shallow moves. However, with a heavy force and a tortoise shell, it is not easy to deal with. If you only have one, you can try to consume it to death. If you have two, it's not good. In case of being entangled and slammed down wildly with a heavy punch, it might capsize in the gutter. After seeing the newly appeared golden armored warrior, Su Mu immediately understood the thoughts of Daoist Zishan. Cooperating with the performance, 
he hurriedly roared furiously, condensed all his strength and threw a punch. This punch is called Kaishan. Gather all the power in one point, condensed incomparably. The style of the fist swept out of this fist made Wei Zhuang's skin feel a slight tingling sensation. As soon as the helper arrived, it turned out to be even more brutal. There is no chance of winning this battle, withdraw. Thinking of this, Wei Zhuang no longer hesitated. He decisively used his movement technique to escape the attack range of Su Mu, and after a few leaps, he disappeared into the dense forest in the dark night. This martial arts master was actually forced to retreat by Su Mu. After forcing Wei Zhuang back, Su Mu did not relax, but gritted his teeth and persisted for half an hour. He didn't let out a sigh of relief until he was sure that the martial arts master had indeed left. As soon as his mind relaxed, the golden armor on Su Mu's body immediately receded and disappeared without a trace. His feet were soft and he almost fell to the ground. Su Mu only felt that all the energy was drained in an instant, and the whole person was weaker than ever before. Vaguely, I even smelled a dead breath. At this time, Taoist Zishan came out from the dark and said with some happiness. Fortunately, this martial arts master has a soft temper, and used an ordinary golden armored talisman to scare him off. Then, he looked at Su Mu with a complicated expression and said. Little friend saves your life, no matter how many words of thanks the poor man says, it will only be pale and powerless. I don't know what little friend has any other wishes, and the poor man will help you to achieve it. Don't talk nonsense, let's go. If the martial arts master kills his carbine, both of us will die immediately. Su Mu, who is used to death, is not so hypocritical. After taking a sip, he left here with Daoist Zishan. Su Mu's vitality is far stronger than Zishan Taoist imagined. They fled all the way for three days, but Su Mu still had half his life left, not in a state of dying. In a tea house on a country road, two pale-faced people, Su Mu and Zishan, sat opposite each other, drinking tea each. Zio Yuyu's vigorous vitality. If it goes on like this, I'm afraid the poor road will take a step first. Daoist Zishan looked at his haggard face in the tea and couldn't help but let out a wry smile. On that day, although Wei Zhuang was forced to retreat, the Taoist bird that Xian Jinzi used kept following them. In order not to be tracked, Taoist Zishan could only cut off this connection by performing surgery. In the mountain hall, Daoist Zishan's avatar is closely related to the main body, otherwise, it would not be able to perform such a powerful technique as the four elephant sword formation. So after the clone was smashed to pieces by several martial arts masters, his body was also implicated, and he was seriously injured. Xian Jinzi's way is on Zishan Mountain. In order to cut off his lock, Zishan suffered huge losses. The injury added to the injury, and Taoist Zishan's state was almost at the extreme, and there was a possibility of sudden death at any time. It can be said that Su Mu and Zishan are both people who have half their feet in the coffin. Fortunately, after these three days, Su Mu took the time to get a lot of information from his mouth. Behind the Great Famine in Jizhou, there are too many secrets hidden. The matter has to start from five years ago. In the fifteenth year of Apocalypse, King Biling accidentally found that his body was a little strange and not very comfortable. Originally thought it was just a small problem. Who would have searched for famous doctors, but couldn't even determine the disease? Later, a well-informed famous doctor suspected that King Biling might have been poisoned by poison, spells or something. She suggested that he find someone who is knowledgeable and have a look. But Qi refiners are different from warriors. Not only are they few in number, but they are also reluctant to participate in worldly affairs. Especially the Qi refiners with profound Taoism, even more so. Coincidentally, Zuan's Henman appeared at this time. Zuan's Henman and Tian Yijio were originally the top teachers in Jizhou, and they were divided into luck. But one internal fight will greatly damage the vitality of Zuan's Henman. For the name Xian Jinzi. To be more precise, it is the position of the headmaster of Xuanjin sect. The Xuanjin Gate has been inherited for nearly a thousand years, which is longer than the history of the Dagon dynasty. The master church automatically inherits the Tao name of Xian Jinzi. Now this is the 16th generation Xian Jinzi. 
he didn't want Xuanzang's sect to fall into his hands. When he learned that King Biling, the lord of the two states, was looking for someone who had attained the Tao, he took the initiative to find him. But Zuan Zenzi never imagined that, with the background of Zuan's henman and his cultivation. Unexpectedly, he couldn't solve the physical problems of King Biling, and he couldn't even find out the specific reason. Xian Jinzi could only vaguely feel that a strange and cold force was entrenched in King Biling's body, but he couldn't remove it. After several attempts, not only did not eliminate half of it, but it made it worse. After several times, King Biling's body was extremely weak, and he could only rely on various heaven and earth treasures to hang his life. Just when Xian Jinzi was at a loss, he discovered the mutation of Gui Tu Mountain. The Gui Tu Mountain, which was good before, suddenly became barren and suffocating. Hearing this, Su Mu had already guessed what happened to Gui Tu Mountain. So I specifically asked Taoist Zishan what year it was. The answer he got was the 18th year of the Apocalypse. From the 6th year of Apocalypse to the 10th year of Apocalypse, the bronze alien coffin appeared near the military camp. And then disappeared. Eight years later, he reappeared on Gui Tu Mountain. It is speculated that the bronze alien coffin may be changed to another place every four years. In the 18th year of Tianqi, he happened to appear in Gui Tu Mountain and was discovered by Xian Jinzi. But that's not the point. The point is, Xian Jinzi dug up the bronze alien coffin and found that there was an incredible figure buried in it. Last time, the two of them stopped and continued to run for their lives. Taking advantage of the tea time now, we can continue. Su Mu drank all the tea in the cup in one gulp and said calmly. Man is born with one death, why should he be afraid of being planted? But I don't want to die in the dark. Let's talk about who is buried in the coffin. Does the female corpse have any special identity? Daoist Zishan thought that Su Mu was really looking down on his death, and he couldn't help but look a little complicated. He is a cultivator, and his awareness of life and death is not as good as that of a young man in his twenties. He is really ashamed. Thinking of this, Zishan stopped worrying about life and death, and said to Su Mu. Do you know that in the history of Dagon, there has been a Valkyrie, and she is the only one. The only Valkyrie, I've never heard of it. Su Mu shook his head and waited for Zishan to explain to him. Hearing this, Taoist Zishan sighed and said. It's no wonder you didn't know. Dagon's history books hardly recorded her deeds. I also learned it from the collection of Zuan's Henman. More than 500 years ago, a strange woman named Bai Ji appeared. As a woman, she is eight feet tall, slender and strong, and her appearance is extremely beautiful. Of course, these are not worth mentioning in front of her martial arts talent. According to the records of my Zuan's Henman, Bai Ji practiced martial arts at the age of five, completed physical training at the age of seven, and attained congenital perfection at the age of eight. Hearing this, Su Mu couldn't help taking a deep breath. What kind of monster is this? Is the cultivation speed getting faster and faster? The Taoist Zishan sneered and said. Where is this? It's even more amazing later. At the age of ten, Bai Ji entered the realm of a martial arts master and became the youngest master in the world. But she didn't stop there. After eight years of experience, her cultivation continued to improve. At the age of 18, Baiji entered the realm of the martial god and became the first and only Valkyrie in the history of Dagon. Hearing this, Su Mu was shocked and asked the question aloud again. More than 500 years ago, Dagon just established the country, right? Could it be that she? That's right. Baiji joined the Dagon army when she was 12 years old, eliminated the enemy and made great achievements all the way, and became the commander-in-chief of the three armies on the day she advanced to the martial god. When she was 20 years old, she fought a war to establish the fate of the country. The Battle of Changshan, the First World War slaughtered 800,000 troops of the Wei Kingdom. Baiji was named after the Blood Sea Slaughter, the Red-Blooded Valkyrie and so on. Since then, Dagon has conquered Kyushu, and no other force can shake it. The Battle of Changshan was not won by Qilin Fei's General Zhang Feiyu. Could it be? Su Mu raised his brows, he already had a guess in his heart. You guessed it right. 
For a powerful dynasty, it's too easy to erase the traces of a person. Even if she is the blood sea slaughter that intimidates Kyushu. The so-called unicorn flying general is just an adjutant of Baiji, the Valkyrie. After that battle, this god general who made a terrific battle and eliminated the land of Kyushu to tremble, disappeared inexplicably. I've always been curious about what happened to Baiji. It wasn't until the bronze coffin was opened that I got the answer. Taoist Zishan looked a little melancholy. It can be seen that he has a good impression of this red-blooded Valkyrie, and even worships it. It's a shame that such an amazing and talented person has ended up like this. Daoist Zishan didn't even go to find out what happened to Bai Ji before her death. Just the terrifying and trembling resentment and suffocation on her corpse can guess most of it. Although he accidentally learned a shocking secret, Su Mu didn't forget what they started talking about. What does Bai Ji's corpse have to do with King Bai Ling's illness? Why did you refine her into a dry scorpion? Hearing Su Mu's question, Daoist Zishan's expression returned to normal, and he continued. Zombies are Yin and ghosts. Not only do they have no blood in their bodies, but they also blood and replenish qi. However, when it evolves to the apex and becomes a drought, this kind of ghost will turn from Yin to Yang, and breed supreme blood essence. The essence and blood of the dry scorpion is a sacred thing, and it has infinite wonderful uses. Nourishes the body, strengthens vitality, eliminates all diseases, eliminates all evils, etc. etc. So, no matter what the illness of King Biling is, as long as he takes the blood and essence of the dry scorpion, he can restore his health. It can even help him prolong his life. But how can the scorpion be made casually? Before seeing the body of Baiji, Xian Jinzi never had this idea. But with Angelica's body, it's different. In front of her is the of war, and the strength of her body is rare in the world. And after his death, he has accumulated a terrifying resentment, which needs to be suppressed with a bronze coffin and a large amount of Yin wood. Her corpse is the most advanced corpse refining material. Speaking of this, Daoist Zishan's face was a little gloomy, and there was a bit of anger in his voice. But the drought is a terrible thing. Once it comes into the world, the consequences will be unimaginable. Not to mention that refining her requires a lot of blood essence. These are human lives. I also persuaded Xian Jinzi not to do such detrimental things, but he didn't listen at all. All he could think about was climbing the big tree of King Biling and strengthening the Xuanjin Gate. No way, I can only pretend to be obedient on the surface, and secretly wait for the opportunity to destroy the drought. Unfortunately, I still underestimated the horror of the drought. With my strength, even when the dreadhead is the weakest, it can't hurt her foundation. Taoist Zishan was a little lost. He took a huge risk, just to destroy her at the moment when the drought took shape. This is his only chance. But the moment the four elephant sword formation submerged, Daoist Zishan knew that the plan had failed. Drought is far more terrifying than he imagined. The four elephant sword formation can only cause some trouble to the scorpion, but it is not enough to destroy him. He didn't dare to think about what was going to happen next. Jizhou, I'm afraid it will be a thousand miles away in the near future. Listening to Daoist Zishan talking about this, combined with the records from the historical books in the real world. Su Mu has basically pieced together part of the truth about the Jizhou famine. Although Daoist Zishan tried to stop it, the drought was born and brought a terrifying famine to Jizhou. Drought will not die, and famine will not end. Later, the famine gradually improved, indicating that someone must have dealt with the drought later. Otherwise, even in the real world a few decades from now, Jizhou will definitely suffer from a famine, and it will even spread to other regions. As for King Biling. Historical records record that he disappeared mysteriously, and I don't know what happened. There is also Tiani teaching. After the first dungeon world ended, Su Mu checked the information of this sect, but he didn't find any useful information. Is there any special connection between Tiani religion and the Han dynasty? Thinking of this, the figure of Qing Shuzi couldn't help but appear in Su Mu's mind. This Daoist is younger than Zishan Daoist, but Daoxing is not much weaker. Not a simple character. 
After the tea was finished and the story was finished, the two embarked on a journey of escape again. Along the way, I did not encounter many difficulties. Five days later, Su Mu brought Taoist Zishan to a barren mountain. After making sure that no one was following, the two entered a hidden cave. Brother Mu, you are finally back. As soon as he entered the cave, a slim girl with bright eyes and white teeth ran out to Su Mu. It was Lu Yueqing. Lu Yueqing's martial arts cultivation was too low, so Su Mu couldn't take her with him, so he could only place her in a safe place. How's it going recently? I brought you a little gift, see if you still like it. Su Mu handed her specially bought rouge gouache and a pearl hairpin. Yu Yu reading. But Lu Yueqing, who always liked these things the most, didn't even look at them. She stared at Su Mu, bit her lip and asked worriedly. Brother Mu, why is your face so ugly? You. Are you injured? Zishan's Taoist technique of making talismans caused irreversible and serious damage to Su Mu's body. Su Mu's vitality has been tenacious until now. But. This is almost the limit. Su Mu could feel that he had reached the level of exhaustion. He took advantage of this last moment to come here just to see Lu Yueqing for the last time. Su Mu smiled and touched Lu Yueqing's head, and said. It can also be said to be injured. My deadline is approaching, I'm afraid I won't be able to see the sun tomorrow. You, you must learn to take good care of yourself and live well in the future. Su Mu wondered if the simulated world would continue without him. But the people in this simulation world are very vivid. After several reincarnations, Su Mu can no longer spend his life in a simulated world with the mentality of playing games like he did at the beginning. So, when he was about to die, Su Mu thought of Lu Yueqing first. Hearing Su Mu's words, Lu Yueqing's face suddenly turned pale. She trembled slightly and almost fell to the ground. First, her father died, and then the only person she was close to was leaving her. A 17-year-old girl has experienced two major blows in just over a month, and she has gone from being a jewel in the palm of her hand to being alone. How did Lu Yueqing accept this? Seeing Lu Yueqing in such pain, Su Mu couldn't bear it, and gently embraced her. It's okay, it's okay, everything will be fine. Just treat it as a dream, wake up and everything will be fine. His soft comfort made Lu Yueqing burst into tears. From Su Mu's point of view, the gain in this life is huge, and death is already a big gain at this time. First of all, he has cultivated to a whole new level in martial arts, and he has also played against martial arts masters. This kind of combat experience is very valuable to him. Secondly, Su Mu has learned a lot of key information. In the next life, he can make an all-round adjustment based on this information, and he will definitely achieve greater progress. In the end, this was the most peaceful of all Su Mu's deaths. The life force is slowly passing away, and it is not painful. This life can be considered complete. However, in Lu Yueqing's eyes, the last person close to her will leave her. This kind of pain made her heart throb and she couldn't help herself. Su Mu didn't know how to comfort Lu Yueqing, so he could only hug her and pat her head gently. But clapping, his hand suddenly fell weakly. Su Mu, ushered in the fourth death of this instance. According to Su Mu's idea, this dungeon can die normally. Next, he will return to the standby space. However, there is one person who disagrees with him dying like this. Who are you? As soon as Su Mu died, Lu Yueqing's complexion suddenly turned cold, as if he had matured a lot in an instant. She held Su Mu's body and looked at Taoist Zishan vigilantly. The intelligent Lu Yueqing knew that since Su Mu brought Taoist Zishan here, it means that this person is basically trustworthy. But she still had to ask. The cruel world left Lu Yueqing with scars, and she did not dare to relax in the slightest. Pin Dao, I am. The experience of this young girl Lu Yueqing, Taoist Zishan knew more or less from Su Mu, which made him feel a little distressed. At the same time, the Taoist understood that Su Mu brought him here because he wanted him to take care of Lu Yueqing. Therefore, Taoist Zishan did not hold back and told Lu Yueqing all relevant matters. When he heard the word refining corpses, Lu Yueqing's eyes suddenly lit up. 
It felt like a person who was struggling to move forward in the dark and saw a lighthouse that pointed the way for her. Wait. You said. Corpse refining. Is it possible to refine dead people into zombies? The girl's excited expression made Daoist Zishan stunned for a moment, and then she guessed what she was thinking. After a person dies, no matter what ghost he turns into, it's not his own. People are people, and ghosts are ghosts. You have to understand this. Taoist Zishan explained with a sigh. In some stories, people turn into ghosts after death, and still inherit the memories of their lifetime, as if they just changed their life form. In fact, no matter what kind of ghost a person turns into after death, it will become a brand new existence. Only Su Mu, who has a death simulator, can maintain his sanity. Taoist Zishan's explanation did not persuade Lu Yuqin to leave. Holding Su Mu's body, she looked at Taoist Zishan firmly, and said word by word. Teach me. Please, teach me. You. Seeing Lu Yueqing's incomparably determined eyes, Taoist Zishan didn't know what to say for a while. After looking at each other for a long time, he lowered his head and sighed. Forget it, Pindo's half-life was saved by him, you can do what you want. Taoist Zishan was also seriously injured, and he didn't have much time to live. In his whole life, apart from cultivating, he was cultivating, just for the legendary attaining the Tao and becoming an immortal. When it's over, I recall the past half of my life, but I don't have anyone or anything to worry about. When I think about it, I feel an inexplicable sense of loss. Since Lu Yueqing was so determined, Taoist Zishan would accept an apprentice before he died. Let's repay Su Mu for saving his life. Secondly, it can be regarded as leaving a thought for himself and a seed for Zuan's henman who stepped into the vortex. Since you want to learn, the poor Taoist will accept you as an apprentice. But not only do you have to learn the art of refining corpses, but none of the others can be left behind. Cultivation of corpses is only a small path, longevity is the path. Finally, you have to keep in mind that you are a disciple of Xuanzhen sect. If there is a day when the Xuanzhen sect falls, you have to carry the banner of the sect as much as possible. With limited conditions, after a simple ceremony, Taoist Zishan accepted Lu Yueqing as a disciple. In fact, he didn't have much hope at first. Qi training is more about talent than martial arts. Never thought that Lu Yueqing's talent in martial arts is not very good, but his talent in qi refining is excellent. I dare not say much, but at least it is not weaker than Daoist Zishan. This made him overjoyed and called out that he had found a treasure. However, there is not much time left for Lu Yueqing. As time goes by, the air in Jizhou is getting hotter and hotter. The drought has begun. The Great Famine has gradually shown signs. Fortunately, Su Mu made preparations in advance and stored a lot of food in the cave, enough for Lu Yueqing and Taoist Zishan to eat for a while. One teacher and one apprentice, one teaching and one learning. The two of them worked hard in the cave. After one month, food consumption was halved. Taoist Zishan was seriously injured and died in peace. Before he died, he passed all his belongings to Lu Yueqing, and told her to bury himself and never turn him into a zombie. Lu Yueqing obeyed the will of Taoist Zishan, dug a pit in the barren mountain, and buried him with a good life. This is the third time Lu Yueqing has sent someone away in the past six months. Although it is a master-apprentice relationship, but after all, they have not lived together for a long time. After the burial of Taoist Zishan, Lu Yueqing was only left numb. One hole, one person, one corpse. After Taoist Zishan died, Lu Yueqing guarded Su Mu's body and started a new life. Now, she is the only one left. If it was half a year ago, Lu Yueqing would never have imagined such a life, let alone that he could survive in such an environment. But now, Lu Yueqing is not only living a good life, but is still cultivating. Human suffering, no matter who falls on his head, as long as he doesn't die, he has to suffer. You can bear it, you can bear it. Lu Yueqing endured it. Just because she has an obsession in her heart that she must achieve no matter what, to let Su Mu live again. Lu Yueqing's life has become monotonous. Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm. 
In addition to cultivating every day, he used magic to maintain Su Mu's body. When it comes to the cultivation of qi cultivators, it is very different from the martial artist. The martial artist refines his own innate essence. Take yourself as a small world, and continue to grow stronger. Qi refiners, on the other hand, focus on absorbing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, and integrating with the natural avenue and all things in heaven and earth. Reach the realm where I am heaven and earth. After the qi refiner absorbs the spiritual energy, it hides it in the five internal organs. The heart, liver, spleen, lung and kidney correspond to gold, wood, water, fire, and earth. Cultivating the five internal organs in the body until the spiritual energy is full, making the five elements perfect, mutually reinforcing and mutually restraining, and echoing with the external world. In this way, it is the five qi chaoyuan. Then repair three flowers. Human flower, refining essence and transforming qi. Earth flower, refining qi and transforming into a god. Smallpox, refining the spirit is still empty. When the three flowers gather in the land and the five energies are in their prime, they can be called masters of the Tao. If it wasn't for Xian Jinzi's eagerness to achieve success in taking shortcuts, his strength would be greatly damaged. Where else do you need to rely on King Biling? He alone can revitalize the Xuanjin sect. Of course, Lu Yuqing doesn't have to think so far. Even if she is quite talented in qi refining, she is still too far away from that realm. Although Taoist Zishan repeatedly warned him before he died, Lu Yuqing still devoted most of his energy to researching the technique of corpse refining. A month after Taoist Zishan died, the famine in Jizhou gradually spread. At the same time, Lu Yuqing has mastered the art of corpse refining, and can't wait to find a suitable place to raise corpses. The drought in Jizhou is getting worse day by day. Not only has it not rained for several months, but the temperature has gradually become angry, and the air is extremely hot. Looking up, there are cracked earth everywhere. Take a deep breath, there is even a burning sensation in your chest. Refining a corpse requires a land of four yin, a ruined situation, and gathering the evil spirits of yin to nourish the corpse. In Jizhou at this time, it is not easy to find such a place. Lu Yuqing carried Su Mu's body on his back and went out at night. After searching for a long time, he finally found a suitable place. This is an abandoned village. There is a village next to it, but the village is empty and abandoned. I don't know if the villagers fled or died in some kind of disaster. This abandoned village has a backyard. Under the shelter of the mountain wall, there is no sunlight all year round, and it is covered with moss and moss. Even though most of Jizhou is in drought or the like, the soil here is still wet and greasy. It feels a little weird to touch, like some kind of fleshy flesh with mucus. Lu Yuqing is no longer the little girl who didn't understand anything half a year ago. What she learned from Zishan Taoist not only has qi refining technique and corpse refining technique. More knowledge. After some observation, Lu Luqing could see that the backyard of the Yizhuang was in a damp environment all the year round, and it was infested with a lot of corpse gas. It has become an excellent place for raising corpses. From the feng shui point of view, this kind of terrain is called the corpse cave. This is exactly what she is looking for. After deciding where to raise the corpse, Lu Yuqing immediately took action. She dug a shallow pit in the backyard of Yizhuang and buried Su Mu's body in it. Then use crow blood, corpse oil, fur and other yin evil things to prepare a corpse nourishing liquid. Help Sumu take it every day at midnight, and then use the corpse refining technique to raise the corpse. Raising a corpse is not something that can be accomplished in a day or two. After locating the corpse in this abandoned Yizhuang, Lu Yuqing regarded it as her temporary home. Taking Yizhuang as her home is something she never dared to imagine before. I have to say, this once innocent girl has grown up. People live, nothing more than food, clothing, housing and transportation. Lu Yuqing moved all the food in the cave in several times, and carefully hid it. Then he spent a lot of energy to create a pair of acacia coffins with his own hands. The locust tree is a ghost in the wood, a proper shade of the shade. And the wood is soft and easy to rot. Under normal circumstances, no one would use locust trees to make coffins. 
but Lu Yuqin built this locust coffin for the purpose of refining and raising corpses. To succeed, it is nothing more than the time, the right place, and the people. The corpse refining this time was a little bit worse because of the birth of a drought. The other two are quite perfect. The backyard of this abandoned Ijuang is a perfect place for refining corpses, which is a good location. Su Mu's martial arts skills were very strong during his lifetime, and his body after death is naturally not comparable to that of ordinary people. Although Lu Yuqing has not been practicing Taoism for a long time, he has an excellent talent and studies the art of corpse refining hard. The combination of the two is a human being. In this way, raising the corpse naturally went very smoothly. After only five days, Su Mu's body evolved into a white zombie. The zombies under Bai Zong are all existences that do not enter the stream. When it comes to Bai Zong, it is a real zombie. The white corpse has a pale body with tiny white hairs. The strength fluctuates between third-rate warriors and second-rate warriors. Of course, there are also special existences, stronger or weaker. Of course Lu Yuqing would not be satisfied with this. How could the little brother in her heart be so weak? Raising the corpse has to continue. And entered the second stage. At the second stage, the locust coffin that Lu Yuqing had built before would come in handy. Three days later, Su Mu had stabilized by Zong's realm. Lu Yuqing covered the locust coffin with a layer of damp soil from the backyard of Yizhuang, and then evenly sprinkled the corpse liquid. Then, he dug out Su Mu's body from the soil and put it in the locust coffin. It's not over yet. Lu Yuqing also used four ropes to hang the acacia coffin in the center of the Yizhuang. While isolating ordinary earth qi, it can also absorb the corpse qi accumulated in the entire Yizhuang for many years. In this way, it entered the second stage of corpse raising. Time goes by day by day. Under Lu Yueqing's careful care, Su Mu's body gradually turned from white to black. Sharp claws grew out of his fingertips, and two ferocious fangs appeared between his lips and teeth. The texture of the corpse is also getting stronger and stronger. Su Mu is evolving in the direction of black zombie. Outside, there is already a great famine. And Lu Yuqing hid in this abandoned Yizhuang, with Su Mu's body all day long, and he felt like a paradise. Today, at midnight. As usual, Lu Yuqing climbed down the ladder to Su Mu's coffin and poured the corpse liquid he needed into the coffin. Then he bit his fingertips and dropped a drop of blood essence on Su Mu's forehead. He also smashed the law with his hands, and performed some kind of corpse refining technique. This technique allows Lu Yueqing to cultivate Su Mu into his own corpse. In Lu Yueqing's opinion, as long as the corpse refining can be successful, in a sense it can be regarded as the resurrection of Su Mu. In this way, her little brother Mu can accompany her. After performing the technique, Lu Yueqing carefully observed the state of Su Mu's body Su Mu has basically transformed into a black zombie, with a strong corpse aura surrounding him. At this time, it took less than two months for the corpse to be raised. This speed is terrifyingly fast. Brother Mu, I'm waiting for you, you must wake up quickly. Lu Yueqing stroked Su Mu gently, as if he was still that handsome boy. In fact, after being refined into a zombie, Su Mu's face gradually became hideous and terrifying. Especially after the evolution to the black zombie, the whole body is completely black, and the teeth are sharp. It looks very scary. But in Lu Yueqing's eyes, it doesn't matter if he is handsome or ugly, smart or stupid. Su Mu will always be her little brother. After some operations, Lu Yueqing was a little tired. Although her talent is excellent, her cultivation time is still too short, and her Taoism is still shallow. Every time after using corpse refinement, there will be a feeling of being hollowed out. Lu Yueqing leaned weakly against a rotten coffin, took out some dry food and ate it in small bites. After a while, Lu Yueqing was ready to sleep after eating the dry food. But at this moment, there was a sudden ding-dong sound outside. Hearing this voice, Lu Yueqing immediately stood up, his face full of alertness. She performed a warning technique near Yizhuang. As long as someone approaches, this spell will be activated and a warning sound will sound. After coming here for more than a month, 
this technique has only been activated once. That time, a few hungry people came. After they heard the alarm bell and saw that this place was Ishuang, they were scared away. I don't know who the uninvited guest this time is. Outside Ishuang, four people from Jianghu came. Three of them were dressed as warriors, with ferocious looks and cruel eyes. In the end, the man was a sloppy Taoist with triangular eyes, and there was a gloomy and sinister smile on the corner of his mouth from time to time. Just looking at the appearance of these four people, I feel that they are not good people. Master Ding, what was that sound just now? Why does it sound weird? Among the three warriors, a one-eyed dragon with a blindfold asked the sloppy Taoist. It's a small spell used for early warning. It seems that there are like-minded people in this village. The sloppy Taoist narrowed his eyes to look at the gloomy Yizhuang, his eyes flickering with a ferocious light. The one-eyed warrior licked his lips and asked eagerly. Dot. Since there is someone, let's go in and have a look. Maybe that person has something to eat. Hearing this, the other two warriors also nodded, looking impatient. But it can be seen that the three of them are headed by the sloppy Taoist. He didn't nod, no one dared to act at will. These four people are the Jiangyang robbers who are active in the Jizhou area. Relying on good force, he can do all evil and bring disaster to one side. In the past two years, King Biling has put most of his energy on refining the dungeon, and has relaxed a lot on the management of his territorial possessions. This made life very comfortable for these Jiangyang thieves. But a famine destroyed everything. Even if these people are strong, they can't make food out of thin air. In the beginning, you can grab some around. In the end, let alone food, there were not many decent living people. There are corpses everywhere, and victims with yellow faces and thin skin. Where would they go to grab food? If it goes on like this, they are afraid that they will feed on two-legged sheep. When they found the traces of others at this time, these Jiang Yang robbers couldn't help but get excited, and could not wait to rush in and loot immediately. Of course, the premise is that there is something to grab. But the sloppy Taoist is not in a hurry. He stopped the three fierce gangsters and shook his head and said. Don't worry, let me see what's going on inside. Saying that, the sloppy Taoist closed his left eye, and stretched out a finger full of dirt to tap on the eyelid. A small ball in the shape of an eyeball bounced out of his fingertips and flew towards the interior of Yizhuang. Seeing this, the three behind them immediately praised them. Master Ding is so good. He really deserves to be an expert. Master Ding just didn't join the Jianyi sect, otherwise he would have sat on the throne of the headmaster now. Tian Yijio's headmaster throne is a piece of. Our Lord Ding is someone who wants to become an immortal, so why should he look at Tian Yijio? I ba. It's hard to imagine that these three gangsters with fierce and cruel faces are so skilled in flattering. And that sloppy Daoist also had a lustful look on his face, and those who didn't know really thought he was a virtuous man. Proud is proud, and business cannot be left behind. Under the control of the sloppy Taoist, the eyeball flew into the Yizhuang and saw Lu Yuqing from a distance. Lu Yuqing also discovered this eyeball. But most of her energy was used to practice the art of corpse refining. In addition to this, he will also learn basic qi refining techniques, as well as some minor spells that are not popular. Lu Yuqing does not know any Taoism with powerful lethality. However, the eyeball didn't exist for a long time, and after a while, it disappeared into a cloud of blue smoke. Just because its mission has been completed. Outside Yizhuang, the sloppy Taoist opened his left eye with a cold smile on his face. In this righteous village, there is only one girl who is about 16 or 17 years old. She can't even decipher my superficial insight, so she's definitely not a powerful person. And this girl doesn't look like she's starving at all, so she must be hiding food. It's a big fat sheep. Hearing this, the eyes of the three ruthless villains showed incomparably greedy eyes. Master Ding, what are you waiting for? Let's go in quickly. The one-eyed villain licked his lips again, as if he was already hungry and thirsty. The sloppy Taoist looked behind him, thought for a while, and nodded, saying. Well, let's go first. Having said that, he took the lead and walked towards Yizhuang. 
Seeing this, the three vicious bandits followed closely behind, not willing to take a step. The Yizhuang in the middle of the night is very gloomy. But the four of them were not afraid at all and came all the way to the gate of Yizhuang. I saw two lines of blood-colored characters written next to the door. Zombies are infested, and strangers are not allowed to enter. Seeing these big characters, the sloppy Taoists sneered with disdain. If there were really powerful zombies, would the girl still be alive? As for raising corpses, what kind of zombies can the girl raise with such a shallow practice? At most, you can raise an unpopular walking corpse, even a third-rate warrior can handle it at will. Open the door. The sloppy Taoist gave an order. The one-eyed villain immediately stepped forward and kicked open the gate of Yizhuang with a ruthless kick. Phew! After the door opened, a gust of wind blew through. The four of them looked closely and saw that the hall of Yizhuang was full of tattered coffins. In the center stood a slim girl with picturesque eyebrows. With just one look, the three fierce villains were stunned, and then the greed in their eyes became more intense. At this time, Lu Yuaqin was like a little white rabbit being watched by four hungry wolves, who would be eaten alive at any time. But she didn't panic at all, instead she scolded these uninvited guests. This is my territory, no matter who you are, get out now. Otherwise, the consequences will be at your own risk. Lu Yuaqin's stern reprimand, not only did not frighten the four, but made them laugh out loud. Ha ha ha. The little girl is not very old but her voice is scary well, if you play around with you, maybe you will have a way to survive. The anger of the weak, in the eyes of the strong, is a different kind of cute. At this time, Lu Yuaqin was the weakling in the eyes of the four people who could handle it at will. Her anger also turned into a cute or ridiculous behavior. Hearing this, Lu Yuaqin's face became colder. After only one encounter, she knew roughly who these people were. For these people, the best thing to do is to die quickly. Living is just a waste of air. With the killing heart together, Lu Luqing's hand hidden in his sleeve kept pinching the magic trick. At the same time, the fierce gangster who spoke before was striding towards her. Little girl, obediently bring you something to eat, and then play with your grandfather, and I'll give you a way to survive. Otherwise. Before the ferocious gangster had finished speaking, the acacia coffin hanging on the top of Yizhuang was suddenly lifted, and a black figure rushed out. This black figure was as fast as lightning. The ferocious bandit walking towards Lu Yuaqing felt a gust of wind rush towards him, and then a sharp pain came from his neck. The fierce and vicious bandit screamed, struggling to resist. But the next second, he saw a ferocious zombie claws pass through his chest and crush his heart. The fierce and vicious bandit's eyes were wide open and he lost his life in great fear and horror. In the blink of an eye, one of the four went away. Zombies are infested and strangers are not allowed to enter. Su Mu did not expect that his peaceful death did not end this simulation. Lu Yuaqin did not give up on life and death, exhausted his efforts, and forcibly refined him into a zombie. Before advancing to Bai Zong, Su Mu couldn't move, but his consciousness was always awake. He saw everything Lu Yuaqing did. Those scenes made his heart feel mixed. The little girl in Su Mu's eyes kept breaking his original cognition, and what he did was completely beyond his imagination. Tianwei does this talent really outweigh the disadvantages? Maybe it's time to make some changes. Not to mention those complicated ideas. After advancing to white stiffness, Su Mu can move freely. Although Lu Yuaqing refined him into his own corpse. But her Taoism was not enough, she couldn't suppress Su Mu at all. If Su Mu didn't keep his sanity, he would attack Lu Yuaqing the moment he evolved into Bai Zong. To put it bluntly, it will be backlashed. This is why Taoist Zishan repeatedly urged Lu Yuaqing not to rush to refine the corpse, but to improve his own cultivation first. Unfortunately, Lu Yuaqing did not. Fortunately, Su Mu is not an ordinary ghost, he has his own mind. After the advanced white stiffness, although he can move freely. But Su Mu didn't do anything out of the ordinary, and still cooperated with Lu Yuaqing to raise the corpse. Now that you have become a zombie, improve your strength as much as possible. Bai Zong is too weak, this is not what Su Mu expected. He wants to be stronger. 
Originally, the day should go on peacefully. Until tonight, a group of uninvited guests broke in, causing Su Mu to eliminate for the first time after becoming a zombie. Those three ferocious bandits are all first-class warriors. Among them, the one-eyed man was the strongest, and the one who stepped forward was the weakest. Su Mu suddenly burst out, extremely fast. Before the man could react, Su Mu bit through his neck artery and pierced his chest. In the blink of an eye, the blood and essence of this ferocious gangster was sucked dry and turned into a mummified corpse. The color on Su Mu's corpse was even darker and brighter. This terrifying scene scared the other three back again and again. Among them, the sloppy Taoist was the most frightened. This, this is impossible. You are so shallow, how can you control such a fierce top black zombie? Why haven't you been attacked? Su Mu's strength is much stronger than the ordinary Hei Zong. Ordinary black stiff, his strength is similar to that of a first class warrior. But how strong is Su Mu's body? Before he was alive, he could hang and beat first class warriors at will. After being refined into zombies after death, they are naturally more powerful than those of the same rank. Most importantly, Su Mu has wisdom. The brain is a good thing, and the battle also needs the brain. So just one face to face, the fierce gangster who stepped forward lost his life. This powerful strength caused the other three to fall into panic. In addition to being frightened, the sloppy Taoist also has doubts and confusion. Otherwise, he wouldn't have asked what he just said. At the same time, Su Mu turned his head to look at the remaining three, his fangs were still stained with red blood. Those green eyes projected two gloomy gazes that penetrated the darkness and landed on them. Being stared at by Su Mu, the sloppy Taoist shuddered. Intuition told him that this black zombie might be more ferocious than he imagined. They are by no means rivals. The sloppy Taoist's throat rolled for a while, and he said to Lu Yuqing in a dry voice. Little girl, calm down, you must calm down. Such a ferocious black zombie, if you are not careful, you will lose control. At that time, we will all die, and none of us will be able to escape. Listen to uncle, take it quickly. The water of corpse refining is too deep, you can't grasp it, let uncle come. The sloppy Taoist tried to deceive Lu Yuqin with rhetoric. In his opinion, Lu Yuqin was young, so it should be good to see that he was born with thin skin and tender flesh. Such a little girl, it's best to be deceived. If he succeeds, he will not only survive, but also obtain a powerful black zombie. That is really a beautiful thing. Thinking of this, the sloppy Taoist even thought that this might be a big chance. A chance for him to become stronger. If Lu Yuqin knew what he was thinking, he would scold at him ugly, but thinking beautiful. Not to mention that Lu Yuqin, who has experienced many hardships, has already matured and will not listen to the nonsense of sloppy Taoists at all. Even if she was really deceived, it would be fine. Because Su Mu is not under anyone's control at all, no one can control him. Of course, it is impossible for Lu Yuqin to be fooled like this now. With a pinch, she gave Su Mu an order to eliminate all three of them. And Su Mu also cooperated and rushed towards them, his ferocious fangs and claws flashed a terrifying cold light. Seeing this, the sloppy Taoist's complexion changed, and he snorted arrogantly. Humph! You don't eat or drink for a toast. Since you little girl doesn't know how to lift things up, don't blame Master Dao, I'm welcome. Zhang Long, Wang Wu, you two go first. Just hold on for a moment, Master Dao, my spell is 10%, and I can eliminate this zombie with a single strike of thunder. Hearing the words of the sloppy Taoist, the two ferocious and vicious bandits gained confidence and rushed toward Su Mu with a promise. Who knew that just as they rushed to Su Mu's present, the Taoist technique performed by the sloppy Taoist turned into a whirlwind, wrapping him and fleeing to the outside of Yizhuang. Amazingly fast. Ding Cho, I will be your immortal. Seeing this scene, no matter how stupid those two ferocious bandits were, they knew they were sold. Their only role is to delay the sloppy Taoist for a while so that he can escape. The one-eyed villain scolded angrily, wishing to find that sloppy Taoist desperately. However, the reality is cruel. He didn't have the guts to find a sloppy Taoist desperately, 
and he didn't have this chance. Because, the terrifying black zombie has already eliminated them in front of them. It's too late to run away now. When they were ten meters apart, Su Mu's whole body burst out with a thick black gas, which enveloped the two fierce and vicious bandits. This is one of the abilities of zombies. Zombies are ghosts with the power of corpses as their core. But that doesn't mean this corpse poisonous miasma is easy to mess with. Seeing the black corpse poison and miasma attacking, the two ferocious bandits immediately held their breath. But that didn't help. Threads and strands of black miasma followed the pores around their bodies and continuously penetrated into their bodies. If you cultivate the astral chi, you can try to block it. Or the manipulation of the physical body reaches a microscopic level, which can close all pores. These two methods can play a certain role in isolating the corpse poison and miasma. But these two people obviously don't have such ability. The corpse poison and miasma made these two fierce and vicious bandits dizzy, leaving only 50 or 60 percent of their combat power. And Su Mu lost track under the cover of this black fog. This made the two of them even more frightened. Where? Where? Where did that zombie go? I don't know. I didn't see it here. Quick. Find it quickly, its location must be locked. The two ferocious bandits were extremely terrifying, like headless flies, scurrying around in the black mist. If they are not in a hurry, Sumaguang will consume them to death with the corpse poison and miasma. But now there is a sloppy Taoist, he has to hurry up and eliminate these two guys. Of those four people, don't even try to run away. The corpse poison attacked the heart, and panic was added. These two ferocious bandits gradually became confused, and flaws appeared frequently. Su Mu appeared again and came behind the one-eyed villain. A pair of green eyes looked down at him coldly, as if looking at a dead man. Brother Wang, behind you. This scene made the other person extremely frightened, and his feet felt a little weak. But this reminder is very important. The one-eyed villain is the strongest of the three, and he is about to complete his training. At the time of the crisis, he slashed behind him without even thinking about it. The blade was fierce, and there were a few whistling sounds. This knife has also used all the strength of the one-eyed bandit. However, when there was a gap in hard power, he was attacked by corpse poison again. How could he hurt Su Mu? Only a crisp sound of dang was heard. A ferocious zombie claws with a black gas grabbed the tiger-headed sword, and the blade could not go an inch. The one-eyed villain felt that his soul was terrified, and immediately wanted to abandon the knife and run away. But where's the time? In the black corpse poisonous miasma, there was a shrill scream. As the saying goes, if you often walk by the river, how can you not get wet shoes? This one-eyed villain has done countless crimes, and I don't know how many people have been eliminated. And tonight, losing his life because of a bad idea that provokes someone he shouldn't have, is a belated retribution. The black corpse poison and miasma rolled around, and Su Mu and the one-eyed villain disappeared. The only person left was almost paralyzed to the ground in fear, completely lost under the shroud of corpse poison and miasma. He eliminated an unknown number of people, and he really enjoyed the feeling of taking one's life. Until then, he didn't know how terrible death is. Brother Wang, Brother Wang. Where are you? Wang. Ah. After a few breaths, the only remaining ferocious bandit let out a shrill scream. This person is not as strong as the one-eyed villain. After the corpse poison has attacked his heart, his mind is in chaos, and he is extremely frightened. Facing Su Mu, he didn't even have the ability to resist, and he lost his life in an instant. After a while, the corpse poison and miasma dissipated. In the hall of Yizhuang, there were two more mummified corpses with distorted faces and fear in their eyes. Su Mu has disappeared. The sloppy Taoist is his next prey. Hey! It's hard to get a few people to obey, and they all folded in at one time. Fortunately, there is another ugly guy behind, who can barely make a call. What is the identity of the Taoist, how can there be no servants to serve you? After escaping more than ten miles in one breath, the whirlwind Taoist technique collapsed, and a sloppy Taoist could only walk on the ground, muttering to himself from time to time. 
In his opinion, this crisis has been lifted. That little girl with a superficial knowledge, and she didn't know what kind of she had, she actually made such a ferocious and terrifying black zombie. And it hasn't attacked her yet. But to say that the little girl has the ability to control the black zombie to chase and eliminate him over such a long distance, the sloppy Taoist will never believe it. The only thing that made him feel a little bit sad was that the three ferocious gangsters died in Ijuang. Now no one is calling him, and no one is flattering him. Fortunately, some time ago, the sloppy Taoists and the others met an extremely ugly Taoist priest who knew some clever tricks. The sloppy Taoists saw that he might be useful, so he took him in. There were originally five of them. It just so happened that before he discovered Ijuang, the Taoist priest who didn't enter the stream had colic pain in his stomach, so he hid to the side for convenience. Who knew that this convenience actually allowed him to escape by luck? And the sloppy Taoist can also have someone to call. Matsi, Matsi, where have you died? Come out to me, Master Dao. The sloppy Taoist came to a dead wood and shouted loudly. After a few voices, a dark figure suddenly stood up in the woods, and then swayed towards the sloppy Taoist. There is an inexplicable strange feeling. When he got closer, he realized that this was a man with a hunched body, wearing a tattered Taoist robe, and his face was covered with pockmarks. Because his appearance is so ugly that he can't tell his age. Matsi, you up until now? Daoist shouted for a long time and you didn't make a sound. Are you deaf? Do you want Daoist to find a driller to give you all your ears? The sloppy Taoist had a displeased expression on his face, and scolded the ugly Taoist condescendingly and loudly. In fact, he didn't shout a few times. The reason for this gesture is purely to vent anger. Surprised and lost in Ijuang, can't you find a punching bag to breathe? This taciturn and ugly Taoist priest he took in not long ago was the best target to vent his anger. He used to curse like this. But this time, it was a little different from usual. After the sloppy Taoist finished cursing, the ugly Taoist slowly stood up straight. After standing upright, he was a head taller than the sloppy Taoist, staring at him with those cruel and crazy eyes. Makes people shudder. It's over, everything is over. Die with me, die together. Ha ha ha. The ugly Taoist covered his face and laughed wildly, as if he was possessed. Matsi, what the are you crazy about? The sloppy Taoist's complexion changed slightly, and he slowly stepped back while scolding. He is an old Jianghu, who dare not say anything else, and his ability to escape is first rate. This ugly Taoist priest, who used to be silent and submissive in the past, suddenly changed drastically, making the sloppy Taoist instinctively feel a hint of crisis. So he cursed, but people were already running away. And running the aura, he is ready to cast his escape spell. However, he obviously underestimated the strength of the ugly Taoist priest, or the degree of danger. With a strange sound, the ugly Taoist priest had a hole in his stomach, and a rotten ghost head flew towards him with his intestines connected. Mom! The sloppy Taoist was startled by the sudden attack of the ghost head, so he quickly tried to escape. But just as he was about to start, he found that a few fingers would not obey him. He looked down and saw that the three fingers in the middle of his right hand had actually turned into twisted and wriggling flesh worms. The finger of the sloppy Taoist was replaced by this disgusting meat worm at some point. And he didn't notice it. As soon as the ugly Taoist attacked, the sloppy Taoist had no power to fight back, not even a chance to escape. Seeing that the ghost head was flying fast, when he opened his mouth and was about to bite the sloppy Taoist to death. A dark shadow passed by at a faster speed, taking the sloppy Taoist away. This sudden change made the ugly Taoist stunned for a moment, and then his expression became even more sinister. A yellow light flashed in his eyes, and after penetrating the darkness, he found the trace of the shadow. I saw a corpse-like black zombie standing on a branch of a dead tree, holding a sloppy Taoist who had no breath in his hand, holding it like a chicken in his hand. At this moment, the black claws were piercing the sloppy Taoist's neck, quickly absorbing his blood. Zombies' blood, not only with their teeth. This black zombie is naturally Su Mu who came after him. But at this time, Su Mu didn't care about the little scoundrels just now. 
he stared at the ugly Taoist priest with fierce eyes. This person's face, Su Mu is not familiar with. But Su Mu was very familiar with his breath. It is Wu Weizi. In the first instance, the demon that eliminated him several times. Although he had expected it, Su Mu was somewhat surprised when he really encountered this demon at this time, and he did not act rashly. He first absorbed the blood essence to nourish himself. After a few breaths, Su Mu dropped a mummified corpse and began to think about the strength of Wu Weizi at this time. The strength of this demon at its peak was not bad, but after the apostasy, he was chased and eliminated by his senior brother Qing Shuzi, and his strength fluctuated. Su Mu didn't know what state he was in now. At the same time, Wu Weizi was also observing Su Mu, and his expression gradually became excited. He could see that this black zombie was far superior to ordinary black zombies in terms of corpse strength and corpse aura concentration. This is a good embryo with potential to advance to Mao Zong. Could it really be that there is no way out of the sky? God is looking after me and specially gave me a top quality black zombie. Arrogant people always like to be self centered and regard themselves as the only protagonist. After seeing Su Mu, Wu Weizi first thought of this idea. He has been chased by Qin Shuzi for a long time. Not only has he suffered heavy losses, but most of his various methods have also been destroyed, so he has already used his trump cards. A few days ago, he was caught up by Qin Shuzi again it took most of his energy to get rid of him. In order to save his life when he was weak, he joined the small group of sloppy Taoists. In the end, it was only a few days ago that Wu Weizi was locked up by Qin Shuzi again. He said before that it was convenient, but he actually wanted to try to cut off Qin Shuzi's lock by performing an operation. But it failed. In two or three days at most, Qin Shuzi will catch up with him again. At this time, Wu Weizi was extremely weak, and all his cards were out. The five element corpse puppet, which took a lot of energy to refine before, was also destroyed in the last fight with Qin Shuzi. He is weaker than ever. Don't talk about competing with Qing Shuzi, I'm afraid I won't be able to escape. So after finding that he couldn't get rid of Qing Shuzi's lock, he suddenly went crazy and wanted to eliminate the sloppy Taoist to accompany him on the road. These people, Wu Weizi, were originally prepared to refine corpses and make ghosts. It's too late now, why don't you eliminate him and bury him with him? But the moment he saw Su Mu, Wu Weizi gave birth to a glimmer of hope again. In his opinion, this black zombie is extraordinary. If it can be subdued and refined, it might be able to escape another wave of pursuit. Then, while escaping, refining the corpse. Once it is refined into Mao Zong, then he will have the strength to compete with Qin Shuzi. Thinking of this, Wu Weizi no longer hesitated, ready to take action to subdue this black zombie. As everyone knows, he has not moved for a long time, which has already made Su Mu see the truth. Su Mu knew that with this demonic madness and ruthless nature, if he had the strength, he would definitely act immediately, why would he still be there in a daze? Regarding the enemy, Su Mu's attitude has always been to see once and eliminate once. See you a hundred times, then eliminate a hundred times. Wu Weizi took out a khaki-colored corpse-suppressing bell, and while shaking the bell to make a crisp magic sound, he performed a Taoist technique while pinching the magic. Su Mu could feel that a strange invisible force was exerted on him, trying to control him. Wu Weizi wants to refine his black zombie. After understanding Wu Weizi's idea, Su Mu's heart moved, and he immediately thought of a countermeasure. He did not resist this invisible force, but pretended to be manipulated and stumbled towards Wu Weizi. In order to make the performance more realistic, Su Mu also struggled from time to time. Then he pretended that he couldn't break free, and in the resistance, he walked towards Wu Weizi little by little. Seeing this, Wu Weizi couldn't help but be overjoyed. Originally thought that this fierce black zombie would be difficult to conquer, but I didn't expect it to be so smooth. As expected of me. Even if the strength is greatly reduced, it is more than enough to deal with a black zombie. Ha ha ha. Wu Weizi was proud of himself, and an expression that could barely be called a smile was piled up on his extremely ugly face. With Wu Weizi's spellcasting, Hei Zong's struggle became smaller and smaller, and the distance between the two became closer and closer. Heaven won't eliminate me. 
With this zombie, I still have a chance. If I can refine it into Mao Zong, I might be able to escape Jizhou smoothly. Wu Weizi controlled Hei Zong to walk two or three feet away from him, and then controlled it to stop. Seeing this terrifying, corpse-like black zombie, Wu Weizi couldn't help but feel very good. Of course, this is only a preliminary control of the zombies. To completely refine a zombie, many steps are required. After completing the first step, Wu Weizi lowered his head and touched his body, ready to proceed to the next step. However, just when his spirit was the most relaxed, the black zombie suddenly moved. Phew! A black miasma emerged from the surface of the black body, surging, and hitting Wawazi like a huge wave. In the blink of an eye, Wawazi was shrouded in it. Corpse poisonous miasma. Not good. This sudden change made him pale in shock, but it was too late to use his magical powers. The next moment, a hideous zombie face appeared in front of Wawazi. With a sound like a rag shredding, two ferocious zombie claws pierced Wawazi's body, and the corpse poison madly infected his whole body. But Wawazi's body is very strange. The wound was wriggling rapidly, twisting and struggling like meat worms, accumulating Su Mu's arm. Su Mu knows that this demon method is very strange, even if he is weak at this time, he does not dare to relax his vigilance. He immediately pulled out his claws, and slid one claws at Wawazi's throat. Shu sound. Wawazi's neck splattered with blood, and a huge blood hole appeared in his throat. His throat and neck bones were completely taken out. Only a thin layer of skin remained, supporting his head. There were two big holes in the chest and the neck was hollowed out. With such a terrifying injury, a normal person would have died 800 times. But Wawazi, this innocent guy, is still alive. The ghost head with his intestines connected to his belly shot up into the sky, and flew away from here with the main torso, spilling countless blood along the way. Su Mu paused for a moment between moves, and Wawazi flew to a distance of 20 or 30 meters. In just one more breath, I might be escaped by this demon. Seeing this, Su Mu hurriedly jumped a zombie into the air like a rocket, hurriedly chasing after him. After catching up, he smashed the ghost's head with one claw and turned into a pool of pus and blood and scattered to the ground. Wawazi, who lost his last resort, fell heavily to the ground. The height of 20 to 30 meters made his tattered body fall out of shape. Various organs flowed out from the cracked abdomen. The limbs were broken at strange angles. The brain also bloomed. But this guy still wasn't dead, he opened his only remaining eye, and roared in disbelief. Why? Why is this? It's impossible, impossible. Wawazi never imagined that a black zombie would have such a high level of intelligence and would have a plan. When Su Mu suddenly erupted, Wawazi wanted to understand. This black zombie was not subdued by him at all. Instead, he pretended to be subdued, took the opportunity to get close to him, and then started killing people when he relaxed. Although this strategy is simple, it makes perfect use of the weakness of human nature, inertial thinking. Wawazi never thought that a black zombie would have wisdom. Because low-level demons and demons have no wisdom at all, only instinct. With the improvement of strength and continuous evolution, will gradually become enlightened. In other words, those with extremely high intelligence are generally extremely powerful demons and demons. Instead of this kind of low-level black stiffness. Take zombies, for example. Bai Zong, Hei Zong, and Mao Zong are basically moving corpses, without any wisdom. Only after being promoted to Fei Zong will he gradually become enlightened. But it's just a weak intelligence. Only a terrifying existence that is close to a legend like a drought can possess intelligence similar to that of a human being. So, Wu Weizi never thought that a black zombie actually had a plan. This made him extremely unwilling. God thief, thief. You treat me unfairly, treat me unfairly. The feeling of going from heaven to made Wawazi in agony, screaming loudly, already crazy. But after shouting twice, he lost his breath and seemed to be dead. Su Mu didn't dare to be careless, and cautiously stepped forward to check after getting closer, Wawazi's pulpy corpse suddenly twitched, and a few fleshy whiskers slammed out and shot at Su Mu past. 
these whiskers are extremely fast, like bullets. But Su Mu was already prepared, so he ducked sideways. Meatbeard missed a hit, twisted again and shot towards him. But the second time was not half as fast as the first. It was easier for Su Mu to escape. After a few times, these beards were like fish out of water, weakly slumped to the ground, no longer capable of harming anyone. After twitching a few times, it turned into a pool of foul-smelling blood. As soon as this accident happened, Su Mu retreated more than ten meters away, and did not approach Wu Weizi's body again. This demon is neither human nor ghost, and there are too many messy methods. He didn't want to capsize in the gutter. What should I do with this corpse? Why don't you call Lu Yuqing over and set her on fire? The question is, this is not an ordinary corpse, can cremation work? Just as Su Mu was thinking, a figure came from afar. This is a middle-aged Taoist priest with a medium stature and an ordinary appearance, about thirty years old. He walked slowly, as if walking. But every time he took a step, the figure flashed more than ten meters away. In just a few breaths, he arrived not far from Su Mu. Seeing this person, Su Mu's heart tightened, secretly thinking that it was not good. It's actually King Suzi. This time, the time it took for Qing Shuzi to come to the door was even shorter than Wu Weizi thought. The good news is that he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. The bad news is that he's dead. The thing to worry about now is Su Mu. In the last instance, Su Mu finally turned into a skeleton. The blood evil skeleton is much stronger than the black zombie. But even so, he exhausted all his means and barely perished with Qing Shuzi. Qing Shuzi's hard power is above the skeleton, and he will be dragged into the water by Su Mu when he is careless. The lightning strike when he was about to die still makes Su Mu feel terrified. Even if there were a hundred black zombies like him, they would still be smashed into by Lei Fa. Almost instantly, Su Mu thought of the next countermeasure set was invincible, so he could only retreat strategically. When Su Mu was thinking about how to run, Qing Shuzi had already seen Wu Weizi's horrific corpse. This is dead. Qing Shuzi looked at Wu Weizi's corpse, and then at Su Mu not far away, looking very surprised. He couldn't be more clear about the methods of his junior brother. Even if you are extremely weak, you shouldn't be eliminated by a black zombie. Is there something wrong with this black zombie? Thinking of this, Qing Shuzi's expression changed, and he looked at Su Mu sharply. Do you have to reopen it again? Seeing this, Su Mu sighed helplessly in his heart. Qing Shuzi's Taoism is profound and his methods are unpredictable. With Su Mu's current strength, how could he run away if he was staring at him? Tonight, Su Mu is afraid that he will contribute to Qing Shuzi's cause of eliminating demons and defending the way. And many more. Just when Su Mu thought he was going to return to the standby space again, a petite figure ran over from his direction. It was Lu Yuqing. After Su Mu got out of control and left Yizhuang, Lu Yuqing couldn't rest assured and chased him all the way. After running until now, he finally caught up with him out of breath. Standing beside Su Mu, Lu Yuqing looked at Qing Shuzi with a wary expression, and asked while breathing. You. Who are you? The current situation is somewhat chaotic. The mummified corpse of a sloppy Taoist. An inhuman corpse. A Taoist priest who looks like a man. No matter how smart Lu Yuqing is, he can't guess what happened just now or what kind of situation is in front of him. It was Qing Shuzi, whose eyes lit up when he saw Lu Yuqing. Little girl, did you make this black rigor? So what? Lu Yuqing vaguely felt a huge sense of oppression coming from Qing Shuzi. This made her not dare to act rashly. How strange. You are so shallow, how can you raise such a vicious black zombie? And you haven't been attacked. Qing Shuzi was very surprised, his eyes swept back and forth between Su Mu and Lu Yuqing, as if he wanted to see something. However, no matter how high his Taoism is, it is impossible to see that Su Mu has a simulator and can maintain his sanity. In the end, Qing Shuzi could only characterize Lu Yuqing as having extraordinary talent in corpse refining. The world is so big that there are all kinds of people and things. It doesn't seem particularly strange. 
Little girl, you haven't practiced qi for a long time, haven't you? Why didn't you cultivate well, but instead raised zombies? This is not the right way, what about your master? Seeing Lu Yueqing's talent is good, Qing Shuzi couldn't help but give birth to a love for talent. Wu Weizi was also a talented qi refiner, only slightly inferior to King Suzi. Nai he went down the wrong path. After betraying the Tiani sect, he practiced all kinds of sectarianism and sorcery. In the end it ended up like this. This made Qing Shuzi very sad. He didn't want to see another genius end in such a tragedy. But Lu Yueqing didn't want to talk to this dangerous Taoist, so he didn't answer his question. We don't know each other, so why talk about it? Let's just say goodbye. With that said, Lu Yueqing was about to take Su Mu away. Wait. Although my junior brother deserves death, you controlled the zombie to eliminate him after all. I asked two questions, right? Saying that, Qing Shuzi threw out a jar full of spells. The jar flew into the air, sucked Wu Weizi's inhuman corpse into it, and then flew back into his hands. The corpse of Wu Weizi cannot be touched by ordinary people, and only an expert like King Suzi has the ability to collect his corpse. Otherwise, there is no doubt that something is going to happen. It's not impossible to come back to life. Lu Yueqing, who was on the side, saw this scene, and combined with Qing Shuzi's words, he couldn't help but move in his heart and learned a lot of information. After Su Mu chased out of Yizhuang, Lu Yueqing knew that there was something wrong with her corpse raising technique. The zombies she created have been out of her control. But Lu Yueqing has an inexplicable confidence even if she loses control, her little brother will never hurt her. After catching up, Su Mu's performance also confirmed Lu Yueqing's idea. This made Lu Yueqing very happy and excited. Her goal seems to be achieved. However, this Taoist made Lu Yueqing feel the danger. If you let this newbie know that Brother Xiao Mu is out of control, he will definitely eliminate. No, I have to find a way to get out. At this moment, Lu Yueqing just wanted to get out of here quickly, so as not to be seen by this person. But Qing Shuzi's words made her have to stay. Lu Yueqing's face sank and asked in a low voice. It was your younger brother's plans that made me want to eliminate him. What do you want? Ha! Huh. Don't be nervous, you let me lose my junior brother. It's not too much for me to ask you for an apprentice, right? How about it, are you interested in taking me as your teacher? Qing Shuzi looked at Lu Yueqing with a smile, his expression was very kind. Lu Yueqing's talent is good, but he happened to go the wrong way again. The combination of the two gave Qing Shuzi the idea of accepting disciples. At his age and Taoism, he should also accept an apprentice. Otherwise, if he becomes the headmaster of Tiani sect in a few years, he will have no time to teach his apprentices. However, what Qing Shuzi never expected was that Lu Yueqing refused. Apprenticeship? Not interested. Can I go now? Lu Yueqing said expressionlessly. If she hadn't been afraid of this person, she would have brought Lu Yueqing back to Yizhuang. Qing Shuzi was a little surprised by Lu Yueqing's answer. To come under his door, this is a great opportunity to soar into the sky. Even if Lu Yueqing didn't know him, he should have seen that his cultivation was extremely high, so how could he refuse? But in the next second, Qing Shuzi was relieved. He smiled and shook his head, and said. Fate hasn't arrived yet. Naturally, this is the case. Poor Taoists don't force it anymore. Let's meet by fate. After all, Qing Shuzi put away the jar containing Wu Weizi's body, and appeared more than ten meters away in a flash. The famine in Jizhou is very strange, and the door has already sent someone to investigate. And recently found some traces. These traces point to a terrible fact. As the mainstay of Tiani sect, Qing Shuzi had to hurry back to his life after the work was completed, and then help the elders in the sect to investigate the matter together. This great famine is a matter of life and death for countless people in Jizhou. After a few breaths, Qing Shuzi disappeared without a trace. Seeing this, Lu Yueqing breathed a sigh of relief and finally relaxed. She looked up at Su Mu with a bright smile. Brother Mu, let's go home. After turning into a zombie, Su Mu can't speak, 
but he can express his thoughts with actions. As he did when he was a child, he stretched out a hand to hold Lu Yuqing and led her towards Zhuang. Although it was a terrifying zombie palm, Lu Yuqing was moved to tears. She felt it. Came back. Her little brother Mu, is back. The pain and hard work of several months turned into tears of happiness, which silently swept across the smiling face. At this moment, Lu Yuqing deeply felt that all the previous efforts were worth it. Lu Yuqing doesn't know why Su Mu is different from ordinary zombies, she has wisdom while out of her control. But that's exactly what she wanted to see. From a certain point of view, Su Mu was reborn in disguise. After returning to Yizhuang that night, the corpse raising business had to continue. After absorbing the blood essence of several first class warriors, and raising him in the coffin for a period of time, Su Mu completely stabilized the realm of black stiffness. At this point, the bottleneck has come. So want to continue to evolve, so raising corpses is no longer enough. Su Mu needs blood essence, the blood essence of a warrior. If it weren't for this, King Biling wouldn't have used his soldiers to feed the zombies. Su Mu has no one to feed him, so he can only forage by himself. Ten days later, late at night. Lu Yuqing carried the locust coffin on his back and left Yizhuang without looking back. A coffin with a small body and a big body, wanders the world day and night. Foraging, start. In the land of Jizhou, famine continued to spread. Most of the state was severely affected, and the black and hungry people fled south like ant colonies. King Biling, who is the ruler of Jizhou, did not set out to relieve the disaster. Instead, he gathered his troops near the king's city without knowing what to plan. The other prefectures did not care, and directly sent troops to block the border to prevent the hungry people in Jizhou from entering. The intruders are eliminated without mercy. Only a very few warriors with good strength and good luck manage to escape Jizhou smoothly. Those with bad luck will be beaten to death on the spot after being caught, as an example. For a time, there were countless corpses and grievances everywhere in Jizhou. An indescribably depressing aura hovered and condensed above Jizhou. Jin Men is one of the few places in Jizhou that was not affected by the disaster. First, because Jin Men is on the edge of Jizhou, far from the center. The second is that Jin Men is close to the North Sea outside and has a canal inside. It is prosperous and rainy at the same time. But with the passage of time, there are already signs of Jin Men being affected. Food prices are rising steadily, and a large number of disaster victims are entrenched outside the city. There is a possibility of civil change at any time. This caused a large number of people in Jin Men to flee, and the flow of people on the street suddenly became sparse, like a ghost town. At this juncture, even if they didn't escape, most of them would hide at home and minimize going out. In troubled times, evildoers emerge. In the past few days, there have been more and more strange things happening in Jin Men City. One of them is called the Coffin Carrying Man. It is said that at midnight, there is often a petite figure with an indistinct appearance, carrying a coffin much larger than her own, wandering in the city of Jin Men. Many people claim that they had seen the coffin carrying man, but they disappeared in the blink of an eye. Some people say that the dragon lord, who is known as the number one in Jin Men, was eliminated by this coffin carrying man. This is an elderly watchman who claims to have seen everything with his own eyes. According to him, this is what happened. That night, Lord Long flew out of the city and kidnapped two handsome young ladies from the hungry people, ready to take them home for training. But as soon as he arrived at the door of the house, he was stopped by the coffin bearer. Immediately afterwards, a ferocious and terrifying figure flew out of the coffin, killing Long Yi in one move. At that time, he was so frightened that he ran away, rolling and crawling. And that dragon lord was found dead at the door of the house the next day. This one strong and mighty man was not only separated from the body, but also turned into a skinny mummified corpse. Such a bizarre method of death is indeed very much like a method of demons and demons. This made the surrounding people panic. However, most people felt that the witness was exaggerating. Lord Long is a powerful warrior with acquired perfection, and he is only one step away from innate. Such a powerful warrior, even in the face of demons, will not be powerless. 
how many can they take two moves? It must have been the man who was frightened half to death after seeing the black shadow flying out of the coffin, and fled immediately, so that he didn't see the process of fighting behind. But Gingren firmly claimed that Lord Long was instantly eliminated by one move and had no power to resist. When he turned to run away, he saw that Lord Long's head had been screwed off. It's as easy as picking a ripe persimmon from a tree. The coffin-carrying man rumor has a nose and eyes, and it is widely spread. No, this is what the storyteller on the stage said in a tea house. Speaking of which, the coffin-carrying man is actually a pair of Ian and Yang twins, two brothers. One male child, brother. He is smart and smart, but he was born skinny and ugly, and he is a dwarf. A fetus is the younger brother. He is tall and mighty, but his fate is flawed. He can only move for a moment in a day. For the rest of the time, he can only hide in a coffin and survive. That's why the Yin is the Yang. The dwarf elder brother carries his younger brother and walks in the world. He specializes in killing people who do evil. The Lord Long is one of them. He did all the evil things, and was finally targeted by the coffin bearer. That night, the moon was dark, the wind was high, and the cold wind was chilling. This storyteller made up all of it, and it was impossible to say whether it was good or bad. Anyway, there were not many listeners. In today's world, how many people have the leisure to eat tea and listen to books? There were only a few people in the audience. To be precise, two tables. At the table is a young girl. Not only is she extremely beautiful, she also has an extraordinary temperament, which is very extraordinary. At the other table, there are four or five green-skinned hooligans who are discussing something together. Have you heard? Wan Yuan Wai summoned various forces to meet in his mansion tonight at Chinchur. I'm afraid this is going to be a big deal. Yeah. In this world, there are so many powerful people with heads and faces, and they must be doing something incredible. It's a pity that we are not qualified and can't be involved. Humph. If this uncle had been born ten years earlier, he would have been the overlord of the Jin men. No matter how powerful Wang Yuan Wai was, he would have to come and invite me three times before I was willing to go. Come on you, if you have no brains, no fists, only one mouth is left. Give you thirty years and you will be like this. Hey! Don't believe me, right? Let's make a game. Come here, I'm afraid you won't succeed. As the two green-skinned hooligans were talking, they scuffled together. But he didn't make a killing move, he kept a little bit of strength. After the green-skinned hooligans stopped communicating, the girl beside them silently left the restaurant. This girl is Lu Yuqing. After leaving Yizhuang that night, she carried the coffin on her back and walked on the dead land of Jizhou. Day and night out, constantly looking for blood for Su Mu, all the way to Jin Men. Jin Men is one of the few places in Jizhou that has not been affected by the disaster. Even if many people escaped, the population density is still much higher than other places. Here, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing hunted down several warriors with decent strength. The Dragon Master, who claims to be the number one in Tianjin, is one of them. The key to raising a corpse is the word raise. If you want zombies to improve their strength, Yu Yu reading has to raise them more. Therefore, Su Mu spends most of the time lying in the locust wood coffin, absorbing the Yin evil energy and brewing his own corpse energy. As for Lu Yuqing, he carried Su Mu on his back in search of blood food at night, and during the day he searched for news in Ji Men City. She came to this restaurant, not to eat or drink tea, nor to listen to books. After the stock was exhausted, Lu Yuqing couldn't find any food in the desolate land. Under the threat of death, her cultivation speed increased significantly. Now, Lu Yuqing has half-stepped in Edia. What you eat is the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, and what you drink is the morning dew. I came to this restaurant, naturally, to get news. No, the information revealed by the green-skinned hooligans just now is very useful. Wang Yuanwei is the most powerful person in Tianjin. Black and white take all, and the family business is extremely strong. He was given the nickname Wang Bancheng. The dragon lord, who claimed to be the number one in Tianjin before, was his subordinate. This Wang Yuanwei didn't know what his plans were, 
but today he suddenly invited the forces of the black and white and the gene men to gather in his mansion. It seems that there is something shocking to discuss. Lu Yuqing didn't care what these people wanted to do together. She only cares when these people get together. After this period of raising the corpse, Su Mu has grown some hard corpse hairs as long as his forearm. This is a sign of progressing to Mao Zong. Since this Wang Yuanwei has such a face, he can invite people who have good face and strength in the black and white of Tianjin. Then why didn't Lu Yuqing bring her little brother to a happy buffet? These people are the most powerful group in Jin Men City. After Lu Yuqing left, the green-skinned hooligans stopped fighting. They looked at each other with a wretched smile on their faces, and then followed quietly. Such a beautiful girl, if they are locals, they will not know each other. Being born in a face can only mean that it is from outside. In this world right now, isn't a foreigner just letting them figure it out? These green-skinned hooligans quietly followed behind Lu Yuqing, walked around for a long time, and finally came to an abandoned courtyard. It seems that the owner of this yard has escaped. The fact that the girl lives in such a place further shows that she is a helpless outsider. Discovering this, the smiles on the faces of the green-skinned hooligans became more wretched and presumptuous. One of them rushed forward impatiently, preparing to force his way in. But before he could kick the door, the dilapidated courtyard door opened by itself. A petite figure, carrying a in like acacia coffin, appeared in front of them. Seeing this scene, those green-skinned hooligans were stunned for a moment. Then I only felt that my scalp exploded and I felt cold all over. Fear engulfed them like a tide. Bearers, coffin bearers. These green-skinned hooligans never thought that the rumor of the coffin-carrying man was actually true. What's even worse is that the girl they want to do wrong happens to be the coffin bearer. Run! One of them shouted, and then several people turned their heads and ran away, only to regret that their parents didn't give them more legs. But the huge fear made their limbs weak, and they couldn't run fast at all. Before he could escape a few steps, a crack opened in the acacia coffin that Lu Yuqing was carrying. A cloud of black miasma floated out and flew towards the green-skinned hooligans, covering them in a blink of an eye. These green-skinned hooligans are not even third-rate warriors, and they were immediately corroded into a pool of blood by the corpse poisonous miasma. Before he died, he didn't even utter a scream. From the beginning to the end, Lu Liqing didn't even look at these green skins, as if they didn't exist. Lu Yuqing kept walking, stepping over the pools of blood and walking towards Wang Yuanwei's mansion. This place is remote and it is a little far from the royal residence, so it is better to leave early. It was dusk when Lu Yuqing went out. In order to avoid the crowd, we had to spare some roads. By the time we got to the mansion outside King Lu, the sky was already dark, and it was not far from Chincher. Lu Yuqing hid the coffin in a dark corner and looked towards the gate of the Wang family mansion. I saw a big boss in Jin Men City with a big face and a face, walking in one after another. Half of them have good martial arts cultivation, and they are basically the leaders of some gangs. The rest of those who were mediocre in martial arts, or who had no martial arts skills, were accompanied by several guards with a high value of martial arts. In this world right now, without a knife in your hand, you are not at ease. As a result, at least half of the masters in Jin Men City were gathered in the Wang family mansion tonight. If all goes well, the opportunity for Su Mu to advance to Mao Zong is in this magnificent mansion. It can be seen that Wang Bancheng has a very high prestige in Jin Men, and no one dares to take his face. Before the appointed time, all the invited people arrived, and no one was late. It seems that the mounts are all Mercedes-Benz and Lamborghini, not Mazda. A group of guests were brought into the living room by the housekeeper, but they did not see Wang Yuanwei. The people who were invited were all the black and white bosses in Tianjin, and they either had hatred or friendship with each other. Before Wang Yuanwei arrived, they had a friendly exchange first. If it weren't for the Wang family's mansion, I'm afraid that blood would be seen immediately. A lion-nosed, broad-mouthed strong man became impatient and asked the housekeeper, Dot. Where's your old man? Please invite him out. Otherwise, I'm afraid I can't help but hack that Pei Zhao to death. 
Saying that, he viciously turned to a black-faced man who was slightly shorter but as strong as a stone pier. The black-faced man also looked at him coldly, baring his teeth, revealing a murderous grin. Both of them are the bosses of a certain gang, and they have become rivals due to interests, personal grudges and other reasons. On weekdays, I wish I could devour each other alive, so that's the only way I can hold back and not fight. Wait a minute, everyone, my master will be here soon, soon. The housekeeper replied respectfully, then stepped back. The big guys didn't think much about it, and nodded casually. Sure enough, after a while, Wang Yuanwei walked out Sher Shiram. Strangely, he actually pushed a wheelchair. In the wheelchair, sitting paralyzed was a middle-aged man with a pale complexion who looked extremely weak. This makes people feel very strange. Wang Yuanwei, you invited us here, didn't you mean to discuss important matters related to my destiny? Why did you push a crippled person out? The gang leader who had no brains opened his mouth and asked. But some bigwigs who were in Baidao vaguely felt that something was wrong. Can the person who can be pushed by Wang Yuanwei himself be an ordinary person? Could it be that this pale and frail man is some kind of big man? Thinking of this, almost everyone turned their attention to Wang Yuanwei. Under the gazes of everyone, Wang Yuan said with a pitiful smile. You're right. I invite everyone tonight to discuss important matters related to your destiny. It's your destiny to do your best to restore Lord Wei Zhuang's injury. After saying something that everyone didn't quite understand, Wang Yuan Wei knelt in front of the wheelchair and respectfully said to the weak man. Lord Wei Zhuang, I have invited people with some strength from Jin Men to come here. Please enjoy it as you please. Hearing this, the expressions of all the bigwigs in the living room changed. Although he still didn't understand what Wang Yuanwei wanted to do. But they already felt that it didn't seem like a good thing to call them over this time. On the other side, Su Mu, who was hiding in the corner of the courtyard wall, had already recognized the weak man in the wheelchair. This person was one of the guards of King Biling, who had chased him and Taoist Zishan before. It was precisely to repel him that Su Mu lost his life. This guy is a martial arts master, how could he fall into such a field? And there was something wrong with his breath. Even at such a distance, Su Mu could smell a corpse aura from his body. These corpse qi and the anger of living people are mixed together, which is a bit strange. Wei Zhuang seems to have become a half-human, half-stiff existence. Su Mu's feeling is not wrong. Wei Zhuang, the master of martial arts, has indeed become a strange being that is half-human and half-stiff. This matter has to start from that night in the main hall in the mountain, when Taoist Zishan took a huge risk and brazenly took a shot at Han Ding. That night, Taoist Zishan struck with all his strength, causing the newly born scorpion to suffer some minor injuries. But the scorpion was too strong, and only suffered some minor damage. With the refinement of Xian Junzi and a group of disciples, this minor injury quickly recovered. Daoist Zishan's risk of taking his own life only delayed the famine by a few days. Afterwards, the people of Xuanzhen's sect controlled the drought. He extracted his blood essence, supplemented it with countless precious medicinal materials, and refined it into an elixir, which was presented to the king of Biling. After King Biling took this pill, the strange disease was cured, and his body was stronger than when he was healthy before. Vitality Soars this allowed everyone to see the magical effect of the blood of the dry scorpion. Later, Xian Junzi used the essence and blood of dry scorpion as the main material, and refined a kind of medicine pill that could greatly improve the cultivation of warriors. It is called corpse blood pill. Only martial arts masters are qualified to take this kind of elixir. Because the corpse blood pill is not like the one given to the king of Biling, it has added countless treasures of heaven and earth, neutralizing the terrible power in the blood of the dry scorpion. Therefore, the medicinal power of corpse blood pill is extremely violent. After the warriors under the martial arts master take it, they will explode and die on the spot. If that's the case, then the corpse blood pill can still be called a magic medicine. There are not many things that can greatly improve the cultivation of a martial arts master. However, the corpse blood pill has a fatal side effect. Those who take it will become half-human, half-corpse beings. Not only will it be corpse, but some senses will be lost. 
and the cultivation base can no longer be improved. That is to say, after taking the corpse blood pill, there is no possibility of advancing to a Valkyrie. For most martial arts masters, this is unacceptable. Every martial Tao master is a dragon and a phoenix among people, and there is no one in a million genius that can't describe them. Having gone through countless hardships and hardships, these geniuses have finally reached this stage and have cultivated to the realm of martial arts masters. One step further, it is a beautiful scenery. How many people would give up the supreme martial arts realm for the sake of their immediate interests? In the end, only two of the martial arts masters under King Byling's command chose to take the corpse blood pill after careful consideration. One of them was Wei Zhuang. After failing to take down Su Mu and Daoist Zishan that day, Wei Zhuang's status in King Byling's heart had dropped to the lowest point. Moreover, Wei Zhuang had lost his temper, and felt that it was impossible for him to cultivate to the realm of the martial god. If that's the case, then it's better to improve your strength. After taking the corpse blood pill, Wei Zhuang's body showed some signs of corpse, and he became a half-human, half-rigid existence. But the strength has doubled. It's not a loss. But who knew that it didn't take long before an accident happened? One day, the scorpion, who was used as a big medicine to continuously draw blood and essence, suddenly broke free from the seal and shackles. This is an extremely ferocious and supreme ghost, and to be treated like this again, the drought is completely mad. That night, blood flowed into rivers. It just so happened that Wei Zhuang was in charge of guarding the drought scorpion that day. After he got out of trouble, he fought with him, but he was seriously injured and was about to die. After taking the corpse blood pill, Wei Zhuang's strength was already considered top among martial arts masters. But even so, he couldn't stop even a random move by the dagger. What's more terrible is that, I don't know if it's because of taking the corpse blood pill, the dry man is eyeing Wei Zhuang. He was chased and eliminated all the way to the end of the world. If the king of Biling hadn't sent reinforcements to help obstruct the first or second, he would have died 800 times. But even with reinforcements, Wei Zhuang's situation was extremely miserable. He didn't even have time to catch his breath, and dragged his severely injured body all the way to Jin Men. At this time, the reinforcements sent by the king of Biling had been slaughtered by the slaughter. If he continues to drag his severely injured body to escape, Wei Zhuang will soon be caught up. Moreover, in his current state, if he continued to run for his life, he would be dragged to death by his injuries before the dreadfish could catch up. After some thought, Wei Zhuang decided to rest in Tianjin for a few days to recover well. After he found the most powerful king in the area, he showed his identity as the personal bodyguard of King Biling and the master of martial arts, and he easily gained his loyal ministers. Under Wei Zhuang's instructions, Wang Yuanwei summoned a group of people from Jinmen's last strength. Wei Zhuang, who is half human and half stiff, cannot use blood essence to improve his strength like a real zombie. But it is still possible to recover from the injury. In other words, the buffet in the eyes of Su Mu and Lu Yuaqing was actually a banquet organized by Wei Zhuang. The Palace of the Royal Family Because of Wang Yuanwei's words, the atmosphere in the living room dropped to freezing point. Wang Yuanwei, I came to the appointment because I respected you, but you are playing tricks on me. Forgive me for not being able to accompany you. The one who spoke was the strong man with a lion's nose and a wide mouth. Saying that, he stood up and walked outside quickly. After walking out of the living room, he couldn't hold back anymore, he stomped his foot and quickly fled to the outside of the courtyard this guy looks rude, but he is actually shrewd. What happened just now made him smell a dangerous breath. When is it better to not run now? This strong man with a lion's nose and a wide mouth is an acquired martial artist, and he is extremely fast when he bursts out with all his strength. After a few steps, he flew over the towering wall like a cheetah and fled into the distance. But in the next instant, Wei Zhuang, who was paralyzed in a wheelchair, suddenly disappeared. As he disappeared, a shrill scream came from outside the fence. Listening to the sound, it was the strong man with the lion's nose and wide mouth. After the screams ended, a mummified corpse was thrown into the yard. Immediately afterwards, Wei Zhuang, whose face was pale and blood was on the corners of his mouth, flew in, looking handsome. 
walk with the air, only the means of martial arts masters. This scene shocked everyone in the living room. But more than that, it's still despair. I'll eliminate whoever runs away. If you want to live a little longer, just stand still and don't move. Wei Zhuang coldly dropped a sentence, his eyes extremely cold. The warriors here have the highest cultivation base, but only the cultivation base have acquired great perfection. Even if he only had one breath left, he could easily handle a martial artist of this level. But what Wei Zhuang didn't know was that in the dark corner, there was a pair of eyes full of murderous intent staring at him. It was Su Mu who was secretly eyeing Wei Zhuang. Because he found better prey. It was Wei Zhuang, the incomparably weak martial arts master. The ordinary hair is stiff, the strength range is between acquired and innate, there are strong and weak. Su Mu's strength is beyond the same level. With the half-step hair stiff, his strength is comparable to that of a congenital warrior. Su Mu felt that with his strength and Wei Zhuang's current state, the sneak attack had a great chance of being successful. The blood essence of a martial arts master, no matter how weak or deficient he is, it is far more fragrant than those martial artists in Jin Men. Thinking of this, Su Mu has already made a decision, eliminate. After climbing out of the locust coffin, he restrained his breath, hid in the darkness, and quietly approached Wei Zhuang. He is waiting for an opportunity. Waiting for the best chance to sneak attack. Lu Yuqing was also waiting. She stepped aside and waited with peace of mind for Su Mu's triumphant return. After killing one person and absorbing his blood essence, Wei Zhuang felt a lot more comfortable. The feeling of being so weak that you are about to die is really painful. However, just one is not enough. Wei Zhuang licked the blood on the corner of his mouth, and a crazy and hideous smile appeared on his face. Then, he rushed into the crowd in the living room like a flock of sheep. Then the hunt begins. The people who were invited over were all top-ranked experts in the Jin Men platoon. But in Wei Zhuang's eyes, it was just a dish. A dish in two senses. In the face of Wei Zhuang's bloodthirsty and murderous act, some people tried to resist and some people tried to escape. But no matter whether they resisted or escaped, they couldn't escape Wei Zhuang's claws. They were eliminated one by one and drained their blood. Wei Zhuang has gone crazy. A scream came from the living room, like a purgatory on earth. Soon, dozens of guests invited by Wang Yuanwei were slaughtered. Wei Zhuang stood in the pile of mummified corpses, closed his eyes, and showed a comfortable expression. He is refining these messy blood essence to restore his injuries. Just as Wei Zhuang was concentrating on recovering from his injury, a chill suddenly came from behind him, approaching him at an astonishing speed. Who? This sudden sneak attack made Wei Zhuang's complexion change greatly, and the secret was not good. Refining blood essence is when his defenses are the most slack. Wei Zhuang never thought that someone would hide in the dark and find the best time to attack him. Before Wei Zhuang could turn around, a thick black miasma enveloped him. If it were normal, this miasma wouldn't hurt Wei Zhuang. But at the moment, he was really weak, and immediately felt dizzy after being invaded by the miasma, but he quickly recovered. But just this stupefying effort is enough to eliminate. In a hurry, Wei Zhuang couldn't tell who the enemy was and where he was going to eliminate him. He could only hold up a layer of qi barrier to protect his entire body. But at this time, Wei Zhuang was very weak, and he made a hasty move. He didn't have a key defense direction, but just spread his strength to the whole body. All kinds of reasons are superimposed together, so that the strength of this gas barrier is not half as strong as it is under normal circumstances. All I could hear was the sound of, and a ferocious zombie claws brutally tore open the barrier. Immediately afterwards, without the slightest pause, it pierced Wei Zhuang's chest in an instant. Wei Zhuang's face twitched and he let out a scream, and his qi couldn't help dissipating. This slack was another fatal blow. Seeing that he lost the qi barrier, Su Mu opened his mouth to bully him, and bit down. Wei Zhuang's neck was bitten through by four extremely sharp zombie fangs in the blood spatter. The two major blows made Wei Zhuang lose his life. It sounds complicated, but in fact, it took less than one breath from Su Mu's sneak attack to the heavy damage to Wei Zhuang. 
In the battle of life and death, the outcome is often in an instant. Obviously, Wei Zhuang was the loser. Wei Zhuang bled from his mouth and looked at Su Mu with a dead face, with an unbelievable look in his eyes. He was chased and eliminated by the drought, but he escaped and is still alive. In the end, he died in the hands of a little zombie who was not even a jerk. This is so ironic. Speaking of which, Wei Zhuang has come to this point thanks to Su Mu. If it wasn't for Su Mu who rescued Daoist Zishan that day, he probably wouldn't have taken the corpse blood pill, and he wouldn't have been hunted down by the dreadlocks. It's just that Su Mu Jinjia was next to him that day, so he couldn't see his face clearly. At this time, he turned into a zombie again, making it even more difficult to recognize. If Wei Zhuang knew that the two key points in his life were both planted in the same hands, I don't know how he would feel. At this moment, everything is a foregone conclusion. Wei Zhuang's vitality is far inferior to that of Wu Weizi's demon. After the originally weak body was severely injured, the qi in the whole body collapsed, and there was no more resistance. The blood essence from his body was quickly drained by Su Mu. What was taken away together, and a little bit of his remaining vitality. In the endless unwillingness, Wei Zhuang lost his breath. As the so-called mantis catches cicadas, the aureole is behind. Wei Zhuang, who was a hunter just now, became the prey of others in an instant. And this aureole is Su Mu. This martial arts master fell and became the nutrients that Su Mu needed to advance to Mao Zong. After draining Wei Zhuang's blood, he only felt a fiery energy like magma pouring into his body. Huge and dense. Even though Wei Zhuang is extremely weak, the master of martial arts is the master of martial arts. The quality of blood essence is not comparable to ordinary warriors. Moreover, in Wei Zhuang's blood essence, Su Mu tasted an extremely pure and unusual corpse aura. Strange. How can Wei Zhuang have such a special corpse aura in his body? No wonder he is half human and half corpse. Su Mu felt a little strange, but didn't think much about it. How did he know that Wei Zhuang had swallowed the corpse blood pill and smelted a wisp of dry blood? He just subconsciously felt that this breath had a great effect on him, so he focused on refining it. While Su Mu was refining the blood essence, Wang Yuanwei and several of his subordinates planned to escape quietly. Su Mu thought about it, the blood of these people was drawn out by him, and they died of blood loss. This is the new ability he just realized, Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm can blood from the air. With the space control of the blood evil skeleton, maybe it can play a big role in the battle. However, the specific situation will not be known until after returning to the real world and testing. The essence and blood of Wang Yuanwei and the others were too weak, and Su Mu was not interested in absorbing it, so he discarded it at will. He just used this method to eliminate these guys. With the death of Wang Yuanwei and others, only Su Mu and Lu Yuaqing were left in the huge Wang family mansion. All the Jin men bigwigs were wiped out, even the martial arts masters like Wei Zhuang died here. This has also brought a cleanliness to Jin men. The house was full of mummified corpses and blood spattered everywhere. When an ordinary girl sees such a scene, she is afraid that she will faint from fright. But Lu Yuaqing didn't make any waves, he carried the locust coffin over the corpses and walked to Su Mu. Brother Mu, I have prepared the corpse liquid, come in quickly. Lu Yuaqing arranged everything in the locust coffin in advance, in order to better raise the corpse now. Hearing this, Su Mu opened the lid of the coffin and lay in. With the help of the corpse raising liquid and the locust coffin, his speed of refining blood essence and nourishing himself will be greatly improved. This time, he wants to advance to Mao Zong. J. In a flash, half a month passed. In the past two weeks, Su Mu and Lu Yuaqing spent a relatively clean life in the Wang family's mansion. Refining qi every day, and raising corpses. There is quite the joy of a small family of you plow the fields and let me weave. During this period, some small things happened. That night, all the leaders in Tianjin were invited to gather at the Wang family mansion. This gathering has wiped out all the people. Moreover, the entire Wang family compound was silent at all, it was eerily quiet. 
This strange thing quickly spread throughout Tianjin. Some people say that Wang Yuanwei and his party have done too much evil, and the enemy family came to them and eliminated them all. Some people also said that Wang Yuanwei was guilty of serious crimes, provoked ghosts and gods, and was destroyed by the whole family. Others said that Wang Yuanwei and the others were targeted by a big man, so they escaped from Jin men together. In addition, there are some more unreliable claims. But no matter what, ordinary people dare not approach the Wang family's mansion easily. He avoided it on weekdays, for fear of provoking some evil. But there are always a few who like to die. As a green-skinned rogue, he became very curious about this matter, and wanted to use it to make a name for himself. He first threw a dog into the royal mansion. Who would have thought that the dog had just been thrown in, and it ran away screaming with its tail tucked in? After escaping half a mile, the dog was paralyzed on the ground, trembling all over, and spitting urine randomly. Apparently, she was frightened enough. This situation made the people of Jin Man even more curious and fearful. I don't know what the dog saw, but he was so frightened. That Qingpi was actually a little scared, but retreating at this time would really damage his prestige. In desperation, he could only bite the bullet and pull two friends who were both hooligans to visit the Wang family's mansion at night. But this probe never came out. As if the stone sinks into the sea, there is no news. Now, no one dares to break into this strange royal mansion. Those people outside Wang Yuan are all cancers in Jin Men. When they died, the people clapped their hands and said it was too late. Who would care about them? In this way, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing spent half a month in peace. But in a chaotic world, how many pure and peaceful days can there be? Half a month is a great blessing. At noon this day, the locust coffin suddenly moved. With a muffled sound, the lid of the coffin opened. Then a ferocious zombie covered in corpse hair jumped out. The rich corpse gas almost turned into substance, rolling around like smoke and dust, spreading around. The blood essence of a martial arts master is really good. In half a month, Su Mu advanced to Mao Zong. He can feel that his combat power has surpassed that of the innate warriors. Even the top batch of innate warriors are definitely not his opponents. But the gap between innate warriors and martial arts masters is huge. At this time, Su Mu was still no match for the martial arts master. If you want to compete with the martial arts masters, you have to advance again and evolve into a flying zombie. Fei Zong, the corpse is indestructible, almost immortal, and has the ability to fly and escape. Black stiffness and hair stiffness are easy to deal with. Once there is a flying stiffness, it will definitely become a nightmare for one world. It takes countless energy and experts from all over the world to have a chance to eliminate it. It's a pity that Su Mu felt that Mao Zong was the limit of his life. Even if it turns into a demon, it still has to be about talent. Su Mu was only a first-class warrior during his lifetime. Even if his combat power is superior, the upper limit is only this. If you want to advance to flying stiffness, you must at least cultivate the qi before you die, and use the qi to beat your body. That is to say, if Su Mu wants to evolve into a flying after death, he must at least cultivate to the acquired realm during his lifetime. Say now. Su Mu originally wanted to stay in the locust coffin for a while to stabilize his strength. But just now, there was a sudden violent throbbing in his heart. It seems that some fatal crisis is approaching him. Brother Mu, why are you out of the coffin now? You mean. There is danger. After Su Mu was released from the coffin, Lu Yuqin came to his immediate vicinity. The two have a heart to heart. Although Su Mu can't speak, the two of them no longer need language to communicate. Through Su Mu's eyes, Lu Yuqin could know what he was thinking. This is a very mysterious feeling and it is difficult for outsiders to understand. Su Mu and Lu Yuqing stood side by side, looking intently at the gate of the Wang family mansion. Su Mu could feel that the terrifying sense of crisis came from this direction. Is there any enemy that is killing them? Meanwhile, outside the door. A large group of people came to the Wang family mansion in a mighty manner. The leader was a middle-aged Taoist priest with a rosacea nose and a disheveled face, accompanied by two apprentices. 
these two apprentices have crooked melons and cracked dates, and they don't look like talented and intelligent people. My fellow villagers and elders, I am the 48th generation direct disciple of Tieni's sect, Master Feiyun. This time I came to Jin Men, not for anything else, but to slay demons and demons, and to bring peace to the other side. Today, let the poor people take over the evil spirits in this house. The Taoist priest with rosacea gave an impassioned speech, which was greeted with warm applause from the surrounding people. But after 100 meters from the Wang family mansion, no one dared to approach. All looked at the rosacea Taoist priest from a distance, as if waiting for him to use his supernatural powers to slay demons and demons. Seeing this, the Taoist priest who claimed to be Master Feiyun rubbed his hands awkwardly, took a deep breath and led the two disciples to the gate of the Wang family mansion. In fact, this Taoist is not a disciple of Tieni's sect at all just got some half-hearted Qi cultivators who have passed down the inheritance, and fled here due to famine. Originally, he couldn't enter the city, but after hearing about the strange things happening in the Wang family's mansion, he claimed that he was a master and could get rid of the demons and demons in it. In this way, he was put into the city and attracted a crowd of people to watch. What Master Feiyun didn't know was that the applause of the people just now was not his approval or encouragement. It's like the applause before watching the monkey show, just waiting for him to perform. As for success or failure, do there. As a half-assistant, Master Feiyun still has some means. After getting closer, he vaguely felt that the atmosphere of the royal mansion was a little gloomy. This time, it seems to be the real thing. But he did not retreat. Retreat at this time, the best result is to be driven out of gene men, and then starve to death. If you want to survive, you can only eliminate demons. Good apprentices, let's get started. Thinking of this, Master Feiyun's expression turned solemn, and he greeted the two apprentices. The two crooked apprentices also knew the seriousness of the matter and quickly built an altar. Master Feiyun guarded the four corners of the altar with altar wood, and wanted to suppress ghosts and gods from all directions. Then, he held the peach wood magic sword in one hand and the bronze chime in the other, and danced like a god. After dancing for a while, Master Feiyun solemnly took out a crumpled talisman from his arms. With words in his mouth, he stuck it on the peach wood magic sword, and stabbed it towards the door. Only a chi sound was heard, and a fire burst out from the spell, which went out in an instant. When Master Feiyun retrieved the spell, he saw a burnt black word corpse on it. Seeing this word, Master Feiyun breathed a sigh of relief. This spell can capture the surrounding breath and detect whether there are demons or ghosts. If it exists, what kind of monster is it? Corpse means zombie. In Feiyun's perception, zombies are not difficult to deal with. As long as you know the weaknesses of zombies and are well prepared, you will have great confidence in reducing them. Reality Feiyun couldn't help showing a smile after thinking that he had conquered the zombies and gained a high status in Jin Men. A bright future is just around the corner. Open the door. I'm going to slay demons and exorcise demons for the master. Real man Feiyun fantasized about a bright future and gave a loud shout. Hearing this, the two apprentices slammed open the door, revealing the interior of the Wang family mansion. I saw a tall and ferocious zombie covered with needle-like corpse hair standing in the pavilion in the courtyard, with a beautiful and delicate girl beside him. In this scene, the people around were so frightened that they all retreated several meters. There are really demons in this Wang family mansion. Sure enough, it's a zombie. What does the girl next to you mean? Seeing Su Mu and Lu Yuqing, Master Feiyun was a little puzzled. Likewise, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing were also very puzzled. This Daoist seems to be weak, how could it make Su Mu feel a sense of crisis? Could it be that this person hid his breath, played with his hands and did not show his face? When Su Mu and Lu Yuqing were puzzled, Master Feiyun had already begun to use his tactics. I saw him taking out a simple bronze mirror and saying to the people who were looking around. The ghost hidden here is a zombie. But don't be afraid, everyone. It's daytime, sunlight is the nemesis of zombies, and the chi of extreme sun can dissolve corpse chi. This zombie stayed in the gazebo to avoid the sun. And the bronze mirror in Pindo's hands is also the nemesis of zombies. 
Mirror is the essence of gold and water. It is bright inside and dark outside. Combined with the energy of extreme yang, it can eliminate all evils. A little zombie, of course. Su Mu and Lu Yuqing didn't move, so they gave Fei Yin real person time to perform. After some performances, he displayed the so-called magic power. Bah! The demon is dead. Master Fei Yun shouted loudly, and used the bronze mirror in his hand to reflect a brighter sunlight, projecting it on Su Mu's body. When the sun hit, the corpse on Su Mu's body didn't even tremble. It feels like someone patted you with a feather. Su Mu. Master Fei Yun. This. It's fine, everyone, don't panic. Pindao has injured the root of this zombie, and it can't move. When I use more means, I can take it down. Saying that, Master Feiyun took out another handful of glutinous rice and blew it violently, turning it into a rain of rice that fell on Su Mu. But he still didn't respond. This scene made the muscles on Feiyun's face twitch. His breathing became rapid, and he quickly took out the black dog's blood, the black donkey's hooves, and other things that he thought could restrain zombies. But no matter which one it is, it can't hurt Su Mu in the slightest. The cognitive level of the real person Feiyun is too low. These things can cause a certain amount of damage to the zombies that are not in the flow. But for Su Mu, who has evolved into a stiff hair, fart is useless. He can walk in the sun normally. Not to mention being burned to death, there will not even be a burning sensation. Not to mention the other messy things. In Su Mu's opinion, it's a joke. What happened in front of him has gone beyond the real person Feiyun's understanding. He had a vague feeling of something bad. But Su Mu didn't move the whole time, which gave him the courage to fight for the last time. Good apprentices, this zombie's vitality has been seriously injured. If you use these two ink bucket threads to entangle it, it will be eliminated. Under the command of Master Feiyun, his two apprentices who were crooked and cracked took two ink bucket lines and rushed toward Su Mu. Seeing this, Su Mu couldn't bear it any longer. He hadn't moved before because he felt a strong sense of crisis from the direction of Master Feiyun. This sense of crisis made Su Mu not dare to move, for fear that this real person Feiyun is some kind of expert, who is pretending to be a pig and eating a tiger. Now it seems that he is a pig. That sense of crisis should have nothing to do with him. It's a pity that Su Mu didn't have the talent of spiritual sense this time, otherwise he would be more prepared to perceive the source of the sense of crisis. With this in mind, Su Mu jumped and flew forward. With a wave of his hand at will, the two apprentices who were crooked and cracked were knocked out and slammed into the wall and almost turned into flesh. As for the ink bucket lines in their hands. Not to mention. Mom. Seeing this scene, Master Feiyun was completely panicked. He originally planned to stab Su Mu with the peach wood magic sword in his hand to see if it worked. Seeing that Su Mu was so cruel, how could he have the courage? This guy threw down the peach wood magic sword and turned around and fled, embarrassed. But the people looking around, escaped faster than him. Seeing that the situation was not right, these onlookers immediately fled. After a while, it disappeared without a trace. To survive in this troubled world, you may not be able to do anything else, but you must be proficient in escaping. Fei Yin Jinren is a foreigner and is not familiar with the local terrain. He fled like a headless fly, and he didn't know where he was. But he could feel that the terrifying zombie was chasing after him. Fei Yin Jinren escaped and jumped into a dark alley. At the other end of the alley, came a tall and slender figure. There was actually a woman who was eight feet tall. Eight feet is in the early nineties of one meter. Not to mention a woman's height, few men can reach this height. Although she is extremely tall, this woman is tall and slender, and does not appear rough. She was dressed in red like blood, wafting gently in the breeze. Although he can't see his face clearly, he has already made Feiyun real person perceive an extreme beauty. The girl in the Wang family compound just now was already extremely beautiful. But compared with her, it has a little less charm. It's just that Master Feiyun is running for his life, and no matter how beautiful a woman is, she is only a floating cloud. The moment he saw the woman in red, 
the first thing he thought of was to use her to help him delay time. The big girl in front, please help me, there is a vicious dog chasing me in the back, please. Real Master Feiyun stretched out a hand to ask for help, trying to trick the tall woman in red into sending her to death, so as to buy him some time. But before he finished speaking, he was horrified to find that his arm had turned into blood mist. I. Real man Feiyun wanted to say something with a terrified face. But in the blink of an eye, his entire body turned into a cloud of blood. A gust of wind blew, and death was silent. Su Mu, who was catching up, just saw this scene. His eyes passed through the blood mist formed by Master Feiyun, staring at the woman in red at the end of the alley, his pupils shrunk to the size of a needle. This breath, this look. It's the drought. Give me back my blood. This was the last sentence Su Mu heard after turning around and running away. It turned out that that strong sense of crisis had nothing to do with the half-hearted Qi refiner like Master Feiyun. Instead, it comes from the dry scorpion transformed by the Valkyrie Angelica. If he really wanted to catch up, Su Mu would be able to catch up and eliminate the real person Feiyun in a few breaths. He was able to escape for so long because the sense of crisis in Su Mu's heart was getting stronger and stronger. This made Su Mu not dare to be careless, and while sticking behind him, he observed the movement around him. His prudence was not in vain. The moment he saw the drought, Su Mu's heart was alarmed, and he immediately turned around and fled into the distance. The appearance of the drought made Su Mu think about something. The powerful and strange corpse aura in Wei Zhuang's blood, I am afraid, came from the dry scorpion. Nine times out of ten, the injuries on his body were also caused by this drought. Su Mu sucked all of Wei Zhuang's blood, including the corpse Qi. Before, he did not completely refine these blood essences, so that the corpse aura was deeply hidden in his body. Now, Su Mu has successfully refined Wei Zhuang's blood essence and advanced to Mao Zhuang, and the scorpion has come to him. While trying to understand this, Su Mu ran away faster. After a few dodges, he disappeared into the alleys of Jin Men, desperately escaping into the distance. But the scorpion was not in a hurry to chase. The red clothes on her body danced wildly, and an unspeakable and strange force spread to the surroundings, full of dead silence. Susu 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 susu. -su. With the drought at the center, the surrounding houses, plants, humans and beasts, etc. All turned to ashes as if they had been severely burned. Everything is lost to annihilation. If you look down from the sky, you will see a gray-black circle rapidly spreading out from the scorpion. Devour everything and destroy everything around her. All that remains is the endless silence. No matter how fast Su Mu was, it couldn't be faster than this terrifying supernatural power. In just a moment, he escaped for miles. But he was still caught up by this force and passed through. With a hit, Su Mu's dashing body stopped abruptly as if the pause button had been pressed. At this moment, he felt that the whole world had come to a standstill. All kinds of perceptions are far away from him, he seems to be stripped out of this world. A strange, violent, and deadly force destroyed everything in Su Mu. Just this moment, Su Mu knew that he was already a dead corpse. The corpse chi collapsed and the corpse disintegrated. Death is a foregone conclusion. It's no wonder that Wei Zhuang, who has been strengthened by the corpse blood pill, is still so miserable with the help of strong reinforcements. The power of this drought is unbelievably powerful. After hitting Su Mu, this strange magical power seemed to be aware of it, so it stopped directly and did not continue to expand. Su Mu was standing on the edge of the grey giant circle, and his perception of this world was rapidly fading. Vision, smell, hearing, the unique sense of zombies to the vitality of living people, are all fading. He was doomed to die. This time, there is no way to save Su Mu. In this life, he has come to an end. Give me back my blood. Behind him, there was the cold and ruthless voice of the dagger. But Su Mu, who was dead, didn't care anymore. He saw that a familiar petite figure was running towards him. It's Lu Yuqing. This scene made Su Mu's eyes widen. The originally blurred consciousness suddenly became much clearer. The circle painted by the drought on the earth is full of silence and destruction. 
even if it's not as terrifying as it was when it expanded, it's still not something that ordinary people can set foot on. With Lu Yueqing strength, he will surely die if he enters this circle. Roar! Su Mu wanted Lu Yueqing to leave, but he couldn't speak. He could only let out a roar, staring at Lu Yueqing, trying to persuade her to retreat. Looking at each other, Lu Yueqing did not stop. With tears in her eyes, she desperately ran toward Su Mu, the speed getting faster and faster. Su Mu knew that Lu Yueqing had already read his meaning through his eyes, and knew that he would die if he went further. But she didn't back down. Not before, and not now. Wherever Su Mu is, she runs to. Like moths to a fire, they will die. Lu Yueqing slammed into Su Mu's arms and hugged him tightly with all his strength, as if he wanted to fit into his arms. Brother Mu, we will not be separated, never, never. Lu Yueqing muttered in a low voice, tears already wet Su Mu's chest. At this moment, all kinds of emotions flooded into Su Mu's heart, and the scenes of getting along with Lu Yueqing in the past kept flashing before his eyes. Su Mu's eyes became slightly moist. Looking at Lu Yueqing, whose hair was rapidly turning white and his skin was dry and wrinkled. Su Mu also stretched out his hands and hugged her. This hug means farewell forever. Behind them, the scorpion was still walking towards them. But whether it was Su Mu or Lu Yueqing, they didn't care. This moment belongs only to them. Just when everything was coming to an end, an angry shout suddenly sounded in the sky in the distance. Evil, you're harming the world and the living beings, you might as well be put to death quickly. With this angry shout, seven or eight Taoist priests flew from the sky. There are those who fly with clouds, those who fly with Yujian, and those who use other tools to fly, each with their own means. In the same way, these Taoist priests have a strong aura, and you can see that they are not ordinary people at a glance. One of them is Su Mu's old acquaintance, Qing Shuzi. Before these Taoists arrived, the infinite thunder fell on the drought like a punishment from heaven. One after another sturdy thunder was intertwined, smashing at her with a roar, and formed a thunder prison to trap her. Immediately, countless flying swords formed a sword formation and attacked the drought. Immediately after that, countless spells fell on her like a downpour. This scene, like an immortal subduing a demon, is extremely intense. However, this magic is not easy to deal with. Being besieged by these powerful Qi refiners together, the Ganji still did not collapse, but fell slightly behind. The thunder prison roared and the flying sword vibrated. The battle is getting fiercer. Suddenly, a light lit up, dividing the thunder prison, sword formation, and talisman form into two. Immediately afterwards, a red figure flew out and fled into the distance. The birth time of this drought is still short, and its strength has not yet reached its peak. After fighting for a while and discovering that she was defeated, she gave up Su Mu and made a way to escape during the siege. Seeing this, the experts from the Tiani sect chased after them one after another. The strength of this drought is very terrifying, and it is still improving. Now, seven or eight of them can't have much advantage together. Make her stronger, who else can handle this evil thing? Qing Shuzi originally wanted to chase after him. But he inadvertently saw Su Mu and Lu Yueqing who were still alive on the ground, and he couldn't help being stunned, and then his heart was bitter. Qing Shuzi quickly admired Lu Yueqing's talent, and even thought about accepting her as his apprentice, but unfortunately she was rejected. I never thought that we would meet again next time, but this is actually the case. Masters and uncles, this disciple has some trivial matters to deal with, and will be back soon. After all, Qing Shuzi flew to Su Mu and Lu Yueqing's side. At this point, the two of them had little chance of life. Hey! Troubled times! Troubled times! Seeing Lu Yueqing's appearance, he also looked at the dead place that spreads for several miles. Qing Shuzi couldn't help but sigh twice. This world, this Jizhou. What exactly happened? Killing demons every day and killing demons every day, how come there are more and more demons in this world? The curse, where is it? Qing Shuzi has no answer to this question. He shook his head with a wry smile and gave up thinking. Then he dragged the dying Su Mu and Lu Yueqing into a house. 
At this time, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing were unable to stand and could only lie down. Your life is ruined, and the poor Daoist can't do anything. If you still have any wishes, the poor Dao may be able to help one or two. Qing Shuzi asked Lu Yuqing with a sigh. Lu Yuqing opened his mouth weakly, but couldn't utter a word. After discovering this, she slowly stretched out a hand, clenched Su Mu's rough palm tightly, and clenched it slightly. Su Mu understood and made a small incision on her finger with her sharp claws. The two of them dipped some blood on their fingers, and then wrote on the ground. The two struggled to write the same wordy. Putting them together, it happens to be the word. Seeing this scene, Qing Xuzi was very surprised. On the one hand, he was surprised that Mao Zong, Su Mu, had self-awareness and could write. On the other hand, she was surprised that Lu Yuqing's unfulfilled wish was to marry the zombie she raised. Qing Xuzi knew that there was a story that no one else knew about this person's corpse. He has no way of knowing, but it is not difficult to fulfill his wish before his death. If one person gets married with one corpse, it is a ghost marriage. Qing Xuzi has never presided over a ghost marriage, so he doesn't understand the etiquette procedures. But it's not what Su Mu and Lu Yuqing care about. Qing Xuzi let out a breath of turbid air and said solemnly. Pin Dao understands. Let me help you fulfill this wish. After all, he took out a handful of soybeans and threw them on the ground, and in an instant he became a maid and set up the wedding scene. Afterwards, Qing Xuzi made a few paper figurines, swonas and gongs and drums sounded in unison, and joy followed. In the end, Qing Xuzi came to the courtyard, took out three incense sticks with a little bloodshot in them, lit them, and stuck them on the ground. A strange wisp of blue smoke floated up and dispersed around. Since it is a great joy, how can there be no guests? Today, let's invite the ghosts from all directions to congratulate the two of you on the big happy event. Having said that, Qing Xuzi pinched a few magic tricks and used his supernatural powers. Soon, ghosts and ghosts with different appearances were attracted here. These are all lonely ghosts around. In this troubled world, I don't know how many people lost their lives. Even if the probability is 1 in 10,000, the ghosts and demons that will be generated will be a very large number. Of course, most of them are lonely ghosts. Their strength is extremely low, almost the same as the bone boy that Sumu first transformed into. And the consciousness is chaotic, and it will completely dissipate after a long time. Qing Xuzi invited these lonely ghosts to serve as guests. It shouldn't make this favorite meal too deserted. After a while, everything was set up. Qing Xuzi manipulated two paper figurines to attach to Su Mu and Lu Yuqing to help them move. Today, the two tied the knot. It's allowed to say that the combination of pearls is wonderful, and the joy of Kazenkin's harmony. Increase. Qing Xuzi wanted to send a congratulatory message. But before he finished speaking, he found that Lu Yuqing's breath was getting weaker and weaker, and it was possible to cut it off at any time. In desperation, Qing Xuzi didn't dare to delay any longer, and hurriedly jumped to the step of worshipping the church. In the living room, the big red character hangs high. The paper man plays swona and drums the joy is endless. Bafang Lone Soul filled the seats and sent congratulations to the newlyweds. In this environment, one person and one stiff worship each other, and they can't afford it for a long time. After bowing, Lu Yuqing, who was dying, suddenly raised his head. I saw a blush on her face, her eyes lit up, and her condition seemed to be much better. But everyone knows that this is the performance of returning to the light. Brother Mu, if there is an afterlife, will you marry me? Lu Luqing looked at Su Mu with a smile, with a trace of anxiety and longing in his eyes. This look made Su Mu's heart twitch fiercely, and then nodded seriously. In the next life, I will marry you. Wait for me. This sentence was what Su Mu thought. Lu Yuqing knew this through his eyes, and a happy smile appeared on his face. Then he closed his eyes in joy and lost his breath. After Lu Yuqing's death, Su Mu's body also collapsed sharply, and then he left this world. It turned out that that strong sense of crisis had nothing to do with the half-hearted Qi refiner like Master Feiyun. 
Instead, it comes from the dry scorpion transformed by the Valkyrie Angelica. If he really wanted to catch up, Su Mu would be able to catch up and eliminate the real person Feiyun in a few breaths. He was able to escape for so long because the sense of crisis in Su Mu's heart was getting stronger and stronger. This made Su Mu not dare to be careless, and while sticking behind him, he observed the movement around him. His prudence was not in vain. The moment he saw the drought, Su Mu's heart was alarmed, and he immediately turned around and fled into the distance. The appearance of the drought made Su Mu think about something. The powerful and strange corpse aura in Wei Zhuang's blood, I am afraid, came from the dry scorpion. Nine times out of ten, the injuries on his body were also caused by this drought. Su Mu sucked all of Wei Zhuang's blood, including the corpse Qi. Before, he did not completely refine these blood essences, so that the corpse aura was deeply hidden in his body. Now, Su Mu has successfully refined Wei Zhuang's blood essence and advanced to Mao Zhuang, and the scorpion has come to him. While trying to understand this, Su Mu ran away faster. After a few dodges, he disappeared into the alleys of Jin Men, desperately escaping into the distance. But the scorpion was not in a hurry to chase. The red clothes on her body danced wildly, and an unspeakable and strange force spread to the surroundings, full of dead silence. Susu 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 susu. With the drought at the center, the surrounding houses, plants, humans and beasts, etc. All turned to ashes as if they had been severely burned. Everything is lost to annihilation. If you look down from the sky, you will see a gray-black circle rapidly spreading out from the scorpion. Devour everything and destroy everything around her. All that remains is the endless silence. No matter how fast Su Mu was, it couldn't be faster than this terrifying supernatural power. In just a moment, he escaped for miles. But he was still caught up by this force and passed through. With a hit, Su Mu's dashing body stopped abruptly as if the pause button had been pressed. At this moment, he felt that the whole world had come to a standstill. All kinds of perceptions are far away from him, he seems to be stripped out of this world. A strange, violent, and deadly force destroyed everything in Su Mu. Just this moment, Su Mu knew that he was already a dead corpse. The corpse chi collapsed and the corpse disintegrated. Death is a foregone conclusion. It's no wonder that Wei Zhuang, who has been strengthened by the corpse blood pill, is still so miserable with the help of strong reinforcements. The power of this drought is unbelievably powerful. After hitting Su Mu, this strange magical power seemed to be aware of it, so it stopped directly and did not continue to expand. Su Mu was standing on the edge of the grey giant circle, and his perception of this world was rapidly fading. Vision, smell, hearing, the unique sense of zombies to the vitality of living people, are all fading. He was doomed to die. This time, there is no way to save Su Mu. In this life, he has come to an end. Give me back my blood. Behind him, there was the cold and ruthless voice of the dagger. But Su Mu, who was dead, didn't care anymore. He saw that a familiar petite figure was running towards him. It's Lu Yuqing. This scene made Su Mu's eyes widen. The originally blurred consciousness suddenly became much clearer. The circle painted by the drought on the earth is full of silence and destruction. Even if it's not as terrifying as it was when it expanded, it's still not something that ordinary people can set foot on. With Lu Yueqing's strength, he will surely die if he enters this circle. Su Mu wanted Lu Yueqing to leave, but he couldn't speak. He could only let out a roar, staring at Lu Yueqing, trying to persuade her to retreat. Looking at each other, Lu Yueqing did not stop. With tears in her eyes, she desperately ran towards Su Mu, the speed getting faster and faster. Su Mu knew that Lu Yueqing had already read his meaning through his eyes, and knew that he would die if he went further. But she didn't back down. Not before, and not now. Wherever Su Mu is, she runs to. Like moths to a fire, they will die. Lu Yueqing slammed into Su Mu's arms and hugged him tightly with all his strength, as if he wanted to fit into his arms. Brother Mu, we will not be separated, never, never. Lu Yueqing muttered in a low voice, tears already wet Su Mu's chest. At this moment, all kinds of emotions flooded into Su Mu's heart, 
and the scenes of getting along with Lu Yuqing in the past kept flashing before his eyes. Su Mu's eyes became slightly moist. Looking at Lu Yuqing, whose hair was rapidly turning white and his skin was dry and wrinkled. Su Mu also stretched out his hands and hugged her. This hug means farewell forever. Behind them, the scorpion was still walking towards them. But whether it was Su Mu or Lu Yuqing, they didn't care. This moment belongs only to them. Just when everything was coming to an end, an angry shout suddenly sounded in the sky in the distance. Evil, you're harming the world and the living beings, you might as well be put to death quickly. With this angry shout, seven or eight Taoist priests flew from the sky. There are those who fly with clouds, those who fly with Yujian, and those who use other tools to fly, each with their own means. In the same way, these Taoist priests have a strong aura, and you can see that they are not ordinary people at a glance. One of them is Su Mu's old acquaintance, Qin Shuzi. Before these Taoists arrived, the infinite thunder fell on the drought like a punishment from heaven. One after another sturdy thunder was intertwined, smashing at her with a roar, and formed a thunder prison to trap her. Immediately, countless flying swords formed a sword formation and attacked the drought. Immediately after that, countless spells fell on her like a downpour. This scene, like an immortal subduing a demon, is extremely intense. However, this magic is not easy to deal with. Being besieged by these powerful Qi refiners together, the Ganji still did not collapse, but fell slightly behind. The thunder prison roared and the flying sword vibrated. The battle is getting fiercer. Suddenly, a light lit up, dividing the thunder prison, sword formation, and talisman form into two. Immediately afterwards, a red figure flew out and fled into the distance. The birth time of this drought is still short, and its strength has not yet reached its peak. After fighting for a while and discovering that she was defeated, she gave up Su Mu and made a way to escape during the siege. Seeing this, the experts from the Tiani sect chased after them one after another. The strength of this drought is very terrifying, and it is still improving. Now, seven or eight of them can't have much advantage together. Make her stronger, who else can handle this evil thing? Qing Shuzi originally wanted to chase after him. But he inadvertently saw Su Mu and Lu Yuqing who were still alive on the ground, and he couldn't help being stunned, and then his heart was bitter. Qing Shuzi quickly admired Lu Yuqing's talent, and even thought about accepting her as his apprentice, but unfortunately she was rejected. I never thought that we would meet again next time, but this is actually the case. Masters and uncles, this disciple has some trivial matters to deal with, and will be back soon. After all, Qing Shuzi flew to Su Mu and Lu Yueqing's side. At this point, the two of them had little chance of life. Hey! Troubled times! Troubled times! Seeing Lu Yueqing's appearance, he also looked at the dead place that spreads for several miles. Qing Shuzi couldn't help but sigh twice. This world, this Jizhou. What exactly happened? Killing demons every day and killing demons every day, how come there are more and more demons in this world? The curse, where is it? Qing Shuzi has no answer to this question. He shook his head with a wry smile and gave up thinking. Then he dragged the dying Su Mu and Lu Yuqing into a house. At this time, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing were unable to stand and could only lie down. Your life is ruined, and the poor Daoist can't do anything. If you still have any wishes, the poor Dao may be able to help one or two. Qing Shuzi asked Lu Yuqing with a sigh. Lu Yuqing opened his mouth weakly, but couldn't utter a word. After discovering this, she slowly stretched out a hand, clenched Su Mu's rough palm tightly, and clenched it slightly. Su Mu understood and made a small incision on her finger with her sharp claws. The two of them dipped some blood on each of their fingers, and then simultaneously wrote on the ground. The two of them struggled to write the same wordy. Putting them together, it happens to be the word. Seeing this scene, Qing Shuzi was very surprised. On the one hand, he was surprised that Mao Zong, Su Mu, had self-awareness and could write. On the other hand, he was surprised that Lu Yueqing's unfulfilled wish turned out to be a marriage. Qing Shuzi knew that there was a story between them that no one else knew. These don't matter. 
The problem is, he won't. As a cultivator, Qing Shuzi has been single for decades, Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Kam has never experienced or attended a wedding. Not only have I never eaten pork, I have never seen a pig run. Asking Qing Shuzi to preside over the wedding, he is really numb. Fortunately, Qing Shuzi doesn't need to be embarrassed. Just after writing that word, a blush appeared on Lu Yueqing's face, and his eyes lit up. The state of the whole person seems to be much better. But everyone knows that this is just the performance of the light and the light. Brother Mu, if there is an afterlife, will you marry me? Lu Yueqing turned sideways and stared at Su Mu, with a trace of anxiety and longing in his eyes. This look made Su Mu's heart twitch fiercely, and then nodded seriously. In the next life, I will marry you. Wait for me. This sentence was what Su Mu thought. Lu Yueqing knew this through his eyes, and a happy smile appeared on his face. Then he closed his eyes in joy and lost his breath. After Lu Yueqing's death, Su Mu's body also collapsed sharply, and then he left this world. Score, F. Dungeon Completion, 56%. Points Earned, 200. Comment, I have achieved little before and after death, but there is still a lot of room for improvement. In the white waiting space, Su Mu's expression was complicated, and he had mixed feelings in his heart. The simulation of the last life was the most experienced one so far. At the back, Su Mu even had a feeling of Zhuang Shengxiao dreamed of butterflies, and couldn't tell which side was real. What he regrets the most is to live up to that beautiful shadow. In the next life, I will marry her. After making this decision, Su Mu cheered up and began to organize the information obtained in the previous life. Although he left a lot of regrets, he made a lot of progress in all aspects in the previous life, which gave Su Mu a deeper understanding of the dungeon world. And in the martial arts and the way of demons, they have gone farther. After pondering for a long time, Su Mu made a plan in his heart. In the next life, he will not only have to pass the customs, but also live a wonderful, free and easy life. First of all, it is the choice of talent. Big dream and kindness are reserved. As for the heavenly widow. Damn your mother, I want to get married. I want to marry a wife. Why is it that there is no woman in my heart to practice martial arts, and I am happy to indulge in women's lust? Su Mu decisively replaced Tian Wei with assimilation. As the only cyan talent given by this dungeon world, Su Mu has never forgotten it. It's just that I haven't found a suitable opportunity to use it before. After the advancement of the previous life, Su Mu has already figured out how to use the talent of assimilation. In fact, you don't need to think about it to know that the goal of assimilation must be the drought. The key lies in how to use this talent. The premise of assimilation is close and long-term contact with something. Otherwise, this talent cannot be activated. It is a thousand times more difficult than a mouse to hang a bell on a cat to stick a stick with a dry scorpion at close range and for a long time. It has to be done by some means. Soon, Su Mu selected three talents, namely. Kindness, all living creatures favorability 30%. Assimilation, after close contact with anything, they will assimilate each other. Big dream. Before the age of 18, the consciousness is chaotic, and after the age of 18, all basic attributes are doubled. After selecting the talent, Su Mu did not immediately enter the dungeon world. After accumulating points for so long, it's finally time to put them to use. Just changing a talent won't bring much improvement to Su Mu. Even in the martial arts practice, they will lag behind. Even if he knew more about the copy world, he couldn't go further. If you want to pass the custom smoothly, you must make good use of the points he has accumulated. In the first instance world, Su Mu accumulated 60 points. In the first few lifetimes of the second instance world, he accumulated dozens of points sporadically. In addition to the 200 points he just obtained, the total is 326 points. This is already a lot of money, and you can spend it well in the points mall. First, the martial arts aspect. Without Heavenly Widow, Su Mu's martial arts practice will be much slower. Moreover, without a suitable high-level martial arts technique, 
he would not be able to cultivate his qi. In this way, the physical strength will not meet the requirements required to evolve into a flying stiffness. The first thing Su Mu needs is a good martial arts technique. He spent a long time shopping in the points mall, and finally spent 200 points to buy a very good martial arts practice. Shen Zhao Jing Half Part, Superior Martial Arts Techniques After training, there is nothing special except that the astral qi is slightly thicker. To be precise, Su Mu only bought half of the spiritual illumination, which can be cultivated to the innate realm at the highest. This is also something he can't do. He only has so many points on hand, and he can only buy half of it. And the innate realm is enough. It is even more difficult to say whether Su Mu can cultivate to this realm, and there is no need to consider further. After choosing a good martial arts technique, there are still two problems that need to be solved urgently. One of them is related to Big Dream. Big Dream this talent is very powerful, but being forced offline for 18 years is really uncomfortable. When I woke up on my 18th birthday, it was only more than half a year before the birth of the scorpion. In such a short time, Su Mu can do too little. He must wake up soon. After doing some ordinary things, Su Mu found what he wanted in the points mall. Dream Awakening Grass Wearing it all year round can make the spiritual platform clear and bright, and the mind is stable. This thing is worth 50 points. After checking it carefully, Su Mu determined that this special spiritual plant could offset some of the side effects brought by Big Dream. With this thing, Su Mu should be able to wake up earlier and buy more time. As for how much earlier he can wake up, it is unknown. There is one last question left. How can we stick with the dry scorpion for a long time and at a close distance? This is the most important core point. What is the ultimate purpose of Su Mu's entry into the dungeon world? It's nothing more than getting a more powerful monster template. Of course, after going through the last life, Su Mu has another purpose, to marry Lu Yuqing. Either virtual or real. Either happiness or sadness. In the next life, he will definitely marry this girl. Back to the monster template. In the current world of dungeons, it is clear that Su Mu will evolve in the direction of zombies. Among the zombies, is there anything more powerful than a scorpion? The two things, Ganji and Assimilation, were placed in front of Su Mu at the same time. The first thing he thought of was to use this talent to steal the origin of Ganji. Thinking of the incomparably terrifying strength of the dagger, Su Mu only felt dry mouth. If he could have half the strength of a dagger, he would immediately shoot the third prince to death when he returned to the real world. But it's too early to think about it now in order to solve this problem, Su Mu rummaged in the point store for a long time. Finally found a solution. Proximity charm, this talisman can connect and share the breath of both parties regardless of distance. This kind of spell is worth 50 points. Generally, it is used by Taoist companions to express their loyalty to each other, and it is of little use other than that. But with the talent of assimilation, it is very useful. As long as you find an opportunity to stick one of the neighbor talismans on the body of the Han, and keep the other Sumu, you can communicate the atmosphere of the two sides. In order to achieve the basic requirements for the activation of the talent assimilation, absorb her origin. The hope of evolving the drought is right in front of you. Originally, Sumu also planned to buy some materials that could help raise and refine corpses. But once he bought the first three items, he only had 26 points left. After looking around and discovering that I couldn't afford any good things, I had no choice but to give up the idea of continuing shopping. After getting ready, Sumu went through the whole plan and what he needed in his mind. After confirming that there is no problem, the fifth generation begins. Talents Big Dream, Assimilation, Kindness, Resentment. Items, Awakening Dream Grass, Proximity Talisman There is no real object in spiritual illumination, it has been recorded in my mind. Yuqing, I'm here. With this thought, Su Mu disappeared into the standby air and started the fifth life. Still the military camp, or the consciousness trapped in the body. The most important thing is. It's still a cute little girl like Lu Yuqing. The difference is that in this life, Su Mu came with the awakening dream grass. 
In Su Mu's subconscious, the dream grass is an extremely important thing, so he always carries it with him. Lu Yuqing didn't know what was so special about this broken grass. But seeing that Su Mu was so precious, he made it into a sachet and hung it around Su Mu's neck. Like the previous generations, the two grew up together and were still childhood sweethearts. In a flash, seventeen years have passed. With Lu Yueqing's care and the help of the talent of kindness, Su Mu lived a good life in the military camp. On this day, the sky was clear and the spring breeze was blowing. Seeing that the weather was so good, Lu Yueqing took Su Mu to catch butterflies in the fields. A group of butterflies fluttered among the plants and flowers, filled with the breath of spring. Among them, a beautiful variegated butterfly is very eye-catching. After just one look, Lu Yueqing fell in love. Brother Xiao Mu, Brother Xiao Mu. Help me catch this butterfly, let's catch it together. As Lu Yueqing shouted, he ran over with his net bag in hand. But Su Mu sat on the ridge, looked at her with a smile, and didn't move. Seeing this situation, Lu Yueqing didn't find it strange, just a little sad. In fact, Su Mu has always been like this. Except for the most basic eating, drinking, sleeping, and basically not doing other things. The reason why Lu Yueqing shouted so much was just to see if he could wake up Su Mu. Because she has always felt that her little brother is not a fool in other people's mouths, just not enlightened. Once enlightened, he will be smarter than everyone. Thinking of this, Lu Yueqing's thoughts about catching butterflies are no longer at all. Don't forget, this girl is very wild. At the age of 16, he was no longer keen on this kind of children's game, just to accompany Su Mu. For those more complicated things, with Su Mu's current state, he can't participate. Thinking of this, Lu Yueqing felt a little uncomfortable, and the speed of waving the net bag was much slower. After several strokes, I didn't even wipe the edge of the variegated butterfly. This made Lu Yueqing bow his head a little dejectedly. It seemed that it was because he didn't catch the butterfly, but he was really worried about Su Mu. Her father would not allow her to be with Su Mu in this state. But what Lu Yueqing has determined will never go back. In this way, it is a dilemma. Just when Lu Yueqing was distressed, a tall figure walked in front of her quickly, and his palm popped out like an electric light. When he stopped again, his fingertips had already pinched the variegated butterfly. I caught the butterfly you wanted. Su Mu smiled and handed the patella butterfly in front of Lu Yueqing. Dreaming herb was effective, and it made him wake up a year earlier. This is very important. One year is enough for Su Mu to do a lot of things. On the other side, after seeing the butterfly in Su Mu's hand and hearing what he said, Lu Yueqing was stunned. Brother Mu, you, you. You. Lu Luqing looked up at Su Mu and was so excited that he couldn't even utter a complete sentence. Su Mu didn't say a word, just took her into his arms and gave her a big hug. Su Mu reached out and brushed Lu Yueqing's hair, and said softly. I'm back, I'm back. You you. I knew, I knew you're not a fool, brother Xiaomu. I finally waited until today, Yu Yu. Seeing Su Mu's enlightenment, Lu Yueqing burst into tears with the same excitement as in the previous life. The difference is that this time it was Su Mu who took the initiative to hug her. In this world, live up to you. Seventeen years, in exchange for double attributes. Body, twelve. Intelligence, six. Life, 8. The doubled attributes made Su Mu an out-and-out martial arts genius. Although it is far from a freak like Bai Ji, it is definitely not bad. But this time, Su Mu was not in a hurry to practice martial arts, he had other things to do. After comforting Lu Yueqing, Su Mu grabbed her shoulders, stared at him, and said solemnly. A huge crisis is approaching us. You, me, your father and the entire people of Jizhou can't escape. The only way now is to improve your strength and protect yourself as much as possible. Yueqing, are you willing to become stronger with me? When ordinary people encounter such a thing, they probably won't pay attention to Su Mu at all, thinking that he is still acting stupid. After all, a person who has been stupid for 17 years suddenly said such a thing, who would believe it? But Lu Yueqing is an exception. 
With the look in Shang Su Mu's eyes, Lu Yuqing knew that his little brother Mu was really enlightened. And what he said was true. As soon as Su Mu finished speaking, she said um without hesitation, and nodded heavily. Seeing this, Su Mu smiled and joked. I believe this. What a silly girl. Sooner or later, she was deceived and ran away. Lu Liching pursed his lips and said unconvinced. I'm so smart. Even if I'm deceived, I'll only fall for you. If you are a fool, you can go, so aren't you more stupid than a fool? Nonsense. Brother Mu, you are not a fool. After a few gags, the conversation between the two finally got to the point. Su Mu's expression turned solemn, and said to Lu Yuqin. From today onwards, don't practice martial arts. I have a Qigong method here, which will be taught to you later. You should cultivate the Tao and Qi. Qi refining. What is Qi refining? Lu Yuqin was a little at a loss. Cultivation of Qi is to use the small world of one's own to echo the big world outside, absorb spiritual energy for cultivation, and then. Su Mu's talent for martial arts is very good, but his talent for qi training is very general. Yu Yu reading. Lu Yuqing is just the opposite. Her talent in martial arts is poor, but her talent in qi refining is very good. In the last life, Su Mu memorized the qigong method passed to her by Taoist Zishan by rote. At this time, everything was taught to Lu Yuqing. In Su Mu's view, those mysterious words are obscure and difficult to understand. However, after listening to it a few times, Lu Yuqing had a vague understanding and began to practice cross-legged. It is estimated that he is trying to sense the aura between heaven and earth. Seeing this, Su Mu couldn't help but sigh that Lu Yuqing's talent for qi refining was indeed very strong. No wonder someone like Qing Shuzi wanted to accept her as his apprentice. Speaking of the talent of cultivating qi and cultivating qi, Su Mu estimates that it has something to do with the attribute of wisdom. Intelligence has nothing to do with intelligence. Whether it is more or less, it will not affect Su Mu's intelligence. Su Mu speculates that wisdom should represent understanding, and the talent for cultivating Taoism and qi is the main one. If there is a chance, add some more attribute points to the wisdom in the next instance world and see what effect it will have. With that in mind, Su Mu was about to start practicing martial arts. There are many things he wants to do in this life. The first premise of all of this is to have decent force. Only in this way can he unfold his preplanned plan. Hanji, King Biling, wait for me. I am back. I have been notified that it will be on the shelves at 12, noon tomorrow. The news came a bit suddenly, and I didn't prepare much for the manuscript. But don't worry everyone, as long as the first order is made, the keyboard will be dry and broken. Well, set a goal. The first set is 1000, and the daily update is 6000. The first set is 2000, and the daily update is 9000. The first set is 3000, and the daily update is 12000 it can't be reached anyway, ha 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 ha. As for the reward. The alliance leader will add 10 more updates and the Silver League will add 100 more updates, calculated according to one update and 2,000 words there is no reward anyway, ha 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 ha. In short, I urge all readers to support the genuine version and subscribe. The last book was written diligently for more than two months, but it was thrown into the street. Fortunately, I am a little handsome, and I was attracted by the factory manager's daughter, who weighs more than 300 kilograms only then did I have time to rewrite it. It's just that every time the sun sets and night falls, there will be a demonic whisper. Elbow. Come into the house with me. In the future, every time I think about it, I can't help but burst into tears. I just hate why Uomoto couldn't write better. But how can there be regret medicine in the world? I just hope that the results of this book can be better, so that I can be relieved. Brothers, please subscribe more and help me escape the sea of misery. Boo. Otherwise, my two little sun-like wastes will have to set in the west. In short, please subscribe. This is a cry from the abyss. The following is my sincere thanks. Thank you to the editor for your great support and recommendation, 
and thanks to all the readers for their recommendation tickets, monthly tickets and rewards. I love you. 3. Thanks to Zhang Tzu for the Tao Fruit Simulator of All Heavens, the first cause of all realms, and the Red Mansions. These big guys' books are all great, you can read them. Finally, I will recommend this book to everyone. When I make a ghost movie, why do I become a heavenly master? As an atheist, Lin Jing travels to a strange world. Made several classic zombie films. But I didn't expect that there are really zombies, weirdness, and monsters in this world. At the same time, it was discovered. The method in Lin Zhang's movie actually dealt with these monsters, ghosts and monsters. Black Dog Blood, Peachwood Sword, Immortality Talisman. Lin Zhang failed to become a famous director, but instead became a globally recognized ghost hunter. Only Lin Zhang, who can't see ghosts at all, is still confused. I'm really not a celestial master. There are no ghosts in the world. We must believe in science. In this life, Su Mu did not have the blessing of Heavenly Widow. But he has spiritual illumination. This high-level martial arts technique is very good. It does not have any specific moves, but it can speed up the cultivation of warriors and make the blood more vigorous. After the body training is complete, you can use this set of exercises to cultivate the astral chi and advance to the day after tomorrow. There is nothing special about the astral chi cultivated in Xinjiao Jing. Unlike some martial arts exercises, the chi is hot, or cold, or sharp, and some are also highly poisonous. The astral chi cultivated in the Xinjiao Jing is mediocre, but it is much thicker than the astral chi of the same level martial artist. What the system says slightly thick, nothing special is actually a huge advantage. However, Su Mu has only just started, so he is not in a hurry to think about the matter of Gang Chi. The story of Su Mu's enlightenment soon spread throughout the barracks. However, like the previous life, it did not attract much attention. Su Mu and Lu Yuqing were immersed in their own world and practiced desperately. One person practices martial arts and the other person practices Qi. Three days later, Su Mu successfully completed the leather refining and became a third-rate martial artist. After another five days, Su Mu successfully exercised his muscles, and his qi and blood reached a new level. In just eight days, Su Mu has achieved third-rate consummation. This speed is faster than the previous life. The main reason is that there is a high-level martial arts practice called Xinjiao Jing. 200 points, no white flowers. Next, Su Mu is still improving rapidly, which is no different from opening and hanging. After 20 days, Su Mu completed bone refining and advanced to a second-rate martial artist. After 35 days, Su Mu completed the internal refining and advanced to a first-class warrior. This is not the end, after another 51 days, Su Mu succeeded in refining blood. In this way, the five steps of skin refining, muscle refining, bone refining, visceral refining, and blood refining have all been completed, and the cultivation to the great perfection of body refining is already the pinnacle of first-class warriors. The whole process took only 109 days. Much faster than the 145 days of the previous life. This is still done without the heavenly widow bonus. It can be seen how important a good practice is to a martial artist. In the last life, when Su Mu cultivated to the peak of the first-class warrior, the famine was about to start, and he had no time to do more things. To sum it up in two words, rush. But in this life, Su Mu woke up a year earlier. There is still a long way to go before the famine, and he can do a lot. These are all planned in advance by Su Mu. First of all, we must continue to make progress in martial arts, and strive to cultivate qi as soon as possible. But this process should not be rushed. The speed of Su Mu's advancement is too fast, and the foundation is slightly unstable. He intends to stabilize the foundation, and then cultivate the astral qi. It is estimated that in two or three months, the day after tomorrow will be advanced. In addition, Su Mu didn't plan to hide his strength like the previous life. He intends to use the people in the military camp to do something. As such, prestige must be established in the army. In this life, Su Mu will change his way of life. 
Tsumu waited and watched for a while, and finally got a good opportunity to build his prestige. On this day, there was no training in the army, and several soldiers were competing on the playground, surrounded by crowds of onlookers. Brother who, brother who, come on. Attack him, attack him. Dinyo, him, him. Okay. Ah whose punch is beautiful. It's useless, it's useless, this powerful fist is not worth it. Come on, Daniel. The crowd cheered. Su Mu pushed Lu Yuqing up and found that he knew the two soldiers who were fighting. One of them is called Ah Hu with a medium build. He usually trains very hard, and he is quite smart. His martial arts are good, and he is considered to be a leader among third-rate martial artists. It's a pity that his opponent is a bit difficult to deal with. The soldier named Dinyo was more than eight feet tall, almost two meters in height. And the skeleton is huge and extremely strong, like an upright bull. Daniel is also a third-rate martial artist, but this guy has a bit of innate divine power, and his power exceeds that of a martial artist of the same level. It can be seen that Ah Hu did not dare to fight with Daniel. He kept swerving and moving, attacking the flaws exposed by the Daniel, and from time to time he could hit a solid punch. But the big cow was rough and fleshy, and after a few heavy punches, it was just a little painful, and it didn't hurt the muscles and bones. In pain, Daniel's attack became more and more violent. Although his fists and kicks could not hit Ah Hu for a while, they forced him to retreat again and again. It seems that it is very dashing and dashing, but in fact it is frantically consuming chi, blood and stamina. Su Mu's combat experience was so rich, he could tell at a glance that Ah Hu was about to lose. Sure enough, after a while, Ah Hu showed a downward trend. His continuous attacks did not gain a substantial advantage, and he continued to dodge and move around, which was extremely exhausting. On the other hand, Danyo's punching speed was the same as before, and the pressure of Ahu's footwork was a little messy. Finally, with a muffled sound of bang, Daniel slammed a heavy punch on Ahu's chest. Although Ahu raised his arms in time to block the punch. But he was still beaten again and again and then withdrew several feet, his face turned pale with a swoosh. Seeing the Daniel rushing towards him again arrogantly, Ahu hurriedly shouted. I admit defeat, admit defeat. Don't fight. You are a bull, you are too strong. I don't know what kind of daughter-in-law you will marry in the future, so you can stand up to this animal. Ha ha ha. Hearing this, the crowd burst into laughter. But not mocking Ah Hu. Most of the ordinary soldiers in the army are third-rate warriors, and some are not yet. If you cultivate to the second-rate level, and if you have military skills, you can serve as some minor officials. Of course, some veteran third-rate warriors can also be promoted. But if it is not second-rate, the centurion is the pinnacle. Besides, Ah Hu, he is definitely a good player among ordinary soldiers. There are very few third-rate warriors in this barracks who can beat him steadily. However, Daniel's innate physical condition is too good. Among the third-rate, almost no one is his opponent. Ah Hu has been able to fight against him until now, and he is already very strong. Seeing Ah Hu admit defeat, Daniel laughed a few times, then moved his body to look around and asked. Anyone else have a fight with me? I just stretched my muscles and bones, but it's still not enough. Hearing this, the surrounding soldiers shook their heads. They can't even beat Ah Hu, what can they use to fight this bull? If you take a punch, I'm afraid you will have to rest for two or three days before you can recover. This suffering, they don't want to eat. I come. Just when Daniel was a little disappointed, a faint voice sounded. Everyone looked around, wanting to see who was so bold. As a result, I was dumbfounded. The person who spoke was actually Su Mu. In the eyes of everyone, this fool who hadn't been enlightened before March. AMU, don't be fooling around. This guy, Daniel, is not serious or heavy, so be careful to break it for you. After being stunned for a while, Ah Hu hurriedly persuaded him. Although Su Mu had been in a foolish state for the past 17 years, no one bullied him, and even took good care of him. Hearing Ah Hu's persuasion, Su Mu smiled and said. It's alright, I've been practicing martial arts recently, and I have some strength. 
even if I can't beat Daniel, it won't happen. Hearing this, Ah Hu said speechlessly. AMU, you have only been enlightened for three months, and you will only be practicing martial arts for three months. What can you learn in such a short period of time? Listen to me, don't fight this barbarian Daniel. Go back. Su Mu smiled and said. Let me give it a try, it's just a matter of moving your body. With that said, Su Mu walked towards Daniel. Ah who originally wanted to stop him, but Su Mu had already spared him. At this time, he didn't have time to think too much, so he could only quickly turn his attention to Lu Yuaqing and said anxiously. Yuaqing, you still haven't persuaded your little brother. It's not a big deal for this guy, Daniel. Everyone in the barracks knew that Lu Yuaqing and Su Mu were very close, and they were childhood sweethearts who grew up together. So Ah Hu tried to ask Lu Yuaqing to persuade Su Mu. But what he didn't expect was that Lu Yuaqing just smiled and shook his head. Although she doesn't know how far Su Mu has cultivated, she will always believe in Su Mu. What Su Mu wants to do, she will not block it, she will only support it with all her strength. Dinyo, do it lightly. Don't break AMU, it took him a long time to figure it out. Seeing that he couldn't be persuaded, who was also very helpless, so he could only let Daniel light up. Daniel nodded and said seriously. Don't worry, I'll take it easy. While the two were talking, Sumu had already arrived in front of Daniel and beckoned to him with a calm and calm expression. Just looking at their bodies, there is a huge difference between the two. Su Mu was quite tall, but he was at least two laps smaller than the giant bull. But Su Mu's momentum has stabilized the bull. It's just that the big-headed soldiers present have too little knowledge to realize this. AMU, be careful, I'm coming. After a light drink, Daniel threw a punch at Su Mu. This punch, he used 30% of his strength, and was ready to unload at any time. But before Dan Yo could react, a palm wrapped around his fist, causing him to stop the punch in an instant and not make an inch. You! Daniel looked at Su Mu with shock and confusion on his face. He didn't understand how Su Mu, who was far thinner than himself, could intercept his giant fist with one palm. Shouldn't Su Mu be kicked out by his punch? When Daniel was puzzled, Su Mu squeezed his fist and shook it casually. The power of shock surged into his body like waves, getting more and more turbulent. This random shake made Daniel's huge body tremble, and his skeleton seemed to be shaken, and all his strength was drained in an instant. The weak Daniel slumped on the ground, looking at Su Mu in confusion and shock. Daniel knew that he lost the fight just now. But he had no idea how he lost. He only felt Su Mu standing in front of him, like a mountain. An impenetrable mountain. In fact, Su Mu used one of the common movements in the army of Shanchen Fistchenchan Fist. The power of shock, Ben Yin punched out through his fist. However, Su Mu had already cultivated Shanchen Fist to the realm of fusion and penetration, and he could use the profound meaning of it with just a few gestures. Dan Yo also uses shaking the mountain. But he will only sway his power arrogantly, and his understanding of Shanshan Fist is far from enough. This is the gap between the two in the understanding of martial arts. At this time, it was not only the Daniel, but also the surrounding soldiers. They only saw Su Mu scratching and shaking, and the ox was soft to the ground like a snake with its spine slashed. Is this still the usual powerful bull like a beast? Come again. After a short rest, the strength finally slowly returned to Daniel's body. He took a few deep breaths and staggered up from the ground. I saw Daniel's face was serious, showing that he was serious. Before making his move, he said to Su Mu in a loud voice. You are very powerful, but I used a three-point force just now, this time I will be serious. After speaking, Daniel roared angrily, and the whole person rushed towards Su Mu like a beast, and punched him fiercely. This punch is the mountain-shaking style in Shanchen Fist, also known as Kaishan Fist. The profound meaning of this style is to concentrate all the power in one point, and when it explodes in an instant, it has the ability to open mountains and crack rocks. Seeing this, Su Mu smiled and threw out the same punch. This punch is also Kaishan Quan. 
There was a loud noise, and two fists, one big and one small, collided fiercely. In an instant, Daniel's complexion changed. He could feel that there was almost no difference in the strength of the two. But Su Mu's Kaishan fist is much more subtle than his. If you compare boxing to an army. There are also thousands of people, and the army controlled by Daniel is only barely gathered together, and the formation is very loose. However, Su Mu condensed the thousands of people under his command into a single rope, and a thousand people, one force, condensed at one point and exploded in an instant. The same power, but there is a huge gap in power. With just one collision, the Daniel's punches collapsed and he was defeated. Dong Dong Dong. With the touch of his fists, the Daniel retreated again and again, leaving deep footprints on the ground with his heavy footsteps. All the way back to the soldier's onlookers, he knocked down seven or eight people in a row, and only barely stood firm with the help of other soldiers. However, the right hand that punched Su Mu was still trembling, and it was limply drooping on his shoulders. This scene made all the soldiers who were looking around dumbfounded. Especially Ah Hu, his jaw was about to drop in shock. He has played against Daniel many times, and he naturally knows how heavy this guy's full strength punch is. It is estimated that it has reached the level of ordinary second rate warriors. Su Mu actually defeated Daniel in a head on collision. How much power should this be? Actually, it has nothing to do with power. Daniel knew very well that Su Mu's punch just now was as powerful as his. But the boxing is much more refined than him. The gap between the two in martial arts is too great. The word Dazarua probably refers to people like Daniel. After being shocked, he quickly laughed naively and said to Su Mu. I lost, your boxing is too good. Can you teach me? Brother Mu. Meeting Daniel's eager and adoring gaze, Su Mu smiled. Of course, at this time and place tomorrow afternoon. As long as you come, I will teach you. Thank you, Brother Mu. Hearing this, Daniel shouted excitedly. The other soldiers cheered happily after being stunned for a while. Obviously, Su Mu's strength is stronger than Danyo, even much stronger. Such people are willing to teach them martial arts, how can there be no reason to be unhappy or excited? In the military, strength is everything. Seeing this scene, Su Mu knew that his purpose was preliminarily accomplished. How to build prestige? It is nothing more than a combination of grace and power. The strongest ox in the two strokes of doing soldiers is Wei. It is a blessing to teach them martial arts. I believe that it will not be long before Su Mu will be able to establish his prestige among the soldiers at the bottom. As for the upper level of the barracks it was also Lu Yueqing's father, Lu Gaotian, so it was even simpler. Wouldn't it be over to turn him into a relative? After achieving the goal, Su Mu left the training ground with Lu Yueqing. Seeing her face full of admiration, Su Mu was a little speechless. Just a third-rate warrior. If it wasn't for Li Wei, Su Mu really had no interest in competing with them. Don't look at Lu Yueqing's petite, cute and beautiful appearance. In fact, her cultivation speed is very fast, and she is definitely stronger than Daniel and Ah Hu. Others can't detect it, but Su Mu can feel that her whole body is becoming more and more condensed, and her progress is rapid. Although I don't know what stage Lu Yueqing has reached in her cultivation, Su Mu feels that her cultivation level should have surpassed that of the previous life. In the last life, Lu Yueqing put his main energy on corpse refining, thinking about how to improve Su Mu's strength. Instead, it was her own cultivation that was ignored by her. In this life, Lu Yueqing can cultivate Qi wholeheartedly, and the speed of cultivation will naturally be faster. Boy Su, come over here. The two were walking when a rough voice suddenly came from the side. Su Mu turned his head and saw that it was Lu Gaotian with a straight face. Father, why are you calling brother Little Mu? Lu Yueqing took Su Mu's arm and looked at his father worriedly. Before Su Mu was enlightened, the father and daughter had quarreled many times over his affairs. So seeing Lu Gaotian calling for Su Mu to go over, Lu Yueqing couldn't help but be a little worried. Don't worry, Lu Dutong called me just to chat, you wait for me here for a while. Without waiting for Lu Gaotian to answer, 
Su Mu calmed Lu Yueqing first, and then strode towards Lu Gaotian. Seeing this, Lu Gaotian's face looked better. Afterwards, the two walked side by side and walked into the tent together. Su Mu originally wanted to find an opportunity to tell Lu Gaotian something. At this time, Lu Gaotian took the initiative to come to him, and he naturally would not refuse. Little Su, what's the matter with your martial arts cultivation? Lu Gaotian frowned and asked Su Mu. The process of Su Mu and Daniel's fight was all watched by Lu Gaotian. He was even more shocked than those ordinary soldiers. Because Lu Gaotian is more powerful and has a higher vision. He could see that Su Mu's martial arts were extremely high, and he didn't use all his strength. This kid has only been enlightened for three months. Where did such a high martial arts cultivation come from? Wouldn't it be some kind of monster? Su Mu had long known that he would ask such a question, and calmly said a set of remarks that he had prepared a long time ago. In your eyes, I've been stupid for seventeen years. Actually, for the past seventeen years, my consciousness has been trapped in a strange space. In a dream, an immortal taught me martial arts. That's why, after I get enlightened, I will accumulate a lot of money. Su Mu made up a statement. Because such a person who is stupid first and then talented has really appeared. There are warriors and chi refiners, and there are even scholars. However, Su Mu added a dream fairy setting. It's actually like this. I thought it was just a legend, but I didn't expect it to be true. Lu Gaotian nodded slightly, but his face was still tense, and he believed it a little bit. After thinking for a moment, he asked again. Then where is your current martial arts cultivation base? Complete body refinement, first class great perfection. Saying that, Su Mu shook his blood, revealing his own cultivation. What? You. You have already cultivated to the first class great perfection. Lu Gaotian was stunned, his voice trembling. How long has it been? Three months. Lu Gaotian is also in the realm of first class great perfection, but how long has he been cultivating? Thirty years. Thirty years. Lu Gaotian couldn't help but feel extremely bitter when he thought that he had been overtaken by Su Mu in three months after his thirty years of ascetic cultivation. However, in addition to being bitter, he was relieved to Su Mu a lot. If Su Mu had bad thoughts in his heart, he would not confess to him directly. An overlooked first-class warrior with enormous destructive power. Su Mu's actions basically showed that he was not malicious. After thinking for a while, Lu Gaotian asked tentatively. What do you think? How about this girl Yuqing? Lu Gaotian knew that his girl had always liked this silly boy. Now the stupid boy is not stupid, and suddenly he has become a top genius, so he has to like it even more. But Lu Gaotian didn't know what Su Mu meant. A genius like him will be popular wherever he goes, and can he still like his own girl? Lu Gaotian was a little worried. But after hearing this, Su Mu did not hesitate at all, and immediately said. Yue Qing is a good girl. If Lu Dutong doesn't dislike me, I want to marry her tomorrow. Next year, some of the things in Su Mu's plan should already be done. At that time, it was time to marry Lu Yue Qing. Okay. I wrote down what you said. But if you want to marry my girl, you have to behave well and don't let me down. Lu Gaotian nodded, satisfied with Su Mu's answer. Su Mu suddenly enlightened and became a genius. Naturally, there is no need to say more about his talent and potential. But Lu Gaotian wanted to take another look at his character. Half a year is enough. According to Lu Gaotian's thoughts, the conversation between the two ended here. But Su Mu has another important thing to tell Lu Gaotian. Lu Dutong, did the above ask you to send a team of 100 people to carry out the task of suppressing bandits some time ago, but no one came back? Huh? How did you know? Lu Gaotian asked with some doubts. This made him angry for a long time, and he almost quarreled with his superiors. But only Lu Gaotian knew about it. Except for him, no one else in the battalion knew what the hundred people were doing. How did Su Mu know the details? The immortal in my dream not only taught me martial arts, but also predicted the future to me. He said. 
Through the mouth of the immortal in the dream, Su Mu told Lu Gao Tian that the king of Biling used his soldiers to refine the corpse. Why didn't the previous Su Mu do this? The first is that the situation has not yet been figured out. The second is lack of strength. The third is not enough time. This life is completely different. First of all, Su Mu has more time, and he is sure to advance to the acquired or even the innate realm within a year. The strength will be much stronger than the previous life. The most important thing is that after experiencing the previous life, Su Mu knew that King Biling was holding a sigh of relief at this time. All he can think about is the dog's life that was made by refining the scorpion and using the essence and blood of the scorpion to save his life. No matter how outrageous things happen, as long as it has nothing to do with the refining of drought, the king of Biling will not care too much. In this way, Su Mu can do something boldly without worrying about being surrounded and suppressed by the king of Biling. For example, fooling the soldiers of a few battalions, and he went up the mountain and fell to the grass. Are you, what you said is true? Su Mu's remarks made Lu Gaotian shocked and angry, and he could hardly believe his ears. But he subconsciously felt that what Su Mu said was not a lie. The annihilation of the entire army of bandit suppression has already made him very suspicious. In particular, Su Mu also said, if there is no other intervention. Lu Gaotian will be completely furious on the fourth time, scolding the people who came to the top and refused to carry out the task. It really seemed like something he could do. However, according to Su Mu, within a few days after he refused, he was slaughtered by the black armored cavalry, and everyone was fed zombies. Thinking of that scene, Lu Gaotian trembled with anger. As the owner of a land, as the king of Biling, how could he do such absurd things? Su Mu knew that Lu Gaotian had believed most of it, but he was not in a hurry to make Lu Gaotian believe it completely now. After all, it was so outrageous that it was unbelievable. Lu Dutong, you don't have to rush to a conclusion. About two months later, you will be asked to send a team of 100 people, and then the name of the mission will go to feed the zombies. At that point, we can sneak in or follow behind. Seeing is believing, the truth will always come out. Hearing this, Lu Gaotian clenched his fists tightly and the veins on the back of his hands burst out. Two months. Is that what the fairy in the dream told you? Yes. Okay. Then I'll wait for two months. Lu Gaotian gritted his teeth, his face full of anger. He is a general who loves his soldiers very much. He couldn't imagine that King Biling would actually feed the zombies with these soldiers who worked for him. How crazy is this? Seeing Lu Gaotian so angry, Su Mu didn't say anything and left silently. When Zhuangjiaki pulls people to feed the zombies, it will be the beginning of Su Mu's first big operation. Time flies, two months have passed in a flash. In these two months, Su Mu has mainly done three things. The first is to practice martial arts. After finishing his body training, he spent nearly three months to stabilize his foundation, and then cultivated his astral chi. In other words, Su Mu is already an acquired martial artist at this time. This is the first time he has stepped into the ranks of the day after tomorrow, which is a small improvement. When Su Mu told Lu Gaotian the news, his expression was very complicated. There is relief, there is pain, and there is anger. Su Mu's strength has surpassed him, but his actions have not changed in the slightest. This is enough to show that Su Mu is a reliable person. And his monster-like talent made the previous dream fairy more and more credible. That is to say, it is very likely that King Biling is really refining corpses with soldiers. This made Lu Gaotian's mood extremely complicated. Now for the second thing. During this time, Su Mu spent half an hour every afternoon to teach martial arts to the soldiers in the battalion. Su Mu is extremely talented in martial arts and has lived for several lifetimes. His understanding of martial arts is simply the difference between the clouds and mud from the big-headed soldiers of these third-rate warriors. Even a first-class warrior like Lu Gaotian is far inferior to him. Su Mu casually taught some things, and it was enough for the soldiers to digest them for a long time. After two months of teaching, the strength of the soldiers in Lu Gaotian's camp has made a huge leap. Among them, 
Daniel and Ahu have made the greatest progress. These two people have advanced to second-rate warriors. This caused Daniel and Ahu to worship Su Mu and shouted Brother Mu one by one. They only hate that they are not Lu Yuqing, otherwise they can stick to Su Mu every day. If Su Mu knew that Daniel and Ahu had this idea, he would have eliminated them. In short, after two months, Su Mu's prestige at the bottom of the barracks has reached a very high level. Respected by almost everyone. The third thing is related to Lu Yuqing. During this time, the relationship between Su Mu and Lu Yuqing continued to heat up, and sometimes they would do some shameful things in the deserted grove. It just hasn't broken through the last step yet. Of course, that's not the point. The point is that with the improvement of Lu Liqing's cultivation, Su Mu began to teach her the corpse refining technique one by one. In the last life, Lu Liqing was so obsessed with corpse refining that he delayed his own practice. Although he knew it was his own fault, Su Mu taught her the art of corpse refinement a little late for the sake of insurance. Lu Yuqing didn't know why Su Mu taught himself such strange things. But as long as it was taught by Su Mu, she would study hard. In this stable situation, Lu Yuqing's learning speed was faster than in the previous life. If things go on like this, maybe he can become a powerful qi refiner. Not only can he help Su Mu in corpse refining, but he can even help him in battle. But if you want to go further, you still need a good teacher. Such as Zishan and King Suzi. Some of the things that Su Mu memorized by rote were not enough to make Lu Yuqing a powerful qi refiner. One day two months later, Su Mu finished his training and was going to call Ahu and Daniel after returning to the military camp. As soon as he arrived at the barracks, Lu Gaotian sent someone to call him over. As soon as he entered the camp, Su Mu saw that Lu Gaotian's face was extremely gloomy, as if he was trying his best to suppress his anger. Seeing Su Mu's arrival, he gritted his teeth and said. You're right, the top is looking for me again, and let me send another 100-person team to carry out that life-threatening mission. The time. Exactly two months. At this point, Lu Gaotian basically completely trusted Su Mu, but this also made him even more angry. In comparison, Su Mu looked very calm, he said to Lu Gaotian. If that's the case, then we'll proceed as planned. Lu Gaotian agreed. The two acted according to the previously discussed plan. Early the next morning, a team of 100 people had assembled, led by Daniel. After advancing into a second-rate martial artist, he successfully became a centurion but the Daniel frequently looked back at the queue, his expression a little timid. It doesn't look like the leader of a team, but more like a little brother who leads a horse. Go back and break your leg. In the queue, Suddenly there was a calm voice with a trace of murderous intent. Hearing this, Daniel shrank his neck in fright, and quickly turned his head away, daring not to look around. After half an hour, Daniel led the team to the designated location. In addition to them, there are also 400-person squads from several nearby military camps. They were led by 50 mysterious armored cavalry. The difference is that this time, there is a Taoist priest in the black armor. This made Su Mu, who was hiding in the queue, frown slightly, but he was not too worried. Those who were sent to perform such a task would definitely not be an expert. It should be the middle and lower level qi refiners in Xuanjin sect. After everyone arrived, 50 Xuanjia rode ahead and led the way, leading 500 people into the deep forest. Su Mu knew in his heart that he was going to take them to the village full of zombies and use them to feed the zombies. Only this time, their plans are afraid to fail. At the same time, Lu Gaotian followed behind them with the other four battalions. Lu Yuqing is also among them. Without the qi suppressing talisman she refined, they would not be able to follow the black armor, and they would be discovered if they got closer. As soon as the qi suppression talisman is posted, there will be no such troubles. The truth is about to be put in front of them. Two groups of people marched back and forth, and this walk was a whole day. It wasn't until dusk that the black armored cavalry brought the 500 soldiers to the front of the zombie village. The bandits are hiding in the village ahead. Your mission is to go in and destroy them. Go. The leader of the Xian Jiechi looked at Su Mu and the others coldly and issued an order. 
Hearing this, the centurions of the other four teams were a little puzzled. This village is extremely desolate, obviously abandoned for a long time, where does it look like someone lives? What kind of bandit would hide in such a place? Almost dead. Although there were doubts in their hearts, the four centurions had no intention of disobeying their orders, and after taking orders, they walked in with their soldiers. Daniel glanced at Su Mu without a trace, Su Mu nodded slightly, and he followed into the zombie village. After entering the village, five hundred soldiers rummaged around, but could not find half of them. This made them even more confused. What kind of bandits are there in this village? I can't even see a single cockroach old book. At the same time, the sun sets and night falls. Jingle bell jingle bell. After the night fell, a strange bell rang suddenly outside the village. When everyone looked back, they saw the Taoist priest protected by the black armor in the middle, chanting a mantra and shaking a simple copper bell. Under the control of the Taoist priest, the soil of this dilapidated village began to churn. One after another, corpses exuding a rotting aura emerged from the ground and appeared in front of everyone. It was the zombie that King Biling ordered to raise. When the soldiers in the village were shocked, the hundreds of zombies had already surrounded them. Most of them are black zombies with black bodies and sharp teeth and claws. There are even some, some corpse hairs have grown on the corpses, and they are evolving in the direction of Harry. This destroys the deserted village, there are no bandits, only zombies. It's a zombie village. The sudden change made these 500 soldiers who were tricked into the zombie village pale in shock. Under the control of the Taoist bell, these zombies moved and eliminated the soldiers. When the tragedy was about to happen, a melodious flute sound suddenly came from a distance. As soon as the flute sounded, the zombies with their teeth and claws suddenly stopped in place and did not move at all. Everyone turned to look. I saw twenty or thirty people coming from a distance. It was one of the little girls who played the flute. This group of people is Lu Gao Tian and his leaders, as well as some confidants. Lu Gao Tian has a good relationship with the other four great leaders. He set up a banquet, called the four of them, and then told them all about King Biling's corpse refining. At the beginning, these four great commanders did not believe it. This thing is crazy. The first reaction of any reasonable person upon hearing this is disbelief. But Lu Gao Tian has always been prudent, so how could he make up such rumors about beheading or even killing the Nine Clan? So, under Lu Gaotian's persuasion, these great commanders decided to come and have a look with him. Even if Lu Gaotian said a lie, there would be no loss. As a result, I saw this scene. Not only the four commanders, Lu Gaotian was also shocked. Believing is one thing, seeing with your own eyes is one thing. When I saw hundreds of zombies surrounded the 500 soldiers, ready to eliminate. Lu Gaotian's heart was completely cold. What kind of beast is he loyal to? To actually do such a thing. Lu Gaotian felt heartbroken and furious at the thought that 100 good men under his command had been tricked into feeding zombies here. The other four commanders, like Lu Gaotian, were shocked and angry. It was almost impossible to accept this cruel reality for a while. But the most important thing now is to get rid of the trouble in front of you. Ha! Huh. Where's the little girl who dares to compete with Taoist and me in corpse training? After the zombie stopped, the Taoist priest in the black armor was stunned for a moment, and then sneered disdainfully. The two major chirifying sects in Jizhou, Tianyi sect favors the right way, and Xuanzhen sect favors the left way. Corpse refining is one of the supernatural powers of Zhuanzhenmen. Although this Taoist priest is only a small role in Xuanzhen sect, he does not believe that a yellow-haired girl who just comes here can surpass him in corpse refining. What's more, he is the controller of these zombies. If an outsider wants to his control over these zombies, not only is corpse refining better than him, but his cultivation is even higher. Just this little girl, is it possible? Thinking of this, the Taoist priest shook the copper bell faster. For a time, copper bells and flutes played in unison. Lu Yuqing and the Taoist priest fought each other for control of the zombies in the village. Due to the inability to distinguish winners and losers in a short period of time, the zombies in the village were twitching in place, looking a little happy. 
At the same time, Su Mu also acted. Everyone, these black armored riders want to use us to feed the zombies. If there is no reinforcements, we are already dead. And it died tragically in the mouth of a zombie, and was sucked out of blood. Su Mu's two words aroused anger in the hearts of everyone. They never thought that the so-called mission was to let them feed the zombies. What else is there to say? Eliminate. Eliminate all these mysterious knights. Daniel followed with a loud roar, causing a response. Yes. Killing those dog days of black armor, actually want to feed the zombies. His grandmas. We treat them as peaks and they treat us as livestock. Eliminate them, eliminate them. In the excitement of the crowd, Su Mu took the lead to eliminate the black armor outside the village. At this moment, the zombie stood still, like a wooden stake. Su Mu ignored these zombies and easily let go. Seeing this, the other soldiers also bolstered their courage, followed behind Su Mu to avoid the zombies, and eliminated the Zwanjiaki together. Five hundred angry soldiers rushed towards the fifty black armored cavalry like tigers descending the mountain. Even if the black armored cavalry were all elite and equipped far more than ordinary soldiers, they couldn't help but panic at this time. Things are completely out of their control. Seeing that Su Mu and others were about to eliminate, the Xuanjia cavalry could only form a formation and prepare to fight. But then, something worse happened. He only heard a scream, and the copper bell in the Taoist priest's hand suddenly exploded, breaking his entire arm. While screaming, the Taoist shouted in disbelief. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. How can this little yellow-haired girl's Taoism be deeper than mine? I don't believe it, ah ah ah. The Taoist priest's bun was broken, and he looked crazy. Obviously damaged. For qi cultivators, the damage to the heart of the Tao is a hundred times more serious than the damage to the body. Even if this Taoist priest can survive, it is basically abolished. But he doesn't have to worry about this, because today is his death. Lu Yuqin successfully grabbed the control of those zombies, and then manipulated them to follow Su Mu to eliminate the Xian Jiechi together. Seeing the zombies attack, the black armored cavalry couldn't help being shaken by the army, and everyone's face was full of fear. These black armored cavalry participated in the whole process of refining the corpse. They know better than anyone how ferocious these zombies are. Fifty profound armored riders could not stop them at all. If there is no retreat, the final outcome is to be eliminated and drained of blood. Thinking of this, a few black armored riders were shaken and fled away from the team. Want to run away? Die for me. Seeing this, Su Mu snorted coldly, and the speed of the attack was even faster. I saw him jumping high and throwing a punch when he was several dozen feet apart. In an instant, a huge fist condensed from Astral Chi appeared, smashing towards the center of the black armored cavalry formation like a meteorite. With a loud noise, more than a dozen people who were beaten by the black armored cavalry turned over. Several people in the center were even smashed into minced meat. Even the armor of the first class can't protect them in the slightest. Gang, Gang Chi. This scene made everyone present dumbfounded. Who would have thought that this young boy would be an acquired martial artist? What kind of talent is this? Fortunately, they didn't know that it took only a few months for Su Mu to cultivate to the current state, otherwise they would lose the confidence to practice martial arts in the future. After killing more than a dozen black armored cavalry with one punch, Su Mu went straight to the leader of the black armored cavalry without any pause. The ordinary black armored cavalry is a second-rate martial artist, and the small leader is a first-rate martial artist. He was not in the center just now, and his reaction was fairly quick. The first time he abandoned his horse and fled, he barely managed to escape. But as long as he is targeted by Su Mu, where is there any chance of life? Before escaping a few steps, Su Mu came to this little black armored leader and shattered most of his bones with one punch. The man collapsed to the ground like mud, blood dripping from his mouth. Su Mu did not eliminate him directly, but raised him high and asked loudly in front of everyone. Explain everything you know, and I may be able to spare your life. Don't eliminate me, don't eliminate me. It's none of my business. It's all the boss's idea, 
and we all follow orders. King Byling ordered me to wait. The leader of the Black Armor begged for mercy loudly, and told everything he knew. After he finished speaking, all the soldiers fell silent, each looking uglier than the other. I saw it with my own eyes, now I hear it with my own ears. The facts were clearly laid out in front of them. But, this fact is too cruel. It was so cruel that they couldn't accept it for a while. Forgive your life, the hero spare your life. I have already said what I know. Forgive. Sumu didn't listen to the nonsense of this little leader of the black armor. The palm of the hand squeezed his neck with force, and then threw his corpse into the zombie swarm. This is called waste utilization. The next thing, it becomes simple. With zombies as the main force, besieged the remaining black armored knights. For those who fled quickly, Sumu personally took action, chasing after them and sending them to meet their little boss. In less than a quarter of an hour, the fifty profound armored cavalry were all destroyed. The Taoist priest of Xuanzhen sect was also slapped to death by Su Mu. By the way, he touched a corpse and gave everything he found to Lu Yuqin. So far, this trip to the zombie village is over. But for Lu Gaotian and the others, the predicament has just begun. Their fate has taken a huge turning point at this moment. Old Lu, what should we, what should we do now? After killing the enemy in front of him, including the four commanders, all the soldiers fell into confusion and fear. The ones they eliminated were the personal soldiers of King Biling. The anger of King Biling is not something that these two or three thousand people can bear. As for the story of King Biling's refining the corpse with his soldiers, he turned against other soldiers. That can only exist in the imagination. Who would believe such a thing if he hadn't seen it with his own eyes and heard it with his own ears? Under everyone's attention, Lu Gaotian turned his attention to Su Mu. The others followed him and looked at Su Mu. You might as well ask him. All of these plans were made by him, and he also discovered the corpse refining of King Biling. Speaking of which, Su Mu is our savior. Hearing Lu Gaotian's words, all the soldiers showed incredible expressions. They did not expect that this young man is not only powerful, but also the planner of all this. What kind of person is he? Su Mu met the eyes of everyone and said lightly. I've already figured out a way out for you all. What do you guys think, what do you think about turning grass into a bandit and gathering in the mountains and forests? When these words came out, everyone was dumbfounded. This little brother, you're not kidding, right? We, the king of Biling, swept us down with a single order. A great commander said in a trembling voice. Several others also nodded in agreement. In the last life, Su Mu thought the same as theirs, and felt that doing so was courting death. But after knowing the situation of King Biling, he completely changed his mind. Since everyone thinks this idea is not good, there is another way. That is, everyone will stay where they are, waiting for King Biling to catch you and feed them to the zombies. There are only these two paths, you can choose by yourself. Su Mu's calm voice entered the ears of everyone present, making their faces even more ugly. Some have even begun to despair. In the current situation, isn't the word death both horizontally and vertically? When everyone was desperate, Su Mu smiled and gave a glimmer of hope at the right time. Actually, the situation is not as bad as you think. King Biling may not have the mind to take care of us, he is very busy now. Oh. What's the matter with this? Little brother, hurry up and explain to us. Is such that. That night, the commanders of the five military camps gathered together to discuss for a long time. In the end, they made a decision fall the grass into a bandit and gather in the mountains and forests. At Su Mu's insistence, Lu Gaotian was elected as the leader. He didn't really want to rebel, he just wanted to use these soldiers to do something and save their lives, by the way. The position of the leader means nothing to Su Mu. Besides, he plans to marry Lu Yuqing soon. My father-in-law, what else is there to divide each other? That night, more than 3,000 people in five camps defected at the same time. They brought their family members and found a steep mountain and settled down there. In the following days, under the arrangement of Su Mu, 
everyone robbed a lot of baggage and hoarded a lot of food and supplies. It also includes some corpse refining materials needed for hematoxylin. If corpse raising is carried out again in this life, Lu Yuexin will not have to search for materials everywhere to make corpse raising liquid. All have been prepared in advance. The defection of the five military camps and the looting of military assets caused an uproar in Jizhou. Everyone believed that King Biling would descend the wrath of thunder and destroy these rebel soldiers. But the strange thing is that in the past few months, apart from posting some bounty notices, the King of Biling did not act. This strange reaction left everyone scratching their heads. Only the people from the 5th Battalion knew that what Su Mu said was true. King Biling was so busy refining corpses that he had no time to take care of them. This time, the generals felt a lot more at ease. The cottage has entered a stage of rapid development. In a flash, March has passed. One day, in a restaurant in a certain city in Jizhou, a Taoist man wearing a purple Taoist robe came. This Taoist has a sense of immortal style, and seems to be an expert. It's just that his face was a little gloomy at this time, as if something troubled him. After entering the restaurant, Taoist Zipeo glanced, and his eyes quickly locked on a table in the corner of the second floor. At this table, a young man and a woman are sitting. Handsome men and beautiful women, some eye-catching. But what deserves his attention more is a peach blossom on the table. This is the code they said earlier. The purple-robed Taoist walked up to the young man and woman, cast a mute spell to prevent others from hearing their conversation, and then said coldly, dot. Young man, is that what you want to see me? This Sipeo Taoist is not someone else, but Zishan. It was said that yesterday, a man approached him and asked if he was a Taoist from Zishan. After getting a positive answer, he handed a note to Zishan and said. My eldest brother wants to see you. He said that if you have read the words on the note, you will go to see him. This strange thing made Taoist Zishan a little confused. But after opening the note, his complexion changed drastically. There are only eight characters on it. One person's strength is difficult to bring down drought. Those eight words mean nothing to other people. But it broke the secrets of Taoist Zishan deep in his heart. It is also a plan he is preparing to implement. This gave Zishan Taoist a feeling of being seen through. Later, the man told Taoist Zishan. At noon tomorrow in Chunyang building, where the peach blossoms are placed on the table, it will be his eldest brother. After that, the man left. Taoist Zishan originally wanted to follow him with a spell to see who was doing the trick. But after thinking for a while, he gave up on this decision. Zishan doesn't know what the mastermind behind this is, and rashly testing it may not be a good choice. It's better to know when we see you tomorrow. So, there is this scene today. 71. Taoist Zishan originally thought that the person behind the scenes would be a powerful person. As a result, when I looked at it today, I found that it was just a young hairy boy. Judging from his chi and blood, he should be a powerful warrior, but he still doesn't care about him. However, Lu Yuqing next to Su Mu made Taoist Zishan take a second look. At the age of 10 years, this little girl has abundant spiritual energy and condensed energy, and has achieved small achievements in the way of refining qi. I don't know whose apprentice this is, I'm afraid there will be some achievements in the future. Could it be that her master was the one behind the scenes? With that in mind, Taoist Zishan sat opposite Su Mu and looked at him with burning eyes. Su Mu ignored the pressure exerted by Daoist Zishan, poured a cup of tea in a hurry, handed it to him, and chatted along the way. Yes, I am looking for you. As for the reason. I just don't want to give my life to save you again. Hearing this, Taoist Zishan frowned slightly and asked dissatisfiedly. Don't want to give up my life to save me again? You and I don't know each other, how have you ever saved me? This kind of life-saving grace can't be afforded to the poor. Su Mu smiled and said. Of course you don't remember the reincarnation of the last life. But if you continue to act according to the original plan, if I don't save you, you will die. And it's a white death, and it won't hurt the drought in the slightest. After you died, the drought was born, and the drought in Jizhou for three years resulted in countless casualties. Tell me, is this what you want to see? If it is, 
you can go now, we have nothing to talk about. If you want to change your destiny, change your future, sit down and listen to me. After Su Mu's remarks, Taoist Zishan frowned. What Su Mu said about the last reincarnation and change of fate were all too mysterious. If it was singled out, Taoist Zishan would never believe it. But there are some key messages in his words. For example, the matter of the drought should only be known by the personal guards around King Biling and the high-level officials of their Xuanzhen sect. Where did this little boy find out about this? More importantly, he actually knew that Daoist Zishan was planning to destroy the drought. This idea, Zishan Taoist has never told anyone. Could it be? That someone can really see through what other people are thinking, or can see through the long river of time? Or, is there really endless reincarnation? Taoist Zishan couldn't figure it out. He decided to sit down and listen to what Su Mu had to say. Seeing this, Su Mu secretly laughed. To deal with different people, use different means. In this life, Su Mu continued to make arrangements. And Daoist Zishan is the most important part of it. It is directly related to whether Su Mu can steal the origin of the scorpion and become a powerful corpse king. So after the cottage was stabilized, Su Mu dispatched many people to search for Taoist Zishan near Gui Tu Mountain. After several months of searching, he was finally found. There is also today's meeting. The next thing is simple. Su Mu recounted everything they had experienced together in the last life, from beginning to end. The Taoist Zishan attacked the scorpion with a sword array, and then escaped with a surrogate talisman. The two meet on the way to escape, and then run away together. Use people to make talismans, incarnate into golden armored warriors, and successfully repel the martial arts master who chased them. Died one after another, before accepting Lu Yuqing as a disciple. Every time he said something, the shock on Zishan Taoist's face grew stronger. After Su Mu finished speaking, his expression was dull and he didn't speak for a long time. The Taoist Zishan in Su Mu's story has exactly the same temperament as his, and his actions correspond to his plans. Is it true that people's life will be reincarnated countless times? Taoist Zishan muttered to himself, unable to calm down for a while. In addition to cultivating longevity, qi cultivators will also explore the profound meaning of heaven and earth. This is also a practice. Su Mu's remarks shocked Zishan Dao's heart. While confused, he seemed to realize something vaguely. This feeling is unclear and unclear. It is like looking at flowers in the fog, without the true meaning. Su Mu didn't bother Daoist Zishan, he ate the food on his own, leaving him enough time to digest these unbelievable information. After about a quarter of an hour, Taoist Zishan breathed a sigh of relief, and his expression finally returned to normal. If what you said is true, then you came to me in this life and told me this again, what do you want me to help you with? Zishan Taoist has cultivated to the realm of three flowers gathering places and one lack of five qi. It is the top five existences in the entire Xuanzhen sect. Such a person is naturally not stupid. He felt that Su Mu's words had at least a 90% probability to be true. And guessed that Su Mu had something important to ask for, so he went to him and told him this. Hearing this, Su Mu, who was full of food and drink, wiped her mouth and said her request candidly. Yes, I do have something to ask for. I want to ask you to help me put a talisman on by Ji's corpse, so that it can weaken her strength after incarnation. Besides, you'd better start early, for two reasons. One is that it's not easy for her to do anything again after she has transformed into a scorpion. Second, you can escape from Guetu Mountain as soon as you get it done, so you won't have any accidents. The neighbor symbol is there, but how to stick it on the scorpion is a big problem. Before Bai Ji incarnates as a scorpion, it is a fierce corpse, and there is the possibility of demonization at any time. The bronze alien coffin and a large amount of Yin wood were barely able to suppress her. Su Mu was incapable of pasting the neighbor symbol. However, Taoist Zishan has this ability. It was Zuan's henman who dug out the bronze alien coffin, and then refined Baiji's body into a dry scorpion. Taoist Zishan can absolutely plant a spell on the body of Baiji without being discovered. 
Once this matter is completed, after Baiji incarnates into a dry scorpion, Su Mu will be able to activate the talent of assimilation. So as to absorb the origin of her drought, and assimilate the part of being a human to her. After coming and going, not only will Su Mu become stronger, but also the strength of the dry scorpion will weaken. It will be much easier to deal with. What he said to Taoist Zishan was not made up. After listening, Taoist Zishan looked surprised, obviously surprised by Su Mu's request. Putting a talisman on Baiji's body can weaken her strength after incarnating as a scorpion? What talisman has such an effect, and it can suppress the scorpion? This is it. Su Mu took out a neighbor talisman and handed it to Taoist Zishan. Two adjacent symbols are a set, and this is one of them. After seeing the sign of neighbors, Taoist Zishan turned black. Do you think of me as a fool? When will the neighbor talisman weaken the strength of the dry scorpion? Although this thing is quite difficult to refine, it is not very useful, let alone used to deal with drought. Put this thing on by Ji's body, do you want to become a Taoist companion with her? The more Taoist Zishan said, the more annoyed he became. Seeing this, Su Mu quickly explained. Trust me, my purpose is the same as yours, it is to eliminate drought. Beijing Fu can't directly weaken the strength of the dry scorpion, this is just the first step. Even if Daoist Zishan had believed Su Mu's previous rhetoric, it was still not that easy to ask him to help. After all, unlike the last life, the two have experienced life and death together. Su Mu was flickering. No, he persuaded him for half an hour, and finally moved Daoist Zishan. Let him believe that as long as the neighbor talisman is attached to Baiji's corpse, it can weaken her incarnation strength. Pin Dao trust you for once. Saying that, Taoist Zishan pinched the adjacent talisman, and a blue fire burst out from his fingertips, wrapping the entire talisman paper. As the blue fire burned, the proximity symbol turned into a drop of translucent liquid. Zishan Taoist turned over, and the drop of liquid disappeared. A piece of talisman paper sticking to Bai Ji's body is too conspicuous, I will turn it into a water talisman. When the time comes, they will be spread out and injected into different parts. In this way, let alone Xian Jinzi, even if Bai Ji is transformed into a dry scorpion, he will not be aware of it. In addition, I eliminated the sensing ability of this adjacent symbol to prevent the drought from sensing your breath through it. Thank you. Hearing this, Su Mu was overjoyed and solemnly thanked him. No need to thank you, I hope the drought will really be weakened because of this. Otherwise. Daoist Zishan didn't say anything more, but his eyes became cold. Don't worry, if it doesn't work, I can give you this life. Su Mu patted his chest with a serious look. Anyway, the most worthless thing for him is his life. Seeing this, Taoist Zishan nodded slightly, then got up and planned to leave. But as soon as he got up, he was stopped by Su Mu. Wait. Don't you call your apprentice from the last reincarnation? Saying that, Su Mu pointed to Lu Yuqing. This. Okay, that Pindao will give her some pointers. Taoist Zishan hesitated for a moment, then agreed. It was learned that Lu Yuqing did not have a master, and he practiced entirely by Su Mu's rote memorization of some exercises and Taoism, and he practiced for less than a year. Daoist Zishan knew that she was definitely a genius in deciding the way of qi refining. In order to preach, Taoist Zishan deliberately performed a Taoist technique, seeing that they were isolated from the outside world. This feeling, as if the three of them entered a small private world without any interference. Daoist Zishan preached for five hours in one breath in this small world. The same is to teach disciples, to teach genius is to enjoy, to teach stupid is to torture. Seeing Taoist Zishan's expression, he knew that he was in a good mood. As a disciple, Lu Luqing listened with relish. He had an epiphany three times in five hours, and his strength soared. The mistakes made in the previous practice were also corrected one by one by Taoist Zishan. As for Su Mu. He didn't understand at all. The more I listened, the more sleepy I became, and finally I just lay on Lu Yueqing's lap and fell asleep with her arms around her slender waist. If it weren't for Lu Yueqing not being affected by this, but his comprehension greatly increased, Taoist Zishan would really like to kick Su Mu out. 
However, this also aroused the reflection of Taoist Zishan. Could it be that the love between men and women can help cultivation? Could it be that his single and ascetic path was wrong? This idea passed by in a flash, and was immediately thrown away by Taoist Zishan. If you think about it any more, I'm just afraid that your mind will be unstable. After parting with Taoist Zishan, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing returned to the cottage and continued to practice hard. In addition to practicing, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing have to be gentle every day. In addition, Su Mu had to take some time to teach martial arts in the cottage. After the cottage was established, he taught the spiritual illumination. Especially for those great leaders who are first-class warriors, Su Mu also specially opened a small stove to give some advice. There are two people who successfully condensed the astral chi and advanced to the day after tomorrow. One of them was grateful to Su Mu. If it weren't for Su Mu's young age, he would have wanted to recognize him as a godfather. Words like I've been wandering for half my life, I only wish I didn't meet a master were almost slipping to the lips. As for the other person, it was the owner of the cottage, Su Mu's prospective father-in-law, Lu Gao Tian. During the recent period, Lu Gao chased Su Mu every day and asked when he would marry Lu Yuqing. After betraying the army, even if King Bailing did not arrest them vigorously, Lu Gao Tian was still very uneasy in his heart. As the lord of the two states, King Bailing is frantically refining corpses. How can this be reassuring? Lu Gao Tian had an idea, that is, let Su Mu and Lu Yuqing get married as soon as possible, and then find a way to send them to the prosperous south of the Yangtze River, away from the bitter cold of Jizhou. However, both Su Mu and Lu Yuqing have their own ideas and will not leave here at will. You want to ask Lu Yuqing what he thinks? Su Mu's thoughts were her thoughts. Lu Yuqing has always been so simple and pure. Early this morning, a young man and woman came to the top of a steep mountain. The man was full of energy and blood, and his body was as light as a swallow, and he landed firmly on the top of the mountain after a few vertical jumps. As for that beautiful woman, the means are even more miraculous. She stepped on a thousand paper cranes ten feet long and flew up. When F.A. Ju pinched it after landing, the thousand paper cranes shrunk by a hundred times, and she was put into her sleeve. This couple is Su Mu and Lu Yuqing. This is the place where they usually practice, and it is also a small private world where the two of them are alone. But today, Su Mu did not start practicing directly, but solemnly walked in front of Lu Yuqing and put both hands on her shoulders. Seeing this, Lu Yuqing's face turned red, he lowered his head and twisted his clothes shyly with his fingers, and said shyly. Brother Mu, wasn't it already at the foot of the mountain just now? Why do you want to? Hearing this, Su Mu couldn't help feeling a little embarrassed. What a pure girl. Now that he has taken it down, he can drive by himself, and the speed of the car is quite fast. After a dry cough, Su Mu turns serious. Yu Qing, didn't you keep asking me how you were in your last life? I'll tell you now. In the last life, I died. You practiced the art of raising corpses for me, and carried a pair of locust wood coffins all over Jizhou. Every day you hid in a dark corner and lived with the hideous and terrifying corpses. You went through countless hardships, but in the end. We still died, died together. In this life, I will still encounter those terrifying enemies, and I will still turn into a zombie. You. Are you still willing to accompany me? At this point, there are only a few months left before the birth of the scorpion. And some time ago, Su Mu had sensed the breath of Baiji's body through the neighbor symbol. It seems that Taoist Zishan has found an opportunity and planted talisman water on Baiji's corpse. At this time, as long as Su Mu activates the assimilation talent, they can assimilate each other. It's just that Baiji's corpse has not yet been transformed into a dry scorpion, and it is not time for assimilation. But this day will come sooner or later. In this life, there is a high probability that Su Mu will no longer need to be transformed into a demon after he dies, and he can absorb the origin of the dry spell alive. But he estimates that if he assimilates, he will still become a demon, which can be regarded as an alternative death. Therefore, even if he knew Lu Yueqing's intentions, Su Mu still had to confirm it in the end. Because with him, you will experience a lot of hardships. 
What Su Mu didn't expect was that after he finished saying this, Lu Yuqing became very angry. She blushed a little face, and her mouth bulged out angrily. Brother Mu, why do you ask that? Don't you know what I'm thinking? You. Don't you want me anymore? But you clearly did those things to me, I. Woohoo! As he spoke, Lu Yuqing cried aggrievedly. Seeing this, Su Mu quickly hugged her and comforted her. My fault, my fault, I shouldn't ask blindly. I understand, I understand. Like this, we will get married in three days. Hearing this, Lu Yuqing stopped crying immediately, raised Xiu Qing's lovely face, and asked him with tears in his eyes. Brother Mu, you. What are you saying is true? Of course. It's more real than gold. Just three days later, three days is a good day. Why is it a good day after three days? Because Su Mu and Lu Yuqing are getting married. So, it became a good day. After going down the mountain, Su Mu immediately proposed to Lu Gaotian and got consent. Soon, this matter spread all over the cottage. The whole cottage is filled with a festive atmosphere. Su Mu did not hold any positions in the cottage. But from the establishment to every major decision, he is behind the push. In addition, Su Mu passed on the high-level martial arts practice Shen Zhao Jing, and carefully instructed everyone in the cottage to practice martial arts. With his own strength, he raised the martial arts cultivation of the people in the cottage to a higher level. Everyone remembers the kindness of Su Mu. When Su Mu and Lu Yuqing got married, the village owner Lu Gaotian became Su Mu's father-in-law. It is already clear what the surname of this cottage is. Su Mu didn't care about that. On the day of his marriage, with an astonishing amount of alcohol, he brought down all those who tried to intoxicate him. Then he beat away everyone who was going to listen to the corner. In this way, they created a two-person world that belongs to them alone. In the wedding room, candles flicker and the atmosphere is charming. Everything is done silently. What is love? Love is a turbulent river, galloping into the ocean. Love is the rose in April, blooming in the face of summer. Love is the setting sun at dusk, light and dark intertwined. That night, Su Mu and Lu Yuqin fell in love. That night, Su Mu didn't think about reality and fantasy, all he thought about was the person in his arms. After several generations, it was the first time that Su Mu had a wife, which was a strange feeling. The next few months were the happiest time after Su Mu crossed over. The two stick together, practicing during the day and practicing at night. Both skills are constantly improving. But good times are always short-lived. Chaos, even more so. Through the neighbor talisman, Su Mu can sense that the breath of Baiji's body is changing drastically every day, and it is evolving in the direction of dryness. The day of disaster is coming. Su Mu once thought about how this dungeon should be considered a customs clearance. After thinking about it, there are only two goals. The first is the drought, and the second is the king of Biling. In this life, Su Mu intends to completely destroy these two targets. Of course, with his strength, no matter what he does, he can't eliminate these two bosses by himself. We must borrow strength, borrow the strength of Tian Yijio. In the whole of Jizhou, only Tiani sect has this strength. Su Mu had to use the Tiani sect to have the opportunity to eliminate Ganji and the king of Biling. Speaking of Tiani sect, Su Mu thought of Taoist Zishan. According to Su Mu's idea, he can leave Gui Tu Mountain after planting the proximal symbol. But Taoist Zishan didn't want to put all his hopes on others. Although Sumo said he would fail without achievement. Although Sumo says he will be eliminated by the enemy after he fails. However, Taoist Zishan still does not want to give up. He wanted to try it out and see if he could use his own strength to change his life against the sky. After persuading him several times to no avail, Sumu had no choice but to go with him. However, he secretly arranged some people to take care of him after Daoist Zishan failed that night. Two months before the birth of the dry scorpion, Su Mu finally cultivated the qi that can fill the whole body, and successfully advanced to the innate. The road of martial arts, the further you go, the harder it is to walk. 
Sumu estimates that even if he has the complete spiritual illumination, it will take a long time to cultivate into a martial arts master. No three or five years, it is impossible to handle. If other people know this idea, I am afraid that I will vomit three liters of blood on the spot. How many people can't cultivate their astral chi in their entire life and enter the realm of acquired and innate? Not to mention martial arts masters. This is a realm that countless martial arts practitioners can't even imagine. And Su Mu actually felt that the speed was too slow because it took three to five years to cultivate to a martial arts master. Shouldn't this be maddening? After advancing to innate, Su Mu no longer cultivates astral chi. He is going to die after all. He cultivated to the innate, just to use the chi to beat the body and prepare for raising the corpse. If you don't use the chi to boil the body, the strength of the corpse is not enough, and no matter how you raise the corpse, it will not evolve into a flying zombie. Not to mention the drought. For the next two months, Sumu worked hard and sharpened his body to make him even stronger. The most intuitive effect is that every night the melodious and melodious in crowing is getting louder and louder. Fortunately, after Su Mu and Lu Yuechin got married, they moved their family to the top of the towering mountain. Unless there are immortals in the sky, no one but them can hear this wonderful voice. One night two months later, Su Mu was sitting cross-legged on the top of the mountain, running the chi in his body to boil his body. Suddenly, his eyes opened, and two golden lights shot out. Time is up. Just now, Su Mu sensed that Angelica's breath had changed. She has turned into A. This means that Su Mu has turned on assimilation, so it is time to transform the corpse. 72. At night, outside Guetu Mountain. A figure in a purple robe fled in embarrassment, dropping a Taoist talisman from time to time to block the enemies behind. Although embarrassed, after some operations, the figure escaped smoothly. When it reappeared, the purple figure had already appeared in a river a dozen miles away. His upper body was exposed to the water, and his lower body disappeared, as if he had merged with the river water, it was amazing. Taoist Zishan looked at Guetu Mountain from afar, his expression extremely complicated. Actually, that kid really got it right. I prepared such a complete four elephant sword formation, it's far from enough to destroy the scorpion. If it wasn't for his premise telling me what would happen, I'd be afraid to die in Guetu Mountain today. Just, what's the use of living? The drought still hasn't been removed. Now, I can only hope that he can really weaken the strength of the dry scorpion. With this thought in mind, Daoist Zishan's body slowly sank, completely merged into the river water, and then fled into the distance. Su Mu originally dispatched some people to prepare for Daoist Zishan. But with Su Mu's reminder, Taoist Zishan made some new preparations in advance and escaped safely. I don't know what new plans this Taoist with good cultivation has after leaving Gue Tu Mountain. On the other hand, Su Mu has already activated the assimilation talent and is ready to corpse. He had already told Lu Yuqing about this, so the two of them made very good preparations. After sensing the aura of the dry scorpion, Su Mu immediately lay down in the acacia coffin that had been made in advance. Immediately afterwards, Lu Yuqing injected the first-class corpse-raising liquid into it. In this life, Lu Yuqing's Taoism was deeper and he prepared more materials. So the corpse-nourishing liquid she prepared is a grade better than the one in the previous life. The gloomy and cold corpse-raising liquid grew more and more, until it passed the top of Su Mu's head. Su Mu seemed to be silent in a whole new world, surrounded by a cold and eerie atmosphere. Only a vague, elusive, terrifying power could give him a hint of warmth. Su Mu knew that this was the original chi of the dry scorpion. He concentrated all his energy and tried desperately to steal the source of the drought through this connection. At the same time, Su Mu's own source is also being conveyed to the other party. Assimilation This talent is not a one-sided acquisition. But the process of assimilation between Su Mu and Han Yu is like Su Mu taking an iron block for gold in Han Yu's hand. The value of the two origins is completely unequal. Assimilation goes on like this, the dry scorpion will be affected very little, while the Sumo will gradually become her shape. After turning on assimilation, Su Mu's heart became slower and slower, 
and the blood flow all over his body became stationary. This is a sign of imminent death. But Su Mu was not completely dead, and only saw him in a half-dead and half-dead group, and turned on the corpse. As the skin turned white, the corpse aura on Su Mu's body became more and more intense, and it didn't look like a living person anymore. The origin of the drought is indeed extraordinary, even if there is only a trace of it, it has a great effect. After only half a day's effort, Su Mu has evolved into Baizong. He sucked up all the corpse liquid in the Kuei Mu coffin. Upon seeing this, Lu Yuqing hurriedly replenished the inventory. In this life, there are cottages, so they don't have to worry about all kinds of resources. All you need to do is to raise the corpse wholeheartedly. Su Mu's corpse is still going on. Assimilation is just a cyan talent. Its abilities are very powerful in certain situations. But the effect is a bit unsatisfactory. If the origin of the scorpion is a golden mountain, then Su Mu is digging her gold mine with a small shovel. Can dig, but only a little. However, even a very small amount of the source of the dry scorpion can provide a huge help to Su Mu. It's a question of quality, not quantity. After only five days, Su Mu successfully advanced to Heizong. He was as black as ink, as if cast iron. Those ferocious fangs and claws are even more frightening. Su Mu's state at this time is definitely the top existence in the black zombie. Ordinary black zombies only have the strength of first-class warriors. And now Su Mu is estimated to be able to eliminate the acquired martial artist. But with just this strength, how could he be satisfied? While Su Mu continued to steal the origin of the scorpion, he continued to absorb the Yin evil energy and condensed the corpse energy. At the same time that Suma was corpse, the famine in Jizhou had already begun. Most of the dry land in Jizhou is cracked, and no grass grows. A huge and incomparably dead air shrouded the sky above Jizhou. Fortunately, this disaster has not yet spread to the cottage. At this time, everyone in the cottage suddenly realized. What a wise decision Su Mu took a risk and looted a large amount of food and grass in advance. If it weren't for Su Mu's claim that he was in retreat, he would not see outsiders. It is estimated that another large group of people will come over to flatter him, and by the way, beg him to teach him some martial arts. Su Mu is already familiar with these routines of Daniel and Nahu. In the twentieth year of the apocalypse, Jizhou was famished, and people ate each other. The corpses stretched across the red earth, the souls of the dead piled up like clouds. A strong sense of death, resentment, and evil spirits drifted over Jizhou. For a time, Jizhou was full of ghosts and demons appeared frequently. Most of Jizhou fell into terror. If the cottage was not located in a remote and dangerous place, it would have been targeted by crazy hungry people long ago. Of course, Su Mu's cottage is not an ordinary cottage. With more than 3,000 elites wearing armor, even raising a flag to rebel can cause some splashes. Ordinary hungry people, who would die as many as they came, would never be able to break through the defense of the cottage. In this way, Su Mu can safely hide behind and raise the corpse, and improve rapidly. In only three months, Su Mu has successfully evolved into Mao Zong. In this life, his corpse has a higher strength and is blessed by the source of drought, and his strength is stronger than that in the previous life. However, the gap between innate warriors and martial arts masters is too great. After evolving into Mao Zong in the last life, Su Mu's strength is between the innate and the master. Although this life is stronger, it still does not reach the combat power of a martial arts master. Only the difference is smaller. If you want to compete with martial arts masters, you still have to evolve into a flying zombie. But at this level of corpse, if you want to continue, you need blood and essence. If it weren't for the support of the origin of the scorpion, it would be difficult to evolve into a hair jelly without blood essence and hematoxylin. It's time to go out. On this day, without anyone knowing, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing quietly left the cottage. With a black robe, Su Mu wrapped his body tightly without revealing a single crack. No way, Mao Zong's appearance is too scary. Even though Jizhou is now severely damaged and sparsely populated, Su Mu still pretends. It didn't matter to him anyway. 
Lu Yuqin was wearing a pure white dress, and there was no extra decoration. Face to the sky, still beautiful and breathtaking. After getting married, this little girl seems to be more and more attractive. Su Mu and Lu Yuqin walked in black and white, walking on the desolate and dead land of Jizhou. Behind them, there was a small tail far away, also wrapped tightly in a black robe. This thing is a zombie that Lu Yuqin had raised before. There are hundreds of zombies in the zombie village. With Lu Yuqin's Taoism, it is impossible to control all of them. She only picked the most powerful one to practice her hands and familiarize herself with the corpse refining technique in advance. After practicing, the black zombie that had grown some corpse hairs was transformed into a hairy zombie. And the refining is not bad, with the strength of the innate martial artist. So this time, Lu Yuqin brought this zombie with him, which is more or less a fighting force. However, in order not to let this Mao Zong affect their two-person world, Lu Yuqin left it far behind. Su Mu and Lu Yuqin walked all the way, experiencing the drastic changes in Jizhou. Su Mu's cold and strange corpse aura is quite suitable for Jizhou today. On the other hand, Lu Yuqin was full of aura and full of vitality, which was somewhat out of tune with the surrounding environment. Along the way, in addition to the starving people, they also encountered some rebels. Taking advantage of the catastrophe, these rebels burned, eliminated, looted, and committed all kinds of evil in Jizhou. In the case of lack of food, they will even feed on two-legged sheep. These chaotic soldiers do more damage than demons and demons. Every time Su Mu saw this kind of chaos, he was shot to death without exception. It's a pity that there are only one or two innate and three or five acquired, barely moistening Su Mu's throat. Others, eliminate and eliminate. After walking for about four or five days, Su Mu and Lu Yuqin arrived outside the city of Jin Men. The purpose of coming to Jin Men is very simple, wait for Wei Zhuang. What Su Mu wanted most was the blood essence of the martial arts master. This level of martial artist, the energy in blood essence is not comparable to ordinary martial artist. A hundred is less than one. More is the qualitative difference. But how can a martial arts master be so easy to eliminate? Really being targeted by the martial arts master, it is not bad that Su Mu can run smoothly. The only target he could think of was Wei Zhuang, who was severely injured by the drought. Counting the time, he should escape to Jin Men soon. After that, Wang Yuan Wei convened the heroes of Jin Men to put together a table for Wei Zhuang. However, in this life, Wei Zhuang should have no chance to harm those Jin Men heroes. First, he estimated that he did not even have the chance to enter Jin Men City this time. Second, Su Mu will take the so-called Jin Men heroes one step ahead of him. It is also good to order small desserts before a big meal. In the following days, strange things happened frequently in Jin Men City. Many bigwigs who dominated one side died tragically. And the way of death is strange, one by one has become a mummified corpse. There are rumors that most of these people do evil, provoked ghosts and gods in this chaotic world, and suffered retribution. The people in Jin Men City clapped their hands and cheered, wishing that all these cancers were dead. And those big men who were lucky enough not to die are afraid every day, for fear that it will be his turn next. Several people even escaped from Jin Men overnight without knowing where to go. In fact, Su Mu's requirements are not low. At least it must be an acquired martial artist, otherwise he would not even be interested in patronizing. Some bullies who ran rampant in the countryside escaped because their cultivation was too low. But in this chaotic world, there are countless disasters, how can one escape just by escaping? According to Su Mu, the only way to go is a majestic road. Su Mu and Lu Yuqing have been waiting for more than half a month. This night, the moon was dark, the wind was high, and the miasma filled the air. A staggering figure fled in the direction of Jin Men City. Damn it! Why are you chasing me? Can't you go after other people? Does Lao Tzu seem so easy to bully? Even zombies bully Lao Tzu. Wei Zhuang's face was pale, his breath was weak, and even his steps were a little unsteady. It was obvious that he was seriously injured. Wei Zhuang was chased and eliminated all the way by the Han, 
and the king of Biling sent reinforcements and was eliminated. At this point, he was helpless and desperate. No. I can't escape like this anymore, I have to regain my strength. Otherwise, I'll be dragged to death. It's better to fix it in this G-Men city. With this thought in mind, Wei Zhuang planned to fly in the air and sneak into G-Men city. He was so badly injured that he couldn't keep flying. Usually I can only be a free-range chicken, and only at critical moments will I use this expensive way to hurry. But Wei Zhuang was about to fly into the city when his expression changed slightly. His rich experience in rivers and lakes made him realize something was wrong before he left. Jizhou is so dry, even Jin Men, which was not so severely affected, should not have such a strong miasma. This miasma is weird. To ensure safety, Wei Zhuang picked up a stone on the ground and threw it to the sky above his head. Crack. As soon as this stone flew into the air, it was smashed by an invisible force and turned into stone foam. Vaguely, a flash of light flashed by. Not good. Someone is ambushing me. Wei Zhuang's face changed wildly, he turned his head and ran away after shouting in his heart. But the next moment, the surrounding fog rolled and became a hundred times denser in an instant, trapping Wei Zhuang in it. Immediately, a figure wearing a black robe and unable to see his face shot towards Wei Zhuang. That rolling corpse gas is extremely terrifying. 73. Zombie. Wei Zhuang's expression changed slightly, but he was not too surprised. Two years ago, he didn't care about zombies. But since the Biling King began to refine the dry scorpion, Wei Zhuang had a more in-depth understanding of this kind of ghost. What's more, he also took corpse blood pill. Today's Wei Zhuang is a half-human, half-stiff monster. So just by looking at it, he deduced that a zombie with this level of corpse aura should be a hairy zombie. In normal times, Wei Zhuang can eliminate a Mao Zhuang with one move. But now, he was seriously injured. And behind this zombie, there is definitely a behind-the-scenes mastermind. Otherwise, there is no way to explain the surrounding formations. Therefore, Wei Zhuang must take down this Mao Zone with the fastest speed and the smallest price. In the blink of an eye, Wei Zhuang had already thought of a countermeasure. He also pointed to a sword, and the qi gushing out from his body condensed into a long, translucent whip. Go! Wei Zhuang let out a low snort and stabbed the hair straight with his fingers, and the long whip of astral qi fluttered like a snake. Before Mao Zong could eliminate him, he locked his limbs, suppressing him and unable to move for a while. Taking this opportunity, Wei Zhuang jumped up and stepped on the top of Mao Zong's head. Boom! With a muffled sound, the earth cracked open. This hairy little half of the body was forcibly stepped into the solid ground. It's not over yet. Wei Zhuang didn't pause for a moment, and Ling Kong stepped out again. That action is like driving a pile. After two hits, most of Mao Zong's body sank into the ground, and half of his head was shattered. In this way, even if there is no control of the astral whip, it will not be able to break free in a short period of time. Wei Zhuang thought very clearly. This is nothing but a controlled dead thing. The real threat to him is the person behind the scenes. As long as the mastermind behind the scenes is eliminated, all problems will be solved. Give me a break. After dealing with Mao Zong, Wei Zhuang shouted angrily. I saw his whole body bursting with blood, and the invisible force swayed around like a huge wave. The dense fog that shrouded the surroundings could no longer be maintained, and the layers collapsed. This shock directly broke the mystery that trapped Wei Zhuang. However, for him who was seriously injured, the rush of blood was a lot of consumption. Fortunately, after breaking the formation, Wei Zhuang saw two figures standing several hundred meters away. One of them was a very beautiful young woman, with a pinch in her hand that seemed to be using some kind of magical power. The other was wearing a black robe, exactly the same as the stiff hair just now. Thinking about it, it was also a zombie refined by that woman. Looking at the concentration of corpse gas, it is also a stiff. After finally finding out who was behind the scenes, Wei Zhuang didn't have time to think about it, and immediately flew to eliminate her. The witch is dead. Wei Zhuang roared furiously, 
and he drew his sword and slashed at a distance of one hundred meters. In the next moment, the dazzling sword light appeared, and it crossed the distance of one hundred meters to eliminate Lu Yuqin. This is Wei Zhuang's angry knife. He was a dignified martial arts master, but he would be ambushed by a qi cultivator who practiced crooked ways. Who gave her the guts? Could it be that he Wei Zhuang was born to be bullied? It's okay to be bullied by colleagues, after all, they are all top martial arts masters. It's okay to be bullied by the drought, after all, it's a terrifying monster that is close to a natural disaster. But you, a little evil cultivator, dare to ambush me? The more Wei Zhuang thought about it, the more angry the sword light became. This faint blue sword light carried endless icy aura, sweeping everything within a hundred meters in front of Wei Zhuang. This distance was crossed by this sword light in the blink of an eye, and it seemed that the battle was about to fall on Lu Yuqin. But at this time, Wei Zhuang saw Mao Zong in the black robe beside Lu Yuqin eliminate him from the side. This scene made Wei Zhuang frown slightly, but he did not change his move. In his eyes, Lu Yuqin was the culprit. Just eliminate him and everything will be over. And a stiff attack, Wei Zhuang thought he could withstand it. The most important thing now is to eliminate the woman in the white dress. Thinking like this, Wei Zhuang didn't take care of Su Mu, but he increased the output of astral qi and wanted to eliminate Lu Yuqing with one strike. But when the terrifying sword light fell on Lu Yuqing's head, a sneer appeared on her face. This sneer made Wei Zhuang's heart startled, and he shuddered suddenly. Not right. There must be something wrong. But where is it? What went wrong? For a moment, countless chaotic thoughts flashed through Wei Zhuang's mind. But nothing has changed at this point. The next moment, the sword light fell. Lu Yueqing's body shattered. Then. It turned into confetti. Fake. Paper man. Wei Zhuang's complexion changed slightly. It was a bit bad for him who was seriously injured. Every time a knife is used, his physical condition will collapse one point. But if it is only empty, it will not let the situation collapse. As long as the next knife can eliminate the demon girl. But in the next second, Wei Zhuang's face changed wildly, and he finally knew why he felt something was wrong. When he swung the knife, Su Mu had already eliminated his side, and slapped his claws towards his waist. Wei Zhuang dealt with Lu Yuqin with all his strength and ignored Su Mu's offensive. From Wei Zhuang's point of view, he was wearing a treasured armor, and combined with his qi, it was enough to stop Mao Zong's offensive. Resist a trick, no problem. But when Su Mu's terrifying corpse claws patted his waist, Wei Zhuang's complexion changed completely. This power. This corpse aura. I've been fooled. Wei Zhuang secretly said that it was not good, but he was unable to return to the sky. The astral qi barrier he supported only lasted for less than half a second before being shattered. The power of those ferocious claws did not diminish in the slightest, but instead, wrapped in a large black corpse poisonous miasma, they continued to shoot at Wei Zhuang's waist. Kakaka. Boom. With a crisp sound, the treasure armor Wei Zhuang was wearing cracked inch by inch, and then burst open. The tsunami-like power of the mountain slanted frantically on his waist. It smashed the barrier of astral qi, smashed the treasure armor, and smashed Wei Zhuang's seriously injured body. After Su Mu's move, Wei Zhuang's body flew out like the autumn wind swept leaves, and slammed heavily on the ground. All the way blood splattered, internal organs crossflow. After landing, Wei Zhuang lay on the ground like a dead dog, only his chest heaved slightly. His round eyes were full of unwillingness. I saw a huge wound on Wei Zhuang's right waist, as if bitten by some giant beast. He kept losing a lot of flesh and blood, and most of the internal organs in his abdomen were also lost in the process of being shot flying. This fatal move sent him directly to Huang Quan Road. It was only then that Wei Zhuang knew that he had been fooled. Those two furry are not the same thing at all. The strength of the second Mao Zong is several times that of the first. The power that suddenly erupted has vaguely touched the realm of the early stage of martial arts masters. This kind of Mao Zhuang, Wei Zhuang will have to work hard to win during the victory period, 
not to mention the weak state of serious injuries. As for that woman, she was simply a bait. In order to make that Mao Zong use a fatal blow. In the dying state, Wei Zhuang finally figured out everything. But it was too late. Su Mu stretched out his hand and shook his hand, and all his blood and essence flew out. In a few seconds, he turned into a mummified corpse, no longer alive. As for the blood essence, it turned into a blood-colored ball after being swirled and condensed in the air, and was swallowed by Su Mu. This time the interception was smoother than they had imagined. Lu Yuqin was indeed the bait, but what he originally thought was just to distract Wei Zhuang from part of his attention. Never thought that Wei Zhuang would actually want to fight Xia Su Mu's full blow to eliminate Lu Yuqin. The consequence was that he was instantly eliminated by Su Mu. After harvesting a portion of the blood essence of the martial arts master, Su Mu immediately lay down in the locust wood coffin that had been prepared and started raising the corpse. In this life, Lu Yuqin finally doesn't have to work hard to carry the coffin, and Mao Zong, who has refined it, will do it for her. After Su Mu lay down in the locust coffin, Lu Yuqin searched Wei Zhuang's body according to his previous instructions. Then he manipulated Mao Zongbei's coffin and went to a very hidden place, waiting for Su Mu to come out of the coffin. Ten days later, Su Mu finished refining and woke up from the locust coffin. At this time, the corpse aura on his body was even more intense, and there were faint signs of turning into reality. But there is still a long way to go. If Su Mu wants to advance to flying freeze, there are two ways. One is to absorb the blood essence of some innate and acquired warriors, and then slowly raise the corpse. After 10 years, 20 years, or 30 or 40 years, you may naturally advance. The second is to continue to hunt down martial arts masters and absorb the blood of these martial arts masters. If it can be successfully hunted, Su Mu can evolve into a flying zombie in a very short period of time. The first method took too long, and Su Mu couldn't wait. Because in the process of waiting, there are too many variables. What Su Mu was most worried about was Proxima. The proximity symbol can link the breaths of both parties. Normally, Su Mu senses the aura of the scorpion, and the scorpion can also sense the aura of the sorghum. Daoist Zishan helped him deal with it, and cut off the induction of the drought to him. But who knows when it will fail? As long as the Proxima Centauri still exists, it is equivalent to hanging a sword of Damocles over Su Mu's head. He could fall at any time and eliminate him. In order not to be discovered by the scorpion, Su Mu deliberately did not refine the wisp of the sap of the scorpion when refining Wei Zhuang blood this time. Rather, it is buried deep within the body. Because once it is refined, Su Mu will be sensed by the drought. As for the consequences. The last life has been clearly laid out in front of him. No matter from which level you consider it, the second way is the best choice. The only question is, how to hunt down the martial arts master. On this issue, Su Mu really has no choice. He didn't even know where to go to find the second master. Martial arts masters are not Chinese cabbage. So far, in the real world plus the simulated world, he has not seen many master level holdouts. Only seen around some top dignitaries. Fortunately, there is no way out. Just when Su Mu had no clue, he found a secret letter from Wei Zhuang's belongings. It records a secret stronghold of King Biling, which seems to be doing something shady. After thinking for a while, Su Mu, who had no other direction, decided to take a look. Lu Yuqing in this life is much stronger than the previous life. In addition to the corpse refining technique, she also has some formations and magical powers, which can assist Su Mu on the side. For example, the mysterious formation that trapped Wei Zhuang just now, and the Gengjin killing formation that was placed in the sky and almost ambushed to Wei Zhuang. All are Lu Yuqing's handwriting. Their husband and wife work together, and even if they encounter a martial arts master in a normal state, there is a great probability that they will retreat. 74. After making the decision, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing hit the road again. At this time in Jizhou, the drought was even worse. It really is a thousand miles away, and the ground is starving. It is also possible from this, the strength of the dry scorpion is constantly improving. This made Su Mu's sense of crisis stronger and stronger. 
In addition, on the way to the place recorded in the secret letter, Su Mu and Lu Yueqing encountered many monsters. There are skeleton monsters, walking corpses, and some unpopular ghosts. In their eyes, these low-level demons and demons are naturally nothing. But in the eyes of ordinary people, it is a terrible existence that can take their lives. The more people die, the more demons in Jizhou. The more demons in Jizhou, the more people die. As a result, it has become a vicious circle. It is more difficult for ordinary people to survive this catastrophe than to ascend to the sky. Su Mu had personally experienced it in the first instance. Looking back on it now, it still shocked him. This further strengthens the belief that Su Mu will continue to grow stronger and continue to climb. Only by holding strength can we survive in troubled times and protect our loved ones. Vaguely, Su Mu seemed to understand the meaning of the word Dao Xian. A few days later, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing reached their destination. This is a summer resort built deep in the mountains. Not only is it concealed, but its defensive power is also very high. In the outer layer alone, Su Mu found several innate warriors patrolling back and forth. Just looking at this battle, you know that there must be some kind of secret hidden in this villa. Brother Mu, wait for me. Let me help you find out this time. Lu Yuqing stopped Su Mu who was about to sneak in, took out a spell, and folded it into a small paper crane with a few swipes. Heaven and earth are boundless, Qin Kun borrows the law. Go. Lu Yuqing made a pinch, and the paper crane flapped its wings and came alive. Then he disappeared and sneaked in quietly. With the infiltration of Jiha, many chaotic bright lines appeared in front of Lu Yuqing. These lines are intertwined quickly, and they actually show a little bit of where the paper crane has gone. It feels a bit like a virtual holographic projection. Su Mu looked surprised. It also made him more curious about the Qi refiners. When there is a chance, Su Mu must be a Qi refiner. After the infiltration of Taoist Jiha, the structure of this summer resort gradually appeared in front of Su Mu and Lu Yuqing. Even the defensive power inside was marked out. But just as he was about to go deep into the interior, Lu Yuqing's expression suddenly changed, and Fa Ju moved quickly. Not good. A very powerful warrior discovered my little crane, it should be a martial arts master. While speaking, Lu Yuqing wanted to control the paper crane to escape. But the next moment, her body trembled slightly, and the holographic projection-like image also collapsed. Are you okay? Su Mu supported Lu Yuqing and asked a question worriedly. In this life, he turned into a corpse in half-life and half-death, but he was able to speak. In addition, the body is softer than ordinary zombies. After the advanced flying stiffness and the corpse hair are removed, maybe he can disguise himself as a normal person. It's okay, a little Tao technique, it's not much harm to backlash. But there is a martial arts master in this villa. He is very strong. Very strong. My little crane was found 100 meters away from him, and was destroyed by him in less than half a breath. As Lu Yuqing spoke, he adjusted his breath. Judging from her appearance, there is really nothing wrong with her. Su Mu was relieved and said to Lu Yuqing. It's okay, what I'm looking for is the martial arts master. Let's see if he will send someone out to find us. If they are sent, they will be dealt with first. Hearing this, Lu Yuqing's eyes suddenly lit up and said. Brother Mu, if they really send someone out to find us, I have a way that might work. Oh. In what way? Is such that. Su Mu and Lu Yuqing guessed correctly. After a while, a team of elite men came out of the villa. The leader is a congenital warrior, looking a little bored. Idiot, come to this place, don't talk about girls, you can't see a single sow. When will this day be ahead? Zhou Tianyang scolded and took his subordinates out of the villa and searched everywhere. Hearing this, a soldier beside him immediately leaned over and said in a low voice. Brother Zhou, keep your voice down. It's not good to be heard by the person inside. Hearing this, Zhou Tianyang shrank his neck, a look of fear flashed in his eyes. But he still held his face, pretending to be indifferent and saying. Isn't it a martial arts master? 
If I practice for a few more years, I can also advance to a martial arts master. And stronger than his old bones. You say, don't you? At this time, they were already some distance away from the villa. Everyone thought that the man in the villa should not be listening, so they nodded and said yes, and by the way, they flattered. As a result, Zhou Tianyang's complexion looked a little better. He was originally a guard in a big city, and he lived a good life. As a result, some time ago, I was inexplicably transferred to this place where birds don't poop, and all the food, drink and fun are gone. That's fine. What's more terrible is that there is a martial arts master in this villa who is pressing on Zhou Tianyang's head. This made Zhou Tianyang, who was used to being free and loose, extremely uncomfortable. If it weren't for the fact that the other party was really strong and terrifying, Zhou Tianyang would have to fight against him in a few words. But now, Zhou Tianyang only dared to shout a few words when he was far away from that grandmaster. The group searched the jungle around the villa. After searching for a long time, they didn't see a half figure, which made them relax. What intruder? I think it's that old thing that doesn't look good to me, and is deliberately playing with me. Don't search, the big guys get together for a break, and then go back later, just listen to his nonsense. Zhou Tianyang was paralyzed on the ground, and at random he pulled a grass and chewed it in his mouth. The boss took the lead in swaying, and the soldiers below naturally followed suit. They got together with a smile, and chatted with each other, whether they were talking about a few dirty jokes. But after everyone arrived, Zhou Tianyang suddenly realized that something was wrong. Their team counted him a total of 20 people. But now, how come there are only 19 left? Where's Xiaoluzi? Where's Xiaoluzi? Has anyone seen him? These people were all Zhou Tianyang's old subordinates. After a glance, he knew who was missing, and he immediately asked loudly. Lu Zi. Didn't see it. Yeah, why is Xiao Yuzi missing? This kid won't run and poop, will he? Little six, little six. Everyone exchanged ideas and found that the soldier nicknamed Little Six Son was really gone. Zhou Tianyang stood up immediately, followed by the others. In everyone's heart, there is a trace of bad feeling. Here, in front of the martial arts masters, they are little ones. But before, each of them held official positions and was a powerful general. That little sick son is a first-class warrior. But at this time, it disappeared silently, which is so weird. Everyone moves closer to me. Quick. Although Zhou Tianyang is lazy, he is not an idiot. After discovering that something was wrong, he immediately wanted to call all the rest to his side. But right here, a thick fog suddenly rose up in the forest, engulfing everyone in an instant. This strange thick fog made Zhou Tianyang's sense of crisis even stronger. As soon as the thick fog rose, he reached out and grabbed the person in front of him, thinking that if he could keep one person, he would be alone. But after being caught, the figure collapsed into a dense fog, which merged with the surrounding environment. Maze. Zhou Tianyang immediately thought of these two words. His face darkened. At this time, he finally understood that the man in the villa was not amusing him, but that an enemy had really invaded. To be able to cultivate to this point, Zhou Tianyang has naturally experienced countless battles, but he has relaxed a lot in recent years. Xiao Yuzi disappears, a maze arises, and everyone is separated. All of a sudden, he felt the tension when he first entered the battlefield, and the whole person was refreshed. Zhou Tianyang was full of energy and ready to go, his sharp eyes constantly swept around, searching for suspicious things. At the same time, his breathing was very steady, without the slightest panic. Zhou Tianyang was very clear in his heart. As long as they drag on, the winner will definitely be them. It's not far from the mountain. As long as anomalies are found, reinforcements will come to help them. Even that one might be dispatched. No matter what kind of person is in the confusion at this step, it is absolutely impossible to be the opponent of the martial arts master. Otherwise, the people behind the scenes would not use these little tricks. Zhou Tianyang was stable, but his subordinates didn't have such a good mentality. Without him, there is still a gap in strength. 
As a congenital martial artist, Zhou Tianyang naturally did not panic. But the soldiers under his command are all first-class warriors. Xiao Liuzi, who was also a first-class warrior, disappeared quietly, how could they not panic? Brother Zhou, Brother Zhou. Lao Huang, Matsi. Where are you people? Where are the people? Jiang Qing shouted loudly, but got no response. It seems that he is the only one left in this dense fog and dense forest. This feeling of loneliness is unbearable. The most terrible thing is that Jiang Qing vaguely felt a strange gaze staring at him in the dark like a poisonous snake. Every time I look for it, there is no trace. This feeling made his mouth dry, his scalp was numb, and his breathing couldn't help but quicken. Just as Jiang Qing became more and more panicked, a familiar figure suddenly appeared in the thick fog ahead. He took a closer look and couldn't help but be overjoyed. This figure is not someone else, it is the little sick son who disappeared before. At this moment, he is still waving to him. Where did you go, kid? We were frightened and thought you. Jiang Cheng said as he walked towards the figure. But after getting closer, the smile on his face froze, and there was a hint of panic in his eyes. I saw that the little Liuzi was bleeding from the seven orifices, and his eyes were white. There were four blood holes in his neck, and black blood was gurgling out. He is clearly dead. But at this time, he was still waving to Jiang Cheng, as if calling for him to die together. What the hell? Jiang Cheng only felt his scalp burst, and he retreated in panic. But before taking a few steps back, he slammed into something. It felt as if he had hit a copper wall and an iron wall, and he felt numb all over. Jiang Qing shivered and turned his head to look back, what caught his eye was a terrifying zombie covered in corpse hair. The terrifying corpse claws have been raised high. Ah! Jiang Qing let out a shrill scream. Then I only felt a sharp pain in my neck, and it was already pierced. This shrill scream rippling through the dense fog in the dense forest, Zhou Tianyang's face was gloomy as he heard it. No matter how they shouted, they couldn't call their companions. It shows that this maze has the ability of sound insulation. But at this time, this scream can be heard, what does it mean? It was clearly what the person who set up the formation had deliberately let them hear, so messed up their minds. If Zhou Tianyang can be stable, can the people under his command be stable? Even if it is stable, can it withstand the enemy hidden in the thick fog? Thinking of this, Zhou Tianyang left a few drops of cold sweat on his forehead, more and more. He vaguely felt that they seemed to have become prey in the cage. An invisible ghost is hunting them. 75. In the dense forest shrouded in dense fog, screams continued. Su Mu and Lu Yuqin joined forces, and these elites who were specially transferred from various places had almost no room to resist, and they all died. At this time, Zhou Tianyang had lost the composure he had at first. More than a dozen screams made him extremely angry. All the subordinates he brought out with one hand were all damaged here. This made Zhou Tianyang unacceptable. Come out. Come out and fight Laozi in an upright manner. Laozi wants to peel your skin and drink your blood. Zhou Tianyang roared angrily, constantly urging his gang Qi to attack the dense fog around him. Apparently, he lost his composure. However, under his attack, the mysterious formation gradually collapsed, and it seemed that it could no longer hold on. When I catch you, I will make you die ten times worse than Xiao Liuzi and the others. Hundred times. Zhou Tianyan roared and waved a sword, and the violent sword lights swept out and smashed into the thick fog. Although he doesn't know the formation technique, his strength is good. Despite being reckless, he still caused damage to the maze under Lu Yueqing's steps. If this goes on, the formation will be broken after a quarter of an hour. But don't forget, Lu Yueqing is not alone. Zhou Tianyang desperately vented his incompetence and rage, imagining more than ten ways to eliminate the person behind the scenes. But suddenly, a chill came from behind him. Zhou Tianyang didn't even think about it, he immediately waved the knife back. When? A sound of the intersection of gold and iron came out, and the qi on Zhou Tianyang's sword was actually shattered. He took a close look, 
and saw that he was eliminated by a Mao Zong with long hair and corpse hair. This Mao Zong grabbed his sword with one hand and took it to his heart with the other. Zhou Tianyang's heart was beating wildly, and he hurriedly drew his knife. But after a few strokes, the sword didn't move at all. This Mao Zong's power is terrifying, suppressing his sword like a mountain. At the time of crisis, Zhou Tianyang could only abandon his sword and flee, retreating to the rear. Unexpectedly, after Mao Zong grabbed the knife, he actually slashed at him with the knife in hand. And the swordsmanship used is very good, there is a feeling of great ingenuity. This scene made Zhou Tianyang pale in shock and could hardly believe his eyes. When will zombies become knives? This is a fart. Zhou Tianyang's laziness is reflected in official business, not in martial arts. Over the years, he has never let go of martial arts practice, and fantasizes that one day he will be able to enter the realm of a martial arts master after an epiphany. And his strength has also reached the realm of congenital perfection. If there is no breakthrough, there is almost no room for improvement. It is such a congenital leader, who only had two moves against Su Mu, and he was willing to retreat. From Zhou Tianyang's point of view, this zombie is frighteningly powerful and has a very high defense. He can catch his sword with his bare hands without being damaged. If so, that's all. The key is that this Mao Zong has good martial arts. Completely different from ordinary zombies who have no brains and only know how to use brute force. If you fight again, I'm afraid it won't be good. Zhou Tianyang was right. But he forgot that he was in a maze under Lu Yueqing's steps. Could it be that he can leave if he wants to? Zhou Tianyang threw his sword away and fled, smashing through layers of dense fog along the way. But before he escaped far, the zombie in front of him suddenly appeared in front of him. If it wasn't for his quick reaction, I'm afraid he would have hit him head on. Damn! Zhou Tianyang was startled, stopped his body and scolded lowly then in a hurry to prepare for the fight. But as soon as he started running the astral chi, he felt dizzy for a while. This is a clear sign of poisoning. Zhou Tianyang was shocked. After a closer look, I found that there were a few strands of black miasma mixed in the thick fog around me. He was careless for a while, sucked some in, and got hit. It's not over yet. When Zhou Tianyang was dizzy, Su Mu seized the opportunity and immediately used the supernatural power of drawing blood on him. Naturally, it was impossible for Su Mu to be able to directly extract the blood essence of a top innate warrior. But taking advantage of his weakness to come suddenly, it was enough to mess up his blood and make his body confused for a moment. And this is exactly the chance to eliminate that Su Mu needs. It's over. Su Mu suddenly appeared, followed by poisoning followed by a blood riot in the body. A series of triple strikes occurred one after another within half a second without stopping. In an instant, Zhou Tianyang was in an extremely dangerous situation. He secretly said that it was not good, and tried to restore his state to face Su Mu. But after recovering, I only felt that my chest was empty, and all the strength of my body was lost like a flood. Zhou Tianyang looked down and saw a ferocious zombie claws pierced through his chest, twisting the internal organs of his body into mud. I I am not reconciled. I'm only one step away from. Zhou Tianyang's eyes widened, he used his last strength to whisper a few words and then lost his breath. As soon as Zhou Tianyang died, the surrounding fog quickly dissipated. I saw nineteen corpses neatly laid out on the ground. He was the only one missing from the entire team. Su Mu is not interested in the blood essence of a first-class warrior. But Zhou Tianyang, a top innate martial artist, can't let it go. He stretched out his hand to gather in the air, and all the blood essence flew out automatically, condensing into a fist-sized blood ball. Most of it was devoured by hematoxylin. The remaining small part was handed over to Lu Yuqin. Next, it was time for Lu Yuqing to perform. She first used the technique of corpse refining to temporarily live the 19 corpses. The corpse chi converges and the wound is hidden. Except that the movements are a little stiffer, these corpses are not much different from living people, and they can move freely. Later, Lu Yuqing used Zhou Tianyang's blood to draw a talisman, 
and attached it to Su Mu's body with the Taoist technique. Okay, that's it. But Brother Xiaomu, don't come in contact with people, let alone get close to that martial arts master. I'm afraid he can see through my methods. Also, this blindfold can only last for half an hour. Within half an hour, you must come out. Lu Yuqing cast a blindfold on Su Mu. At this time, in the eyes of outsiders, he looks like Zhou Tianyang, and even his breath is exactly the same. But Su Mu couldn't come into contact with others, and as soon as he came into contact, he was exposed. As for martial arts masters, they have to hide far away. Martial Dao masters are too sensitive to breath. This kind of method can't deceive a master of that level. Understood, I'll go in and find out the situation and I'll find an opportunity to come out. Be careful by yourself and wait for me to come out. With that said, Su Mu walked to the villa with 19 subordinates. In the eyes of outsiders, it was Zhou Tianyang who came back with his subordinates. In fact, it's all corpses. After entering the villa in disguise, several colleagues who were also innate warriors greeted Su Mu. Su Mu deliberately ignored it with a straight face, causing others to be confused, thinking that he was being trained by the one above him again. In order not to touch his bad head, others would not say anything to him. Taking this opportunity, Su Mu wandered around the periphery of the villa. After entering the villa, he could vaguely sense a somewhat familiar aura. This is the breath of the drought. But the main body of the scorpion is definitely not in this place, otherwise there would not be so much vegetation here. Su Mu guessed that this villa should contain the blood of the dry scorpion. It's just that this breath came from inside the villa, and there was a martial arts master guarding it, and Su Mu couldn't sneak in to investigate. Naturally, there is no way to know what the is going on inside. After a few turns, Su Mu decided to leave. But just as he was about to slip away quietly, he was stopped by an old man who got out of nowhere. Young man, where are you going? Su Mu turned his head and saw an old man standing more than a hundred meters away from him. The old man was not tall and had gray hair. With a gentle smile on his face, he looked very kind. But Su Mu is like a formidable enemy, and a heart has been raised in his throat. In the eyes of ordinary people, this is a kind little old man. But in Su Mu's eyes, this person's blood is turbulent like a big river, like a peerless beast crawling on the ground, staring at him coldly. If something goes wrong, it will attack him with a thunderous force. The huge pressure made Su Mu a little breathless. This person is definitely a martial arts master. There is not only one martial Dao master in this villa. But two bright and one dark. Ming's guard is inside. Cruising around in the dark, this is the old man. Unfortunately, Su Mu was caught by him. Su Mu knew that he had probably been seen through, but he still wanted to struggle again. He cupped his hands and said. My subordinate remembered that there was something missing, so I wanted to investigate again. The old man smiled, and while walking towards Su Mu, he said slowly. A monster has to look like a monster, what kind of person do you pretend to be? But it's rare that zombies can talk. Using sound transmission. Or some other means. Hearing these words, Su Mu's heart trembled violently, and he fled outside in a vertical leap. He was churning with corpse aura, and his blindfold was naturally broken. But since it has been seen through, the camouflage is meaningless. Seeing this, the old man's smile remained unchanged, but his eyes were already full of killing intent. I don't know where the monsters and ghosts came from, they even dare to break in here. Let me die for this old man. Roar. The old man roared, the sound waves whistled, and the astral chi was horizontal, and then a giant lion phantom appeared from the top of his head. The giant lion's phantom grew rapidly, turned into a height of 100 meters, and slapped Su Mu with one paw. The whole process took less than half a breath, and the giant claws were more than 10 feet long, so Su Mu couldn't escape at all. At the time of the crisis, he hurriedly turned around, the black miasma surrounding his body, his arms protecting the vitals, and he was doing his best to defend himself. The next moment, the giant lion's claws slapped Su Mu's body fiercely, as if slapping flies. Boom! With a loud noise, Su Mu was shot flying out. 
Like a cannonball, it fell heavily on the mountainside hundreds of meters away, smashing a huge crater. Seeing this, the old man walked in the air, ready to catch up with the zombies who dared to intrude. But at this moment, a light shot up from the inside of the villa, illuminating the surroundings. At the same time, there was a burst of crazy laughter. Ha ha ha. It's done, it's finally done. Ha ha ha. With this movement, the old man stopped. The purpose of his stay here is to guard the birth of this thing and deal with the subsequent series of things. At this time, I finally succeeded, and naturally I can't leave easily. Humph. The old man glanced at the big pit from a distance, snorted coldly, and flew into the villa. The gas just now was strong, and the corpse was extremely sturdy. It's not an ordinary Harry. The old man knew that the move just now wasn't enough to eliminate it, otherwise he wouldn't even think about chasing it. It's just that there is no time to take care of the zombie and the person who controls it for the time being. After the blood shone into the sky, all the power of the villa shrank to the inside to protect the mysterious thing. In the deep pit in the distance, Sumu grinned and crawled out. The old man looks harmless, but he is actually a top martial arts master with extremely powerful strength. If it wasn't for that light that attracted his attention, Su Mu might not have been able to escape. But what is this light? It's so important that the old man has no intention of chasing and killing me. Su Mu was a little puzzled. He could only vaguely sense the aura of some dry blood essence, but he didn't know the specifics. At the same time, Lu Yuqing hurried over and felt relieved when he found that Su Mu was okay. At the same time, she told Su Mu about her findings. Brother Mu, after the light appeared, many communication talismans flew out of this villa. And they are all advanced Dao talismans, I can't intercept them. Lu Yuqing felt a little guilty for not helping Su Mu. Hearing this, Su Mu immediately comforted. You've done a good job. By the way, call your master over quickly. I have a hunch that something big is happening here. After Taoist Zishan betrayed Xuanzhen, he went to Su Mu and Lu Yuqing and lived in the cottage for a while. During this period, Lu Yuqing officially worshipped him as his teacher, and obtained the inheritance of the eight classics. However, after the dry man lost control and escaped from Guetu Mountain, Taoist Zishan ran to look for it again. At this time, Su Mu had a premonition that something big was going to happen here, so he asked Lu Yuqing to call Zishan Taoist. The Taoist Zishan in his heyday was very strong. It is estimated that it is only slightly weaker than Qin Shuzi. Hearing Su Mu's words, Lu Yuqing immediately took out a communication talisman and passed the message to Taoist Zishan who did not know where he was. Afterwards, the two retreated ten miles away and quietly waited for the development of the situation. Su Mu and Lu Yuqing didn't wait long. At dusk, Taoist Zishan came over. When Lu Yuqing contacted him, he happened to be not far away, so he came in time. As soon as he saw Su Mu and Lu Yuqing, Taoist Zishan felt a lot of bitterness. Mother Zippy, that scorpion is too ferocious. Tiani taught so many masters, yet he couldn't take her down, and she escaped many times, and he was stronger every time. Bikuj. Name. Fortunately, you kid didn't know how to steal some of her origins. Otherwise, this drought does not know how cruel it is. Hey. No wonder there were experts who criticized hundreds of years ago, saying that Baiji was a lone star of the scorpion, and it was the existence of the chaos in Kyushu. Now it seems that is true. Baiji is really a strange woman. She is not easy to mess with before and after her death. After complaining, Taoist Zishan asked Su Mu and Lu Yuqing why they called him here. After learning what happened here, Taoist Zishan narrowed his eyes and pondered. As long as it's related to drought, it's definitely no small matter. It must be that the king of Biling has some ghost idea, let me go to find out the news. Taoist Zishan took a short rest, and then planned to use Taoism to find out what happened inside the villa. But before he could make a move, two waves of people came. And they're big guys. One of them is the king of Biling. He rode a luxurious chariot and rushed to the villa under the of hundreds of people. Seven or eight of them are top martial arts masters. 
ordinary martial arts masters are even more than 10 or 20 people. Xian Junzi and a group of disciples were also among them. The other's posture is no smaller than that of King Biling, and the guard strength is equally astonishingly high. It's the king of Jinshan. After seeing the banner raised by the pair of people, Taoist Zishan recognized his identity. King Biling and King Jinshan are the only real power kings in Dagon. King Biling controls Jizhou and Yenzhou. The king of Jinshan held Yongzhou in his hand. Tonight, the two kings had a secret meeting here. I don't know what secrets are hidden in this villa. 76. This time the meeting between the two kings was obviously decided on an ad hoc basis, and there was no advance arrangement for the surrounding area. But after arriving at the scene, the elite guards around the two kings immediately swept the radius of ten miles several times to ensure that there would be no problems. Su Mu, Lu Yuqing and Taoist Zishan were forced to withdraw for several miles. That's it. The masters of Zhuanzhenmen actually arranged a formation around them, isolating all external investigations. What now? Is there any way to find out what they're doing inside? Seeing this scene, Su Mu asked Taoist Zishan helplessly. The secret meeting of the two kings must be an earth-shattering event. Su Mu wanted to know what the they were plotting. But watching this battle, I'm afraid it will be difficult to find out the news. Unexpectedly, Taoist Zishan smiled slightly and said. If King Biling hadn't brought my good brothers and sisters with me, I really couldn't help it. Now. Chenkun Wuji, Feng Lei is ordered. Get up. Daoist Zishan recited the mantra and pinched the Dao Ju, and a wave of spiritual energy swayed. A trumpet-shaped phantom appeared in front of him, and there were bursts of faint sounds. I left a small trick on a junior brother's body. It can only be used once, and there are many restrictions. But right now, this situation is just right to use it. Hurry up and listen to what the this King Biling is doing. After explaining one sentence, Taoist Zishan stopped talking. He increased the output of spiritual power, making the faint voice louder. The three of them all listened intently, wanting to see what the Xuan Wang Mihue was planning. It took half an hour to hear this. During this process, the expressions of the three of Su Mu kept changing. There are doubts, shocks, concerns, but more of it is anger. King Biling is indeed preparing for a great conspiracy. The cause is still in the drought. Demons at the level of the scorpion possess wisdom and consciousness. But this belongs to the consciousness of the drought, not the Angelica. That is, this consciousness is new, if the infant is generally innocent. After getting out of trouble, driven by anger, Han Yan instinctively hunted down those who had stolen her blood essence. Wei Zhuang is one of them. After Wei Zhuang died, another martial arts master who had taken the corpse blood pill was also found and eliminated. King Biling used some means and spent a lot of effort to block the feeling of the drought to him. But this gave King Biling an idea. Is it possible to use the blood of the scorpion to make something to make her fall into a frenzy? so as to achieve the effect of changing direction? For example, if Wei Zhuang did not die at the time, he escaped from Jizhou all the way. Nine times out of ten, the drought will chase it out. In this way, you can use her inadvertently to achieve some ulterior motives. After having this idea, King Biling took action immediately. He ordered a group of alchemists and qi alchemists under his command to use the blood of the dry scorpion that he had drawn before to refine something that would make her fall into a frenzy. This villa is one of the laboratories. King Biling has already thought about it. Once he succeeds, he will use this thing to lure the violent drought to the south, killing all the way to Yanjing. Yes. King Biling is planning to rebel. However, after two years of tossing and turning, the strength of King Biling's subordinates was greatly damaged. Even if droughts and famines opened the way, he had no confidence that he would succeed in rebelling. So after thinking for a while, King Biling contacted King Jinshan next door in advance. The two of them share the same mother and are close brothers. Tonight, the alchemists in this villa successfully refined what the King of Biling wanted. So he immediately notified King Jinshan, and the two met in secret here. After confirming that there was no problem with the things, they began to discuss the great cause of rebellion. 
After hearing this shocking secret, Su Mu, Lu Yueqing and Taoist Zishan looked at each other, feeling extremely complicated. This chaotic world is not only on the verge of cessation, but it is about to intensify. This king of Biling is not even as good as a beast. It's not enough to harm Jizhou, and he wants to harm the world. Taoist Zishan gritted his teeth in hatred. He can't wait to use the animal-making technique to turn the king of Biling into a wild dog, and then throw it into the disaster area of Jizhou, which is thousands of miles away, so that he can experience the taste of it. Lu Yuqin was not so angry, or more worried than angry. She said worriedly. If King Biling and King Jinshan really use the dry spear as a spear to invade the south. Even if the rebellion fails, it will bring huge damage to Kyushu. Taoist Zishan sighed and said helplessly. The two kings join forces, and no one can stop them. Regardless of success or failure, this world. I'm afraid it will be completely chaotic. Is it the end of the country's fortunes? Both Lu Yuqing and Taoist Zishan were very pessimistic and felt that this matter was unstoppable and troubled times were coming. Su Mu on the side was a little stunned. He knows that history doesn't work that way. Historically, King Biling and King Jinshan did not rebel at all. During the famine, the King of Biling disappeared mysteriously, and he did not know his life and whereabouts. As for King Jinshan, he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. He lived steadily decades later, which was the era when Sumu lived. But looking at the current situation, it is a foregone conclusion that the two kings will join forces to rebel, who can stop them. This made Sumu very puzzled. But soon, a shocking change came. In the villa, the two kings were still discussing the rebellion. Tiani teaches that group of bull noses, they don't respect the king, they don't know their superiority. If they dare to stop the drought this time, this king will destroy them. Brother Wang's words are very true. A group of Qi refiners can be lawless with a little bit of Taoism. How arrogant! During the recent period, the Tianyi sect has been continuously encircling and suppressing the drought, trying to suppress it. If you want to successfully drive the drought to the south, you cannot let Tai Nijio continue to encircle and suppress it. Therefore, King Biling and King Jinshan have already planned to attack this first sect in Jizhou. After discussing this, the two kings have basically made a plan, and they will start the great cause of rebellion soon. But accidents often happen unexpectedly. Su Mu was still thinking about who and what would be able to interrupt the rebellion of King Biling and King Jinshan. There, something happened. Suddenly, there was an earth-shattering loud noise more than ten miles away, as if a tenth magnitude earthquake had occurred. Immediately, the earth cracked, and a huge red shadow shot up from the ground, swallowing King Biling, King Jinshan, and their bodyguards in one bite. A dozen miles away, Su Mu, Lu Yueqing and Taoist Zishan were stunned and dumbfounded on the spot. This red shadow light drilled out from the ground is an upper body, hundreds of feet long. Shaped like a dragon, it is extremely terrifying. This swallow, like a red dragon swallowing the sky, can eliminate everything. A closer look reveals that this is not a red dragon. It's a huge centipede. The whole body is shiny and red, and it looks like a dragon. The breath is terrifying. Even if they were separated by more than ten miles, Lu Yuqing and Taoist Zishan felt their hearts beating wildly and they couldn't help themselves. As a zombie, Su Mu didn't have a heartbeat, but he also felt a huge sense of threat. It seems that this red dragon can destroy him with a breath. Just as the three of them were shocked, some of the small eyes on the back of the red centipede looked at them from a distance. Taoist Zishan was so frightened that he was very clever, and immediately cast a spell to take Su Mu and Lu Yuqing to the distance. Fortunately, the centipede spirit, which looks like a red dragon, didn't pay attention to these tiny bugs. After swallowing up into the sky, he escaped into the ground again, and disappeared in the blink of an eye. What the was that just now? After escaping dozens of miles, Taoist Zishan finally stopped. Su Mu took this opportunity to ask him with lingering fears. Originally thought that the drought was scary enough, but the centipede was even more scary just now. There are already vague signs of becoming a dragon. It swallowed up into the sky, and actually swallowed all the King Biling and King Jinshan. 
The top martial arts masters who guarded the two kings didn't even have a chance to react, so they were buried in the belly of the demon together. No bones left. Never seen, never heard of. I have been practicing for so many years, and I have traveled all over the world. I have been overseas, I have been to grasslands, and I have been to deserts. But this is the first time I've seen such a monstrosity. The strangest thing is that it has a faint dragon energy on its body. Looks like a dragon. Hearing this, Sumu frowned and asked inexplicably. Dragon Chi. Is there really a dragon in this world? Taoist Zishan explained. Real dragon. I haven't seen it, but there are legends, but I don't know if it's true or not. This centipede spirit isn't the spirit of a real dragon, it's more like the spirit of a certain dynasty. Hearing this, Sumu became more confused. Each dynasty has its own luck, also known as the true dragon of luck. This is also a very mysterious thing, which can only be observed by experts who are proficient in qi observation. The real dragon of luck of the dynasty will be entrenched in the body of the ruler of the dynasty. Bless him against all evil and avoid all ghosts. And this centipede spirit actually has the blessing of dynasty luck. Does this centipede have anything to do with the Dagon royal family? Of course, there is not only one dynasty in this world, it may also come from other places. But no matter what, this terrifying centipede spirit solved the catastrophe that almost brought disaster to Kyushu. As soon as it went down, King Biling and King Jinshan both died, and the guards around them also returned to the west. All problems are solved. And many more. As a result, it seems that a new problem has arisen. Thinking about it, Sumu suddenly felt something was wrong. Until the era he lived in in reality, King Jinshan was still alive and well. But according to this situation, shouldn't he be dead? Suspended animation? Fraud? Or something else? The more Su Mu thought about it, the more he felt a headache. He vaguely felt that he seemed to have touched a shocking secret. It's just that there are too many mysteries in it, and the truth can't be found for a while. Su Mu shook his head, put these messy thoughts behind him, and turned to focus on the things in front of him. Is the centipede gone? Shall we go and see? After half an hour, Su Mu tentatively asked Taoist Zishan. Go and have a look. Pindao has lived for decades, and he has never seen such a terrifying monster, and I don't know where it came from. Daoist Zishan's face was sinking like water, and he was very worried. The drought has not yet been resolved, and another thousand-meter centipede spirit like a red dragon has appeared here. What the is going on in this world? Why are there so many monsters? Taoist Zishan sighed helplessly, then set up a flying boat with Dao Talisman, and brought Su Mu and Lu Yuqing to the sky above the incident. Looking from top to bottom, you can clearly see that there is a huge pit on the ground that is 300 meters deep and 100 meters wide. Everything in it disappeared without a trace as if it had been erased. The centipede's body is just sticking out, at least 6 or 700 meters long. But this big pit is only more than 300 meters deep. It seems that it is proficient in earth escape. Think about it too. The martial arts masters and cultivators around King Biling and King Jinshan didn't notice it until the moment before the centipede was eliminated, and they all died before they could react. This earth escape technique is not ordinary subtlety. Speaking of which, Daoist Zishan's expression was a little gloomy. Although he betrayed the Xuanzhen sect, he still has a lot of affection for this sect who has lived for decades. This sudden change nearly wiped out the Xuanzhen sect. Right now, he was the only one left. If you really want to count, you can barely liquidate Lu Lu. There are only two people. In fact, there is no Xuanzhen gate in later generations. If Su Mu had not reminded Taoist Zishan, he would have died in Gui Tu Mountain on the night he attacked Hanyu and betrayed his sect. Zuan's henman, the whole door was destroyed. Not only the Xuanzhen sect, but the Tiani sect, which is now even more powerful, has also disappeared in later generations. Su Mu estimated that their disappearance should be related to the drought. As for the specifics, he can't guess for the time being, and he doesn't want to guess. Because now there are more important things waiting for him to do. 
There are almost a thousand people on both sides of King Biling and King Jinshan. The crimson dragon-like centipede essence swallowed 90% of it in one bite, but some were not swallowed. Looking down from the flying boat, you can see some corpses scattered on the edge of the giant pit. There is even the corpse of the martial arts master. This made Sumu speechless. That centipede spirit could wipe out so many top experts with just one click. The strength is unfathomable, just like the legendary wild monster. Zishan, what kind of cultivation is the centipede essence? How can even the martial arts master have no resistance? While shocked, Su Mu asked Taoist Zishan curiously. Taoist Zishan shook his head gloomily and said. Poor. I don't know. A person who refines qi, when he cultivates to the point where the three flowers gather at the top and the five qi reaches the prime, is regarded as the master of qi refining, and his own small universe reaches the small perfection state. A qi refiner in this realm has doubled his lifespan, and his combat power is basically the same as that of a martial arts master. Of course, there are also some qi refiners who are particularly good at fighting and those who are particularly bad at fighting, so he'll do the rest. Cultivation in the future requires the unity of heaven and man. Let your own small universe echo and integrate with the outer universe this realm is called God Transformation. Spirit Transformation Cultivator I haven't appeared for many years. I don't know if I can fight that centipede spirit. Taoist Zishan looked very emotional. He is only one step away from the great accomplishment of qi refining. At first, I thought it could be regarded as a master of the world. Now it seems. Sitting in the well and watching the sky. Hearing this, Su Mu nodded silently. The water in this world is very deep. The stronger the strength, the more he discovers. It does not go straight to the limit of cultivation, what realm will be reached. Thinking of this, Su Mu has some longing. But now he has one more important thing to do. Is that centipede spirit gone? Su Mu asked Taoist Zishan. Should have gone. However, I'm not sure if it will reappear. If it wasn't for worrying about this, Taoist Zishan wouldn't have bothered to set up a takeoff boat. Hearing this, Su Mu thought for a while, and then said. Well then, you two stay on top and put me down. The blood of the martial arts master can't be wasted. Among the scattered corpses, two belonged to martial arts masters. Su Mu stared at it for a long time, and was already greedy. These are all fine blood. But they can't be let go in vain. Besides, when Su Mu came here, didn't he just want to see if there was a chance to hunt down another martial arts master? Never thought such a shocking change would happen. The only benefit is to be able to pick up two corpses of martial arts masters for nothing, how can there be any reason to let them go? Click to download this site app, Massive Novels, free to read.